Guys, we were about uh, 12 minutes out from Shuli and Brian coming on the show. So what I'm going to do is I want to get into, I mentioned on the last show, I had a bunch of Opie stuff that we didn't get to. Opie had Chad Zumach on his morning live stream. And there's a lot to get to there. So I think I'm going to start doing some Opie stuff. We'll bring on Shuli and Brian. And then uh, after that, we'll get back and we'll finish it up. And then I also have some Stuttering John things that I want to uh, discuss. Well, John, there, there's so there's too much to get to with John. I went on Drew and Mike's show. They put it up on YouTube. And we played some of the stuff from John's second ever Hypocrisy Police episode. You know what? Let me talk about this. Fuck mm-hmm. Opie. We'll get to Opie later. Yeah. <laughs> John does his second ever Hypocrisy Police show, and he brings on Richard Ojeda. And I played a bunch of clips with Drew and Mike. People can find that on the Drew and Mike channel on YouTube. And basically what it is, is John brings on his only friend left, Rich, maybe I am now again, but we'll talk about that. <laughs> For now. Yeah. So he brings on his only friend in the world, Richard Ojeda, who he calls Richard Ojeda, because he doesn't listen. And he wants to explain to Richard all the losers who are trolling and trashing him. He's bringing up the Uncle Rico episode, and he's pointing at Chad Zumach and Anthony Cumia and me, and he's looking at Shuli and ba- he's going through all the different people. And every time Rich doesn't know what any of these people are, he's this is not in his world at all. He's not like an old OA guy, or he's just something. sitting and blinking. <laughs> he's sitting there, but every time he gets a chance to get a word in, he goes, Why are you giving this oxygen, John? What are you doing? Why are you telling? Why are you even talking about this? And he was explaining to him, he tried it many different ways to explain to John, people are tuning out, they don't want to see this. Mm-hmm. And the only thing they're going to do is go and check out what those guys are doing because you keep talking about them and you're giving them content by continuing to talk about them. And so you're just perpetuating this thing. And every single time, John would go, I know, but let me just tell you about this. <laughs> no, 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 I know. No, you're right. You're right. But hold on a second. I look hear you, at what but this, I don't. <laughs> yeah, look at what this asshole is doing. And then this guy, and then this guy over here. So it's it's so funny because I don't know what's going to happen with him and Richard. If he's going to be kind of the new sidekick, like they kind of were doing when John was ending his first run there, because, you know, Hal Sparks went away and it was it was tough to get guests on there. So it was him and Richard talking politics. Well, that's all Richard wants to talk about is politics. He doesn't want to talk about Anthony Cumia yeah. and, you know, whatever he happened with Danny Brand seven years ago whatever the fuck it was he's just like okay whatever he's like no you don't know how much of a racist this guy is he's like all right then why are we talking about it what the fuck who cares richard wants to talk about politics the way we want to talk about john right right that's all i want to talk about fast forward stuttering john i I had a conversation with him yesterday because he got very mad at me because vince the attorney or vince the lawyer whatever the fuck he goes by Vinny. I'm in a, a private text thread with him and Shuli and someone else and um, whatever. We're, we're having a conversation and I, I, I bring up something about my new house that I bought in Florida and what a coincidence it is that it happens to be near someone else's house named Stuttering John Melendez. All right. This was not meant for anyone's eyeballs. People have figured this out. It's been on the Reddit and stuff, but I obviously am not giving this information out. But Vince, who needs attention any way he can get it, decides to take a screen grab of that and post it on Reddit. I didn't know that. All I know is that I get a message from Stuttering John with that screen grab, and I know it's from Vince, because anytime you're in a group text, you see who the other people are you're texting with, their initials at the top. Mm-hmm. The one that's missing is Vince. So Vince, it's Vince's phone. Who's sending this out? This is not meant for anyone. It was not meant for the internet. John takes that screen grab and goes, what the fuck, Carl? You're doxing me now? You told me you wouldn't dox me? This is... Un- he starts threatening me. You know, he knows where I live and all this stuff. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. So I assumed, because I know that Vince and John talk, I assume that Vince sent that to John. Did Vi- did Vince know that John is in Florida? Did Vince know that? Or is that information that you gave Vince? Well, this is well known by anyone who follows Muttering Jay. Okay. Muttering Jay on Twitter cracked this case a week or two ago. And I had known about this ahead of time. And when I saw Muttering Jay report on this, I DM'd him and I'm like, dude, where are you getting this information from? I know I'm going to get accused of leaking this yeah. and I don't want that. And so I actually, I'm, I'm like, Muttering Jay, where did you get this information from? Because John's going to assume I leaked this to you. So he went through, he goes, this is how we got it. And he went through all these different things. There was a screenshot. So John was sharing his computer 
and he had his browser up and all of his tabs. Oh, okay. this is going back. I don't even know how many months, but one of them was uh, an address in Cape Coral from Zillow. So that he's looking oh. at houses okay. in Cape Coral. So anyway, <laughs> through that, and oh, real estate transactions are public and you can look things up, whatever. So, so Motoring Jay figured this out. So I assume that Vince, the attorney, knows that and everyone else knows that too. I don't know if they do or not, but whatever. It's out there. So anyway, all Vince does is he posts that uh, text thread, the screen grab from his phone, and then John sends that screen grab to me. So I assume Vince sent it to John and I get back in the thread. I'm like, Vince, what the fuck is wrong with you? What are you doing? This was not for anyone else's eyes, but ours. Why would you do that? And then Vince thinks he's got a big gotcha on me. He's like, I didn't send it to Suttering John. So fucking apologize. No, you don't even have to apologize, Carl. It, it, no worries. I'm an adult. You don't have to apologize to me. And I'm like, I don't care how John got it. Actually, it's way worse. You posted it on Reddit yeah. <laughs> for everyone to see, for John to see, and then accuse me of doxing him and all this shit. And I'm like, dude, if I'm ever, and this goes for all of us, I don't even, we don't have to say this because you guys know. If we're emailing each other or texting, that's for you. Right. That's for you to see. Uh-oh. That's, yeah. That's not something that I need you to post on Reddit or the Discord or I, I can't believe that Vince doesn't fucking know that. He's a fucking <laughs> he's moron. Attorney. He's an attorney. I know. Supposedly. That's what my wife kept saying, too. I'm like, I don't care if he's a plumber. Yeah. Everyone fucking knows it's, it's just common courtesy. You don't post someone's personal message to you. Aren't we all supposed to be glad that John is back and making this all laugh some more? Why are yes. we all trying to drive him away like immediately? Why, why are we doing this? Well, Vince needs attention any way he can get it. All right. He wants to be a part of this world. Well, nobody's talking about Vince. So John, I know. So John messaged me and he's very upset. So he, so I'm on the Drew and Mike show and he calls me. So I pull up the phone while I'm on the show. And ah. He's like, Carl, you got to call me back. I'm like, fine. So I call him after I get done with the show. And, um, you know, we have a conversation about it. I explain what happened. I explained to him that threatening me is not cool. He, he says he didn't threaten me. Okay, whatever. So we leave it at that. Then I'm doing the creep off bonus show this morning with Vinny over here. And pff, there's stuttering John on my phone again, calling me. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? So I pulled up, put it on speakerphone. John is freaking out. Carl, this is nuts. I know that everyone warned me about Chad, but now he's threatening me. And he's threat. And I, I got, I got the police involved. I got the table police involved. Now I got the FBI involved. And I, I, I'm like, I'm like, John, meanwhile, I'm recording all of this out of the creep off. We weren't <laughs> live. Thankfully we, we cut it out. I'm saying it now, so I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't know how to navigate these things. That's not the point. Take that clip and bring it to this for Cringe of the Week next time. Yeah. No, he said all this on his show afterwards. I, w- I didn't know what he was going to talk about. So John goes, Carl, we got to talk about this thing. He goes, I'm, I'm going live at 10 o'clock. He's uh, on the West Coast. Can I say that? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'm going live. This guy's one, all, the, all over the place. I know. I'm going live at 1 o'clock with, with Eastern. Can you come on the show? I go, send me the link. Okay. So then he sends me the link. And um, I go on Suttering John's show today. Something I wasn't planning on doing. I, Wednesdays are a busy day for me. I do the creep off, and then I yeah. prep for who are these podcasts, and I do that. Anyway, I go on John's show because, according to John, Chad Zubak is out of control. Like, he's got a flamethrower going up to his house right now, and he's just ready to fucking burn it down. It turns out, as I'm talking to John, and he's showing me, he's actually messaging me the tweets that he put out and the text message thread that they have going on. Chad tweeted something that was something like, I know where you live, and then hashtag stay tuned. Now, is that a threat? Probably. Would I take it seriously? No. (laughs) Yeah, from anyone else you might, but. Well, that's what John said. He he goes, well, Chad's got a criminal record, so I got to take this seriously. Well, good point. (laughs) <laughs> I can't really argue with that. But I said to John on his show, you can, if it's still up, you can watch it. I go, John, you literally threatened me in a very similar fashion. You said that you were in a biker gang and you knew where I lived and you're going to make my life in Florida interesting. He goes, oh, well, Carl, I'm not, I'm not in a biker gang. Like, <laughs> I know that. <laughs> He's also not a member of the hypocrisy police <laughs> who you should have called. <laughs> I go, John, I know that. That's why I didn't call the FBI. Do you see my point? Like, I'm like, John, John you got to not take this so fucking seriously. Yeah. Chad's not doing anything to you. And also, and I explained this to him, too, on the show. I go, I've gotten death threats before. I never take them seriously. Anyone who's going to kill you 
or who wants to ruin your life is not going to publicly announce it beforehand. It's a really dumb move, even for a guy like Chad. Would not do something like that. Be really fucking stupid. So I tried to explain to him to de-escalate things. I go, why don't you give it a day? Because he's talking to the Tampa police. He's talking to the FBI. And he's got all these things. He's getting a restraining order. Where's Where's big tough guy that's going to fight three guys in, in 10 minutes? He loves to go back and forth because I explained to him. I go, well, you're threatening violence on people. It's like, no, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, you're going to pistol whip Anthony Kubiak. He's like, that was a joke. <laughs> Hilarious. I know. I get, Always funny. I can't, I can't yeah. fucking keep track of what's a joke and what's not a joke. So oh, I shouldn't have the screen pulled up this whole time. Anyway, uh, so that was interesting. I guess John got Chad's Twitter taken down for 12 hours. Chad's all pissed off about that because he's in Twitter jail right now and he can't tweet. And, it's better uh, than regular jail, Chad. It's better than regular jail. And, I, <laughs> you know, the Tampa police, so he's going to send, I don't know what John's going to do, but I assume he's going to send them this tweet that Chad put out that said, I know where you live, hashtag stay tuned. And the police are going to go, all right. <laughs> Best thing for you to do is stay tuned. Yeah, let's see how this plays out, shall we? Maybe you're getting a pizza. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just, I can't even imagine. And the whole time I'm on John's show today, I got a guy feeding me information, thankfully, because I'm not keeping up on this as, as well as I should be. And that is one Shuli Egar. What's up, Shuli? Oh. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hi, guys. Hello. So, yeah. How are we doing? Uh, I'm doing well. What a weird day, huh, Shuli? I mean, I know you guys were busy. What's funny is, so let me let me give you a little, uh, a few more updates on this uh, saga that's going on. Please, because we were watching John on MLC um, right when we were starting the show. And none of us wanted to do the show. Like, let's just watch this. But, you know, we're I, professionals. Uh, so even before that, on his show. At some point, he started getting texts from Chad saying, I'm on my way to your place now. So <laughs> there's this really you – know, listen, there's this really amazing thing that he does at one point where he picks up his phone and he goes, uh, Siri, call John. And and all of a sudden he just – he has the – and I swear it's like somebody auditioning for something and and the part – like the, 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 the sides have to do with having a phone call – Cause it was, it just didn't seem real. He was just like answering too fast, and and people in the chat were like, "This is a fake call." And he's like, uh, he's telling this guy, Johnny, I need you to go over to the house. This guy's texting me. He says he's he's on his way. Yeah, nah, his name's Chad Zumach. He goes, yeah, he's a white guy, and he's like, and he's doing this whole thing, yeah. and then he hangs up, and he goes, uh, maybe I'll call the cops too, but. He goes. It's about two hours before he gets there, so I have time. <laughs> and then he, and then he's like doing the text thing where he's like touching one finger at a time, but he's saying sentences. So right. he's like, he's like, be there for the next thirty minutes, and he's just pushing like <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> so he wasn't the fooling whole, you, Julie. Is the that what you're whole saying? thing was it was so <laughs> strange. It was so <laughs> strange. But then the best part is, I'm texting Chad. And I'm going. You're not texting John right now, are you? And I don't hear from him. I don't. And I'm like, ah, fuck. I go. I hope Chad's not on a bender or something. And then I get text from him like 45 minutes later. He goes, I just landed in Ohio, so he's been <laughs> in the air the entire time. John thinks he's on his way to his house. So, um, and then and then MLC. I mean, it was just amazing. So uh, another thing, just a peek behind the scenes here. I don't know why John called me about this chat thing. I have nothing to do with it. I, I guess he has no fucking friends. Well, <laughs> I, ding, ding, ding. Yeah. I, I learned today that Tukey wants to be his friend. <laughs> Tukey super chatted them and John gave him smooches. So that's good. <laughs> that's tremendous. <laughs> yeah. I was messaging with Tukey. He goes, that's the best five bucks I ever spent. <laughs> Listen, this reminds me of when people were like, yeah, give high pitch my number. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, and we're like, that. yeah, yeah. And two weeks later, they're like, dude, he's at, he's hitting me up for mortgage uh, payments. Like, yeah. hey, please get me out of this loop. So John's similar. What does that sound like? What, oh, what is it? Hey, listen, <laughs> I need money for my cable bill. I can't jerk <laughs> off without blue bloods. <laughs> Donnie. Donnie Walter. <laughs> All right. Surely the, the snipe stream with Chad and John was, uh, uh, you know, if you – if it was possible to make me fall in love with Chad Zumak, you guys did it. That was wow. so great. High praise. 
I mean, he, he, you say what you will, scumbag or not, he was amazing that day. All right. We can all agree on that. Yeah. That I think we can agree on. Yeah. So the crazy thing is, and I don't know how I got myself into this position, because all I've done is make fun of Chad Zumach and stuttering John for the last year of my life. And I have yeah. John coming to me saying Chad's a lunatic. And Chad, not even knowing that John did that, is messaging me their text conversation yeah. to show me what a fucking lunatic chat is. I'm like, how am I? Yeah, now you're mediating. Yeah, how am I it? mediating this thing? <laughs> so I go on John's show and I'm I'm telling him like, yeah, no, Chad is a lunatic. You're right. That's very true. But also, cool your jets. This is the end of the world. He's not murdering your children. That's the whole thing too. John just keeps pulling that children card where he's like, yeah, well, my kid, my kids might live in that house someday. It's like they don't. You're fine. You- I mean, you you can write anything in that chat and give him five bucks, and he'll believe it if it's in his fit. Like he'll be like, yeah. "The Pope is stream sniping." <laughs> oh, really? Okay, thanks, Pope. Thanks a lot, you piece of shit. <laughs> you know, and he's already pissed. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. So that gets us caught up on everything that's going on. Now the big showdown is set to begin because, as you guys know, <sighs> I I'm <laughs> once again in the middle of this. I am friends with Shuli Egar. I am friends with Brian Johnson. You're friends with everyone, man. I know that's the, people are upset with me about it now. Kevin Brennan's calling me out because I'm, I'm too friendly you're, or something. Yeah, well, you're, you're you're in too deep, Donnie Brasco. You need so. to get out of this. <laughs> so, basically, what happened was Brian Johnson finally went on Misery Loves Company. It was a long time in the making because, as you guys might recall, I'll give a quick recap. He was scheduled to go on MLC. Bob Levy messaged Kevin before that and said, why are we having this guy on? He just wants to trash Shuley. And then so they didn't get a chance to talk. So Kevin comes on the show and they kind of hash it out there in real time. Like, so you don't want to have this guy on? You're worried about your friend Shuley, whatever. So Brian's watching. This. He goes, well, fuck this. I'll go over to Chad. So, so then Brian goes on Chad Zumach's show. And that was, you know, we've covered that pretty well on the show. That was amazing. It was an amazing move by Brian. Hilarious. And Chad got a big W that day. Uh, unbeknownst to him, he didn't do anything to deserve it. Yeah. But he just got the W that day. It's so easy for Chad to get these W's when everybody else is fighting his battles for him. Right. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't happen often. But <laughs> that's two in order. Yep. That's two now. It was a mailbox W. He just woke up and it was there waiting for him. Yeah. He didn't have to do right. anything. So Brian has, has come on this show and he's gone on other shows. He's talked about he has an issue or a couple issues with Shuli. And uh, for a while there, well, you know, let me bring him in before I, I set this up anymore. The great Brian Johnson, everybody. What's up, Brian? Hey. Here I am, Curl. Can I say You two son things? of a bitch, you motherfucker. <laughs> let me tell you something, <laughs> Brian. Hey, hey, Kumi Parra, you can fuck yourself. Yes, Kumi you Parra. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, Ed Carl. Well, well, sorry. Did you learn some Hebrew for this, Brian? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah <I'm> like... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ed S. Me Parra, Brian. See, this is what everyone was already complaining about. It's going to be a love fest. So... I, I do want to say that the reason why I set this up is because Brian went on MLC Monday. They were playing it on the BS show Tuesday morning, and Shuley goes, I liked Brian on the show. I thought Brian did a great job, and I'd like to talk to the guy. So I went, oh, shit, I should probably set this up. So I reached out to both those guys. They agreed to do this. Thank you guys so much for being on this platform and doing this, uh, your first communication with each other. And so I want to ask, starting with you, Shuley, because you were very dismissive of Brian Johnson. You seem to do Correct. zero research on who he was. You were just Correct. like, you're like, I don't know who the fuck this guy is. Fuck this guy. And I, I'm just yeah. curious. I, I know you have a lot of haters, but I'm just curious yeah. why you wouldn't have done just like the bare minimum to find out who this guy <laughs> is and see who's worth talking to. You know, it's it's a great question, Carl. And Thanks. you bring up a great point. One that I clearly, clearly uh, didn't see. You know, at that, I think at that point. There was get, there's just so much shit fl- flung at me every day from every possible direction. Uh, <laughs> thank <Yep>. you, Bob. <laughs> uh, from every possible direction, and again, e- I got to bring up E Rock because yes, he sends me he sends me this text right, and and Brian, I'm not trying to be a dick or like one up. Here. I was not familiar with you. I was not familiar with the TV show. I'm not a comic book guy. I didn't know anything about you. I, I didn't know the podcast either. And out of the blue, E-Rock texts me and he goes, this guy I do uh, my show with, Brian Johnson, hates you. Uh, he goes, you want to come on? And I'm just like, who the fuck? Like, everybody wants me to come on to, to fucking scream at me. I'm like, who is Brian Johnson? And I'm just like, what's his problem with me? And he goes, well, we can talk about it when we're on the air. And I'm like, 
<laughs> okay, no, I'm good, man. I, I don't know. And I didn't know anything about you. And I just kind of assumed that you were, I don't know, part of a, a uh, there, there are tears to this dabble verse, right? <laughs> so I just assumed Brian was on the lower tiers of the dabble verse. And I'm like, I'm not going to waste my time with this shit. I'm not going to go on there, you know? And that, that was just the way I thought of it, you know? Uh, you were right about <laughs> we so, don't have many viewers. There, there's no, zero I've, in- researched, I've researched since, my friend. You you uh you are past Melendez on that ladder. I'll tell you that of success. Yeah, and wow. so but that's I, how I measure it too. <laughs> <laughs> who's above and who's below, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I will say that E Rock, I love E Rock, and uh he's a great guy, but he did go about that the wrong way. <laughs> like he could have explained yeah. a little bit more about why he wanted you to come on the Would You Kindly with them. And there, there's zero other examples of Shuli not preparing for something, right? There's no other. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Exactly. I mean, what am I going to change now, guys? Right. What's the point? All right. So uh, I just wanted to say two things, Carl. Uh, yes. One was that while I respect the collective opinion of Shuli's Anonymous, it will neither govern my opinion nor. <laughs> I didn't do that. I'm impressed with the Marshall. Uh, Half stack back there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. From uh, Stuttering uh, it's John's actually a fridge. <laughs> From Stuttering oh, John's old house. Yeah, this is Stuttering <laughs> John's old place. Yeah. Uh, that's my background. <laughs> All right. Um, no, so I guess long story short, you know, once I started uh, researching uh, uh, Brian and uh, got over being uh, butt hurt about uh, him not liking me, uh, I, I was like. I kept seeing him pop up on different things and I'm just like, this guy's all right. I got no, hold on. If we can just quiet down, we can hear Kevin screaming Piazza while he's watching this right now. (laughs) But uh, yeah, I I had, and I especially thought he was great on MLC on such a uh, interesting day that he was booked on that. That wasn't an easy appearance uh, and him and Melton were great on there. Oh, it was super easy. I, ju- I just sat there and watched for the first 30 minutes. <laughs> that episode of Misery Loves Company on Monday was so explosive. It started off with Kevin and Bob just screaming at each other. And it was so funny because Kevin would just be going off, spittle going everything and be like, Brian, what do you think? All right. All right, Brian, you go now. Yeah. <laughs> it was the funniest fucking thing because everyone's just like watching like, uh, Hey, so anyway, I was going to say they start screaming at each other again. And the, the best part was not to make it about me, but I will for one second is I'm mostly doing it with my wife in the car. We're driving back home and it's hilarious. Kevin's all upset about that Uncle Rico show we did the night before. And I'm listening and I'm listening, looking over my wife and I go, how am I avoiding any of the shrapnel here? They're not bringing me up at all. Oh. And then immediately after I say that, K- KB goes into about me and just starts sm- trashing me as hard as possible. I'm like, well, I probably shouldn't have uh, manifested that, I yeah. suppose. Yeah, you're a, you're a manifesting machine. <laughs> yeah, you got, I guess so. Uh, John Jesus. and Chad are moving in. Everybody's fucking in your God life. Damn it. It's crazy. It's fucking nuts. So let's talk about Brian You've really never gotten a chance to explain to Shuli what some of your gripes are, and I, I want to give you an opportunity now right. to get that. No, he, he's, I don't think he's ever heard, and I don't even know if, like, on MLC, uh, I sent in a super chat, and I, I mentioned uh, Shuli, and KB uh, messaged me. He said, do you want to come on the show and talk shit about Shuli? I said, yeah, sure, why not? Now, I assumed that they would have Shuli on to you know, like, like we're doing right now. Right. That's what I assumed. Yeah. Uh, but then when I went to look for the link, it wasn't there. And I started to watch the show and quickly found out that I guess Bob had uh, run interference and I wasn't going to be on. Now I sat down to watch. I, I would have never said anything. I would have never done anything because I'm not really like, <laughs> it depends on my, it depends on my level of medication right now. I'm pretty good. So I'm calm, <laughs> but um, I, I would not have like ran to another outlet to, bash Shuli. but then when i sat down and started watching like bob was saying all this shit about me and like and like but by virtue of the fact that he protected you i'm like bob has shit on me in iraq for years now yes mm-hmm. they've both said some very unkind things just like you mr Shuli. you said something very unkind and not true i might add <laughs> okay um well we could talk about that later. yeah we'll get into uh, that that's in my but, notes. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, um, I want to clarify one thing real quick that I in no way ever told Bob, do not go on this show if he's coming on or tell Kevin not to have him on. I well, never you didn't even once, know who I was, right? So that, Right. That I never once sense. got involved. But I know Kevin likes to say that I, I instructed Bob to put up a fight or right. whatever. I, I just think Bob was just, like you said, protecting a friend, you know? 
Yeah, and I, I completely understood it. It was only after he started coming at me that I was like, fuck this fucking Crypt Keeper. And so I, I, uh, that's why I went on <laughs> Chad. And um, when we had a little back and forth. But honestly, like after that, I'm being completely transparent here. So people can call me a Piazza if they want. But I'm like, well, that was empty. Like mm-hmm. I didn't feel better. I, I, I felt like I don't think I'm cut out for this part of it. I think I'm cut out to watch and text Carl and say, have you seen this shit? (laughs) And uh, did you, in fact, did you see stuttering John on MLC? He's, he was, that's my name. Dope Stradamus, according to stuttering John, I'm sure he made that up. Good one. Um, That uh, he was accusing somebody of sending that video of him in bed to, uh, yes, that was very confusing. He was saying Adam sent it. So I sent Adam an email and I said, tell John that I hacked his phone. And that's how I got the video. I saw him in a, uh, in a coffee shop because I have a couple photos of him in a coffee shop that somebody sent. Iraq sent me. Yeah. I, so I sent them in to sort of like further (laughs) prove that I saw him. And I said, tell him, tell him I jacked all his videos and photos. That's hilarious. (laughs) When in reality, I saw it on Reddit, like everyone yeah, else. Yeah. It was posted on Reddit by someone who's in his Patreon, right? right. Yeah, he's the most, like, I, I have bouts of paranoia. Like, my wife will attest to that. But, like, this dude is paranoid 24-7. But at the same time, never fucking sees it coming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How is that possible? Yeah. Just you you're paranoid. You fucking high alert. Yeah. 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 Just because yeah. you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you, though. Correct. I mean, if anyone should be paranoid, it's stuttering John right, Belandis. Right. For sure. And especially like I was like I was saying, you know, like I, I sort of stepped back and I'm like, I'm not gonna continue. Like there were people online that were like, bro, I do a, a Shuli show. And I'm like, that is not me. I'm same, I'm not same that on guy. my end. Same on my end. And, yeah, and do a bra it, show. It, it well, it just pushes you, you know, talk more shit about this guy, sure, sending sure. me shit. And it's like it puts you in a position where, you know, you start doing it and like you said, you're just like, Well, where do I go from here? Like this isn't even this isn't even what I do. This isn't even wh- who you know how I am. Yeah, yeah in KB real life. is like that's KB's brand. So I totally get I agree. why he does that, and he does it very well. Like, yeah. like he's he's great at it. Uh, I, although I did disagree with him the other day on something that w- when you guys set up the troll for uh, for John, yeah, which I was like, this is fucking awesome. And I remember watching Chad in real time, and I and I said to my wife about fifty minutes in, I said, Chad's trolling John. I was like, I don't know what the end is here, but he's trolling him. And then KB said that like it had nothing to do with Chad, and Chad sucks, and Chad's human garbage, and all this other shit. But I'm like, look, just because Shuli and Bob were the architects doesn't mean you discount the guy with the hammer that fucking put the building up. But you know, I agree. like I... John asked me when I was talking to him on the phone, one of the things he asked me, he goes. No, did you know that Chad was trolling me? I go, yeah. It was pretty obvious. I go, I go even, even before Shuli told me we what was going did. on behind yeah. the scenes, it was very obvious that you were getting trolled, John. You really should have definitely recognized that. Yeah, well, but like I, I never would have guessed that it was Shuli and Bob no. behind it because less than 24 hours earlier, Chad's talking about Gina and Chad's talk, putting Shuli's wife up online and all, mm-hmm. and, and, and all this other right. stuff. Uh, so it's just like I have a I'm having a very difficult time figuring out alliances <laughs> and and all that shit because I'm like, wait a second. So Carl likes hates Chad. Chad's a piece of shit. But wait, now he's on Chad's show. And then KB's on Chad's show, even though he's yelling at Bob yeah. for being on a show with Chad. I'm like, I can't figure this shit out. <laughs> no, there's <laughs> ever been more professional wrestling than this whole well, dabble version. This is the thing, though. And, and people like to say that, oh, it's phony because apparently Chad and Shuli and Bob made up behind the scenes. And then Chad and Bob had that fight on MLC that I guess was staged or whatever people want to say about it. Oh. But as I've said all along, none of us want to fight each other. That's never been the goal here. This is a roast. They were, we're joking. These are yeah. jokes. It's people, comedy. People with a sense of humor know how to navigate this. That's why right. Stuttering John can't. Right. And, and the people who get upset about it are the same people who see, you know, the NWO is having dinner with a baby face after the show. They're like, what? <laughs> yeah. Wow. How is this possible? Not only that, Carl, but they're the same people in all the other shows, chat rooms, donating right. money and telling those people they're great and fuck the other person. And it's like, but we're the phonies. It's, you, st- you it's guys, so real to me, yeah. damn it. <laughs> yeah. Bob's fly baby is real, but I'm the phony. Okay, <laughs> right. fine. All right, but what is real is that Brian definitely hates Shuli, so let's get into that. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> All right, what's your issue with Shuli, Brian? Uh, I had a couple. You know what? I, I, I'll say this, too. Shuli, I owe you an apology because I was convinced that it was you that drove John off the Internet, mm. and I resented you for it because I wanted him to be this evergreen lolcow cow that we could always turn to. Uh, and then John, he is a liar. 
but he said that you had nothing to do with him leaving the internet. So who am I to argue that? So yeah. I, for that, I, again, I was wrong and, and I held that against you. Uh, but uh, some of this stuff is, it's just, again, like I'm just a listener. I'm I, yeah. like, I do a podcast here, but like, I'm just a listener. My, my opinion, it has no more weight. Then time, fucking time fly, off, baby. Time uh-huh. off, Ryan. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're not just a listener. You do have a podcast. You've been in show business. Yeah. You come on our show quite often. <laughs> I, I consider you one of the co-hosts, rotating co-hosts on who are these podcasts. But go ahead, as you were saying. All right. So I'm a pretty big wheel down at the Cracker Factory. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Uh, so this is just, this is one man's opinion, and and again, I, I'm going to temper it by saying that like along the way when we're doing our podcast. I didn't know certain things about myself. I won't go to our Reddit thread. No fucking way. People are too mean to me. They're really right. mean to me. Uh, like everybody Smart. hates us, you know? Um, so here, here are my main issues where, where I think you might be able to learn. Um, yeah. Okay. Issue number one in your promo stuff. Yes. Stop acting like a badass. We're all fucking in our fifties or late forties. Like you're, you're just out of prison poses they're so grating, dude. Yo, dog, I liked you up until now. Uh, I'm keeping real. I'm gonna keep it. I'm real telling you, these right are now, little dog. things. These I'm are little a, things. Right. But I'm like, what's with this fucking? It's guy? all I like, got, Brian. It's all I got. No, you I don't, don't got it. You're not a badass. I, I mean, in my mind, I know that. I know that. I can't fix anything around the house. I pay people to mow lawns. I know I'm not a man. Let me pretend, Brian. Please. But look. Look. Look, I'm on the exact same page as you. The other day, my big job for the day that my yeah. wife gave me was go around to all the patio furniture and tear the tags off the cushions. <laughs> that was it. That was my manly job for the day. Oh, man. That's so a I feel you. I that's totally a feel you. Chore. That's a Ray DeVito chore. <laughs> oh, Carl, what the fuck, man? I know you're a young guy, so when you reach my age, you're going to be like, wow, there's a lot of time I shouldn't have wasted. An hour and a half with Ray DeVito is going to be oh. one of those things you look back on. <laughs> Right, did you see me with Ray I was DeVito like, yesterday? Holy shit! <laughs> did you, did you, how frustrating was that? I'm I go on there and I'm explaining to how to run a good show. I was giving him direction I've never given anyone. I was showing him my notes, my process. He wasn't listening to anything I had to say. At the end of all of it, he goes, "So I should write down three bullet points before the show starts." I'm like, fine. Can yes. I start with one bullet point? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, fine. All right. And then in the middle, it's like, Carl, what's better, Wrigley Field or Shea Stadium? Do you oh, think? God. <laughs> I, I I think Drunk on Cringe put together like an 18 minute compilation yes. and it's fucking I got through three minutes of it. I was laughing so goddamn hard. It's phenomenal. I haven't watched I, it I mean, yet, but I, I hopefully grabbed the good parts where I'm screaming at Ray to stop. Get on fucking focus on the conversation, Ray. <laughs> Anyway, see, look at us. Now we're getting off the conversation. Here. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You were saying, Brian, I saw. Okay, I'm so, so I, w- I would, and I'm not alone. I'm not alone in this. I would shed the badass image. And I th- and then you're not, I don't think it's just you. I think everybody needs to shed the badass image with the fucking 50, 60-year-old guys being like, we're going to fight. It's like yeah. nobody's going to fucking fight. John is living in the fucking 90s. He sounds fundamentally retarded. And like we're, <laughs> we're all like, the last, like he got a payday on the cabbie fight. So he's like, well, how can I make that same payday again? I know I'll fight these three guys. And I honestly, I really wanted you guys to do it because there's no possible way that that fat piece of shit. That's right, John. I'm talking to you. You called me fucking dope Stradamus earlier today. I heard you. I was, it stung. I won't lie. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> Still reeling from that one, I could tell. And it's yeah. funny because I remember like two months ago, I was running to a gate to catch a flight. And, and like I hadn't ran like that in years. Like, and I'm so out of shape. And I was so, I felt like I was going to fucking drop dead at the gate. And, and he's talking about, I'll fight. He kept adding people to the fight card. I'll fight. <laughs> I'll fight uh, the Rico. I'll fight uh, WATP. I'll fight uh, Kevin, Adam, no, everybody. You're so right, though, Brian. Because, and I pointed this out too. John, I read his book. John made so much money on that cabbie fight because he got a sponsorship deal. He had action on the fight. He won bets. So he's looking at this as this big payday, and he's got all these different angles. He's going to make money on it. When I went on the show today, I said, John, let's just do a roast. We can sell out a theater. Let's just do this roast of Sutter and John, or it could be the roast of Sutter and John and Shuley. There's going to be people there who yeah. are on John's side on that one. I don't know why yeah. he won't we're, do we're, that. So I don't know. It, yeah, it's just like we're all middle age. 
straight white guys people fucking don't like us already right we don't need to add cringe into it to, like <laughs> my wife you know my wife watches everything with me and she sits there she's like oh my god this is this is crazy like these are grown men and i'm like i know yeah i know yeah. i don't i don't know what to make of it the, the fight and stuff you're anti yeah, white ridiculous. on white crime well, Brian, yeah. you you say that we're straight men, but let's not forget she was also Jewish. So thank you. No, that's true, and you have wood paneling. So I, you know, again, oh, yeah. I don't know what I'm dealing with here. I have a, I have a yeah. bit of feminine the way I drink yeah. my beer. Yeah. So yeah, that's a good point too. Yeah. I forgot. That's that's the kind of shit that drives me fucking crazy about John, and that oh, he's him, not he's like it. he won't answer it in the in the fucking beginning, or or like he won't just answer these charges, you know. Right. It, it, well, it, even it, today, even today with Bob, like Bob was asking. Like he either Bob or him asked a legitimate question. Oh, it was KB. who said, look Bob in the eye and say, he's not a funny stand up comic. He said, tell me Bob's not a funny because you say what you will about KB. The guy knows his fucking stand up. He's great at stand up. And Bob is a fucking beast on stage. He's a beast. There's a reason why Kevin goes on before him. Okay. Because Bob destroys and, there's no way in hell that John is being honest when he can sit there and go, Bob sucks as a comic. And, in, and immediately, instead of explaining why he feels that way, which was the follow-up question, he just starts yelling and starts singing and screaming. And it's like, people want me to have a debate. with How are you supposed to have a debate with somebody <laughs> like that? You know, it's just going to be him screaming like an idiot. Yeah. Um. When you guys had your back and forth and, you yeah. know, of course, I run right to Dabbler's Anonymous and Shuli's Anonymous to see what people thinking and how it's weighing. And I didn't, you know, on Shuli's Anonymous, John destroyed or, right. you, you know, <laughs> right, on Dabbler's right. Anonymous, Shuli destroyed. But my feeling was, and, and again, you, you can confirm or disconfirm this. I'm like, it looks to me like Shuli's toying with him. Like you, because oh, you yeah. didn't like you didn't go in there hardcore, and there was a moment where, again, I'm sorry, fucking Shuli's anonymous, but I'm going to be honest about all this shit. Where you did make me laugh, where like he's naming all those fucking comedy clubs, and he's like, "Did you do this one? Did you do that one?" And you're like, "Nah, but keep going. We'll hit one." Yeah, like that that kind of shit. Like it's, I find it amusing and dismissive of of John, which you should be because. I just know the, the he, guy has a serious personality disorder. Like, there's no doubt about it. Like, like to be that angry and that like, and that passionate about something that is that is subjective. Should we send him a link? Let's send him the link. <laughs> Let's get him out of here. Shuli, Let's get him out. Oh my god, that would be a dream. That, I just want to say, uh, uh, producer Chris here, Shuli. <laughs> I just want to say the thing I loved about that interaction was how enraged you calling him pal and buddy made him. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. That was funny. It's, it's the second he shows, you know, the in you, you're oh, in, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and and he and you know, coming from you first of all, producer Chris, who has the the uh, batting average, uh, uh, the greatest snipe batting average of all time on podcast. Uh, you're a genius. But yeah, he, it was my listen. What am I going to do? Yell at the guy? I don't really even hate the guy. Right. I don't mm -hmm. know why. You know, he was saying today that we started it, not him. That mm -hmm. was a big thing on the show today. I didn't start this, guys. He they started it with the Uncle Rico show. Carl. You know how long he's been doing his podcast. Yep. How long I was working for Stern when this guy would shit on me on a regular basis and we had no interaction whatsoever. And Uncle Rico came long after that. Long well, that, after that. Shuli, what's crazy about this is that that was the whole basis of this conversation we were having about threatening violence because right. John's going there and he's calling the police and the FBI because of this tweet that Chad put out. And then Shuli sends me a screen grab of John going on Chad's show the day before that and threatening Chad. And, and, then, yeah. and then John's like, oh, I don't know if that was me. I'm not sure. <laughs> like, I mean, it looks like you. And maybe it was. He's like, I, I don't know. Carl gave you every opportunity to shit on John. And you took the high road multiple times. Yes. Before John. That is true. He just. But pushed who cares? You, he pushed you and pushed you. This whole thing, like you started they, the fucking show. They started it. No, they just did it better. That's right. the thing. That's what it all wow. comes down to. Because if if John was trashing Shuli every week, and he it, it wouldn't matter who started it, because he'd be winning. Right, right, right. And 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 as far as going on Chad's show with him, like I know, you know, say what you will about who chased him off. I know I'm one of the reasons he's back. Uh, you know, and that goes without saying. I'm in his head, uh, and he. I know the second I show up, he's going to lose his shit. 
And so I'm not going to join him in that. I'm just going to be relaxed and and see what openings he gives. And and it was a blast because I am a fan of John like all of us are. Yes. I want John at maximum level. So I will do whatever it takes to get Max John. I agree. <laughs> do you think he's there or can he go bigger? He's he's close to there because I have to say, Brian, I was with you when when John left the Internet, when he took his ball and went home. That was a bummer. And we had to tr- transition out of that and and figure out because that was a big part of our show, a big segment every single week. And so, you know, we got by and it's fine and things are going great. But John coming back, I'm actually glad he left for eight months because he has brought <laughs> more energy he has brought more excitement into the dabble verse than if he was been here doing this the whole time. We, we'd be bored of it. Yeah. But the fact that he went away and then came back the way that he's come back has been incredible. I, I couldn't have predicted this in a million years. I'm so excited the way this all came back. So anyone who was mad at Shuli for running John off the internet, if that is true, you got to say that it all worked out well at the end. What ends well... You know, or whatever the saying is there. <laughs> you know what I mean. No, you sound like John. <laughs> yeah, you know totally like John. John. All right, so you're becoming him. I am. I talked to him twice in the last two days. All right, so this is what Protest I have to um, buy talk too much. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. So, Brian, I, I know that um, Shuli, when he was going after you, and maybe it was like a drinking show or something, he uh, he brought up some type of allegation, and I I, I do want to address that. Something that yeah. uh, Kevin Smith had said, or what, what was that? Right, yeah, a clip of Kevin Smith on a podcast, which uh, also flies in the face, surely, of never personal. I, I think we may have... Here. Gotten to the one part where, because I'm like, hey, Shuli stinks. I don't like Shuli. And you're like, you're a child rapist. Yeah. No, <laughs> not listen. the case. Not you, the fucking case. Because if you listen to that clip, it's like he immediately says in the beginning that nothing happened. And so. you're 100% right about crossing that line and making something personal because, again, you know, there's shit people send me about John on the, you know, daily, like personal shit that, you know, and I and I would never do that. And he's said 10 times worse things about me, uh, my family than you have ever said. And it was one I'm not blaming it, but it was 100 percent a drinking show. And, you know, I'm an herbalist. I don't do well on uh, on on uh, liquor. And it was it, it was I even talked to producer Joe after it. And I was like, I, I think we should take this out. And uh, and I just felt like an asshole for doing it, um, regardless of because I know it's just that clip it, it for sure there's a good chance that it's taken out of context or whatever, you know? Um, and, and I did do it. No, I did. I'm, I'm owning up to it, yeah, but know. you know, well, I, just... I didn't know if they were talking to me or you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, good point. That's true. That could have been for you. Sorry. Hypocrite I don't apologize. No. <laughs> no, but you're hundred percent right. It, that's not how I do things. That's not who I am. And, uh, and I owe you an apology and I'm sorry for that. Yeah, that's a, I accept it. Yeah, All I right. mean it's out there. I, 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 again, I don't I don't know what he was thinking or why like why he would say something that could be construed as such. But well, the punishment didn't fit the crime anyways. Like it was just it was like jumping fucking ten levels. Like uh, yeah. I and that, that's I, one of those moments where I, I think I texted Carl and I was like, he's just like fucking John. He went nuke immediately. I went John on you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're right. And and truth be told. You know, there isn't a ton of shit out there on you, you know, believe it or not. Uh, oh, my least... God. I, I talk a ton. Of, I mean, I've been talking for 13 years. You should have been like you're a drug addict or you were a drug addict. You know, Literally, your kid has Down is syndrome. Ew. You know, that, <laughs> <laughs> that was the next drinking show. We had a whole, <laughs> we had a whole right. character planned. Uh... <laughs> I don't know if uh, KB and company are still sniping this or not, but. I want to play you guys just a couple of clips because when John did his first hypocrisy police podcast, he then went on MLC after that. (laughs) And it was just, it was Kevin solo because I think Bob Levy had a gig that night. So it's, it's Kevin solo. And then he brings on John and the way this is glorious. The way that John comes on the show, he couldn't have (laughs) fucked this up more. It's so embarrassing (laughs) and only stuttering John could, could do this. In the manner that he did this in. You know, turn your radio down, caller, I believe is uh, what they used to say back in the day. If my internet will ever... In radio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to give you credit, though, uh, Carl. Do you send, do you send him the link out? Yeah, go ahead. 
I always I pause for say, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Someone says I got to give you a credit card. I'm like, yeah, no, I'll, I'll you wait. were saying. Right. I'll, give, I'll give you some buffering time, but yeah. I want to give you credit uh, for today because I gave you a shot to to troll John, but you didn't take it. I sent you a text and I yeah. said, take your glasses off and look up for about 20 seconds just to see if he would do it. And then I was just going to bombard him with shit. She only treated me uh, like I was Chad Zuma. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I was like, I'm, not, I'm not Chad you Zuma. You fucking ass puppet over here. Any, yeah. Any future guests, please send me your numbers uh, before going on John's show. Thank you. I know. When you started sending me those messages, I'm just like, that's, that's not what this is right now. Because my biggest regret when I went on John's show is I stress out before who are these podcasts. I have a lot of work to do before that. And it's hard to get off the phone with Stuttering John. It's hard to yeah. get off. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go on, John, but I, I don't have a lot of time. So if I start doing these fucking shenanigans and antics, be there all fucking day with that. I sent you a fake Venmo to show him, too. <laughs> oh, that was so great. Yeah. Adam. Yeah. I checked my email. He already emailed me. Oh, here like, we go. He, he was very proactive. Here we go. Oh, no, because I thought he gave you the wrong email. No, no, no. All right. <laughs> This is fantastic right here. Oh, no, because I thought he gave you the wrong email. No, no, no. You got to you turn your... Hey. Oh, there you go. Oh, no, because I thought he gave you the wrong email. No, no, no. You got to turn your phone John, off. I think you're listening to the show. Hey. Oh, because I thought he gave you the wrong email. No, no, no. You got to turn your phone John, off. John, I think you're listening to the show. Oh, that's Jesus it. Christ. Uh, I thought I gave you the wrong email. No, no, no. You got to turn your phone John, on. If you're listening to the show. <laughs> I'm freaking out, man. I'm tripping my nuts off over John. here. <laughs> yeah. your, your, your speaker is playing the show. In oh, the hold on I'm a second. Out. Sorry. Oh. John. Yes, I got it. <laughs> That's the recording. That was that was the loop. You got All it? All right. There How are you? <laughs> Good recovery. Unbelievable. Amazing. This is what's been missing. Yes. The the rage and the and the fire is all there, but the technical difficulties were always the best. Yeah. Yes. So now that's back. I know. Oh. So fantastic. The number one earliest rule you learn in radio. And he's yep. like, huh? What? <laughs> huh? Also, I don't know about you, Shuli, but I've done that before where I had a tab open. And sure. because because I had the link and I was promoting the link and I still have the link open and then all of a sudden I start the show and I'm I'm hearing it back I panic like a mother I'm like ah, yeah. ah I start closing yeah. everything I can just sitting there just like <laughs> <laughs> what's going on yeah. this is everybody's fault except mine <laughs> yeah. sounds pretty good and we'll figure it out <laughs> it's like no Chad we keep telling you it's it's out of your end so this is funny because now they're talking about me and John starts by saying hey Kevin did you hear my take about Carl. He's like, I'll proud of himself. Because <laughs> John looks up to Kevin, as we all know. So he wants to get Kevin's approval here. Hey, Kev, though, did you hear my take on Carl? <laughs> yeah, I agreed with you. I, I said, okay. I said, I said, Carl was dumb. I, I, I even what Chad <laughs> said was stupid because uh, uh, Chad said that you should, uh, you know, Carl said he was, he was going on Uncle Rico that day to promote, um, to pr- you know, he was doing it to promote you and whatever. But I said what he should have done if he was going to go on, sh- if he, when he went on the show that day, he was say, well, I can't really, I don't want to shit on John because we might do a show together. And that would have been a great way to promote the show you're going to do it to- do together. But I, what I really said is he'll never stand up to Kumia. And if, he's, if he said to Kumia that he's going to do a show with you, Kumia would be like, are you out of your fucking mind? And that's why, that's why in my opinion, he was never going to do a show with you. Once I heard there was once I saw he was getting cold feet, I knew it's something with Kumia. Kumia doesn't even know. But I, well, once uh, if if Carl said I'm doing a show with John, Kumia would be like, "Are you out of your fucking mind?" And Carl can't it wouldn't be able to handle that. No, okay. I did not get cold feet. It was not me <laughs> who breached this agreement that John and I had to do a show together on my channel. So I don't know what John told KB. He's obviously misinformed on this, but that's nonsense. Let me play the rest of this clip and then I'll explain why. Kevin is retarded on this. Tr- this is the worst take. I like KB, but this is dumb. Kevin, I I already uh, I went over that with Carl on the phone. He was like, "I don't care, don't worry about it." I said, "I go, yeah, but all these guys are gonna hate on you for doing a show with me." He goes, "I don't care, don't worry about it." You know, I don't. He's I don't- worried about Kumia. He worships Kumia, and and if Ko- if Kumia didn't approve, he would he would fucking he would panic. All right, that is so dumb, and Kevin knows that because Kevin's worked with Anthony more so than I have. So he knows better than I do 
that Ant doesn't give a fuck about what anyone does. Anthony is the last guy to give a shit about what anyone is up to at any time. He's doing his own thing. He's happy. He's fine with it. I can't even imagine a scenario where Anthony would be like, you know, Carl, I can't have you on the Anthony Cumia show anymore. You know, you did that thing with Stuttering John. I told you not to. I, I told you not to. What the fuck? Yeah, you know, nice nice try, Cumia cuck. Why don't you get Anthony's dick out of your mouth, bro? <laughs> <laughs> that was such a weird thing. That, that was like a Stuttering John level take that KB had. It's like, well, Carl just needs Anthony's approval. No, I don't. I don't talk to Anthony very often at all. We have our own thing going on over here. I'm not on Compound Media. I've never had been. What the fuck are you talking about? I need Erock's approval for everything. Well, that's different. <laughs> that is different. Yeah. Is that just for lunch or dinner too? <laughs> yeah. All right, enough. No more Brunch. fat jokes, guys. Come so on. I thought that was really stupid. Here's um, more of John on on me and the Z Man. I don't care. I don't look, Carl. You know, I think he's a nice guy, but he fucking you know he had to like he decided the same day, and I called you the same day. That he and I had this great conversation. What does he do? Goes on the show and starts trashing me. Fuck him. Yeah, that's that's Fuck odd behavior. No, that makes no sense <laughs> to me. It makes no sense. It's like, Fucking first of all, Carl. he could have just told him, "I can't do the show today. I, I got I got plans or something." And that's the problem. Just don't be disingenuous. Just like you just did a show with Chad who said he was getting all these Venmos. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of disingenuousness, I mean, nice. he's the fucking king of that. Hey, Chad's lawyers. He said, and that's where it started. The whole thing started. Chad said he was going to sue me for defamation. So whenever I said something about Chad, I go, hi, Chad. Hi, Chad's lawyers. It all started with that. He literally said, he sent me an email, said, I mean, he's going to sue me for defamation. I was like, all right, I can't wait for that. I can't wait for that to go to trial. Fucking hack. So Kevin has this thought. That because I continue to goof on John, I ruin an opportunity to do a show with John. What he's not understanding, and I've said this on John's show today, no one's tuning in for the John and Carl are friends show. Right. The fuck's right. the point of that? What am I just gonna spitball with John? We'll riff for a, a minute or two. <laughs> the, what the, what the, I told Carl, John, Carl, I, Carl, I know you're friends with him, but don't don't you think I'm funnier than Shuli? because <laughs> that's the whole point yeah, of yeah. us doing a show and john agreed to doing it again today we'll see what happens but i'm hoping that john and i can have round two pick up from where we left off on misery loves company because i have a lot of things to talk to him about i haven't even addressed the fact that he tried to ruin my life he reached out to patreon and tried to get my patreon taken down which is my main source of income which is an act of violence i have not even brought that up to john yet i can't wait to so I'm not going to go on there and be like, hey, we're buddies and we're fucking hanging out. It's, it's K and SJ. What's up? I think what, what like what Brennan just did uh, with the Kumia thing, it's like it lends to this air of muddiness with everything because you're never sure, especially with like, and I enjoy Chad. I actually like Chad quite a bit. I find him entertaining. You've said that a number of times. Uh, I'm starting to believe you. I, I, I do, I'm not kidding around. I, I, I like young Chadwick. <laughs> Uh, but oh fuck, I lost my place again. I'm also an herbalist, Julie, so my memory isn't what it used to be. Well, no, you, you were talking about how muddy it is and how. Oh yeah, yeah. He was talking how about me and Anthony. <laughs> yeah, so so it makes it that much more difficult because people are just saying whatever they want, and I guess everyone just accepts it as fact, you know? Right. And I thought, like, in, until Chad and John, you know, were at odds, I was like, I would love to see a Chad and John show. Yes. Because you're talking about two pathological liars saying anything they want about anybody they want going unchecked and uncontested. Like, that's a show I want to see just so they can say whatever the fuck they feel like. And eventually they get shut down. Be great. Right? Like, well, uh, we never landed on the moon. And then Chad's like, we're on the moon right now. What do you think of that? And shit, they're just bullshitting each other, one upping the whole time. That, that, that was, uh, uh, you brought it up. Uh, that was one of the things with Ray DeVito. He's like, you think we landed on the moon? I'm like, holy shit, man. This Dude. guy has like a fucking, he has bullet points of all the boring shit that's been talked about a million times already. <laughs> well, the reason why he brought that up is he had Alex Stein on his show, and Alex Stein blew his mind by saying he didn't think that we landed on the moon. And Ray DeVito, so naive, he's just like, that's not what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> At one point, he was just screaming, that's what I was told. <laughs> yeah. he, was, he lost it. He so broke stupid. him. It was great. Well, and then I broke Ray because we were talking about <laughs> how Chad used to call Chrissy and Frank the Clintons of comedy. And Ray's like, what's wrong with that? The Clintons, they were, you know, I was a president. He was great. I'm like, no, the Clintons are fucking terrible people. And I explained it to him. And he's like, oh, I mean, he, he was a president, though. How can you say that, Carl? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty common. Anyway, 
Here's a um, one more clip that I have from this show. And this is great because Kevin's talking about how he would like to watch the show that John and I do together. And he compares it to a show called The Odd Couple. Might be familiar with it. This gets John way sidetracked. Because he takes it way too literally. Oh, no. Yeah, he gets very confused about this analogy. That Starts Kevin singing the song. Yeah, God. So stupid. I mean, like you said, it, it was very fucking, it was dumb for him to do it because you guys could have done one show a week and and make make a lot of money in Super Chats. It's the fucking classic odd couple. You're Oscar. He's fucking Felix. Uh, you both got dumped by your wives, and and now you're doing a show once a week, and it would have fucking. I would have watched. I don't watch anything, but I would have watched that show. What me and Carl or me and Chad? No, you and Carl, the Odd Couple. Carl got dumped by his wife. No, I'm joking, <laughs> but it does have that was the Odd Couple. <laughs> oh, you still doesn't get much. I didn't, but I didn't even get dumped. <laughs> I just. <laughs> no, I know. I'm kidding, no. but that's the premise no, but of the odd couple. They both, <laughs> they, both had, you know, they both got dumped by the wife because they're both fucking uh, difficult. Carl's Carl's Felix. He probably has a very uh, tidy apartment. You know what you say he's about a piazza. him. Piazza. And, uh, and plus, you had that running <laughs> gag where you say he's effeminate because the way he drinks. And then. And yeah. so he's just, Can you imagine if Columbo guest starred one day? Yeah. It's not the odd couple. My name's not Felix. My name's John. I keep telling you that, uh, uh, KB. Is the, apo- is the apartment we live in pet friendly? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was actually my original point earlier, what was his inability to, to just argue a point and make sense of it like he'll right. just say shit yeah like like his daughter you know it's like the food insecurity thing the homelessness it's like yeah. he tries in the moment to rewrite what we're all seeing he wants to revise history in the moment and it's like dude no no your daughter said that she suffered from food insecurity and like we were talking you know uh carl you're like no it's a food desert like it's a yeah. like so so just because John's dumb and doesn't understand what food insecurity is, doesn't mean that she should be saying it. And right. the fucking whoever wrote the article shouldn't be saying it. Well, unless she said she suffered from food insecurity, which she probably did. She says she faced homelessness. And I go, anyone who has parents yeah. who love them shouldn't be facing homelessness. She's like, yeah, but she didn't want to commute that far. Like that's that's how homelessness works, John. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> But she wanted to live with a fr- near friends, and there weren't a lot of apartments available. Okay, I mean, but that 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 that's that's his mo. Is he's like you know uh, he keeps throwing out the same stats over and over again. He keeps bringing up the same stories over yeah. and over again. You know, take it from a guy who does no research. This guy's doing no research. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> when he was talking about and he said that he's been searched seven million times. He goes, I got to give Carl credit. <laughs> he decided to goof on my podcast because he knows how popular I am. Yeah. I've been Googled 7 million times. Anthony Cumia, five times. Even KB's like, what? <laughs> how is that even fucking possible? <laughs> even people who hate Anthony Cumia, there'd be more than five searches on his name. And John's like, nope, I got the screenshots. I can prove it. So he sent those to me. And whatever company, whatever website it yeah. was, doesn't even exist anymore. I'm like, yeah, I don't think this is real, John. I'm not just... <laughs> Throw it out there. Yeah, if, if you're being if you're being searched seven million times, you're not hitting up Chad Zumach for twelve hundred dollars. All right, <laughs> or Opie for twenty, or Opie for twenty for a twelve pack. <laughs> you yeah. need twenty bucks from Opie before he would do his show. True story. Or a vig or a vig from Chad. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my vig? Oh my god, that was my favorite part of the whole thing. Is you got to see the real John. Yeah, that no. was because. Oh, I was going to say this. You know, it's funny on MLC earlier today. Kevin brought up that John wanted him to come on his sh- on his show today. Yeah. And Kevin said, are you going to are you going to pay me for coming on? Because Kevin paid him three thousand dollars. And John yes. replied, LOL. Well, guess <laughs> what? Yeah. Guess what? When when he was asking Chad to be his first guest on uh, on on his hypocrisy police. Yep. Chad wrote to him. Can I get a little bit of cash for this? And he wrote back. LOL. So this is his pattern where he's like, people are in his super chat going, come on my show. And he's like, I'm not doing nothing for free. But the second somebody asks him for money, LOL. Well, the real guy at the end of that video is like, send me $300. Give me 30%. Go big. You know, that's the guy. That's the guy. Didn't want to pay him, but has no problem sticking his hand in there and taking money out of it. John did very well today. I wasn't able to watch the whole time, obviously. I was busy, but I was peeking every now and again. And he was doing super chats for three hours straight. He must have he must have had his best day ever doing a live stream. 
I would say. Because you were on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you on it definitely helped. And then uh, Joey C coming on Joey helped C. because, well, because uh, I forget who, but they paid lots of money to get rid of him. So that okay. helped. So, uh, yeah. so can Brian, I address the Joey C thing real fast? Before you do that, I just want to say this. Yeah. Because John is going back <laughs> to teaching. He is still at is. the L.A. Unified School District. And I, I know that saying this probably has no meaning or weight, but... We're not fucking with people in real life. John's going to go back to teaching. He loves his job. The, it, the kids love him. Let's not fuck with anything that John's up to in real life. Observe and report. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Brian. No, that's okay. Uh, Joey C., like, this guy just sort of came out of nowhere. And, uh, you know, I heard him on uh, KB show. And I think what he needs to do is shut the fuck up. <laughs> He's loud, obnoxious, and boorish, and nobody's fucking interested in the fucking seventies mob tough guy thing anymore. However, he was Tony the Ant Spilatro's godfather or godson, huh? and he does have mob connections. Rein it in and talk about that shit because that's fascinating. Him trying to be a tough guy and sit like he's called, he doesn't like you, surely. He has tons of stuff to say about you, but can never like, and that's what I didn't want to turn into is one of these guys that, like, the other day somebody called into Melton and said that, uh, said that, um, okay, I'm just sorry, I'm reading this, uh, sorry, this, I don't mean to distract you. Ethnicity, <laughs> ethnicity, yeah, I, I have that, White. Of <laughs> um, yeah, like somebody called into Melton the other day and he's like, surely's a snake, and then Melton's like, well. Give me an example of why Shuli's a snake. And then the guy's like, well, I don't have anything off the top of my head. And it's like, and that's like, I don't, I'm not a guy who's just going to go and regurgitate Reddit shit, you right. know, because that, well, you know, I can you tell see you, that. I, I can tell you, Joey C. Now he claims he was reaching out to me back when I was working on the Stern show. I don't ever remember him making contact with me. Uh, I definitely didn't reach out to him if I was on the news department then, or if I was doing the whack pack stuff, I don't recall ever interacting with him. But when I started doing, the shows on YouTube, he started uh, particularly miserable men. He he sent me a DM, uh, a message on Patreon, and a big long message. And basically, it's his story. You know, him and his wife were arrested, charged with a federal crime. He lost his daughter. Blah blah blah. And and this horrific, horrible story that I felt terrible about for him. And at the end of it, he's like, "Going on your show will help so much." <laughs> and it's like, how in this time where, you you know, you've lost the child and all this coming on this show is the answer for you. And it, and I kind of was like, wh what are we supposed to do? He's going to tell us this story and we're not going to make jokes and we can't make jokes. And it's like, this isn't really the show to come on and tell your story. And then we kept uh, kind of in contact for a little while. He got a little upset. Then he was back on the radar and he tried to get on again and we brought him on and. The one time we brought him on, he was in a Batman mask and he was screaming like a <laughs> mental patient. He couldn't hear anything. Yeah. Then another time we had him on, he's in his car with his entire family in the car with him <laughs> while we while we bring him in on uh, as a guest on the show. And it's like now we got to bust this guy's balls in front of his entire family. <laughs> and so, so we're like, all right, next time, Joey. And and he's just one. of. And so he he went and got my phone number online, started texting me one night out of the blue, uh, knows my house, knows the square footage. You know, yeah. he's. He's an out there fucking dude, man. And I've done nothing but just kind of not figure out a way to use him uh, on on whatever we were doing. And, and that apparently uh, upset him a lot. So he other went than on, that, yeah, he went I've on done John's nothing. show today and he's trying to do that thing where he's using John's old background of the living room thing. But he doesn't yes. actually have a green screen. And so most of him is also <laughs> getting wiped out and he looks like shit. And even even sorry, John goes. Uh, what are you doing, man? You look terrible. He's like, no, I'm doing a thing. It looks great. Like, no, you, it doesn't look professional. No, but I'm not going to make fun of Joey C. I don't need that in my life. He's great. Joe, he, John goes, you look like uh, you look like a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> now that John's got a tan, he's all fucking braggadocious over here. Yeah. Look at my complexion. Yeah, I, think if, I, I think if Joey C. just did a straight up, like, here's my life podcast, like it's in jail, and any mob stuff, even like. I guess people would like the baseball locker room shit, you know, like it seems like he has a lot to say and sure. has led sort of like a colorful life, but the whole, like, I want to be on every show and I want to be friends with every host. And, and I'm a, I'm a loud, obnoxious guy from, you know, Brooklyn or whatever the fuck, wherever the fuck he's from. It's like, it's so played out that, that whole stereotype. It's like decades old. Joey Diaz yeah, already right. got it. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. 
Joey, the, the, the Joey Diaz. Yeah, Joey Diaz. Oh, has yeah. done it for a long time. Yeah, but the crime podcast thing or just, you know, crime stories or just his story, I think that's a home run idea. Uh, yeah. He should definitely try that. All right, I'm going to play a clip. Everyone's seen this clip. It's only, it's less than two days old. But everyone's already seen it. But I have to play it because it's one of the funniest things you'll ever see. This is John on his second ever episode of Hypocrisy Police with Richard Ojeda. And yet, they'll, they go on his show even after he uses, he uses the J word in, in a derogatory fashion. And yet, they still go on the show. Ami Major. Now, let me ask you, what's your ethnicity? What's my what? <laughs> ethnicity. Are, are, are you Irish? I don't know. Hispanic. The guy's last name is Ojeda, and he goes, are you Irish? <laughs> that's, that's the part everyone overlooks, because he says epithicity, and then it gets it even worse the second time. I'm like, get this to see. Duh. <laughs> I love J-word. that he's policing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's policing everything, and now he's policing my Judaism. He's going, yeah. how can you, as someone born in Israel, go on a racist show that you were on nine times, according <laughs> to your numbers, I John? Know. Julie, I didn't know back then. I didn't know. Uh, it was a different time. Yeah. Uh-uh. He, he yeah. even said, he goes, I didn't know what a pedophile Anthony Cumia was back when I went on his show. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, how much of a pedophile is he? <laughs> you are, I, I think, you aren't, right? It's like a goat I, I fucker. We, I didn't know he was that big of a goat fucker. <laughs> <laughs> we could but, but, all agree. If Anthony offered him a contract yes. with a, a nice payment, he's there. Oh, he, he, th- he thought he had one. He was bragging to everyone, including Artie Lang, who actually got that gig. And I misspoke. Artie's deal was four fifty a year was what Artie made to be the co-host of the Artie and Anthony show with the stipulation... That he show mm. up. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if That's he made tricky. that money. I don't know. I'm sure if he made that money. That's tricky. You got to read the That's, fine print in those that contracts. That is tricky. That is tricky. John wants to appear so woke all the time. Like he's yeah. like the J word, which is the yeah. first time I've ever heard What's somebody say J-word? that. What's the J word? Jew? I don't know. <laughs> can I, I, say, know. Can I yeah. say that on YouTube? Uh, Shuli is a Jew. It's, can I say that? Is that all right? No. Change it to Shuli's. That's what most anti-Semites <laughs> say. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> But but yeah, like he'll he'll on one hand he'll be like the J word, on the other hand he's like you're effeminate. And another example of yeah. him being like, why are you calling Carl? Oh, I'm not saying he's gay. It's like, dude, you know what you're saying. You know what guys our age like when they say you're effeminate. You know what they're fucking saying. <laughs> yes. Stop playing. Maybe he's not playing dumb. Stop fucking acting. Maybe he's not acting. I don't know. <laughs> but he's an asshole. <laughs> oh, he's an asshole. <laughs> Brian, let's not forget how that whole thing started. He's like, you don't have any kids. Maybe it's because, right. and very much implying that I was gay. Very yeah, much. In fact, yeah. I think we even had the conversation. I go, John, gay people have kids. You know that, right? Yeah, that's right. like that's not a, a proof for anything. All right. Uh, uh, where did they come out of their butthole? <laughs> <laughs> I had kids yeah. this morning. <laughs> One more clip that I have here. This is uh, as we talked about. John was going to go on Kevin Brennan's YouTube channel and do a show with Adam. And then that didn't happen, but John went on his own channel and was able to get super chats, able to monetize the show again. Good on him. That's great. But this is Kevin Brennan explaining that he's out of the Southern John business because <laughs> they were both, you just saw us playing clips. They're on each other's shows. They're praising each other. Well, I, I shouldn't say each other. John is very complimentary about Kevin Brennan. Not anymore. Cause, cause this happened. I, I, told, I spoke, to, I spoke to him on, this is so exhausting. I spoke to him on Saturday <laughs> I spoke to him on Saturday, and you know he'll say uh, whatever. I spoke to him on Saturday, uh, you know, after the Friday show, and I just said you should do a show with a with a with super chats or whatever. So then he was going to do it on our network. So I, I I didn't get a chance to talk to Adam until Sunday. You said network. So I talk. So I talked to Adam until Sunday. So, uh, but John's tweeting. You know, I'm going to do the show on the on MLC tomorrow, and. So I talked to Adam. Adam said he can't do it, you know. So, so the John, it's just whatever. It's fun. So John tweeted that he was doing a show on your channel. No, before <laughs> that, then I told him I, we, we, Adam. Adam's not available tomorrow at one o'clock at all. So, he- so John decides he's going to do a show at one o'clock on their channel, but that he needs Adam to run it. Adam's a very busy guy. He does a lot of things. So I was like, well, no, I yeah, just can't that, make Adam it. Adam will see the tweet. Adam will see the tweet. <laughs> I know. Mm-hmm. That's what's so funny is that John's 
doesn't get confirmation. Is putting the cart before the horse. Is just going. Everybody, check me out. He's putting out these videos from his bed. He's doing all this stuff, and then he's mad at Adam after all yeah. of this, which is great. He's like, uh, so. But then he said, it, I, "I got annoyed because you know, first of all, he said that, and I'm not, I'm not, ta- I'm not. The, the thing that really annoyed me was, uh, you know, he's like, well, just tell me the terms, you know, how much you want of the super chats." And uh, I was like, all right, well, let me think about it. Let me talk to Adam. And then he goes, I, I said, he goes, you know, because that's what friends do for each other. I'm like, we're not friends. Like, I'm not friends with any of you fucking losers. Like, you're all fucking losers. Like, I have to exist. It's like being in an orphanage. It's like I have to exist in this world, but you're all losers. So, so, but he's saying, like, we're friends. So and the it, fact that, so even if John thought we were friends, that means nothing to me. So then yesterday he calls me and he, I go, we, I can't do the, we can't do Monday. And then he, I, he, you know, he wants to use my channel and I'm like already nervous about him using my channel. And then I said, well, he goes, why don't you have me on tomorrow on your show? I go, we already got two guests. I don't want to bump them. And I'm like, Brian, we ate Brian's been We've been waiting months to get Brian on. And then he goes, well, how about Wednesday? No, I say, how about Wednesday? And he goes, well, you're going to have to give me a cut of your Super Chats. I was oh like, my God. motherfucker, I gave you $3,000, <laughs> and you you want to use my channel? You want to use my channel to get money, but if you do my show, I got to give you I gotta give you a percentage of the Super Chats. It's like, dude, and then I'm watching Kumia, and everybody last night, everyone's like, uh, Stuttering John, like, everything's a one-way street with him. He's always, like, only just worried about what he can get out of you and give nothing back. And I was like, that's that's I was like, that's what he's doing to me. I already gave him three grand. That's a fact. Three grand. And now he wants and, and now he wants to use my channel to get super chats. And 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 if if he can't use his channel and I use have him as a guest, he wants more super chats. And I was like, What? <laughs> Are you fucking kidding? And then when I saw he got trolled by Tony Mazer and Chad last, I was like, Yeah, I'm out of that business. I'm out of that business. Because he he's like I, a big I, celebrity. No, I'm gonna look like a fucking. I, I mean, I got nothing to gain. Like he, if I, if he, if he's a guest, I gotta give him super chats. But then, you know, but then, then if he did use my channel, you know, he'd be like, whatever I offered him, he'd be like, that's too much. I can't give you that much. I can't give you that much. I can't get. So it's like, fuck this. It's like I'm already killing it, Brian Regan. I'm already killing it. I don't need stuttering John. Just like I don't need Opie. Hello, 2004. <laughs> is this a roundabout way of losers? Is this a roundabout way of telling me I'm not getting any super chats? <laughs> <laughs> Brian, so the reference that he made there, and I'm sorry we didn't get to our Opie segment today. There's too much going on, but the reference that he made there is that Opie said on his stream, he goes, Kevin keeps sending me the link. You don't send me the link. I send you the link. Is what Opie said to Kevin Brennan indirectly, but kind of directly on his show. And that's why I was like, this isn't 2004 anymore. Like, Opie, I don't know who you think you are. You're not a part of this at all. You're an ancillary character. You had Chad Zubak on your show and Cardiff's great on there. Don't get me wrong. I like I like Dookie. But no one cares about what Opie's talking No one's going on their shows going, you won't believe the bombshell dropped on Opie's stream today. <laughs> Holy shit, this is nuts. We got to watch this. I'm the only one keeping Opie alive, for Christ's sake. I don't see him on BS show. Well, I heard him the other day. He was talking about... Um... He he was talking. Oh fuck! I keep losing my train of thought. I don't know what's wrong with me today. <laughs> I'm right. even on my I'm even on my new fucking ADD meds, and it's still not working. Fried high like, I get this thought, and then I'm listening to you guys, and I lose my thought. Well, you're I listening to what, what I have he's to say. having. It's smart. Yeah. I do have. Well, there was a super chat earlier. Can I address Julie again? I think we got to yes. hash this out all okay. together. I don't know how much time you got. Right, um, Shuli. Yes. I feel like you don't know how to take a loss. Like as again, as a viewer, as a mm. just as a, a person who observes this kind of stuff, and what I do on, on our show is like keep it real in terms of like this didn't go well. We fucked this up. Like I, I told uh, KB and Bob the other day, we uh, on Tell Me Dave, we did a live show very early on. We fucked it up. We bombed hard, like bad. And we brought the file back. And for the next three episodes, we went over it and picked apart everything that that we did wrong everything that sucked we laughed at ourselves all that kind of shit houston uh, and i feel like people at the shuli this is just my i feel like people at the shuli network like it's been bob too like it's always like everybody's always killing it everybody's always fucking destroying everybody the numbers are always up the fucking subscriptions are always up the gifted memberships are always up it's like there's never any like 
well, this didn't go well. And I think that would make, for me anyway, this is just all me, uh, more relatable. And that's like why when I used to listen to Stern, like way back when I wasn't an OG Washington guy, but I did listen to him on NBC. And it's like, he, he was able to put that out there. Like, like this, here's where I fucking lost. Here's why I won. Now, this is before he became a fucking stretched out grandma's vagina um, <laughs> as he is presently. But I, I, as far as we knew, he was he was being real and, and he was being relatable. And I feel like when I first started watching Uncle Rico, because I, I did, I wanted to give it a chance. Uh, I, I just felt I was like, these guys are just like, again, what I went back, what I said originally was like a little bit of like this cockiness and this smugness, which you said was confidence. I, I read it as especially with, I don't know, it's tough now because like when with John back. Yeah, I'm like he is such a piece of shit, and he fucking deserves everything fucking Shuli gave him. <laughs> it's it's tough. It's tough, like because you forget like what a garbage person John and really is. Let me just interject and Shuli, I'll let you answer that. But I, I don't know if that was a question, but I'll let you respond. I guess is what I that's just say. my observation. You yeah, know, yeah, you can comment. If you want. But that's the thing that annoys me about Opie, and I've been documenting this for years. Is that Opie's like this too, where he's constantly talking about things are going good, management loves what we're doing, the numbers are great, and I saw him start a podcast at number two on iTunes. And then drop off the charts and continue to tell us the numbers are great. You won't believe how good we're doing. And when people <laughs> say that over and over again, I start to think, I think he might be lying about this. <laughs> but anyway, Sheila, go ahead. Well, listen, at times uh, in life, absolutely, I've I've learned the hard way how to uh, not take an L, you can say. You know, uh, it, it's something, I mean going back to the Stern fan network message boards, like there there's lessons that I've learned throughout the years being on that, you know, same people that hate me for leaving the Stern show hated me when I was on the Stern show. So it's like, I've dealt with a lot of that. And I think part of it is you have to, you have to be confident in yourself. You have to, you have to believe in your capabilities and, and, and that way, you know, you go into it with the right frame of mind. I'm not, I'm not, I've been a glass half empty guy. Most of my life, uh, later years, I'm a glass half full guy. I go into anything with a positive outlook. The Holocaust will do that to you, by the way. (laughs) You know what? From every darkness, there is light, Carl. Okay? Listen. Thank you. I'm a glass half full kind of guy. I don't have to tell you which side I was on, but keep going. Yeah. I mean, look, I, every day I wake up, I go, at least I'm not in the Holocaust. That's a, that's a glass half full type <laughs> yep. of thought. Uh, you know, the the network from what it was, I mean, you talk about taking an L. Nobody was watching the Shuli show when I was doing it. You know, I was trying my best. I wasn't enjoying it. I didn't like it as much as working with my friends. We started doing Miserable Men. Nobody was watching that. We uh, did Uncle Rico. All of a sudden, people started watching. And from there, everything started growing. The reality is this thing got really got to a point where people could make money off of it maybe four months ago, five months ago, the rest of it, you know, Pottstown, you talk about taking an L. I mean, I I, I bent over. With with Pottstown, if I could interject real fast, it it seemed like there was this need to act like it wasn't an L. Like, it did seem like, I mean, the the a sound in the beginning, which is like a tech thing. I, I was yeah, at a show we, in New York. It was fucking embarrassing, bro. And <laughs> it is. And, we, and there's, and there's no about. way. Yeah, I'm just there's, no, there's no way around that. And you have to address it. And not only that, but it's it's there. People are live streaming it onto Reddit and, and I mean, on the Facebook and whatever the fuck recording it. It, there's all listen there's no way out of that there's no way that we could sit there and none of us sat there and said what a fucking perfect show we put on you know we, maybe you, it's maybe it's because i see bob more like i don't really see you that much except in clips uh you know or in carl's show uh but i see bob on mlc and and bob is the ultimate like smoother over you know like he just wants everything and, and you get it it's like if anybody's like, why doesn't Bob ditch Shuli or why doesn't Bob ditch KB? It's like, because he's making money. Like, why the fuck would he? Yeah, it doesn't make it's any all sense. That. It's all fun, like, too. Bob, Bob will tell you, like, what's a better job than busting balls all day long on the internet? Yeah. It's a pretty good game. Yeah. And and Bob will be the first to tell you that he lost all those things because because of uh, how bad shit got and how we were friends for years. But he almost, you know, cost me my job at Sirius when he exited and how he exited. And I had to stop doing shows with him and I had to stop talking to him because he'd lost his mind. You know, Uh, I mean, I think at times uh, 
you know, people want us to fail so bad. And, and I don't listen, there's people that I'm not fans of. I don't wish for them to fail to each his own. I always say there's plenty of internet for everybody to make money off of. Uh, but I'd be lying if I said we're, we're not doing great. And because of the support from people, it's not, it's not anything we're, you know, I mean, it's just people showing up, digging what we're doing. And as far as Rico stuff versus the other stuff we're doing, we're doing better numbers on BS than we're doing on re- on some of the Rico episodes where we did last Sunday. We had 2000 live viewers for the first time ever. It's because I, I was there. I know. Of course, <laughs> you're of welcome. Course. You're welcome. I was happy to promote that. No, Shula, you guys are killing it now. And I, I don't think that's what Brian's point is, but I, I understand what you mean by that. It's like if so many people rooting against you. It's hard to be like, yeah, you guys are right. We suck. You know, it's, that's not a good angle to take either. I understand that. Yeah. it's No, no, that's, that's not what I'm suggesting. No, uh, I, know, you know, I know. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> so let me address, We're terrible. Come listen to us. Let me address this real quick because Joey C gave us a $5 super chat. I haven't been reading super chats, but Joey.C was part of the discussion today. So I'll read this. I would like to talk to all of you and make a public apology to Mr. Shuley. I don't hate him. Put yourself in my shoes, what I have lost the past two years. Is that the real Joey C, do you think? Uh, I mean, it could be. You never really know. Yeah, and Mr. Shuley's odd that he calls you Mr. Shuley. Mr. Shuley's odd, but, but I feel like there's not a lot of errors, which tells me that his wife may have written this. Because, <laughs> uh, Joey I didn't say tend- that, Joey. I, listen, we're friends. No, I'm, I'm not saying that as a negative. I'm just saying she's, you know, she's, she's uh, involved with his uh, career. Right. She's his producer. So, um, but yeah. Yeah, listen, Joey, you're more than welcome. Don't call me. I, I think this apology <laughs> is uh, coming off the 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 uh, fact that Kevin is quite upset with Joey right now <laughs> because he texted uh, Kevin last night. So yes, uh, I, I heard yeah. I heard about that. He was not uh, yeah. not too Are you looking about for John's that? number or something. He he looked for he texted me for Kevin's number uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. I, I saw that KB had a good point. He's like, what fucking world do you think I live in where I'm just going to give away people's phone numbers? Yeah. yeah it, like, it's it's all, the shit, all the shit Kevin talks about me. He hates me, this, that, and the other. I would never give his number out. Now, I know Calta gave his number out, but I did not give his number out. And I wouldn't, especially not to Joey C. All right, guys, you have been awesome today. Thank you for spending the time with us. I'm really glad we got to hash all this out because as I said, I'm friends with Shuli. I'm friends with Brian. I want it to all come together. This is supposed to be comedy. It's not supposed to be drama. I don't do a drama show. I know today it got a little nuts. I told you it'd be a little different format for us today. But, uh, you know, we're going to get back to our usual ways. I didn't get to Opie today. We'll save it for next Again. time. I know. <laughs> Turning into like a We're going to do a fun bit. show. Fun show from here on out, Carl. Anyway, all right. I have another amazing song for us today. It's going to lead us into our next segment. Tony Muskrat put together this song, and he teamed up with a very special guest that you'll hear in here. This is uh, for Stuttering John, 99 Silver Bullets. You and I on my new podcast And I borrow your channel for Super Chat Bought a case at the break of dawn And one by one they disappeared John came back and grew out his hair Did you hear Howard wanted him for the Jackie chair? Don't make fun of his kids cause that's not fair As 99 silver bullets go by Bye bye Ninety-nine cans of course. Carl is a metro guy who saw me incessantly. But I'll feed his cat. Going hardly rides. Had a booger hanging from his nose. Did you know John always buys two pairs of clothes? Tears <laughs> for free at the Tonight Show. He never called Carla a homo. Whoa! <laughs> Nine. 
99 silver bullets Few white claws I stole from one Covers me for about three days Unless, of course, the giant's lost This is what I'm waiting for Wow! Case of claws! President Trump was on the line But you didn't tell a single joke that whole time Hacka, hacka! Julie at the Gabon Street! Julie at the Gabon Street! Julie, eres, eres mi pera! Julie, eres mi pera! Are you speaking Spanish? I'm saying. I looked it up. I practiced it. Maybe oh, you can't speak. Well. Maybe you can't speak Hebrew. Wow. Tony Muskrat and Tukey. Holy shit, I had only heard the German version of that. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's rocking. Go figure. Someone yeah. said that's the new German national anthem. Holy Logical. shit. Yeah. I agree. Not Where angry we, enough. should play though. that before every soccer game. All right. So that leads us into... Yeah. Suttering John has been doing shows every day for three hours long by himself. Amazing. It's so much content. And so what I pulled from is yesterday's show. I hopped in my car. I was driving home and I went, you know what? Let me stop listening to No Agenda, a show I actually enjoy. And let me see what's going on with Suttering John. He's probably live streaming right now. Lo and behold, he was. And he was talking about me. And he was doing his uh, new Carl impression that he does. And all the fun stuff that he does. And I... As soon as I got home, I'm like, well, I'm going to have to record this because this is fan-fucking-tastic. All right. There's a lot going on here. I might pause it a few times, but uh, let's see what he's saying. But, Kev, see, see, here's the problem. You just wrote that to me. Oh, was- I should point out, Kevin Brennan called John an over-the-top buffoon. When he was explaining that we're the odd couple, he's like, you know, you got Carl who's like organized and then you got John who's just like an over the top buffoon. And so John thought that him and KB were friends again. And then he said that on MLC. He's just like, Jesus, he's trashing me. So that's what he's addressing at the beginning here. And I'll also point out that Bacon and Eggs has a super chat up for five bucks that John leaves up this entire time. This says you are nothing more than a court jester. Uh, also, your kids top 10 piazzas. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not going to go well. What would you describe this look? That he's sporting today. Just sprayed by hose. On- <laughs> <laughs> he looks like they just dropped him off at a halfway house. <laughs> right, walk through a sprinkler. <laughs> All right. But Kev, see, see, here's the problem. What's the problem? You just wrote that to me. That was a compliment. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. But then you're going to go on your show again today and trash me again. And you're going to have that fucking hamburger go on and trash me. John, I hate the way he says my name. John. 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 And, oh, wait, hold on. Ugh. This guy has the audacity to make fun of how I drink beer. He goes, hey, look. Hey, John, I don't drink beer like a dummy like you. I sip it. Yeah, do it again. <laughs> and even Kevin was like, oh, shit. I never even realized it. Yes, because I'm a comedian. I'm an observational comic. I... You can't pay this guy a compliment. You just could not pay this guy a compliment. <laughs> well, no one should pay him at all. But no. Fuck. He goes fucking nuts because Kevin know. Kevin said on, the, on Mr. O's company on Thursday because I popped down oh. there. John was down there for a little bit, then I popped down there after that. And, uh, yeah, Kevin was just going, yeah, we never even noticed that Carl's like a piazza the way he drinks his beer until John pointed out. Now John's like, that's right, everybody. Yeah. I'm the one who took down the Hamburglar with yeah. my joke. It's his new bit. This yeah. this gets crazy right here. Ask Derek Jones, who's the writer on Stern, who I got him the job. Ask him. He said whenever people would come on The Tonight Show, like just in the hallway, pages, writers, he would see the – this is what I – he would just see. He would say, I'm, I'm like the Terminator. Ask him, Derek Jones. He'll tell you. I look down at their shoes and work my way up, and I already have five jokes. Or if they come after me, boom, 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 <laughs> boom. He's so delusional. Uh, your shoes suck. Your pants suck. Your belt sucks. 
<laughs> yeah, if, if, he, if he's wearing the suit that you wore in D.C., then yeah, I can see five jokes. He's so fucking delusional. They called him the Terminator because he never stopped annoying people. <laughs> no, because he keeps coming back. It's like, God damn it, John's back again? <laughs> All right, so John's explaining how witty he is uh-huh. and how good he is at roast comedy, mm. and he can just rip on anyone. I get him. I'm prepared or ready for any altercation. Now, the deuce pay can't do that. I can't. You know, boom, backpack. <laughs> boom, running away. All right. So he's talking about Shuli. He's still talking about this interview he tried to do with Shuli in a hotel lobby where John was obviously very drunk. I still want answers about that shark. <laughs> yeah. I want to know about jumping the shark. So John is explaining how funny he is because he made fun of him for A, having a backpack, and B, walking away. Yeah. Both great jokes. Good stuff. Very observation. Oh, of you. <laughs> I mean, like, it's just quick in my head. <laughs> it's so quick. And I know, <laughs> oh, there's a joke there, there's a joke there. Yep. But, but, you know, so yes, I noticed that Hamburglar is sipping his beer while he's making fun of the way I do. And he's sipping it like fucking, fucking the Queen of England having a cup of tea. Boom! Oh, wow. Got me. I mean, come on, man. He's teetotaling. That's different. Yeah. So, you know. Now, look, I'll still do a show with the Hamburglar. Yes. He'll probably say he doesn't want to do it anymore because he knows all. I don't think he'll say that. Yeah. What? (laughs) He thinks I'm going to back out of this? Yeah, I think he's right. I don't don't (laughs) think you should do it. (laughs) I think he's going to roast you. John, I can't wait, buddy. I can't wait. Carl, we don't want to see you get beat up. Maybe you should really think about this. Guys. I know he'll probably win, but give me my chance, all right? All right. I got a puncher's chance on this one. Car- Started Car- his Car- shoes. Car- <laughs> <laughs> really kill, you know, kill him in the comedic sense. Right. <laughs> but I, I I, certainly would still do it because I would love to have it. I would love to go head to head with him again. Love it. The one thing that Brennan said is true. We are the odd couple. I'm smart and funny. And he's a hack. Yeah, that's exactly what Brennan said. That's yeah. what Brennan was saying, that you're smart and funny and I'm a hack. And also, the I... fact that he does the hack thing, that's Kevin Brennan's bit that you're doing. Chris, how much did you miss Drop the Needle Anywhere? Look at that fucking face. He's oh, amazing, isn't he? Look at that face. That's... So smug. By the way, that's, that's what I'm going for is Halloween this year. <laughs> I'm getting that exact mask. Fucking Pennywise the retard? <laughs> what are you trying to go ahead <laughs> and shit everyone? <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Fucking Penny Dub. So I would love it. Uh, I should point out the reason why John's fired up is because so John went on MLC and then he left and then they sent me the link. I I, I wasn't even watching. I was prepping for who are these socials and I saw I got the link in my inbox. I'm like, oh, I'll go on there and talk to those guys. So I go on and Kevin's been saying this is all work and John and I are friends now and Chad and I are friends now and I'm fake. So I went on there to let him know. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not the case at all. I am not friends with Stuttering John. And so John saw that. And he's just like, oh, we're not friends? Good. I don't want to be your friend. Yeah. That's what this is all stemming from. Tukey's so funny because Tukey's like, you're just going to hurt him. Yeah. I I actually pulled that ISO because it's so funny. (laughs) I would love it. We'll have a little show together. Yep. We do have great chemistry. We do. Kevin was smart enough to observe that. (laughs) So I think that, yeah. I'll do a show with the uh, Hamburglar. I think it'll be fun. I'm the goat in all of this. Let's face it. Yep. Well, Kevin, too. You smell like one. <laughs> Come again. <laughs> there we have it. So so that's the whole Kevin brand. Kevin, I love you. Try and be loyal to me, because I'll be loyal to you. Oh. To the day I die, I'll be loyal to you. Great. I don't mind you make jokes. Sure. But just, you know. Come on, man. I, I got your back. That's right. Stuttering John has your back. Whatever that means. You don't exactly. want to have your back, I want to have it. But I have your back. Do your home, Mr. Brennan. I do. I like you. And we've talked stink. plenty of times. I've talked to the Hamburglar, but he just... It, it, it's... He's too realistic no for you? <laughs> Zero. Nada. He's too young, I think. He's too young to know <laughs> what this loyalty means. Uh-huh. He wouldn't last a day on Stern. Not a day. He'd be put back in the back with J.D. Ha, Maya. 
right, so he'd th- last more than a day. A couple right. of things here. First off, J.D. Harmeyer has been on the show for, I think, 20 years at this yeah. point. It's like he wouldn't last a day. He'd be back there with J.D. Harmeyer, who's lasted all this time. More importantly, I wouldn't accept a job on Howard Stern. I make more money than all those guys that work there, aside from Gary and Robin and Fred, obviously. But no, John's just like, he wouldn't even be able to work at Stern. I'm not looking for that job, John. I'm good. I host my own show, but thank you. Here's what I love I just, about all this clips. I'm sorry, Carl. No, please. If you look on the screen right now, he has left this insulting super chat up yes! this entire yes! time. Yeah. I know. It's just been on there calling his kids. It says, all your kids are top 10 piazzas. And he yep. is just sitting there delivering his speech yep. over that. Oh, I know. That's hysterical. He's he doesn't so read it. He's stupid. He's just like Opie. It's another Opie parallel. He just sees what he wants to see. Yep. You're funnier than a court jester. Your kids like pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Go here, here, here. Come up with some ideas, okay? Oh, and here, go to the dentist. Jesus. Freaking hell, man. He won't do it. All right. <laughs> this is the same joke that Vince the Lawyer had when he went on uh, Shuley's show yesterday. That, uh, oh, there's no dentists in Rochester. The dentist doesn't fix your teeth. They clean them. I don't know. You don't know the dentist <laughs> can fix your teeth? It's the orthodontist that fix your fucking teeth. The dentist is Okay, the... fair enough, fair enough, fair Jesus enough. Jesus Christ. I mean, I get it. It's fine. It's fine. I get the dentist joke, but it's not right. It's a canine. It's like a canine. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. This is... See, Tito's even. Hamburglar, they're all straight. Yeah, you got me in I like you do that. Go to a dentist. You some of the fucking fortune you're making off of me and get your fucking teeth fixed. Please do it for your wife. Probably like it. Probably like looking at you when you eat corn on the cob and fucking it's like the lines going around and around. Yeah. Yeah. Good one. What? And you don't want to be friends with this guy. What the fuck is wrong with you, Carl? Producer Chris. Yes. What was that corn on the cob joke? He doesn't even know. He doesn't even know. I was actually watching this clip with my wife and I look at her. I go. What do you think that means? She's like, I don't yeah, know. I don't know. That got away from him a little bit. <laughs> that one got away from him a little bit. He's like, can you imagine this guy eating corn of the cob? Yeah. Corn's yeah. delicious. <laughs> yeah. Maybe some salt, some butter on there. Yeah. Hamburglar, they're all straight. How about you do that? Go to a dentist. Yeah. You some of the fucking fortune you're making off of me and get your fucking teeth fixed. Please do it for your wife. Probably like it. Probably like looking at you when you eat corn on the cob and fucking, it's like the lines going around and around. <laughs> Those fucking teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got it. Keep going. You making fun of my kids' teeth? With those? Hypocrisy police! <laughs> Wrong shirt, John. Wrong, Wrong shirt. shirt. All right, so this is John's um. new thing. He's wearing his Harley Davidson shirt, and he's yelling hypocrisy police and pulling it up like he's wearing his hypocrisy police shirt. Oh. I think he's in on the bit on that one. I think one, he but... was just trying to show off his gang colors. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Yeah. He has the audacity to make fun of my kids' teeth. Which, by the way, what I said was, she looks a lot like Baba Booey. Yeah. And I asked if maybe that was the real father. That's all. I wasn't like honing in on his daughter's teeth and dissecting anything. That, that was all I said. It's so lame and so childish. The mob doesn't go after family, but you do, Hamburglar. But I guess that's okay for people in the armpit of New York known as Rochester. I've seen The Sopranos. Wasn't there a, a time... When uh, the boss from New York, his wife was very overweight, mm-hmm. and they were goofing on her yeah. mm-hmm. behind his back. Ginny Sack. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't that um, the mob going after someone's family? Because we're not hurting people. We're telling jokes. So I don't know if he's really correct on that. He's been saying it for years. I just wanted to correct him on that. It's not really a great analogy. So he should be mad at Polly Walnuts. Yes. Okay. Correct. Nothing that's rocking about it. And you're making fun of my daughter's teeth, and you have those? <laughs> you have these? Clip it. And you're making fun of my kids' teeth? Clip it. Fuck out of here. Bacon and eggs. I love them. Thanks for five bucks. You're <laughs> Holy shit. Sport, Jessica, thank you. <laughs> I love shit. it. He still gonna, doesn't read it. Holy he's, he's shit. He's about to read it, guys. He's about to read it and All get right. upset okay, now. Great. It's been up there the whole time. But he loves it so far. <laughs> this is great. Oh, God. Back to trashing kids. <laughs> it's 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 amazing. See, this is the thing that he, I don't know if he realizes this or not, but he brings up his kids all the time. Yeah. So of course people are talking about it because that's what he's talking about. People react to that, and the fact that they go top ten piazzas is such a silly thing to say. It doesn't even mean anything. He's just like the trash of my kids. 
No, they're fucking with you, John. Because you react the way that you react. I'll, I'll talk into the, the camera here. Because you react the way you react, people keep doing this. You are causing all of this to happen. Everything that's happening. Now that you're doing all these shows just about me, this no, is why it, this is no, all happening. No, it's because they're super fans. It's because they're super fans. It's sick it's of fans. It's amazing. It doesn't say anything about me. It doesn't say anything about my kids. It doesn't say anything about you. That you feel that you could be some internet warrior and you could trash someone's children anonymously. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, I, I, don't, I don't even understand what this does to his kids. They don't know this is happening, and there's no ill intent <laughs> meant for it. They're just goofing on you, John. It has nothing to do with your actual kids. Do you think his kids have even for a second watched any of his live streams? No. I you think d- they I would have to, it. though. You think they would have to? Like, they, they get the alert, Dad's fucking live again. Great. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> You know how embarrassing that is? Oh, One of their friends comes over. Yeah. Hey, your dad's on the internet. Yeah, we don't talk about that. Right. We don't do that around here. All right. So you just saw John explain that he can look someone up and down and come up with five jokes just like that. So we're going to get an example of that because John's going to sing his silent mic song. Oh, God. Now, he's talking about Mike Morse from Uncle Rico, who doesn't talk very often. And so John wrote down lyrics for the song, but he can't find them. But that's okay. He's an improv guy. He's going to be able to pull it off off the cuff. Write down his lyrics somewhere. Hold on. Hold on. I might even have them written down. Hold on. Uh, fuck. I thought I had it. No, I don't. Improv guy, huh? Yeah, yeah, he's got this. somewhere, but okay. Here we go. Silent mic. Bowling pin mic. Okay. You're so lame. Have no game. Laugh at anything. Dues-payer says. Then collect money. You lose or douchebag spaz. You <laughs> put all of us to sleep. You put all of us to sleep. I get it. Now watch him pat himself on the back for that. This is what's crazy. Thank you. How you like that, Jimmy? I think you thought that was pretty decent. See, I could write that on the spot. Boom, 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 boom. You were just looking for the lyrics, asshole. Deuce Pagan. He doesn't have the talent to do that. Also, didn't you give him the idea? He had a different nickname for Mike, and you're like, oh, well, also it sounds like Silent Mike or Silent Night. Uh, well, yeah, I told him the Silent yeah. Night thing, but I, I thought Mute Mike would make more sense. But anyway, he's going because he goes, no, it's like it's like Silent, uh, Silent Bob. I yeah, wish somebody would. That's mute what he said. Anyway. What's incredible about that is that that was so bad. The syllables didn't fit. The jokes were non-existent. And at the end of it, he goes, "See, I told you, I'm pretty fucking funny, aren't I?" You're like, John, that was embarrassing. What are you doing? I think you'd all agree that was pretty amazing. No, we don't. All right. So John is not going to do a political show again. People are saying, why don't you go back into politics? He's going to explain why he's not doing that. Oh, Linky Jedi, who makes fun of the Army Major. That's why his <laughs> name is that. Thanks for the two bucks. This is bad. <laughs> go back to politics and the Dota. Don't watch. Go. Do you want me to just kick you out? No, nah, I won't. You're paying me. I probably will do a I I don't know. I don't even know if I want to do politics anymore. I don't know. Look, Stephanie Miller once told me, and I'm sure Hal Sparks and John Fugelsang will agree, there's no money in liberal politics. Now, I looked this up. Stephanie Miller's worth $2 million. And I'm sure Jimmy Dore and Bill Maher would uh, disagree with you that there's no money in liberal politics. Franken's doing all right. Yeah. John just can't admit he's bad at something. That's the thing. John just goes, well, it wasn't me. It was the industry I was in. It's like, no, there's successful people in that industry who are doing it and making money. You were just terrible at it. Yeah. Going back to politics, you mean going back to letting other people talk on your show and you sit there? Sit there for 10 minutes at a time. Yeah, Trump does suck. Yeah, well, people say nothing. It it was the most boring show and you were bad at it. You didn't know what the fuck was going on. All you were doing was reading MSNBC articles and acting like you knew what was going on in the world. You know that's all going to be back, though, right? Like, you know, the election... Sir, again, next year. This is why I don't think it is. And I don't know what John's going to do long term. I can't predict that. But he's making so much more money on Super Chats talking about me and Anthony Cumia 
and Chad Zumach and the list goes on and on. And so it doesn't make any sense because he, he even said at a certain point, he goes, well, you guys wouldn't be there if I did a political show. It's for a whole different audience. And that audience is broke. <laughs> so yeah. the people that he was attracting, the Benny Locos of the world that he was attracting, love you, Benny Loco. Um, you're not going to make a fortune off this audience. So uh, it didn't make any sense for him to do that. I think he's probably done with it. Okay. Now he's talking about Patrick Melton. Nobody likes onions. And I guess Patrick Melton said that he's a better comic than John is, mm-hmm. which I haven't seen Patrick Melton stand up, but yeah, I'd bet, out. I'd bet all my money he is. Yeah, I'm all in. <laughs> I'm pretty I'm sure all in. I'm pretty sure that's definitely true. And well, there ain't no fact checking, so I'm going to go with that, Carl. <laughs> You're not in my league. You begged me to come on your show. Oh, Patrick Mountain, you're a fucking liar. He says that that he we agreed to do a show for a thousand, and then I changed it to two thousand. I don't remember ever agreeing. So either you're lying. Okay, this is fan fucking tastic because John's going to realize that he did do all of these things, and so he's going to come out with this strong statement and then slowly walk it back. And this is almost a masterpiece right here. I don't remember ever agreeing. So either you're lying or maybe I was half in a bag. But I don't remember ever agreeing because you never paid me it. We didn't have a signed contract. Mm-hmm. And then when I realized that I was, at, was, I was asking too little because I'm getting off this for m- way more, I'm like, no, two grand. You blew it. You, you could have got me for a grand, but you blew it. I think initially I asked Kevin Brennan for a, for a grand. I don't know. I asked somebody. I can't remember everything. <laughs> can't remember anything. No. So John just said that him and Patrick Melton had agreed for a thousand bucks. And then he goes, but it wasn't a signed contract. Well, no, it's an, it was an agreement. He didn't say it was a signed contract. I believe it started with Patrick Melton is a liar. Yeah, right. He goes, he's a liar. He said that we had agreed for a thousand bucks and maybe we did. Maybe I was drunk when I agreed to it, but then I realized I was worth more than that. So then I made a 2000. So it sounds like you're the asshole in this, yeah. John. I don't know. Just based on what you said. Anyway, Coors is refreshing. <laughs> you think Kevin Brennan sent him a fucking contract? No, of it's, course not. I mean, what no is he fucking talking about? Yeah. So now John's talking about, I don't know if you guys remember this, but Shuli, I think, was on with Anthony Cumia, and they were goofing on John's art. Have you ever seen John's art? Are we watching it right now? <laughs> well, no, he actually does these pieces that he hangs up on the wall, and it's really, really bad. Anyway, I don't want to get into that, because that's a whole other thing that we could get into. But this is John explaining that he is a great artist. Niche. Have you ever considered painting your feelings? I know you've dabbled in conceptual art, and some of it is quite poignant. Thank you very much. I know Pocky, who doesn't understand art, oh boy. certainly doesn't understand conceptual art. You know, did a half an hour or whatever on my artwork. Hey, Pocky, here's the difference between you and I. I've never claimed to be a good painter. I have good ideas. And I could convey them on a canvas. But I never claimed I was, you know, because I'm not a talented painter. I'm a talented artist. Okay. Because here's the difference between you and I. I never claimed to be a great painter. I don't remember Anthony ever claiming to be a great painter either. He was just goofing on your terrible art because it was childish and it was really bad. It's good that he can put his ideas somewhere. His good ideas onto a canvas. Can I give you? Can I give you an example of a, one of his art pieces that he was really Please. proud of? Because he had he had this woman on his show and he was showing her his art and explaining it. Apparently, he bought all of these uh, off of eBay or something. He bought pieces from bombs and missiles from different wars. People will, will collect the shrapnel and, and he bought this stuff and then made a peace sign out of it. Do you see how deep that is? It's conceptual. Let me give producer Chris a minute to think about that. Yeah, hmm. something. You know what I would do if I were him? <laughs> all right, never mind. I would take... Over to you, Vinny. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> well, I'm saying I would take all the bombs and then just make a uh, a sculpture of himself performing stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> now that's an artist this right This is there. like me at the improv. Okay. How lifelike. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about going on Anthony Cumia's show. All right, let's talk about what that means if you do that. You are a hypocritical piece of shit. <laughs> you <Wrong laughs> shirt again. Know it, live it, learn it. You're a hypocrite. You too, bomb. Last I checked, aren't you a person of the Jewish faith? I think, though. Thank you, Crackhead Bob. You're welcome. Aren't you a person 
of the Jewish faith, yet you go on Pocky show. Hmm. Hypocrite. <laughs> it's amazing. And you, Hamburglar. Jesus Christ. You. You. You go on Pocky's show and you know he's a staunch racist. You know it. He got fired from Sirius XM for being a racist and tweeting racial things. That's why he got fired. But Hamburglar. You'll go on his show. Hypocrite! Do, do, do up, do, do, do up. Vinnie Paulino. Yeah, friend. You and I, a couple years ago, we uh, broke down a video that was uh, Anthony Cumia's show. Actually, it was back then, it was the Anthony Nardi show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you remember who the guest was on that show? Well, I believe it was Joe DeVito and Stuttering John Melendez. Hypocrite! Hypocrite! If John I, was on Anthony's show many times after 2014, after he was fired from Sirius for racist tweets. Carl, he was begging him for money and an endorsement. Yes, correct. But there's even more to it than that because I haven't brought this up. I need to get back to it. Daniel Fawato, who I had a long conversation with, who was Artie Lang's producer of his podcast and his show on DirecTV, who knows a lot of things from behind the scenes, knows that Stuttering John wanted the job that Artie eventually got and then Dave Landau. Of Anthony Cumia's sidekick. In fact, John was convinced that he had the job for some reason and was telling everyone. For months, John was telling everyone he was going to be the sidekick for Anthony Cumia. And he, I don't understand now why, now all of a sudden he's playing this revisionist history where he's saying like, I would never do his show. Listen to this. This gets fucking crazy right here. This, I, I got to send this over to Anthony. I want to get his reaction to this. Would I ever, ever go on Pocky's show. No. He couldn't pay me. If Pocky offered me a hundred thousand fucking dollars, I'd say fuck off. Alright, you know I know he's lying. Chad would never turn down a hundred thousand dollars to do anything. Anything. That's an that's an insane thing to say. Behead me in the square? What time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing. It's like a hundred thousand dollars, you can go on there and debate him. You could turn it into anything you want. You don't have to say like, oh, but, oh, but I, you know, then people are going to think I'm racist because I'm there with you. Anyway, it doesn't make any fucking sense. So he's obviously lying. And he's been on that show. I think he said he was on that show 10 times. And now all of a sudden he won't go on that show for $100,000. Hypocrite! <laughs> I don't believe him, Carl. I don't believe him at all. All right. This gets funny. He's going on. He forgets who he's mad at sometimes. He's, he thinks he's mad at everyone. Then he remembers that some people he likes. I don't need your blood money. What, buddy? No. <laughs> what do you mean? I wouldn't accept a dollar from you. Uh-huh. And you'll never be able to get a talent like me on your show. <laughs> Ever. Yeah. Come on. Okay. You keep having the hacks on like fucking Gino Bisconti. Hack! Yeah. That's all you can get. I mean, Bill Schultz? What's his claim to f- fame? He banged Kaylee McEnany? Nobody knows who she is anymore. But I don't have a problem with Bill. <laughs> oh, sorry, Bill. Take it back. <laughs> You're actually a decent guy. So take it back. <laughs> Who's going on Anthony's show? That asshole Bill Schultz? Oh, no, no, I said, right. I like that guy. Oh, shit. My bad. He did my show. That's, That's right. Unbelievable. He's, it's insane. He forgets who he's mad at. He's claiming that going on Anthony Cumia's show proves that you are obviously. Oh, good. Missy B is here watching this. Oh, hi, Missy. Because Missy B, you know that John was begging Anthony to be on his show. You hung out with him at Ant's house, playing cards in the basement. And now all of a sudden he's claiming that he would never even be seen with Anthony Kobe. Enough for a hundred thousand dollars. This reminds me of when Chad said, I would, I don't want to have anything to do with that compound gathering. Right. That you guys did. It's like, well, you weren't invited. Yeah, it's fine. And don't worry about John, it. John, you're not invited on Ant's show anymore. Yeah. So it's easy to say I would never do it. Chad's like Chrissy Mayer's wedding. I don't want to go to that. Yeah. Good news. Guess what? <laughs> No one wants you there. Yeah. Fucking moron. Oh, yeah. Missy be good on Twitch. Yes. Check that out. And um, I, I just, I couldn't believe, I can't believe that John has the balls to come out and say this kind of shit when we all have seen you on his show. We've talked about it. It's on YouTube. It's, it's classic. Still on, it's still on <laughs> compoundmedia.com. I mean, I could go back and watch it at any time. So it's insane. Yeah. That company that's a failure that's still going nine years strong. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the one I'm talking about. Now, you'll notice that there's a super chat up here from Nasty Al. Nasty Al is the guy, of course, who yelled Kumia Country to uh, Chad Zumach down in Florida. (laughs) 
And he writes, famous, talented, funny, educated, and begging for $2 super chats. That's a sad life. Actually, embarrassing. Bottom of the barrel. Again, John's leaving this up way too long. And he's finally going to uh, address it here. Nasty Al, thanks for the five bucks. Famous, talented, funny, educated, and begging for $2 super chats. That's a sad life. Actually, embarrassing. Bottom of the barrel. Hey, you just gave me five. Thank you. <laughs> Oops. Winning. John took that as a W. He yeah. really is something else with these. Like, I... It's insane. You could. I feel like this is like stepping up to the dunk tank. Yes. He's just taking the money. You don't always knock him down. There's times when he's going to react and really freak out, but he's just taking the money. I was actually pretty sweaty and I wanted to get cooled off for a second. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. (laughs) Yeah. This is the ramblings of a homeless guy. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> who, who wrote the that t-shirt and hair of one too <laughs> somebody, that's what i mean sir what's the last time you saw a guy who looks like he's homeless in a house it's so bizarre <laughs> like you could groom yourself what do you think the us. neighbors think how many times have they called the police already there's a squad of breaking into the house across the street <laughs> he's yelling <laughs> hack again <laughs> i was talking about before that i mentioned to kevin brennan that john and i are not friends and john saw that and, and he was upset but he's gonna get back at me here john Chad, I don't want to be your friend. Good. Don't be. I don't need any more friends. We're friends like you. I don't need enemies. Hack. Okay. I know a guy named Rock. <laughs> yeah, right. He's got the same friends yeah. as uh, Jim Florentine will call me. As the Z-Man. That girl from the Niagara Falls region. I don't want any more friends. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Stop calling me. Yeah, you have way too many friends, John. That's your problem. I know. That sucks. Okay. So many well-wishers. This one, again, is just, I don't know if John's putting this up on the tee for us because he likes us or if he's just too stupid to realize how dumb this sounds. Ladder. How dumb he is. John has brought up in the past that he's in Mensa. And of course he's not. He's not a high IQ individual. And if he ever was, he's done enough in his life to make sure that that's not the case anymore. Royce. His first co-host on the Stuttering John podcast called him out on this one time. He's like, John, you're not in Mensa. Stop saying this. No, I know, but I like to say that. It's funny, you know. So John has this back and forth where it's like, he was lying about his age for a long time. He lies about being in Mensa. Guy seems to lie a lot now that I think about it. Well, listen to this. Hey, Carla, you're the idiot to give Vince the lawyer and Shuli where we live, you dumb fuck. I... This is, okay. This is, and Brennan, ask ask Hamburglar this piece of fucking evidence on why he's a fucking backstabbing prick. The Hamburglar and I have a conversation. And I remember it like it was yesterday, Hamburglar, because that's the kind of memory I have. It's Mensa memory. I look at, even when I teach, say something, (laughs) Jupiter, largest planet. Venus, hottest planet. Boom, 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 boom. Do your homework. Yes. Uh, the nebula hypothesis. Uh, Newton's second law. <laughs> he's got you there, buddy. Wow. <laughs> I've never been more convinced. The way he proved that he's got a Mensa-like memory is because he knew Jupiter was the largest planet. Bum, 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 bum. I have all the facts. Venus warm. Jupiter big. How do you feel right now, Carl? This is, a, again... Trump esque, <laughs> yes. you know what I mean? Like the <laughs> shit that he's talking, he thinks he's he's so proud of himself uh, for just like basic shit. Unbelievable! It's unbelievable. This I don't know if John is a teacher in middle school or a student. It's hard to tell. Is he doing that Adam Sandler and Billy Madison thing where he has to go back to school <laughs> and graduate all over again? Is that why he's going to school every day? Holy shit, John! That's insane. So now he's complaining about the fact that and. When I texted to Vinny the lawyer and Shuey, Vinny was in there talking about how he had seen information about where John lives and asking me about where I live and whatever. He, he obviously had already known what was going on. So I just responded and said, John and I are walking distance from each other's houses in Florida. Isn't that fucking crazy? Because it is. It's that unbelievable. Is the craziest of coincidences. And I have to ask you while we're here on your show, how shitty is your new place that you could afford a house in the same division as Stuttering? I know. And they call it, uh, what was 
Vinny was calling it crap coral. Um, so anyway, I, all I was doing was texting who I thought were my friends and saying, I know, isn't this fucking crazy? I didn't realize that Vince was going to use that for Reddit clout and post a screen grab of that on Reddit. And of course, John got very annoyed with me for doing that. I remember everything. And this is how the, this is how the conversation went down with, with Cal. El Harible is also in this group chat. I'm sorry. I didn't know if you wanted to be brought up with uh, these assholes or not. But yes, El Harible is the third person in this, uh, fourth person, I guess, in this group text that we're doing. I, I, I called him and we're on the phone. And I go, Carl, I know you said that you bought a house in Florida on the air. So that's, I'm not doxy. And I go, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you if you tell me, but let's promise. And then he said, you show me yours and I'll show you mine. And I went, all right, but don't share this on the internet with anyone. That will keep this between us. This is a fact. And if he, if he denies <laughs> this, he's a liar. I said, if we promise that we will not tell it to anybody, what does he do? Okay, John. So I go, where did you buy? And he tells me. And I laugh. And I go, that's where I bought. He goes, get out of here. What part? And I told him part. He goes, you got to be fucking kidding me. And he tells me what road he's on. I go, I go, dude, that's around the block from me. <laughs> we had a great laugh. I mean, what are the odds, Cal? <laughs> we live fucking in the same. We're neighbors. You had a laugh. Carl cried. It was yeah. amazing. <laughs> Holy shit, Carl. Vinny, I couldn't fucking believe it. Ooh, I know. I talked I, to you that day. I still can't fucking believe it. Oh, no. Don't tell John I told you too. Yeah, you confidence oh, breaking no, piece of shit. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to tell anyone. All right. I told a couple of my friends because I thought it was too fucking crazy. I also told my wife, John. <laughs> She wants to work on her security detail. Don't worry. She didn't listen. <laughs> Obviously, very upset with me. And he's going to explain what a great guy he is. And this is what he gets upset about is because he is nothing but nice and kind and outgoing and, and trying to help people out. And all they do is shit on him. It's just just his luck. Now, neighborly love. I extend the olive branch. Because anybody will tell you who knows me. Don't lend Norton, him money. Florentine Modi. <laughs> Anyone who knows me, Glern, Adam Hunter, they'll tell you I will always try and do the right thing. Yeah, speaking of that, that's another thing that Daniel Filato told me about where I guess he lent John some money. He didn't want to, but Artie was like, nah, he's good for it, man. Don't worry about it. So he lent him some money. And then John, when Daniel asked for his money back a little while later, John said, already told me I didn't have to pay you back, hmm. which is not true. <laughs> he was just lying. Is he's that just, how loans work? <laughs> yeah, he's just, yeah. No, no our, our other buddy that we're both friends with said I didn't have to, so I'm not going to. Yeah, don't lend this guy money. That's for sure. Anyway, let's let's talk about what a great guy he is. And be as friendly as possible. When you when you need something, I will be there. That's me. That's just me. I'll be there. <laughs> Always. Yep. Always. So I try and be nice. All right. Call it cringe. Call it douchebaggery. But I just said, hey, you know, Carl, look, even if, look, I don't know if you have cats, but if you do and you ever need someone to feed and, you know, provide them with water and change the litter box, I'm your guy. Because I know he doesn't have any friends down there yet. First off, what do you mean you know I don't have any friends down there yet? You don't know that. And secondly, what a weird thing to offer. I don't have cats. If you did have cats, he would do this for me. Like, okay, who even brought up cat? I think he's setting you up right now. I think what he's doing here is he's setting you up with some reverse psychology uh, because he has cats. Oh, holy shit. Vinny's planning a scene. He's like, I would have done it for you, Carl. Can you just come over twice a day? Yeah, exactly correct. He's planting wow. the scene. Good call, Vinny. I was trying to figure that out. Like, why is he bringing up cats? If you need any help, if you need any help finding gardeners, 
I'm going to test the other thing too. He says he'll change the litter box. He doesn't change the litter box for his own cats. He's going to change my cat's litter he box. Doesn't change his own litter doesn't box. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'm your guy. That's me. That's me. If you need any help finding a plumber, I'm your guy. I have. I have Google. <laughs> I love it. He's like, I can help you find a gardener, a plumber. I'm like, no. I'm... What a weird flex. Yeah, so fucking bizarre. I don't need your help with this. Welcome things. to the neighborhood. I don't need your I've lived there longer than you, John. I don't need your help with these things. <laughs> fucking Johnny's list. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I try and be that guy. Mm-hmm. I try and be a friendly neighbor. <laughs> Just like a good neighbor, Stun John is there. And what do you do? You goof on me about it. That's what you do. You goof on me about it. You fucking cuck. Jesus. He's right there. Um, I got really upset at the end. I can't wait. I cannot wait for when you end up on his paper route. (laughs) (laughs) I love that John gets mad at me for goofing on him. It's like, are you also mad at children for laughing? Yeah. Like, this is what I do, John. You can't get mad at me for this. You offer to take care of my cast. That's kind of funny. It is. It's very funny. I gave and, you a perfectly good olive branch. It was free. And I, I, I thought I had another clip, but I don't, but I'll explain what it is. So he goes on to act like he's already done me a favor. Right. Just the fact that he offered a favor that I don't need and don't want. Fucking sociopath. It's like he's already done. Right. It's like he's already done me a favor. And then he goes on to say, and if I lived in Kevin Brennan's neighborhood, anything he needed, I would do that for him. Kevin Brennan doesn't need anything from you. I promise you that. I don't need anything. Kevin doesn't need anything. We're grown ass men. We got this. And then he says, and you could ask anyone. You could ask my friends, yeah. the guys down at the pub. We always do stuff for each other. Yeah. The gardener, the plumber. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the candlestick what, maker. Whenever he talks about his friends, it's always guys he day drinks with. Every single time. He's well, like, yeah, I mean, my, my friends and I, we always get together and do stuff for each other. You know, the people at Pickwick. <laughs> Th- those are your friends? It's so fucking bizarre. I don't know what to make of it, Vinny. What, huh? what do you make of all this comeback of Centering John? I don't know if you okay. and I have talked about it much. Here's what I think. Yeah. I think this is a very, very, very lonely man. Yep. You asked me about his plans for the fu- future. I yep. assume it's a steady decline into alcohol-related uh, related dementia. Sure. I feel like he is just a good-hearted guy who does care, but he cannot control his own emotions. He freaks the fuck out on everything. He's a narcissist, mm-hmm. and none of this stuff has changed in the last eight months. Yeah. Didn't you think he was going to come? If he did come back, he'd come back a different guy. I thought for sure. And maybe he is a little bit, but not in a good way. Not for him anyway. I think he adopted a new strategy. Okay. Yeah. And being like confrontive of you guys and like being willing to go out there and actually talk to you guys because again, he saw the money and realized he had to get in on it, which but, is the narcissistic but the money, opportunity. The, the money's gone. This is, that's the thing though. He waited so long. Uncle Rico was phased out. We were phased out of the Suttering John stuff. You know, they tried to do the Pottstown thing. We had dabble cons. Like, it, it was over. And then he comes back and, like, reignites all of it again. Six months ago, he could have gotten five grand. Is that what you tried to tell me? Dude, easily. In fact, and I'll bring it up to him when we do a show together. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I do want to try to pull together a roast. And John's whole thing, when they talked about it on MLC, he goes, well, who are we going to roast? And they're like, well, you, John. But... <laughs> Vinny, when we did our roast here, yeah. it was very successful, and it was the roast of Carl and Vinny. You yeah. can have two people, and so it could be Shuli and John, the roast of Shuli and John. And the thing that John's understanding is like, when somebody, ha- they have a roast, they get to come back at everyone. Right. And everyone's roasting everyone at roasts. So that that's the thing. I, it's not just going to be like everyone just trashing John. I mean, it will be a lot of that, but Dude, not like the entire time just trashing John. Won't it be great when he doesn't prepare and he just shows up with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar jokes oh, that he tries amazing. to like... Remember when you, you used to do the skyhook, Shuli? Hey, hey, Mike Moss, how's the weather up there? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense. You may remember him from his appearance at Airplane. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. I mean, I feel like this whole thing, is, it's great to see him back because yes. it is fun. Yes, agreed. But nothing has changed except for which state he's in. And it's it's still sad. It's just still fucking sad. Aw. Don't say that. It is, though. <laughs> Come on. It's kind of and fun. And I am very sensitive. It's kind of fun, though, right? Yeah. I All mean, right. I'm not unhappy about it. I'm just like, ah, here we go again. The guy doesn't have friends. He thinks Carl is his friend. And then now he's mad at Carl again. Now he doesn't think he's his friend. That's the most interesting thing to me. Yeah. Of how the dynamic between you two changed. I think we're still kind of on good terms right now. Well, 
I was sitting there when he called you the other day, <laughs> yeah. and he was just like, Carl, like you were his closest friend. Carl, we got to do something about the Zubak. Like, I could not believe what I was hearing. I sat there, and then when you hung up the phone, I think it's on the creep off clip. Like, we could, we edited a little bit. Yeah. I just started laughing hysterically <laughs> because it just blew my fucking mind. You know, it's crazy, Vinny. That happened on Wednesday. I've already forgotten about it. There's so much has happened since then. Yeah. I've already forgotten about that. That John called me. We're doing a bonus show of the creep off, which is fantastic. If people aren't checking it out on our creep off Patreon, Supercast, and Backed By, they should. We're putting out pretty much a bonus episode every single week. But Vinny's over the house. We're doing a bonus show. I get a call from John Melinda, so I answer it, put it on speakerphone. And he's talking about how he's calling the Tampa Bay police and the FBI because Chad's threatening him. And uh, we, we cut it all out of the show, obviously. It was a private conversation. But I go, okay, well, I'll come on your show, John. We can we can figure out what's going on. And I, I totally forgot about all of that. John was ready to have Chad Zubach arrested for a hashtag. Carl. It came down to a hashtag. That conversation was so bonkers. And it started completely insane. And I'm not going to get into anything past what's already been said, but it was like, I've had, I just got off the phone with the Tampa police, Carl. Yep. This is very serious. My next call is the FBI. I know, and, and I thought, like, what? Vinny, at that time, I'm like, holy shit, what did Chad do now? Because John's going, Chad's a dangerous criminal. I'm like, yep, I know. I thought the <laughs> no. biker gang turned on him. That's why he's called <laughs> the FBI. <laughs> so that was the craziest thing. And then I go on his show, and I'm like, so what actually happened? What's going on here? And Chad posts, I know where you live, hashtag stay tuned. And then it turns out that John was using that exact same word, stay tuned, threatening Chad on Chad's live stream the day before. And I'm like, well, hold on a second. And so I go, John, so you think that he started it? That's why you're calling the police? He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, that's how this works. You guys are both threatening each other. And I go, John, you threatened me. You told me a biker gang was going to come to my house and make my life interesting. He's like, well, I was joking. It's just a child <laughs> living alone. He has no <laughs> one to fucking talk to. He's just everything to him. Like, there's no one to sound any of the shit out to him to tell him he's being irrational. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Let's get to why people are tuning in today. Stuttering John is up to a lot. But because of this, our Patty Seacuffs, Patty Broken Skull, Patty Puke Water, Song Parody Contest... Has kind of gone by the wayside. Everyone's sending in Suttery John song parodies, and they're <laughs> fan fucking tastic. I'm loving everything that's going on right now, including our friend Sarah, who has sent in. I believe she won one of the song parody contests that we did, and uh, she sent in this one, Dablin and Schemen. And I'm excited because we had two different female listeners send in parody songs this week. I think that's a record for us. It's so I'm not mistaken. I think we, we beat our old record by one with this. <laughs> so this is very exciting. Fingernails are brown. Gross, poopy brown. And his skin is gray. Live a failure gray. He said, Kyle's got no kids. Hey, we, we don't, don't talk, talk about, about kids. kids. That's how you know he's gay. <laughs> now he acts away. I said, a fat. A sweet transvalium hairdo. He Slide whistle solo. <laughs> that was wonderful. That's amazing. Great job, Sam. Yeah, really. Thank you for that. I thought it was going to be the Beastie Boys. I got to get a sound drop of uh, Stuttering John saying, Who the fuck is Ray DeVino? <laughs> yeah, you should get that. <laughs> I think we played that on our show before. All right. It's this one favorite. This one comes in from the great Missy B. Missy B. Good on Twitch. She's been on the show many times. Nice. And uh, she does a great Stuttering John impression, as we'll see. Bring my pack 
podcast back where there is cause I will be there <laughs> I'll be there <laughs> I'll feed your cat when you are gone I'll be your friend since you have none <laughs> just call me neighbor I will be there I'll be there. That's just me. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking great. That's awesome. <laughs> now I do love watching it. It's flabby arms. It's like hypocrisy, please. Yeah. Hypocrites! <laughs> um, Deuce pay ya. Oh, that was funny when you had Chrissy May on. You had Chrissy May on the other day. She goes, oh, shit, I was going to wear my Coors shirt. I got like three of them at DabbleCon. <laughs> I was going to wear I'm wearing my, my DabbleCon Coors shirt today. You have two of them, right? <laughs> Everyone has two of their shirts, for sure. Now, Ray, that song was referencing, I don't know if you know this, but John and I are now neighbors. Did you hear about yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, heard okay. that. Fun stuff. Right so. around the corner from each other. You're oh, going to yeah, go yeah, see yeah. him? He likes you, by the way. I know. Yeah. What's not to like? <laughs> I want to know. take your house. Isn't that the house he tried to take? It's like he didn't even have to buy a house. He could have just got your house. Should have just crashed right with me. I know. I don't know what he's thinking over there. I want to know the over under. <laughs> I want to know the over under on when he starts treating you like neighbor Juan coming over to use yeah. your Wi Fi and, and white claws. Beers. Yeah, I yeah, know. White claws. Can I borrow a cup of Wi Fi from please? <laughs> Carl, is it all right if I start podcasting from your house? <laughs> Can I use your channel? You get super chats, right? <laughs> Here's Carl, one. That- do you have. Oh, go ahead, Liam. No, 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 I was going to make another stuttering job. <laughs> Here's a song that came in eight minutes before we started the show. So, Dylan Vance, well done, sir. You just got this in, and I listened to the first half, and I went, yep, that's a winner. That's on the board. Hey there, Carl, this is your best friend, Stud Joe. I'm a few minutes away, and I just wanted you to know if you do. Need me to cats it for you for a day or two. Hey there, Carl, guess what? I'm back on the internet. I know the other day that I called you a feminine. I was wrong. Pretty sure that you don't suck dog. Do you like my song? with me only have to give half your super chats to me only half your super chats to me and with that i will announce that a week from today wednesday the 26th at 6 p.m eastern so after misery loves company i want to be respectful of kevin (laughs) brett and and company (laughs) we will be doing a show on this channel on who are these podcasts you can watch John and, and myself will be doing our, uh, I don't know if it's round one or round two. If you're counting MLC, it's round two. And if that's the case, it's round two of three because we're going to do a show together and then we're planning on doing another show on his channel down the road after that. And then we'll see what happens. Maybe it turns out that we are the odd couple and everyone yeah. wants to watch it. By then your roommates. <laughs> possibly. <laughs> it's very possible. We'll do it for my pool. We'll start doing shows. Who knows? Do you but, imagine being roommates with him? No. No. Nope. <laughs> I can't I cannot imagine that. Not at all. Carl Carl, do you have a backup for when he uh bails and then starts threatening you on Twitter? I have to think that through, William. I do have to think that one through because John made the statement that I was gonna back out because he was right. gonna tear me a new one or take me down or whatever he was gonna do. And I promise you I'm not gonna back out of this. I, I want this to happen more than anyone. So hopefully six PM on the 26th, tune into our channel. You can watch that live. And uh, listen, we'll read your questions. I know people have questions for John, and I'll hold his feet to the fire. I won't let him just uh, tiptoe around. Although lately, he's been answering questions. My feet will never be cleaner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> lately, he's he's been speaking some real truths, it seems like. So I've been proud of him for that. Go ahead. Hmm. I, I, I want to see him revive his rock and roll career. Yes, and I would love it if uh, everybody started encouraging that. Um, you know, you can say that again, or whatever his record was called. I think that would be fantastic if he went on tour again. Yeah, I mean, he did say he's a better guitarist than me, so I do have to take him to task for that. I think they're 
needs to be some type of challenge issued for that one. Well, he thinks he's a better comedian than Bob Levy. Correct. He thinks he's a better comedian than most people. So he's a bit delusional, I, I think you could say. Well, I did hear him today. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to like uh, like throw any salt on the plans of you and him getting together. But he was going at you today mm-hmm. about um, he still claims that you put his book, his audio book online. Um, he, I mean, I believe you. You said you didn't. Yeah. Um so I believe you didn't, but he thinks he was making claims today online that you were putting his book online illegally. You know what I think happened there? I think somebody, it's very easy to create screenshots and Photoshop things. And if you know a little bit about using a web browser, you can actually manipulate what's on a web page for yourself very easily. I think what <laughs> happened is somebody took a screenshot where it said like, hey, here's a link to John's book. and It was on my Patreon and John just believed it. Yeah. By the way, Carl, congratulations. Ray thinks you're more credible than stuttering John. <laughs> when you're on John's show, we'll see what you're saying, though. Yeah, that fucking guy <laughs> ambushed me on the show. Thought we were friends. Fuck that Carl uh, Hamburger. But that, uh, yeah, he did the same thing with Adam from MLC. Oh, yeah, where that he, was hilarious. Yeah, he just, like Adam, who like could not give two shits about anything on the podcast thing, and he's like, that son of a bitch, double who? Andy? <laughs> he went, Adam, he went at Adam like, so hard. He's like, you fucking liar. You know he got the email. Turns out John has yeah. two different people named Adam and whatever his last name is in his email. And he sent the email to the wrong person. And then he had to apologize. Like, oh, that was amazing. That's hilarious. <laughs> no, he still didn't even own up to it. He right. goes, all right, maybe there was a mistake. Like, he went from, like, yeah, could know. be any angry to, okay, maybe there was a mistake. He did, he did after the fact. I saw on his show, he mentioned, he's like, yeah, there's another Adam in my inbox. And I... Emailed that one. Whoops. And that's the guy that leaked it? That oh, other I Adam? I honestly don't even know what the issue I was. I still never saw the video. All I heard, it's like him, him in a bed singing. Oh. Singing to <laughs> Kevin Bryant. So that, he put that on his Patreon. That was up on the Reddit immediately. I saw that the morning it came out. When he so was... it, wasn't, it wasn't, obviously it wasn't no, Adam. It wasn't Adam. But... There, you know how many people who are on his Patreon post the shit to Reddit immediately? All of them. Yes. <laughs> yes. Every single one. So that's why that happened. But he thinks that everyone's invested in him. He they really are. thinks right. Adam gives a, uh, oh, gives well, a Adam, fuck about yeah, him. Adam isn't. But the, the dabble verse certainly is. The dabble verse. I am so excited because I want to do a Stuttering John segment right now. Like I said, he's had a lot of great guests on. Producer Chris has been checking out Dabblers Anonymous. Uh, see what they're posting because there's so much going on. Dude, right now. So much activity. Hotbed. It's awesome. It's so exciting. It's, it's like... 2022. Yeah. You know, wow. I'm going to pitch myself. So before we do that, though, I do have one more song parody. This one's bonkers. Um, I don't know. What's that game where the gong show? I don't know. If you guys want to hit a gong on this one, let me know. Maybe it's genius. But this one is from Jacob uh, Meckendaller, and it's called Dabbler's State of Mind. All right, let's, <laughs> let's uh, check this one out together. If this is a NAS parody, it's going to be awesome. All right. New York State of Mind, a, yep. na- a NAS. Right. You're calling it. Out at Massapequa, now down in Canoga, probably seen me on TV, but never saw me sober. Stutter on Stern, big star on the Tonight Show, two of the biggest hits in TV and radio. Now I deal with losers who always try to screw me, so fuck you, Kumia, and that you, Shuli, but skull to the chatters. Everybody raise your glasses, pour a little out to my house in Calabasas, eat my bologna straight from the packaging. How come Howard won't call me back again, 4th of July? I'm with the whack pack again. Can't say the N word, so I'm chasing African. Try to tell <laughs> hey, you should learn to control it. And now my own liver looks like Joan Rivers in the used Mercedes <laughs> class on the floorboard. Had a beers on the balcony. It's time for more cause in Pickwick. Shitty pub where dreams go to die. Other patrons are mortified when I'm in Pickwick. Cause lights will inspire you. Drop a deuce in the bathroom when I'm in Pickwick. Oh, Jesus. All right. Jacob, you, you got through it, buddy. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. That's why I wasn't sure about that one. Time was a little off. I thought that was actually stutter, stutter. <laughs> Maybe it was. Yes. 
Stutcho would never say the word Jew, and he calls it the J word, yeah. which is hilarious because yeah. it's not a bad word. It's not. No. It's, <laughs> well, that, that's the old South Park gag. It's like, right. it's like, oh, yeah. The, the, what what is it? Uh, Kyle. He's like, yeah, yeah, no, I am a Jew. He's like, no, 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 you're not a Jew. You're cool. <laughs> I'm a Jew. I would never call someone Jewish or a Jew. That's very offensive. It's very offensive. My ex-wife was a Jew, and she's the person I hate the most. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me start off. I got some clips here. And it starts with Stuttering John. On his uh, Sunday show. So normally Beer on the Balcony is Saturday. I say normally. This is all brand new again. So normally the Saturdays, Beer on the Balcony. But he made an announcement. We're going to do it on Sunday because that's when my guests can come on on Sunday. So this is very exciting. Who's going to be the first Beer on the Balcony guest in 2023? And he comes on and he explains that that person had a bail. Yes. <laughs> on the show. Let's go over the schedule. Uh, <laughs> the Oakster was supposed to be... I know. So uh, this is how the show starts. <laughs> it's too much, right? Everything I said about you earlier, I take it all back. You're amazing. Yeah, you're the best podcaster I've seen all day. So don't even worry about it. I don't Let's get call it. I... Schedule. All right. The Opster was supposed to be on today, but due to a scheduling problem, really, there was big storms. And he couldn't leave the city to go to his Hampton house. And um, so. He- now, first off, that's a weird excuse, right? Yeah. He's yeah. he's in his apartment where he broadcasts from all the time. 500 miles above New York. 500 feet above New York. <laughs> and the fact that he's sitting there and he goes, well, the weather's not great, so I can't come out with you today. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense to me. How does Hypocrite! That <laughs> So basically, Opie's washing his hair. <laughs> That's how I took that excuse. <laughs> I don't know. It's radiant. I, I, I can't talk. I'm wearing a towel. <laughs> to be fair, he can only podcast in front of a sunrise. We know that now. That's true. All right. Good point. All right. So let's see uh, more scheduling information here. Oh, he had to reschedule. So hopefully we have Opie on tomorrow. He didn't. He had Cardiff. And I don't know <laughs> if Opie's big-timing him. Time will tell. I don't know if Opie's ever going to do John's show again, but hopefully he does. That would be great. I mean, hopefully for WATP's sake, obviously. Well, I think Opie likes stringing people along. He, he keeps does. telling Kevin he's going to do his podcast whenever he wants, and then every time Kevin sends him a link, he's like, he, he's like, uh, he, he, what, did, what did he say? Like, you don't send me the link. Yeah, right. I tell you when you send me the link. You don't decide yeah. to send me. I was like, dude, all right, then don't do the podcast. Who gives a fuck? He right. also just said that he's not doing anything for free. So, right. and you don't think Stutcho is like offering anything up, right? <laughs> no. Okay. There's no, there's no way, especially beer on the balcony because he's not getting super chats on that because that's behind the paywall. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So, what's now, going on? Like, uh, um, go ahead. I was gonna say. So, what's going on? Like, what's the whole thing with Chad wanting thirteen hundred dollars back from John? Do you know anything about that? Yeah, that I know, like I know everything. Thing? I know everything about that. Chad is fucking with John, and John's falling for it. Chad got John to call the Tampa Police Department, the FBI, <laughs> I think the LA Police Department, because Chad put out a tweet. And Chad keeps fucking with John and saying, I'm coming to your house. I'm driving there now. I'm going to fuck with your house. And John's like, I got patrol cars going by my house 24-7 <laughs> looking for this guy. It's like, yeah. Johnny's fucking with you. Nobody announces they're going to vandalize your place before they vandalize your place. Even a criminal as dumb as Chad Zubak wouldn't do that. <laughs> Fast forward to me going, I guess I was wrong. Chad Zubak is that stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, yeah, that's that's the story on that is that John is he called me the other day. Very concerned. This is a week ago. Actually, I was I was down here doing a show with my buddy Vinny Paulino for the creep off. And I get a call from John Melendez. I pick it up. and He's like, Carl, I had to call the cops. Oh, Chad, he's out of control. And I'm like, whoa, what the fuck is going on? Turns out it was a tweet. OK, well, <laughs> I think be there's right. flaming dog poop on my porch. <laughs> oh, help. <laughs> what are those? Burning bag to poop again. <laughs> He's playing knock knock <laughs> runaway. 
Do you think this was a real call to the cops or was this like a Rochester call to the cops? That's a great well, question. Yeah. It's, it's hard to tell. It's a weird brag to say you're calling the police on someone. It's kind of pathetic. Hi, I just moved to town. Uh, <laughs> help. Uh, officer, how many trolls do you have? <laughs> you might be able to relate to this. Hi, I'm Stuttering John. You're a fan of mine. Yeah. <laughs> but let's get past that. <laughs> Remember how people didn't like you after that whole George Floyd thing? Well, I have a civil... <laughs> 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 <Going on. laughs> Carl and I are been talking about doing uh, a show together. And we talked about Tuesday. And I just realized Tuesday I booked... Uh, a very, very important guest. Yeah, I got bumped. We <laughs> all set up, we were going to do Tuesday, and then I get to know, it's like, I actually have a great guest coming Tuesday, and Chrissy Mayer. Yeah. I got bumped for, I, I love Chrissy. I sent her a note congratulating her. So for some reason, she said, I love you, sent her John at the end. I thought that was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so I sent her a yeah. note about that. It but, is insulting. Like, I got Carl, wait a minute. I actually got an important guest. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, <that's, laughs> like, like, you also got bumped for someone who bailed after 30 minutes. That's the funniest part. Well, listen, Chrissy's a busy person. She had right. another interview to do on her <laughs> channel. And she's not just going to sit there for, for three hours with John. Most people wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. So. No one ever has, actually. Yeah, it's crazy. Maybe the Army major. <laughs> Richard Ojeda, yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> Richard um, all right. So, yeah, I got bumped for Chrissy. I don't take offense to that. It's fine. We rescheduled for uh, for Wednesday, and um, I'm looking forward to that for sure. That I think you're all going to enjoy, but I'm not going to tell you who. It was a love fest, by the way, too. Yeah. Ooh, Chrissy and John, wow, did they make up. Yes. That was something else, wasn't it? Yeah. No, I was in the wrong. No, I was in the wrong. No, you're great. No, you are. Hey. No, you're right. <laughs> well, he did say, I did watch some of it. It was like, well, I did have like 15 beers before that. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I had a little attitude. Well, and he was missing the football game. For some reason, he didn't know the Giants schedule their games long in advance of when the games actually happened. It's not a surprise to anyone. They're like, hey, by the way, uh, today the Giants are going to play. Oh, shit. I'm supposed to go on Chrissy's show. So, yeah, that was part of the problem as well. He's sitting there in his Phil Sims jersey. <laughs> Glory do you think, days. Uh, do you think Don Bo is going to apologize to Chrissy now? Ooh, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> is that guy still going? I, I got to remember all the different sock accounts that John had on Twitter. <laughs> so I was thinking about that. You know, Yankee fan, Maple Leaf fan, Don Bo. Like, what's, what were some of the other ones? There's been a bunch. And they all hated Chrissy Mayer. It was the craziest fucking thing. All the, uh, it's, it's so bizarre because here you have this guy who's way into the Maple Leafs. Huge Maple Leaf fan. <laughs> and all he tweets about is Suttery John. It's so <laughs> weird. <laughs> Yankee fan, same thing. In the middle of the Yankee season, all he can do is talk about how much Anthony Cumia's acne is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> They're making a playoff run. And he's like, right. did you guys see Pocky? Like, what? what? Oh, is, is there a judge toes going to be okay? Who gives a shit? It's Anthony Cumia. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. I grew up around a lot of Yankees fans. They're always like, hey, forget about how the game's going. Howard Stern was a cheap fuck, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Oh, once your head grows out long, you can look like an '80s rock star. You should do a flock of eagles style on live one day. Flock of seagulls. All right, that is my sister-in-law. <laughs> Observant report, people. But my sister-in-law likes to get involved sometimes. But this is great because she got John to sing, and John is a musician, as we all know. He Atlantic Records, I believe, right? I mean, he's talked my way out of it. Yeah, he, he had he, a he had a song on the soundtrack of Airheads. I heard that, but oddly, not on the soundtrack of One Too Many. Hmm, I wonder hmm. why that is. <laughs> oh, Airheads was that Adam? I'm thinking Coneheads, but Airheads was uh, yeah. Was, John, that was what Adam Sandler, right? Yeah, John had a cameo in uh, Airheads, and I guess he had a song on there. And um, wow, I don't know if you knew this, Liam. You probably don't. John once opened for Ted Nugent. <laughs> he, he never talks about it. He doesn't talk about it? He, that's all he fucking talks about, Ray. Yeah, he like opened he for Ozzy. Talk. He opened for Ted Nugent. Right. It's all he fucking talks about. Oh, what was the other one? Collective Soul or some shit? Like, okay, I, I, I got to make a note for the next Super Chat. I got to get him to do his Ozzy impression again. It is oh, yeah. gold. Yeah. Okay, good call. <laughs> 
Let's all sit back and watch John sing. He's very good at this. Close your eyes for a little while. I'm falling in love. Ring, ding, ding. Ring, ding, ding. <laughs> so, Lucy, should I just throw out that chair? He is a better guitar player than you. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. He did the plink, plink, plink I bang. was very impressed. Yeah, I could tell he knew all the chords. <laughs> It's like Guitar George. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things. John used to do this back in the day, and he's, he's up to his old tricks again. Um, I did happen to go on um, Shuli's Anonymous. Could someone try and Super Chat and see if it works? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm trying to test the, the Super I'm Chat here. That. I'm stealing that. I'm, I'm not sure. Can you Super Chat me from Europe? Anyone in Europe? Can you Super Chat me? Is that working? All right, let's test this. What about $10 Super yeah. Chats? Do those work? Yeah. Oh, my Venmo's <laughs> broken, too. Right, let's try that. <laughs> Can we just spend moment? Let me see if it's working. It's I don't know if my amazing. PayPal takes over 100. Just somebody try it out. <laughs> so then a super chat comes in, and John is so confused by this. It's hilarious. It works. Uh, let's see. Okay, Rich Goldman. Thank you so much, Richie. Thanks for the two books. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> you got canceled on you drunk. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, well, let me break it down <laughs> you for you. <laughs> canceled on you drunk. Uh... <laughs> he's he's got to be nice because they're giving him money, yeah, but he knows right. they're shitting on him at the same well, time. I don't think he did on that no, one. He was I'm very confused. Yeah. yeah. And I love how excited he is at first when he sees the money, yeah. and then he's just like, you are a fat slime. He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you mean? Because this is a perfect example of that. Where Chad just reads these super chats. Can I say something in John's um, defense? No. Just real quick. <laughs> no, please, go ahead. That's a first for everything. The super chatters are trying to get him to say the N-word, and he refuses to do it. Correct. Meanwhile, I saw a super cut of Ray getting tricked into saying the N-word over and over for like three minutes. Well, that wasn't really a defense yeah, yeah, of yeah, John. Happened. That was what more just say? shitting on Ray again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Liam, I had the phrase this. I brought you on because you're Ray's friend. I was trying to balance this thing out, and now here you are <laughs> piling on. No, no, I'm saying Ray is such a good comic that, uh, yes. you know, John is, like, even more aware than Ray is. Right. That's what you were saying. I agree. Yeah, I had uh, yeah, I had no idea I was reading uh, a racist <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Nicholas G-U-R-R. Yeah. If, if you haven't seen Opie Falling For It, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, Opie Falling For It was the best. But right. just remember, everybody, that your knees don't grow. So those two words do not need to be next to each other in a super chat. Don't fall for that one. Right. Um, I'm looking especially ghoulish today, Louis Gomez. <laughs> uh, especially ghoulish. Yep. Yeah. Brooks Robinson. Can some? I don't know what this means, but uh... there's no words there. <laughs> he wrote again. You got canceled on. You drunk. Yeah. And John's going, I, these people keep saying this, but it obviously doesn't make any sense at all. So I don't know why you're saying that. And then uh, here's John one more time here. Just get rid of that big hack levy. You don't need him <laughs> any time of the day. Just go and say, go give uh, who's that? Be that by myself. <laughs> no, Kevin said I was exhausting. No, that's what Chad said. Who the fuck gives a shit? That's a drop. <laughs> we have to get that on the board. Oh, I'll right, back that up again, real quick. Cause that's that's a fun one. Who the fuck gives a shit? <laughs> so what? Uh, it is. <laughs> That's a real wet shit right there. <laughs> Suffering <laughs> suck a dash. <laughs> All right. Producer Chris, let me pass it over to you. Before we get into the Lisa Gianna, Jordana interview. Oh, right. What did you pick up on as far as what you're looking at on uh, the Reddit there, Dabblers Anonymous? All of these, save one, were posted by Pickwick Pub. I just yeah. want to give credit where it's Pickwick due. Pub has posted a lot yeah. of these video clips. Going Thank ab you. above and beyond. Appreciate that. Well, let's start with PC1. There's some mole talk here, but let's see if we can pick up on a little sneaky hypocrisy. Okay. And 
I haven't watched this yet, but I think I might be familiar with this video. John claims there's a mole at Julie Network that's feeding him information. He did the same thing mm-hmm. with Howard Stern. This is out of his playbook, yes. as they would say. I'm not a political pundit, but this is what you'd say is out of the old playbook of uh, Stuttering John. He was blaming you all morning for his channel getting a strike. He thinks you have a mole at his network. Okay. <laughs> I don't strike people. He doesn't okay. lie. <laughs> what? I didn't strike KC, <laughs> even though he accused me of it. I don't. You did. So when people say that I struck somebody, you st- just know it's horseshit. Because <laughs> I don't. <laughs> now, do I have a mole over there? Yes. <laughs> Does the mole tell me everything that they're going to do? Yes. <laughs> I guarantee you, if there is but, a mole, it's somebody that's playing. Well, right. Like alongside right. with Shuli to pretend like they're a mole to right. like just fuck with John. Of so. course. Yeah. But here's an here's an effed up fact. Uh, the Shuli <laughs> Network has a phone number you can call to report moles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an effed up fact. <laughs> so John <laughs> fell for this whole thing where Chad Zumach is trolling him and that other guy, Tony Mazer, are trolling him for three hours straight. And now John's saying he knows everything they're up to over there, even though they just got over on him very recently. He's like, no, I got a ball. I know everything that's going on. So he's playing this long game that we're not even familiar with. Oh, yeah. We don't even know what's going on. He does copyright strike. He did it to me, both on YouTube and on Patreon. So I was a little taken aback by that. But okay, let's see what else he has to say here. I wouldn't strike him. <laughs> I love that Shuli was my mole at Stern, and now I have a mole at the Shuli Network. And man, do they have things to say about how cheap he is? Oh, yeah. He doesn't yeah. pay anyone He's the way they it. should be paid. Yeah. And he knows <laughs> it, which is why... He ain't gonna. He's not gonna bring it up because he knows he essentially rips off Levy. Oh, he's so dumb. This is why mm. John is so easy to fuck with because he's sitting here going, "Now you know that if he is talking to someone over there, just like you said, they're going, oh, yeah, Shuli's the worst. We all hate him. He doesn't pay us anything.'" If that were the case, they wouldn't work there anymore. That's how you know people don't get paid enough. They leave that job. That, that's a good indicator. John worked for Howard Stern for 15 years. He underpaid me for 15 years. Well, that's on you, idiot. <laughs> Why are you still working there then? Wait, people don't call a radio call screener when they don't like their jobs? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, I do believe that there is someone over there talking to Probably, him just yeah. to fuck with him. Like, Probably. just to fuck with him. Yeah. And John's too stupid. Like, how many times has he got to get this, like, played... Before he figures out, like, oh, there's just people fucking with me. Right. Like, he's... He, he'll never figure it out. It's I, cool. You've told him point blank on MLC. Yeah. You're so easy to fuck with. Yes, I know. And right. he's like, well, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I guess Silent Mike doesn't do anything anyway, but neither does Shuli. And Levy just goes, ah, 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 listen to me. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Listen to me. Listen to me. That's, Wait, is, that's fucking Come on, easy. do it three more times, John. Yeah. Is Bob Levy Boy. on his show? Yeah, I got confused there for a second, too. That was such a spot-on impression. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You'd swear it was the real person. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, that, that one ran long. A couple of these are kind of long. Okay. Uh, let's go to a, a relatively short one. Okay. Play, uh, PC4, and guys, just tell me what the fuck he means. Well, I'm fat. So, you know, what? if I can't, if I can't <laughs> fat shame me, okay. I'm fat. Mm-hmm. So if I could say that I'm fat, you did. why can't I say that he's fat? <laughs> hmm. Let me try and think of how I could spin this to make John seem like he's wrong. Hmm. Let's see. John's fat. Hmm. Hmm. So I guess he can call somebody else fat, huh? Yeah, I guess he can. Because he goofs on himself for being fat. Damn it. Swing and a miss. 
<laughs> so I I don't even know the context to that, but it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, right. Exa- he's, he literally yeah. thinks that this is like a black person using the N word. Yeah, like that's not but, what this is at all, John. Some people don't like being called fat. Now I don't care what you call anybody personally. I right. think it's all fair game. We've we have a so. First Amendment here in this country. You can say whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. It's fine. But don't just be like, well, of course I called you a fat ass. Look at me. I'm in horrible shape. <laughs> what does that prove? Who, who did he call fat? I don't know. What is this all about? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I don't know that. But uh, it just speaks for itself in its own stupid way, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like John calling someone a horrible alcoholic with a smooth brain. <laughs> Cardiff's mad at us for playing uh, clips from Reddit. That's his bit. Cardiff, do you know yes. the context of this? Of which? The, of who, the who calling, calling someone fat? fat? Yeah. yeah. No, I was trying to figure that one out, too. I don't know why he... I, 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 don't, I have no idea. And it, did you see a show today? He came on drinking a Slim Fast. So I don't know. He's going with this fat thing. Was he yelling I, skull every time he drank the Slim uh, Fast? I don't think he was, but he should have been. 1987? Uh, what the fast? fuck is a Slim Fast? <laughs> I'm getting back on them now. He's wow. just snorting the powder. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Did and he have a thigh, yeah, he have a thigh master with him. Yeah, and right. you, you think he would uh, actually? Maybe it's Patrick Melton. That's some uh, Josie Wales had it in the chat. Uh, uh, he's called prob- Fatty Patty. Probably Fatty Melton. Patty. Fatty yeah, Patty. that would make but sense. You, thi- you think he would come on with a slim fast and make a Tommy Lasorda reference? But no, not not John. <laughs> that was a very famous interview that he never talks about. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> All and right. he was also a very famous <laughs> spokesperson for said product. I know. I'm I'm following yes. you, kind of. All right. What else you got, producer Chris? Well, I'm glad Cardiff's here. Um, I'm skipping. No through one's ever said that. Yeah, well, <laughs> what the fuck? Chris did not speak for all of us. <laughs> I know. Cardiff. Uh, I immediately regretted it when he didn't know the answer to that. I'm like, then why the fuck did I? <laughs> God damn it! Cardiff one tries to have. Know. Cardiff tries to have fun with him, uh, and John isn't sure how to have fun anymore. Oh yeah, but Cardiff he's got blocked again right after he's the trying. appearance. But uh, n- number I've been six. Unblocked number again. six. We are, we uh, address the Mensa thing again. Oh, okay, good. Super happy fun chatter. Thanks for the two bucks. John, can we see your Mensa member card? <laughs> I don't know if I can find it now. Uh, I, okay. I, <clears throat> I didn't even have my SAG after card when I was signing in today because it's somewhere around here. Now, you, you, you've you said that the Mensa <laughs> thing is a joke, right? What? Yeah. Let's be let's be real, John. Let's be honest. No, it's with the not here. I don't have it here. Are you a member of Mensa? Yes. Of course. Or... No. Come on. No <laughs> shtick. Let's go. No. Of course. I... Of course. What <laughs> test did you take to become a member of Mensa? I took the test to get it. The Mensa test. Yes. What's it? Yes. Come on. I don't know that it's... <laughs> you said you got on the so record saying ago. it was just a joke. No. <laughs> It was on a McDonald's placemat. <laughs> so, Cardiff, if I was watching this when you were on talking to him about that, thank you for holding him to this. Because Royce, his co-host, goes, John, come on, you're not in Mensa. Yeah. He goes, I know, I know, but I like to say that's funny. Right. So he's already admitted it, and now he's trying to go back and pretend he's in Mensa yeah. again. Yeah, and this is John coming clean, John 3.0. Yeah, right. What the mm-hmm. fuck you doing, man? <laughs> uh... Wait for 5.7. That's going to be the one. <laughs> that's the one. Can I tell you, instead of looking in his wallet, he looked around the box. <laughs> like the coffee table. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe it's on up. the ceiling. Yeah. yeah. Like, a, like it's a Talking Heads video. Yeah. <laughs> Let me look Snow at my pile, my pile of cards here. Let's see the Queen of Diamonds. Uh, t- yeah. Two of Spades. Nope, the med- my medicine card's not here. Some yeah. fourth grade report cards. <laughs> yeah. If he has playing cards on his coffee table, you think they're all stuck together? Ugh, I don't want to think uh, about that. Cardiff. All right, I, I want to skip ahead that. to number nine. This is uh, this is breaking news. At least oh. something I got excited about. Would you consider doing the stuttering John roast? I think that would be great. How much am I getting paid? You'll oh, you'll make you'll make money. <laughs> The, 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 I will say one thing: the dabblers, the dabblers, uh, they support. Even us. even he they they support. They come out in droves. You know, he's acting like a J word right there. To be honest with you guys, got real excited about that. At these live yeah, you shows. can you, you can well, hear the creaky. Will. I would definitely do one. I mean, if if they paid me, because I think that is the best the best way for a comedian. Uh, again, we'll go. 
Better than a boxing match. Yes, I agree, yeah. Cardiff. Yeah. I'm going to bring this up when I go on and when we do our show together. That we should do a roast of, I don't know if Shuli would agree, agree to this, but the roast of Shuli and John. Just think like we did the roast of Carl and Vinny here in Rochester last year. You could have two people mm-hmm. be the, the topic of conversation. And at the that's the best place to be because at the end you get to get back at everyone else. Yeah. You get the last say. Yeah. It's great. And, and they would have gone through it together and they might be friends after that. <laughs> I would love to see what John writes. Oh, uh, me yeah. Too, right? That's why that's no, all we're Plenty of time to prepare, yeah. John. Yeah. Oh, It'd be amazing. Be great. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you know this. He was the head writer for the Kareem Abdul Jabbar. What? <laughs> no, come I on. Wish, I wish you would bring that up. Yeah. So he is a guy a who's known for such a sense of humor, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Very yeah. known as being lighthearted. I'm sure that was a, a riot. All right, I'm going to do one more clip, and then we're going to tap out. But we keep going back to this J-word thing. Let's do number three and okay. finally address what this J-word is. Yeah, I'm confused by this. I'm not going to – let's just say, Chrissy, I'm no fan of Comia's for a lot of the things he does. But you've been there for quite a while. And, I, you know, I don't know. I, all I'm going to say, if, and this is – I hope you don't, don't take this the wrong way. <laughs> I hope one day you decide to move away from, from him because he's a little toxic. And I, what is your big? Is your would you say is your biggest beef? Is it that you think he like has talked about your? Is it the talking about the kids issue? Started with my kids, and one of them was a minor, and my ex wife had to call me and say, "Whatever you can do, please have this stop because the kids are getting upset because they're getting trolled by their friends now." Kids, friends were watching Kumia's show and heard (laughs) that he was on social media because he's doing all social media and he's becoming on Twitter and Instagram. And, you know, so they just said, you know, so I had to call my lawyer in New York and <laughs> call the cops. What? Yeah. That's still like just hearing that is like brings me back to when Chad uh, lied about his black eye. And yeah. he goes, yeah, he goes, I felt bad because someone's like, hey, my kids looked up to you. To be fair, to be fair, John's family probably all watches Compound. Because right. for years, he was probably telling them, I'm going to be on this network. Yeah, that's my chair. Like, I'm going to be a co-host here. That is true. He did think And then that. they started watching, like, yeah, this ain't bad. I'm going to stick around. <laughs> Wait, are we... So are we going to let this comment, I called my lawyer in New York, slide? Who is this lawyer in New York that's not working for free? Vince. Is it Michael Popak? Like, who oh, is it? Oh, maybe, maybe it is uh, Vinny, the attorney. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Referring to. yeah, it could be Vince, the lawyer. Because mm-hmm. I know that uh, Vinny has said many times that... Uh, John is not his client. <laughs> so I know for a fact that John might think that's his lawyer, but that lawyer doesn't think that John's his client. That's for sure. Who, who's this Finney the lawyer? Like, I don't know him other than just in pot sound. Is he altogether there or is he like kind of like a character himself? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> you know, and then, you know, talk about sending him a cease and desist. That was the first thing. Then the second thing is when he goes, he's constantly tweeting these, you know, effing. N's and J's stuff, and then the, you know, and then like he, he's playing a video game and using the N word freely and the J word freely. First time ever someone playing a video game shouted out a gamer word. They're literally called gamer words for that reason. But okay, all right. It's that but if kind they weren't of stuff, acting so... like, oh, never mind. <laughs> What's wrong, Carter? Never mind. J word? <laughs> yes. Like you? Yes. Well, you're We're not supposed calling... to say I didn't know (laughs) it was J word. Yeah, you're not supposed to say that anymore. You're not supposed to say Jew? No, Jewish, yes, but no. Holy, this guy is retarded. Yeah. Well, that's the R word. I've heard other people say that. Actually. Let me ask Shocking you: You're a J word. I am 100. Yeah. percent Are you J-word. offended by that word? Fuck no. No, because that's what you are. Yeah, you're a Jew. I'm a total fucking Jew, <laughs> dude. I'm 50 percent J word. I'd never heard of this before. <laughs> well, actually, you're not allowed to say Italian anymore. Oh fuck! I've been saying that no. shit. <laughs> well, that's yeah. let you know. Cancel just... me. I just say dirty eye tie. That's all I say. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you gotta say dirty Italian <laughs> if you're gonna say it. Jewish, yes, but not. Uh... Look, <laughs> oh I my know. god, people are getting no, no. so sensitive. That's so crazy. No, John's just stupid. Chris, yeah. I get that, but let's just take the J part out of it. How just about them. F I and ends? It. Now we know what he's yeah. saying there. So he said the word, I'm and, a teacher. and like it's freedom of speech. Like, he feels. <laughs> <laughs> plus N equals canceled. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck. 
He's amazing. I I personally don't use it because I don't I don't do it in a way that's funny, so it doesn't make sense for me. But like, <laughs> well, he doesn't do it in, in a way that's funny either. It's just being hateful. Look, I don't care. You, you have your own thing. You, you know, me personally, I, I I don't think he's a good person. That's it. You know, but that's okay. just, you know, but it doesn't mean I don't. You know, I'm gonna shit on you because you're already. How long have you been on his network? That's funny because up on the uh, super chat is how he used to call her horse face yeah. and gummy and gums. I think he's like, get... I wouldn't shit on you, obviously, Chrissy, but <laughs> they get to that in this clip. Oh, good. I know okay. it's running along, but it is. All right. So, when did I pitch my show? I think it was 2019. So, since 2019. So, four years. And it's like. And, and by the way, I've done his show a bunch of times. Can, can you pause before it for a I second? knew any of this? Oh, and it's Lily Bell. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the one thing he he did not catch that the super chatter's name was Lily Bell. A super chat like four or five later mentioned Lily Bell in it, and he got all upset. <laughs> but he didn't catch this one. But this one was up a couple times. Yeah, but watch Chrissy Mayer because she does not put her phone down for the rest of this interview. Okay, it just it's just when he started trashing my kids, then it just went all downhill, and then and then and then I was out of the Anthony Comia business. Anyway, enough about Anthony. So what what was Chrissy doing on her phone the whole time? I don't. know. She was very uh, distracted. I, I, again, she wanted to be she wanted to be out of there. Yeah. Well, she point. she had a big interview coming up, and she even said she goes, "Okay, John, listen, I really have to go." And he goes, "Okay, just three more questions." <laughs> <laughs> Lily Bell needs to know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Elisa was on the show for Beer on the Balcony on Sunday. And we all know Elisa from Kermit and Friends. She's no longer doing Kermit and Friends. But um, she has moved to Florida. And so, John brings her in. And immediately, because John's so good at this, explains to her that she has to show her face. Because everyone wants to see how hot she is. That's the only reason why he has her on the show. Yeah. Now, remember, he said that Opie canceled on him. So he's already made it her look bad. Like if I had someone filming at the last minute, you could just not say that at all. Yeah, you know, I, I leave like, that yeah, part out. I can't believe we have a lease on the show. This is amazing. So exciting. This is, this is great. Yeah, you don't have to already establish that Opie Kansas on you brought her in last minute, but he makes that very clear. It is on um, Opie's podcast. You know, Lisa, at least what? what are you doing? I'm not happy uh, with how I look right now. There's a huge storm. Uh, and there's a few days, so I have a bit of Elisa, yeah. you're a beautiful well, girl. We want to see you. I am in the middle of a tornado, and you just asked me to do this two hours ago. <laughs> I know, but you said you were going to get ready two hours ago. All right, but my hair nope. is still wet. I don't look good. Nobody can How do can John's show in the middle of the storm. That you don't Nobody. Look good. I don't look good right now. My hair is wet. Let's just start talking, John. I'll make it good. Don't worry. Uh, all right. Well, it's just a. Right, I right. said to you, come right, on. Okay, I'll, I can't I'm jerk look at off myself. to a cat hold on, picture. Go, okay, hold on, hold on. I'll look at myself. <laughs> on, look, there's no way you can look bad. Look at me. I'm wait, a wait. mess. Now, how do I put my camera on it? Oh, here. Oh. What a charmer. Yeah. You Looks think like you shit. don't look good. <laughs> my hair is wet. There's a tornado. You look, I, you I look, look stunning. She does look better than Cheeto. Like, does I yeah, I just, like, impressed. Yeah. <laughs> I just well, love, the, I love the way he pressures her. Into turning on her camera. He did this to uh, Monique, too, back in the day. Yep. Said, Come on, sweetheart. Let's go. Let's show. Let's show what's going on over there. Oh, I was... love that. <laughs> they love that, don't they? Yeah. I got Come to on, say. sweetheart. Start talking down to him. Come on, sweetheart. Come yeah. on, sugar tits. Show your face. <laughs> I was thinking about Turn Monique around. earlier because Monique implored him to have fun with it. Yes. Like a year mm. and a half ago. Yep. He's finally coming around a little bit. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Thanks he is having me. fun, and that's the thing. Like we're busting his balls, he's busting my balls every day too. Yeah, this is fun. We're all having fun now. We're not striking each other's channels. No one's trying to get anyone arrested. <laughs> no leg breaking. We're not suing people. Yeah. We're not getting the mafia. Not trying to involved. take houses. Yeah, this is all. It's all good. It's all. It's all fun. You know, if he ever now. sees your house, he's going to show other people. It's like, yeah, I almost got that house too. I would have two houses. One more, I get a hotel. I, I was three <laughs> jokes about my kids away from getting that house. <laughs> <laughs> when he had me on Monday, I had I had just got off a of red eye that morning. I, I'd slept for a couple hours. I get a Twitter DM from him, and I don't always check my Twitter DMs. I happen to check, and I saw it. And it's like, what's your email? 
And this was three minutes after his show started. <laughs> <laughs> so I send him my email. I go to watch his YouTube waiting for the email, and he's complaining how <laughs> I was begging him to come on the show, <laughs> and I'm late. That's hilarious. I haven't even got the StreamYard link yet, and I'm late. That's funny. Because he mentioned, who did he say he was going to have on a Monday? Was it, um, was it, because uh, we just played the clip a second ago. Now I'm already forgetting. I don't know if it was Opie. Oh, Alex no. Stein? Oh, no, it wasn't no. Alex Stein. Opie, yeah, I think it was. No, it was Opie. Alex Stein was today. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah. whatever it was, he, he goes, yeah, I'm going to have so-and-so. And then it was Cardiff, so it didn't work out. Yeah. All right. So this is John hitting on his guest. This is one of the things that he does best. And he still talks to me. Oh, we've been talking to each other for three years. Oh, so he's talking about Andy Dick. Her fiance. So I'm using the quotes correctly. Her fiance. <laughs> and he calls me his fiance, and he's very like committed to calling me that. But he never tried to hook up with me like sexually. But he, he likes me as a person and loves yes. me as a person. Well, if I were there, you know, I would try, try endlessly to hook up with you sexually. <laughs> that, that's why Easy. I'm across the country right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> good stuff. That's what they all say. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm a creep, right? You know that. I'm a sexual deviant. You know this, right? <laughs> now that we're past that. Yeah, who would tell a girl if I was with you, I'd be trying to fuck you nonstop? Who would say yeah. that? Men literally someone? always say that. <laughs> this is I not even John I'm... being weird. This is just normal male <laughs> this, this behavior. This is normal male behavior. Yeah. You know I'm going to peck her out right now. Just uh, <laughs> I have it out right now. You know no means yes. Come on. I'm going to be right there. <laughs> Just because you're so beautiful, it'd be out. That's just how it is. <laughs> My way of saying thanks. You know, <laughs> actually, here I was thinking that John's being a creep, but Ray, you can learn from this guy. Just always be hitting on women. Always be hitting on them. You never Ray, know. Give them rides home. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, start ABC, there. ABC, <laughs> always be closing, Ray. That's, That's right. Always. ABC, always be closing. Okay. So, Elisa's talking about how she no longer does her podcast. She's just doing this. IRL streaming, and she's very proud of herself. It's working out very well for her. She's making a lot of money. She's having a lot of fun. And this is funny because John doesn't know what IRL stands for. Even though the super chat, let's look at what the super chatter's <laughs> name is on this. And you're making money doing it. Uh, yeah, just a figure income doing IRL for any person that does it. Any person that does it. Can what is IRL? It. I'm sorry, because that's what this guy just said. Okay, so IRL it stands for in real life. So in real life says, oh my God, it's the IRL queen. He goes, yeah, the super chat also. Like, what does IRL even mean? It's amazing. No, but in real life, what does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> this turns into John hitting on Elisa again. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Because now Elisa's saying, you know, I could, she coaches people how to do this IRL streaming. And so she's Great, like, I, yes. I could, <laughs> she goes, I could teach you, John, how to do this. And of course, she's in Florida. John has a house in Florida, as we know. And so John sees an opportunity. I here. see a sitcom coming. <laughs> well, here's Forrest, uh, Elisa. Thanks for the five bucks. John and Elisa, IRL together in Florida would be gold. Yeah, we would. Well, listen, I'm going to be back here in August <laughs> if you want to do it together. I'll come by you. I don't care. All right. Because I'm getting you. my Harley fixed. I, I don't know. For some reason, when I moved it. Okay, it, no Harley for IRL. <laughs> you need a car. No, you're going to get the back. Uh, you got to get in the back of the Harley with me. Oh, that, that's an IRL disaster. John's not understanding what this is. You don't get on a very loud motor vehicle and <laughs> drive around so you can't hear the conversation. That's not what this but is at all. He really thinks it's a date. Life. He already thinks this is a date. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll come over with IRL all night. <laughs> is, um, is John planning to put his Harley on a jet blue flight from California to <laughs> yes. Florida? Like. <laughs> That's a good question. He says that his Harley's in Florida now. I wonder how he got it there. I guess he, I guess he had it shipped or something. But it's not working, so he just said yeah. it doesn't even work. There was that biker gang. It was damaged in shipment. You know what? I bet that biker gang, I bet that was like a Pee Wee's uh, Big Adventure uh. scenario where he knocked over the bike and then all the other bikes fell over. Uh, I got. I got to tell you, I just shipped a car across country, and it's expensive as shit. Yeah. I don't see how John could afford that. Which wow. is weird in that movie because that's when tequila comes in. Correct. That's <laughs> fucked up, man. Correct. That's fucked up. Holy shit. <laughs> it's all coming together. Wow. <laughs> it's all making sense now. This is more just John. I don't think that um, him and Elisa have a good chemistry together. He forgets their history a lot. 
and she has to remind him about things that have happened. Yeah. Um, I brought so pizza to your house. I know, but you turned on me. You're like a you're a flip flopper. No, you turned on me. I, I, I know I didn't. I did not turn on you. I did Can not you turn pause on you. For a I, I always said, John. One one of the very few non super chats he put up. Elisa, don't you want to experience John's charm in real life? Yeah, that's a good point because he's letting uh, the chat hit on her for him. Because yes, the other right. one that I played before was just like, oh, you guys got an IRL together, and he's just like, oh. I mean, I don't think so, but everyone yeah. else does. <laughs> mm-hmm. The mob has spoken. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Steve J has spoken. We got to hook up. <laughs> I did not turn on you. I did not turn on you. I, I always said, John, I want you as a guest on my podcast. I really like you. I hung out with you several times, different places. And even so, you still turned on me, and I still don't know why. Because you had me on your show and sabotaged me. Don't you remember? I did not sabotage you. I, you could have just handled that more normally, like, <laughs> and just been like, okay, that's a bad caller. Like there are bad callers oh, yeah. that call into Remember a show that? like yes. that. Like you know that. You should know that mm. better than anyone. Stuttering fuck face. Yes. <laughs> that was the one. She's getting all these phone calls coming in. People are like coming into the chat. And everyone's just like, he's stuttering fuck face. She's like, whoa, what's going on? I'm the guest. <laughs> John, you're bitter, right? <laughs> that's right. <yeah. laughs> that's I mean, you're a bitter guy. Obviously, she's like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> She may have turned a little bit. All right. This is great because Ken Otto is a Nazi sympathizer. Gives a uh, a super chat here. <laughs> <laughs> but again, this is turning into an opportunity for John to hit on her. Right. So he again. doesn't know what to do. Because I love seeing your face. Ken Otto is a Nazi sympathizer. Thanks for five bucks. Hey, John, you should take Elise and her friends out for dinner. I, I would certainly take a, at least when I'm in Florida, I'll take you out to dinner if you want. I'm care. so excited. When are you getting here? August. But anyway, so I live. Okay. So uh, about a two and a half hour drive. Is that correct? Yeah, but like I would be so excited for this because I think you could be <laughs> absolutely incredible. Um, at, yeah, I just think this, this kind of like your podcasting is very good and you're getting the super chats. It's awesome. But I think there's like so much excitement to like this other kind of way. And I think you would just love it and you would love the attention and it's just like more fun. I 100% agree with Elisa here. I've been saying this for a while. If John would just film his day-to-day life, we'd all be watching it. It'd be amazing. Mm-hmm. Just those still photos of him in the bagel shop. People can't get enough of that. He smelled his finger. Like, whoa, what's going on here? This guy, Elisa, yes, you have to make this happen. I don't care if you have to sleep with the guy or have dinner with them or both. You got to get this guy to start IRL streaming so that we can all watch him 24 7. I think she's right. You- and I, I got to jump back in with just one clip because it's kind of related. Okay. Go to PC5. I would love Before to. you do that, did you hear him in, uh, accuse the Shuli Network of photoshopping those bagel shop Shut pictures? Shut up. Did he really? To make them look fatter? <laughs> now, the Shuli Network but aren't I'm the fat. ones who got that. They can't even make a poster. <laughs> but they're gonna make <laughs> good point. Yeah. Surely that would maybe look a four feet tall. It's potatoes making some points over here. Gotta mm-hmm. give it to them. In the area like I bought at, I can't tell you how many people, without me even saying anything, come up to me and ask for pictures and autographs. Wow. That's yeah. why you're growing your hair back out again. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many people because it's embarrassing. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It's going to be recognizable. He got off the uh, plane. My real like, estate agent asked me for my signature. <laughs> the UPS guy. The, the, bank, the mortgage company. <laughs> No, they asked credit card at Applebee's. I had to sign. I had to sign a sheet of paper for him. Everybody wanted my signature and my mom's. So, uh, uh, Elisa's right. The hype is building, man. He's got energy yes. going. Oh, for sure. Heat. This would be huge. I could see him signing his receipts. Like, and what's your name, sugar? All right. <laughs> two, <laughs> two Stephanie. Just, no, just sign it at the customer. All right, whatever. It's fine. I, I wonder if he signs his credit card stuttering, John. He does. Just, uh... It's his legal name at this point. All right. So now we're talking about how John's a teacher. He's going to impress Elisa with this. And he's going to give us some real information, I believe, which I didn't know about. Maybe super fans did. But uh, this is interesting. I also love that he can't just say he's a teacher. Like, he can't just say he's a teacher. It's like, I do it because it's, uh, you know, it's good for the kids. That's why I do it. I don't want it. He goes back and like forth he... between bragging about how much money he makes. 
and then yeah. also saying that he's doing it because the kids need him. And yeah. in this clip, you're going to see he admits that he's still a substitute teacher, but he likes to say that he makes $106,000 a year, and he cites this one article he found that said that <laughs> tenured teachers could make that much over time. But substitutes definitely do not. Substitutes make money while they're teaching and school's out for summer. So, <laughs> Well, I took my exam on the 23rd of August to be a a, a fully credentialed teacher. But Are you right like a now, substitute I'm a teacher? Pro- what? Are you like a substitute teacher or something right now? Yeah, I do long term right now. So I did uh, for seven months last, this last thing, I did uh, three and a half months of science, three and a half months. We have months of drama, but I write my own exams. I teach my own, you know, what? curriculum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I remember being a kid and substitute teachers coming like, forget that shit you were yeah. learning. <laughs> we're going to do it to what I say today. I got my own textbook. He's like, Shakespeare, is- what the fuck is this? We're learning Star Wars today. <laughs> <laughs> is the full-time teacher exam the same as the Mensa exam? Like, I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, let's, let's see. She has some questions. This is good. I teach yeah. drama, a drama class? <laughs> drama and science yeah oh really and then last year was algebra and math seventh eighth grade algebra and sixth grade and math and um, i'm a lot smarter than you think Alicia. I, I, i'm like blown away i don't know what to say about that so eighth grade algebra is taught to eighth graders he's, smart. he's explaining how smart he is because he can right. teach elementary kids about drama and math I don't know how those two things align, but in John's world. So anyway, the point is, is that he's still a substitute teacher. He just admitted that. And he's got this exam coming up on August 23rd, which I think is after the school year starts in L.A., but I could be wrong about that. But anyway, he's mm-hmm. going to take this exam. And then if he's credentialed, he can become a science teacher. But he has to pass that exam first. Now, I'll ask you, Cardiff, what's the largest planet? <laughs> yeah. Jupiter. Yes. Yeah, so and yeah. what's the hottest planet? Mercury. Venus, you pa- you failed. Venus, whatever. I still <laughs> failed. failed. I think I said Mars. When did you see yeah, what he asked me? Yeah, that's why I'm I think I said you Mars. That. Yeah, okay. That's why I'm asking you that because he was showing off how smart he is, asking you these questions a sixth grader would know the answer. What's the yes. nicest planet? <laughs> Uranus. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know if I can name him in order. I'd have to like look that up. Ray, Mercury, no, no Mercury, one thinks you can name Mercury. him in order. I promise you that. Yeah. Ray, it's okay. Yeah, it's what planet okay. are you on right now, Ray? Yeah. We'd be happy with that. You Plan- son of a bitch. Ray's like, a- Ray's like a planet fitness. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All, All right. right. Go ahead. You were going to try to name him in order. Go ahead, Ray. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not now. Aw. Uh, not now. Son. Did we, did we bully you? <laughs> yeah. No. I, uh, I, I doubt I could name him in order. You're not smart enough to teach in the L.A. public school. No, I used to be able to when I was a kid. I might be able to name all the presidents. <laughs> no, you, no, you definitely no, cannot. Please don't. You uh, definitely uh, cannot. Say that. Say that. Say that. You, know what? Tonight. you know what? I would normally never say this, but I would like to hear you name all the presidents. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try to. I'll at least go to like. Actually, uh, Ray, first of all, how many presidents are there? <laughs> Good question. We're 40, <laughs> 46. 40, whatever the 47. 46. Yeah. 46. All right. Um, we don't count Trump. Washington, Adams, Jefferson, <laughs> mm-hmm. Madison, Monroe. No, there's, another, there's Adams. another Adams. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, Andrew Jackson, Martin Van Buren, mm-hmm. William Henry Harrison, John Tyler. Mm-hmm. Is it Millard Fillmore? Zachary Taylor. Are you Polk. going in order, or are you just naming yeah, all the presidents you can order. name? Uh, you've already messed Franklin it up. Then. Pierce. You already messed no, it up. So. Dave, the Buchanan. fourth was John Quincy Abraham. Adams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the it's... fourth was uh, was James Madison. No, John Quincy um, Adams was six. Did you, look you at it. forget Reggie Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll name the top ten again, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was fucking. Dude, you, you forgot. Like, you forgot Garfield. Od. <laughs> Number two is John Adams, John, then Jefferson, okay. then James Madison. It's okay. not John Quincy. Okay. Madison, All right. Madison, James Monroe, uh-huh. then John Quincy Adams, uh-huh. then Andrew Jackson, then Mark uh-huh. Van Buren, uh-huh. then William uh-huh. Henry Harrison, then John Tyler. Uh, so there, there's the first ten. I mean, right. I'll be... <laughs> Monroe, T- uh, Zachary Taylor, Noah Fillmore, Frank Pierce, James Buchanan. Andrew, or no, uh, Lincoln. Lincoln's at 16. Uh-huh. Uh, Andrew Johnson, Ulysses S. Grant. Uh, what have we done William today? <laughs> no, uh, Benjamin Harrison. <laughs> ben Garfield. Uh, all right. All then, right. Uh, you can teach Odie. 
I'll let you teach children, Ray. You win. <laughs> yeah. there you, go. you win. He, he, he did. He did better and than I would have done. Then McKinley. Yeah, then but you're Teddy from Roosevelt. Canada, potato. <laughs> uh, no, you're I, can, I can do all the presidents. I can do all the planets. I just need a like. I just need like two minutes to like look back up and be a guy. To look. <laughs> 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 You name all the fucking planets in order. I didn't say mother- it good. I can. Yeah. I can. You named no planets, Ray. <laughs> you named the planets. You fucking- okay. sons of bitches. The moon, SpaceX, <laughs> International Space Station. All right. Wherever Tommy from MSC has his yeah, Right. <laughs> All right, let me play I'm, one more I'm, clip. I'm time, man. Let me play one more clip, and then we'll move on. We'll catch a dabbler because I'm looking forward to that. But um, John, none of you making fun of Ray Devino. <laughs> John is going to try to impress uh, Elisa here. Apparently, John is quite the cook, <laughs> and he's going to prove it with this information. I wanted to get into that with you. Do you cook? What? No. No, no, definitely not. Well, you? that's the end of that. Yes, yes. You cook? Yes, yes. Wow, that's amazing. I'm shocked. So many things are shocking me today. The math, the cooking. Yes, I made last night. I made um, chicken thighs. Very, very. Tasty. Oh, chicken thighs. Oh, wow, that sounds good. That's not a dish. Yeah, it's an ingredient. That's an ingredient. That's a protein. That's not like. What did you make last night? A protein flour. Wow, <laughs> amazing. That's not what cooking means. Chicken thighs. Chicken yeah. thighs. I mean, they are good, but yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure they are. But what, what was the vegetable? All right, moving on. Awkward. Yeah. I don't want to do a big long segment. I know people are getting burned out. There's a lot of centering John. He's, but we're going right. to have to. It was the so. part that cheered me up. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's a little overexposed right now. But I do have to start off with Mr. Magenta. So John had this song, I'll Talk My Way Out of It. That was his big hit song. He talks about it a lot. All the celebrities who had cameos in the music video. Mr. Magenta has outdone himself on this one with I Will Fight My Way Out of It. Everybody tells me that I'm dumb as fuck They don't seem to understand I'm totally in the best shape of my life right now And boxing three people's a good plan Yelling over everyone because I am no wit You can watch me bitch and scream until my legs get filled with spit I'm sick of Kumi, Usuli and all the lies they spoke So I'll pistol whip Paki and punch that Jew right in the throat They call me in a lie I better yell my way out of it I'm ready for a fight, and I'll box my way out of it. Yeah, I'll fight my way out of it. And you, Carl, I got something special for you. I- I'm gonna show you how a real man b- plays guitar. Let's go! <laughs> Damn these alcoholic fingers! Hey, John, can I try? All right, like you could do any better. Yeah, I, I could do that. I could do that if I felt like it. Oh, fuck this song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mr. Magenta said, the way the syllables are crammed into these verses, he goes, it was the hardest song to do a parody of. He goes, I was going to do a second verse. I was like, fuck it, I can't do this. He blew his voice out trying to sing this stupid thing. But very well done. Yeah, that's great. Mr. Magenta. <laughs> I, I appreciate that a lot. Now, I want to pick up where we left off last time. Because Beer on the Balcony is back. And it was supposed to be Opie. Opie canceled because of weather. Right. And so we got Elisa Jordana. And what I want to present to you today, John has said many times that I think I'm Howard Stern. Now, I don't do anything that Howard Stern does. I've never tried to be like Howard Stern, but... That's what John knows as a guy who's good at broadcasting. So he pretends that I'm copying Stern. What I'm going to show you today is that John's actually the one who thinks he's Howard Stern. The way he's interviewing this woman 
is reminiscent of how Howard would talk to attractive female guests back when Howard was actually entertaining and interesting to listen to. The problem is, is that John doesn't pick up on any of the clues that this isn't working. Like anyone else doing this interview would have pivoted long before John ever does. So we'll, we'll start here. Well, the thing I like about you, Elise, is that you're an open book. And, yeah. and, and, and you know, I appreciate that because you came, you just blatant, just without even worrying, you said, oh, yeah, I had sex with Vin Diesel. Uh, no, I didn't. No, no, no. I didn't have sex with Vin Diesel. I went out with Vin whoops. Diesel. <laughs> well, Ethan Hawke. Oh, yeah, him I did, yeah. And David Blaine. Him I did, yeah. <laughs> What is, why is that funny? <laughs> Have you seen David Blaine? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it's is funny. Is that why he's laughing at that? He's just like, no, what I love about you is that you came out and said you fucked Vin Diesel. He's like, no, I didn't. I didn't fuck Vin Diesel. So he's already, his research staff is not doing a good job for him. Already. His team? Yeah, his team's not doing him any favors on that. So I don't know why John thought that was such a hilarious answer that she slept with like these celebrities. But uh, now John's got a follow-up question on this. So who was, just be honest with me, and I know you will be, who was better in bed, Benji, Ethan, or David? Well, Benji's the best guy out of all those guys. So but who was better in bed? Just bed. I, nobody, nobody's good in bed. I, only like uh, two people in my life have been good in bed. Okay. So you see what's happening here. Elisa Jordana does not like sex. She just said nobody's good in bed. Uh, maybe two people. Maybe, maybe that's about it. So right here, you got to kind of change your pattern. No, you keep asking questions <laughs> yeah. related to her sex life. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, guess what, Doug? You're right. That's precisely what John decides to do. People are good before you get to that, I think. It's, like, very exciting. Like, I like the time, like, when you're the courting area, the courting stage. Yes. It's, like, the most fun. Like, when once you get to the sex part, it's, like, so... Like, I don't like that part. That's, like, my least favorite part. I like when you first meet the person. It's, like, super exciting. Uh, you know, you're imagining all these great things, and then it just goes downhill from there. <laughs> but 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 you do get excited, right? Like, about... Like, like, sex or, like, hooking up with somebody? Yeah, yeah, before I do. Yeah, it's very exciting. And then when you do, it's just a letdown. Usually, yeah, yeah, definitely. She seems fun. So no, so no squirting discount then? <laughs> 25% off. Now, I have to say, and, you know, she said the only two people were good, and he asked who the, those people were, and she goes, you know what, I just came up with a number. I, I don't even remember ever having a good time. I just want to say this to Elisa. If sex with everyone sucks, it might be you. It's very possible that that's a Elisa problem. Or she's just trying to be very unsexy and get out of this topic. Yeah. That's also very possible, although I've heard her talk about like this before. Oh, okay. Eric Shun with two bucks says, Elisa's beautiful. John looks like a grandma. And he leaves this up on the screen for a very long time, <laughs> <laughs> which is always fun. Yeah. Why not get insulted for two bucks? Yeah. You know, yeah. dignity, schmignity. That's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that too. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to find out why John chose Florida. As we know, John and I are neighbors. And the reason why John decided to move to Florida is this. And in West Palm Beach, I haven't met anyone, not one soul. And I've been here for like a few months. And I Do you go know out that in like, Florida. It's eight women to every man. Oh my gosh! Oh no! <laughs> eight single women to every man. No, I doubt that's true. Yes, yeah, single women. But if that is true, they're widows, right? Right? Definitely. Because women live longer than men, yeah. and that's where people go to, to retire and die. And die, yeah. So Johnson, they're going, oh, yeah, I'm going to be scoring nonstop in Florida. <laughs> Watch out. He thinks he's going on a college campus or something. It's like, no, that's not what this is at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. We got sidetracked. Let's get back to sexy talk. I know that's what Doug wants to do. He wants to learn more about this woman who doesn't have a sex life. Talk about sex. I think it's two people that don't have a sex life talking about sex. Oh, yeah. By the way, we do get into that. That is very true. Great. On the phone in one of our lengthy chats, you said that that any woman who, or, who says she orgasmed during intercourse is lying. The only way that you a woman's going to be able to or, orgasm is through oral sex. That's what you said. I said that? Wow, I yes. say a lot of stuff. In a private message <laughs> to me. Well, I remember everything. <laughs> In a private conversation. You remember that, that's for sure. Okay. Um, well, how could I not? <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, I mean, I've, 
Gosh. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I can't imagine, like, having an orgasm from penetration. Maybe some people have. I can't imagine yep. that happening. Um, wow. Dynamite stuff there, John. <laughs> You're really getting this girl to say some sexy stuff right there. Pretty good stuff. Yeah, I, I don't like dick. Uh, it doesn't do anything for me. She doesn't like sex, John. She's been pointing this out. Yeah, but just keep again. talking. All right. So if you talk to a girl who doesn't like sex about sex, there's only one thing you could do that's worse than that as an interviewer. And that would be this. Everybody's different. I'm just, I was just speaking for myself. I'm kind of an unusual person anyway. So. And how old are you? I'm old. I'm very old. I'm your age. No, really? No, I'm not your age. Um, I, I, don't, I don't say it, John. This is going great. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you just asked her, how old are you? And she's how much like, do you weigh? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> That's next. These are the questions you do not ask a woman. Every such an asshole. Oh, my gosh. And then this gets even crazier because he asks if, um, well, she asks if he's having sex. And he says, not as much as I used to, because I'm ugly now. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of a good deflection on her part. But then John asks the next worst question you could possibly ask, aside from how much she weighed, how old are you? So how many how many guys would you say, how many guys have you slept with? So in the last three years, none. <laughs> in, the really? last ten, in the last 10 years, like two. But in my 20s, I was like a very happening person. So how many you think over ten? In my in my twenties, it was like you know. Um, I mean, I could think of like probably five offhand then. Um, but how many? Total? I was popular. Uh, total, like 10, under, 20? Un, under ten. Under ten. Jesus Christ! Wow, yeah, you're really... yeah, yeah, under ten. Because, because these recent years, there've been nobody. So John is applauding her for not having a lot of sexual partners. She doesn't like sex, John. <laughs> I don't know why you're not understanding this. She keeps telling you over and over again. This is not her thing. She's not into it. Well, I mistakenly said that his superpower is he's incapable of being embarrassed. He's incapable of taking a hint. Correct. He has no idea. He can deflect anything. Now, I, like a lot of people, first met Elisa when she was on the Howard Stern show dating Benji Bronk. And I remember how much she used to talk about how she didn't fuck him when they were dating. <laughs> so this is a pattern here. And... For some reason, John is just not picking up on it. And also, what was that slut shaming thing where he applauded her for? I, I don't know. What, so that was the right answer then, I guess. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is. So apparently there was a right answer and she gave it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's bizarre. I don't even understand how that works. All right. So then they talk about if, um, well, John, I guess she hooked up with a guy or didn't hook up with him, but met a guy from like her discord channel or something. And so she asked John if he's ever hooked up with a chatter, as they call them. I think he's like Mexican. This uh, this guy from my chat. I met a guy from my chat uh, last Uh-oh. year. Have you ever met somebody? From- oh, you did meet somebody from your chat. Did I? Who? Did, did they like threaten to kill you or something? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I have someone like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that? I knew. No, you literally I, pointed I, a gun at the camera and go, this is for you. <laughs> so, I, so I met up with a guy so like, I like similar to that situation, <laughs> except he brought a screwdriver. Orange juice and vodka? <laughs> I, lo- I love how she just trumped him. That was great. He's like, yeah, she sent me a photo of her holding a gun. And she's like, yeah, well, this guy, I went out with him and he brought a screwdriver along with us on the day. Like, oh, that seems scarier than what I just said. Whoops. My bad. I love that she remembers Heather W and John does not. Yeah, yeah right. It's very funny. All right. So then they go back and forth a little bit. And now Elisa's going to get to the story here about this guy that she went on a date with, this Mexican guy from Discord that she thought was a, a good guy. But then I went out with him on Valentine's Day. And he did bring a screwdriver to the date. And I ended up handcuffing him um, because I didn't trust him. I didn't. I thought he could kill me. Wait, wait, you have handcuffs? Just in case. Yeah, just in case of something like that. Oh, is that the only reason why you have handcuffs? No, no, they're not like sexy handcuffs. They're police grade handcuffs because I do a lot of like IRL streaming with strangers and fans. I don't know who they are. Fucking John's just not getting the hint. Ooh, handcuffs. Ooh. Yeah, he's jacking off right now. Yeah. It's like, John... She's not bringing sex toys with her. She hates sex. They're not furry, okay? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know what you think this is. And then did you roll some dice? (laughs) One of them says lick, and the other one has a part of the body. 
he had the screwdriver to my throat, like all the way in your throat. Did you take it all the way? In your- <laughs> How deep? <laughs> That, that whole story didn't make any fucking sense. John yeah. had no follow-up questions. I'd be like, well, how do you handcuff a guy who wants to hurt you? What do you mean you carry around handcuffs? Is she great at, like, tackling guys and getting their arms behind their back? And I would watch that. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Maybe I'll have to tune into her IRL stream that <laughs> <Yeah>. she's doing. <laughs> Let's stream with her. All right. So then my buddy Gonzo Shitcock calls in to um, Lisa while she's on the show, and she pulls it up for John. And this is what I was talking about the other day. Where this was Gonzo who told me this. We were DMing and he said, I think the reason why John is so much more animated now is because he's used to teaching 10 year olds. And so he acts like a clown in front of them and they'll giggle and stuff. And he's just like, yeah, I got it. You know, and so now he's going on the internet and doing the same thing. So Gonzo gets to ask him that question. Oh, wait, I'm getting a call. Hold on. Oh, it's Gonzo. Hey, Gonzo. Hey, Gonzo. What? Oh, also, and I don't know if this is true or not, but John had a friend in DC named Gonzo. Back in the day, because he was trying to stay at Gonzo's house when he was doing his DC trip oh, to yeah. interview celebrities. Different Gonzo. So John's like, oh, it's Gonzo. So, you know, this is Gonzo Shitcock from the Howard Stern Show, who goofs on you, John. But anyway. So. What's up? Hey, hey can, can John hear me? Or are you can you hear me? Gonzo? Could, could you hold him closer to the... Where uh, would I go? Would I hold closer to here? Okay, yeah. go ahead, Gonzo. Hey, what's up, John? It's Gonzo. I just wanted to ask. I'm a big fan, John. Uh, I just wanted to know if you can unblock me on Twitter. And then I had another question, too. Okay. Um, John, do you think that since you've been back, your big return, your personality, I noticed, is a lot more animated and like kind of like quirky? Do you think that's because you've been teaching children and your audience has been children and now you're like doing the same comedy like for children, like with the with the crazy expressions and stuff and the, yeah. you know, the, the big aspect and all? <laughs> the balloons. <laughs> Uh, I can answer that. Uh, I'm just happier to do it now. Like, I, I know why, because you're probably more relaxed. Well, yeah, because at least I was doing politics for the longest time. Yeah. And, you know, I would have congressmen and women on. So it was very, and I had to do research, I had to read books. <laughs> you know, when I had a guest on that was an author, I had to read, to read words. Pause it. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I had congressmen and women on, and it was <laughs> fucking miserable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what he just said. That's what he just said. He goes, I had to read book, <laughs> book, <laughs> read book. <laughs> and my computer won't on now, so we got that. <laughs> I like think he was miserable because he had to do research and know what he was talking about. Yeah. What a pain in the ass that is. So this is so much better now. And he's a teacher. Well, he goes into talking about how rewarding it is to be a teacher, mm-hmm. and this is just fantastic. And yeah. Let me tell you something, Lisa. Like, the good thing about doing that is that the kids, like, the notes they write you and, like, like the cards they give you. Which they're forced to do, by the way. This is not a voluntary thing. There's, like, a teacher appreciation day. And then they write little notes to tell other teachers, hey, Mr. Melendez, you're great. And he's like, oh, whoa, really? Me? A little of me? (laughs) I'm invited to one of my – I have a special needs kid who – Three who invited me to a birthday party in a few days. I'm going to go to a birthday party. I- he, he won't <laughs> shut up about this. <laughs> He's going to a special needs kid's birthday party. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? <laughs> I want Mr. Melendez at my party. <laughs> I want Mr. Melendez at my party. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll see if he's busy. He's not busy. He'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> that's insane. Oh. A birthday party. I mean, oh, but, that's yeah, so but great. wow, <laughs> yeah, you're and a big boy. That. <laughs> that part of it was great for me. Like when I would, uh, when I walked down the halls, Mr. Melendez, you're my favorite teacher. Mr. Melendez, I was like, I'm... there's no way. Yeah, there's no way kids are yelling, "You're my favorite teacher," because then like the, the the kids' science teachers like, no. Oh. Yeah. He's standing right behind the case, like, oh, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> so it, that part of it is so rewarding. And a lot of the teachers also knew that, you know, that the way I teach, I make it fun. Now, he's going to give an example of what he was able to make fun when he teaches. And I swear I've heard him say this at least four times since he's come back. This is the proof that he's a very fun and informed science teacher. I bet you already know what he's about to say here, Producer Chris. Now, so... Even though you learn that Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system, <laughs> I, I, it's in a fun way. 
You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so you could make it fun. You could bring your personality to it. Yes. Holy shit, John. Unbelievable. So in, in all fairness to your, your previous point, I once had a teacher that got in trouble for drinking whiskey during class. Mm-hmm. That was my favorite teacher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good point. Those always are the drug. I had a drug addict math teacher. He was my favorite, too. He was great. I didn't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really good point. I had a few. Yeah. <laughs> it was the teachers who wanted me to learn and succeed. I was just like, oh, fucking riding my ass. <sighs> fuck this person. Facts and figures. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Grades. That's all you ever talk about. <laughs> <laughs> you want me here on time and studying and bringing homework. Fuck this asshole. And again with the Mars shit. Jesus Christ, this is math class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Holy shit. That one random fact that Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system, he has brought up at least four times. And I don't watch every second of what he's doing. Obviously, he's probably brought it up dozens of times at this point. He probably still names Pluto as a planet. What? (laughs) That's outrageous. Let's get back to John hitting on Elisa. And people are going to, well, John catches himself here. But he explains that that's not what's happening at all. At least you're a cutie pie. Teams to him, and everyone's going to say, John's hitting on Elisa. I'm not hitting on it. Just, we've been friends for a long time. Yeah. Teams well, to we him. Were enemies. We were enemies, too, though. You blocked me from Twitter. You just unblocked me to invite me to the show. Uh-huh. <laughs> Amazing. Well done, Elisa, right there. He goes, listen, I'm not hitting on it. We're just longtime friends. We go way back. She's like, we weren't even talking up until two hours ago. And if you remember from our last episode, she didn't want to come on camera. Right. She wanted nothing to do with this yeah. interview, and he's been insulting her the entire time. Uh, I noticed your hair's wet, but not your T-shirt. That's just rude. <laughs> you say there's a storm outside. Can you go back outside? <laughs> <laughs> Unfucking real. Uh, I love this guy. Anyway, so I wanted to just pick up on that a little bit. I know people are uh, burned out on centering John, but um, he has come back in a big way, and it is very exciting. Speaking of ladies, let's talk about Karen Brennan, because Karen Brennan, for whatever reason on Wednesday on Misery Loves Company, tried to ruin my show. Now, we've been talking about this for a while. Very excited that Suttering John and myself, 1v1 debate. We got to talk a little bit on Misery Loves Company a month ago, but this was going to be just him and me. And he said he was doing research on me, and he's got all these questions. He's going to expose me and my hypocrisies. You know, he's a... Hypocrisy police Mm -hmm. over there. It's one of his jobs. People were looking forward to this. They're looking forward to this debate that we are going to have. Well, for some reason, and not just some reason, I know exactly why Karen did this, and we'll get into it. But Karen decided to, you trolling me on my own show, too, Kate? No. Just making sure people know I'm hitting points. Okay. Exactly. All right. So this is Karen Brennan trying to uh, actively ruin my show. I, I need your advice here. I don't like people talking shit behind your back and then be like, and then Carl's going to act like he's your best pal when no, you do I his know. fucking show. And that's why. You tell me, should I do this or not? No, fuck no. All right, then I'm not doing it. What is he paying you? We're just going to split the super. What does it mean? No, See, this is the thing about Karen. I can't believe that's where his head goes. What's Carl paying you? What difference does it make to you? Why do you care? to do with right. fucking anything. I know why he's mad because he paid John 3000 bucks. He mm-hmm. way mm-hmm. overpaid for John because now everyone's getting John. John's so overexposed now. He's everywhere. Yeah. And so Kevin's going, why the fuck did I shell out $3,000 to this asshole? Is on every fucking stream now? Yep. John was the worst NFT ever. Yes. Scam. <laughs> bad, bad investment. You're right. But even at the beginning of that clip, uh, Karen says, oh, I hate that. He'll talk behind your back and then pretend he's your best friend when he's on your show. That's exactly what Kevin is doing right now. He always calls John a buffoon when he isn't on. Why is it the hypocrisy police calling him out on That's a very good point. That's a very good point because I didn't understand this thing where where Karen's decided that I was going to be his best friend when we got on a show together. I don't don't know why he thought that. I don't know why he thinks that. doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah, a guy who self-admittedly doesn't have friends. He doesn't even like friends. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, do I have to give the guy a, a rusty trombone? Uh, <laughs> yes, I've already heard oh. from Joey C and a bunch of other people. This is all a big Joey C. Bob and <laughs> Spook, Bob and a Wait, Spook. you're taking you're taking the counsel of Joey C. No, but <laughs> so if it, if it is, I won't fucking do it because I don't need it. No, say you need a guarantee of a thousand, and then and then he can have what, what's left over exactly. because so now Karen is actively trying to take money out of my pocket for some reason. I don't know how that helps him in any single way. 
And the reason why I'm playing these clips to set this up, because we are going to show that Karen's decided to completely rewrite history. A day Mm -hmm. later, he comes back and changes this entire thing, how everything went down. So we're watching this right now. Thank you, Drunk on Cringe, for putting this together. We're watching what happened. John comes on his show. This is an hour before we're supposed to start our show. And by the way, Karen, the reason why we were doing our show at 6 p.m. Eastern was because I didn't want to compete with Misery Loves Company. So we wanted to do it after your show. And we had it all planned out. At 5 o'clock, an hour before the show, John pops on. And I'm prepping for the show. I have no idea what's going on. I just have Misery Loves Company in the background. And all of a sudden, I see John pop up. And John's like, should I do this show? And Kevin's like, no, definitely not. I'm like, what the fuck? The fuck is going on right now? Because Carl's going to lie to you. He's going to say YouTube and Apple, everybody's taking their cut. And this is all that's left over. All right. Now Kevin has decided I'm going to lie to Stuttering John. That's a weird thing to say, too. Why do you make up that I'm going to lie to Suttering John about how much money we made? I showed him all of the accounting after we got to think. Thankfully, this actually did end up happening. Yeah. I want to thank uh, Alex Stein, I think, for helping so me. So first, he's he's like, don't do the show. If yep. you do the show, get more money. And just so you know, Carl's going to rip you off. Yeah. And the fact so that... Trifecta. The fact that Karen thinks that I'm going to rip him off makes me think that like maybe KB is a liar and lies about shit. Because why else would you think that? Unless that's something that you would do. And listen, I'm sorry, Karen, that your pilot didn't get picked up. I actually thought it was pretty good. I watched it. It wasn't bad. But now you're in my world, KB. Now we're on the same level. And the fact that you think you know me or know anything about me that I'd be dishonest with John, I make enough fucking money. I don't need to steal from stuttering John. I'm good. That's what, well, that's what, that's what anybody would do. That's what anybody well, would do. Well, to be quite honest, I'd rather watch the Yankees and Mets. Adam, what should he do? Adam, what should he do? Please, Adam. Yeah, I think the guarantee is a good idea. All right. This, this is fucking insane. <laughs> so John then blocks me on Twitter. Well, we were DMing, setting this up. As I'm watching this happen, he goes on and writes, all right, I'm not doing the show, and then blocks me, so I can't even respond to him. He's doing this while he's on the show. He tells Kevin, all right, I blocked him. I'm done with this. And then he leaves. So I am screaming at them to send me the link. I email Adam, like, please send me the link. They decide to let me on the show. And I know this gets confusing when I'm playing clips of me. So I'll just tell you right now that this is me from this past Wednesday, right before we are supposed to go on with Stuttering John on the Who Are These Podcasts YouTube channel. Play the clip, Adam. That was fucked up. No, I didn't know. I didn't know. I I didn't know he's going to really literally take my advice. But I I said, but it's not true. No, he's using it as an excuse uh, to say, oh, yeah. look, Kevin told me not to yeah, do it. Yeah, but if you're so going to have him on, don't shit on him for a week. Just, just he didn't lay, really just shit, shit on, on him. He was on out. today. He didn't shit on him really at all. shit on him. Carl's been doing it for years. I've enjoyed it. Yeah, but you guys, really? well, he's, he was interviewing this fucking, this Lisa Jordan is a fucking loser, and you act like he's a loser. She's a fucking gigantic loser. She she doesn't fuck anybody. She's like, like I'm watching a clip, and you guys are right. She, like, I, I, I didn't got women ever come from intercourse. It's like, it's like she's a loser. She she's 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 uh, trying to marry Andy Dick or whatever the fuck. And then you guys act like he's just leave John alone till he fucking go back goes back to school and then then shit on him again. Karen is scrambling right here. So <laughs> all of a sudden we're talking about how Elisa Jordana is a loser. What does that do with anything? I just watched you on the show tell John to take more of my money and to not do the show. And he's going, well, yeah, but Carl Elisa Jordana. Because what happened was I posted a clip from our podcast that we had done the previous weekend where we made fun of John interviewing Elisa Jordana, trying to be Howard Stern and not pulling it off at all. Right. And Kevin's whole point is, and I don't know why he thinks this, that I shouldn't have posted that video because I had an interview with John later that day. I don't understand how those two things connect in Karen's mind because John is doing a show called Hypocrisy Police on a daily basis, calling me out for everything. This is what's going on right now. Yeah. But I was supposed to be nice to John for seven days before we do the show. Until he goes back to school. So I'm sorry. That was me live again just now. Now I'm going to go back to the clip. I know this is confusing, but this is back to me on MLC. I don't understand. You guys can't do anything else but stuttering John. We have a lot of stuff. How about Stancil? How about Fonzie over here at Stancil? Shuli was covering me yesterday, I saw, which is sad, really. Sorry, man. Yeah, I'll take we the ran views. out of material. 
Yeah, I know. So, Kevin, I'm sorry I'm not running my show the way that I'm supposed to. I didn't realize I had to run things through you first to figure out how to do my own fucking show over here. John and I have been building up to this. He's been talking shit about me. He's got his hypocrisy police show. He goes on and rags on me nonstop. I'm ragging on him. We're going to do a show together, one-on-one debate. My producer's not here. No one else is in this house right now. It's just going to be me and him. And all of a sudden, you guys are filling him with all this fucking shit. Oh, it's going to be this whole thing. They're all going to gang up on him. That was never the case. That was never the case. He's doing great research on me. You guys are fucking making shit up and, and telling him the shit and giving him an out and it's fucked up. What yeah, were you going to pay him? What are you going to pay him? One on one. It's one on one. Let's talk about the pay. Yeah, that's the that's pay. the other fucking thing too. Thanks for we we already negotiated the deal, John. And exactly. I. And then you're going in there and going. By the way, an hour before the show, oh, you got to renegotiate that deal, John. You're taking money out of my pocket. Why, KB? What the fuck? I know you're pissed. You paid him three thousand bucks, but I think I did a pretty good job for you on that episode. I made it interesting because after I left, you guys had nothing yeah. to fucking talk about. It's impressive that you got all that in. Well, KB is a deer in headlights. Yes. Yeah. Well, like <laughs> you said, he's scrambling. Yeah. He's trying to deflect. He's trying to deflect. Now, there's been a lot of speculation that Karen really was just fucking around and John's just so stupid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I, I don't have to reiterate anything. I kind of made uh, my points there. The other thing that happened, and this is really the crux of it, aside from the fact that he paid 3000 bucks for John and he's pissed about that, he's got some buyer's remorse on that front. Aside from that, I went on Shuley's show that morning, Wednesday morning. And I went on there to promote this show. I know KB doesn't realize this, but the BS show is doing very good numbers now. I can talk to, I think there was 4,000 views by that afternoon of my appearance on Shuley's show, promoting the show that I'm doing live, trying to get as many eyeballs as possible. So I explained to KB that I was on there to promote the show. And I think that KB is just mad because he doesn't like Shuley. So he's mad at me, even though Bob, who's out, who's the fucking B in BS, is sitting right next to him. But he's mad at me for going on that show. And it's insane. He was friends with you first. I know. Is, is that? That's, it's the common factor, Carl. They all want to be your friend. Well, I don't think all of them. I don't think Karen wants to be my friend anymore. <laughs> I think he does. Rochester, you're good at your job. Shuley sucks. I don't know why you do his fucking show, but I feel like you guys are all in cahoots, and I'm sick of it. I'm promoting my show, Kevin. There's over a thousand people watching live to that this morning. I'm promoting this big show that I've been building up. If you're not on, it gets 400 people. It doesn't 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 matter. I'm promoting the fucking show on their show. And KB, I'll tell you this. Chad Zubak goes, KB doesn't have a personality. I go, it's because he doesn't want to talk to you, Chad. I had your fucking Mm -hmm. back on that show, and meanwhile, you're going out here and telling Suttering John he should take more of my money and not even do the show and go watch the, the fucking hell Yankee team. The Yankees fucking suck, John. They're not making the playoffs this year. Get over it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, John, I changed my mind. Do the show, but Thank still you. get a guarantee. <laughs> John's like, I can only do an hour because I got to watch the Yankees Mets game, which is fine. I'm a sports fan. I mean, it's baseball. There's 162 games. You can miss the first few innings, but okay, whatever. That's what he, that's what he wants to do. So because of what I just did there, I said the Yankees aren't going to make the playoffs. They're in last place. It's a tough division. But anyway, not the point. The point is, John wants to bet me whether or not the Yankees are going to make the playoffs now. He wants to get a $100 bet going on whether the Yankees are going to... $100? Yeah. It's three figures. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. Let's get into the next day. Karen is doing, I guess, damage control here because he knows the way he came off. Not good. Not good at all. So thankfully, Bob Levy for life calls him out with a super chat. So this is now fast forward. Oh, I should mention. So what happens after this? John blocks me, says he's not going to do the show. And I start sending out links to people because I'm going to do a show where we talk about how John is a pussy and bailed. Because I don't know what else to do. I've been promoting this. And uh, so I text John and I say, John, you're being a pussy. Come on the show or something like that. So then John texts me back and goes, okay, I'll be there. I was like, whoa, holy shit, that's amazing. And he did show up, and we did do the show, and it is up on our Patreon. Alex Stein told me that he called John. He was watching this. He called John and said, John, you have to do Carl's show. So thank you, Alex Stein, for, for doing that. So the show did end up happening. So everything worked out, despite Kevin Brennan, because KB was definitely trying to sabotage it. He did everything he could to sabotage this. And so this is Bob Levy for Life calling him out. I believe for life. Oh, wow. Yeah, 2799 Canadian. Hatred is like drinking poison and then waiting for it to kill your enemy. Hatred Whoa. is like drinking. Mike, can you shut the fuck up? Hatred is like drinking poison and then waiting for it to kill your enemy. Congrats, KB. You've turned into what 
you claim Shuli is. Never take food off another man's table, period. Punk move. First of all, first of all, I did more for that piece of shit show by doing what I did than anything else they could have done, probably for life. So go fuck yourself with all due respect. You think Carl coming on my show and John coming on my show didn't help their show? You fucking maroon. And what's Carl? What is Carl's show? Doesn't Carl watch clips of other podcasts and then comment on them? That's all I did. I watched Carl's show, a clip of Carl's show that Carl put out. It wasn't put out by somebody else. Carl's dumb enough. The day of his big interview, he puts out a clip of him shitting on Stuttering John. I just thought it was an odd choice. So I said, that's really, really stupid for Stuttering John, for him to shit on Stuttering John the day of the big uh, interview. Is it? Is and that everyone's stupid? like, oh, you fucked with his money. I didn't touch his money. He made more money because of me. Everybody do. John wasn't going to come on your show so you guys could be friends and right. talk sports. Correct. Why wouldn't I put out a video shitting on John yeah. leading up to our debate that we we're going to have? He's insane. Yeah. Could you imagine a presidential debate? Trump's talking all good about Joe Biden for a week leading up to it. He's actually doing a swell job, this guy. Yeah. I, I think he should get reelected. He's pretty good. Tyson and Holyfield having lunch that right. Saturday yeah. afternoon. I, what, what is Karen <laughs> talking about? He, this is retarded. And he's blatantly lying. Yeah. He's blatantly lying. So now he's going, all I do is comment on a clip. We just played it. You told John not to do my show. And then he said, if you do do a show, make sure you get $1,000 up front. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Tukey would like to say, whoever is in charge of inflating Mike Boschetti, please stop. He's at the maximum PSI. He's going to explode. <laughs> yeah, I know. Mike Boschetti is not looking great. He's not in the best shape of his life He's like John is. He's not long for this world. He's not long for this world. Like, you know, John's in peak physical form right now, as he's claimed. Mike Boschetti, not so much. So that's too bad. All right. So this is uh, all my fault somehow. I love the way he's spinning this. He made the show even mm-hmm. better. This all happened despite him trying to sabotage it. And now he's trying to pretend that, oh, no, 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 no. Because I told John not to do it. That's why all the people watch the show. We had three times the number of live viewers that KB gets on these shows. So he can't say that he got all these people. Like, we had a lot of people anticipating the show, excited for it, which is why a lot of people are, are kind of pissed. There's a lot of FKB going on. Oh, yeah. In the chat lately, because he tried mm-hmm. to fucking ruin this thing that people wanted to see. People were excited about it. The point is, Carl's whole show is watching other people's shows and commenting on them, usually condescendingly. So, so again, Carl should have waited to put out the clip. I wasn't looking for a clip. I sat down to eat my chicken corn and blue, and all of a sudden this clip comes up. <laughs> Bob had texted me that they were doing a show today, so I'm like, that's odd. That he would put out, a, and I looked at the time, and he had been out for like four hours. So it was released that day, and I'm like, if this is your big fucking Richard Nixon, uh, David Frost interview, maybe you should keep your fucking clips to yourself oh, about oh, how oh. you're shit. Mike, on, my wife, Mike, shut the fuck up. You if you're going to shit on Stuttering John, why don't you wait till the interview's over and then put out the clips? So somebody like me, and I wasn't fucking with his money, I was literally saying, uh, John, you should get a guaranteed money yeah. because Carl's going to play mm-hmm. you just like Chad played you, just like Shuley played you. So I would get guaranteed money. I wouldn't trust them. Uh, uh, Charles probably going to lie about uh, how much they made. But the fact of the matter is, Carl's an idiot for putting out a clip where he's shitting on Stutter John when he could it when he's, he's doing an interview with Lisa Jordana. Lisa Jordana is a fucking clown, if that's her name. We had her on. She was like the worst guest we ever had. But, of course, Carl has to shit on Stuttering John because he's a hack. And then I, I just commented on it. No. I'm not allowed to comment on it. You didn't just comment on it. I, I love that only Karen thinks that I'm – this is my fault. I fucked something up. He's the only person who thinks this. And you can tell he doesn't even believe it because he's making up lies. He's making up lies about what he said, what happened. This it, is gaslighting, by the way, John. This, yes, this is what gaslighting is. Correct. Yeah, it's the whole money thing pisses me off because it's based on this is nothing. Right. I used to be a partner at a multi million dollar company. I'm not a guy who's looking to make an extra three hundred dollars off of Stuttering John. I don't give a fuck about that. I'd much rather have round two with Stuttering John. And we'll get into all that shit when we talk about Stuttering John in a little bit, because that's another annoying thing. Working with John is, is not easy. <laughs> it's it's not an easy thing. I'm trying though. I'm trying my best. So now the other thing that KB is doing here is now he's trying to say, so he tuned in to the show 
and he saw the portion where I grabbed my acoustic guitar <laughs> to try to figure out this amazing song that John had written about Patrick Melton. And so now KB is going to spin this that the entire show was just us being best pals. So far, the only thing he's done right is telling Mike to shut the fuck up. So, Oh, I know. Just want to point and, that out. And Mike Buschetti, if you're shaped like that, why is the camera pointed at your stomach? <laughs> why wouldn't he point the camera up at his face? Like, look at the way I'm framed right now. I am not a skinny man. Yeah, but... But the way I'm framed, you don't know that. Mike's body language says, I don't want to get up to adjust the camera. It's insane. <laughs> no. It's insane. The the disproportionate size of his head. Yeah. All right. Well, I, this isn't about... He's like, a sack puppet. This isn't about Mike Machete. <laughs> <laughs> if Mike Machete had Tukey's voice, he'd be the biggest star on the internet. <laughs> wow. Like Trish. <laughs> so I comment on it, and then Carl gets all mad. What are you doing commenting on a clip? That's your whole show, you hack. And I did you a fucking favor. You know, you know, I know he's lying. He keeps repeating it over and over again. Mm-hmm. Like you said, this is what gaslighting is. He goes, all I did was comment on a, a video that I saw. That's what you do. That's not all you did. You know that for a fact. Everyone on the show, except for Mike Buschetti, who's out of it, knows that. I mean, obviously, Bob knows that. Adam knows that. This mm-hmm. is some zoom on level shit. I show like Don King style. You fucking hack. And then, like I predicted, it would be all, it would, they started playing guitar together. They pulled out guitars and they were playing. I remember Richard Nixon and fucking David Frost. Didn't they play harmonica together? You fucking hacks. And someone pointed this out to me, which is very true. KB always comes in hot on his own show. He's pissed at Bob Levy or whatever it is. He comes in hot. By the end of the show, everything's calmed down. So I was trying to do something with John where we hashed things out. We had the debate. And then I said, okay, let's find some common ground. And actually what... Kevin obviously doesn't understand is that I was goofing on John for writing the shittiest song I've ever heard in my life. A child would come up with this. He's trying to goof on Patrick Melton, who's over 300 pounds. And KB, this is why I pulled out the guitar, was to goof on John for coming up with this fucking song. I come up with original ideas all the time. I write songs all the time. And the, I love the setup, too. He's talking about how the dues payer doesn't do anything original. This guy does all sorts of original things, like strum a C chord into a G chord and then miss the D by a mile. Duh. Patty, 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 why do what? you eat so fucking much? <laughs> it sounds that, that guy was playing hot for teachers the greatest guitarist in the world oh yeah compared to what i just heard he's missing all those chords okay this is an atlantic records recording artist correct i don't know if you know this but he once opened for ted nugent wow i, I bet after the concert ted's like hey show me that lick again john yeah how do you do that c to a what <laughs> Oh, I should point out, too, because John still is claiming he's a better guitarist than I am, which is Mm -hmm. absurd after watching this especially. So I went ahead and asked him a very simple question. Anyone who played guitar as long as he has, what are the four notes in a G major seven? John stared at his fretboard, started fingering a G seven, which is a different chord than what I asked him, and then tried to figure out, like, uh, G. I'm like, well, yeah, that's one of them. Yeah. Uh, D. Correct. Seven. <laughs> well, if he would have said seven, it would have been B, and then he said F. And I go, well, that's wrong. It's it's an F sharp. But what? what, what oh, huh? It's a fucking joke. That's not the point. Right. God damn it. Why am I talking about that again? The point is, look at how bad this is, KB. Yeah, let's get back to one of his original ideas. Do you see why I brought my guitar down here and pulled it out? Was to goof on this. Patty. Patty. And aside from the guitar playing, that melody, that's like something you would sing to a dog around your house because you're bored. (laughs) But he's geniusly rhyming fatty with patty. No, that part's part's amazing. You're right. Mm -hmm. That's the part that's amazing. But that's not a good melody, John. It's not impressive. Why do you eat so fucking much? I thought it was going to continue. 
Well, I'm, I'm the I'm the Mama Mac Davis here. See, Deuce Bayer, I can come up with things like that. <laughs> He's proud of himself. I know. Only John would brag after that. He's proud of burying himself that. for that. And His talents are endless. It gets even crazier, Tukey, because he's like, you know what? I want to do that again. That was so good. Let me grab my guitar and do that again. Encore! Patty, 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 Patty. Why are you such a fat fuck? What was that last chord? <laughs> uh, e e uh, minor. I think I proved my point. <laughs> yeah, you yep. certainly did. Deuce payer. I have a little acoustic guitar here, and I can come up with something like that. Bam! Is that called ukulele? Is that insane? He's taking a victory lap. Yeah. After singing Fatty Patty and hitting the, the guitar is not in tune, he's not playing the chords correctly, yeah. and he's taking a victory lap after that. Meanwhile, if Shuli's mm -hmm. actually watching this, he's in danger of dying of laughter. Yes. <laughs> now, after we just saw him run through this twice, yeah. ten minutes later, he goes, "Wait, what was that song I was just singing?" <laughs> like he's gonna, he's going to record this. It's going to be on his new album, I think. I forgot the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Oh, Fatty Patty. Bad. Oh, I got to remember that. Well, I'll just play it back. Because cause that's, I like that. Patty. Patty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he so goes. We're watching the process here. He goes, oh my gosh, that was an amazing song I just came up with. I got to try to remember that. Oh, I can watch back and relearn the song that way. I wonder if he did go back and went, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I thought that was good. <laughs> the fuck was I thinking? Don't forget the line, why do you eat so fucking much? Yeah. That was good. That's really funny stuff. He's amazing. It's fantastic. Well, who are you guys to speak? You don't even have words on your songs. Yeah. Got us there. God. It's not that easy. Damn it, Tukey. Mm -hmm. You got, me. You got me again. The thing about not having a singer or words is that you have to play guitar licks the whole fucking time because that's the only thing that's going on. Oh, Just okay. Point that out. In case well, you didn't know. Tukey does not know. Now, because KB told John not to go on the show and John blocked me and said he wasn't going to go on the show, I start sending out links to the video to Shuli and Bob, who I talked to that morning about it. I sent a link to Cardiff. I think I sent a link to Tukey. Because of that, when John left the stream to go watch the Yankees game, those guys popped on to talk about it. And let's see what Karen's take is on that. And then as soon as the interview's over, all his boyfriends show up and they're like, Shuli and 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 Cardiff, they're like, they're like, hey, yeah, hey, 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 uh, Carl, you you were great. You were you played guitar way better than John. You won that round. The way you were strumming, that was incredible, Carl. You're a winner, Carl. Mike, what do you think? And then Carl's not gonna be on my show anymore. What will I do? What will I ever do? Well, you can get Mike Buschetti, so that's cool. You should be fine. He sounds very upset right now, doesn't he? A little. He seems, mm -hmm. he seems a little bit upset about this. Karen is making up this new narrative that he helped the show, and then John came on and we played acoustic guitars together, and then Shuli and Cardiff came on and said I'm the best guitarist. None of this happened, obviously. Mm -hmm. And all I, said, all I said on the BS show, because Bob goes, you want to come on MLC today? This was on Thursday after he tried to sabotage the show. I go, no, I'm good. I don't think I need to go on that show. That's all I said. And now KB is is sitting there going, well, I, I don't need Carl. I can get Mike Buschetti and Jim Stansel. I'm good. All right. If you say so. Let's get Mike Buschetti's take on all of this. He's, he's obviously paying attention and following along with this. <laughs> Can't wait to see what he thinks. No, the Kevin... Chicken cold on blue. I remember we were eating chicken on the chicken comedy hour. <laughs> That's what you took from that whole fucking thing. Yeah. Chicken corn on blue. No, no, chicken no, corn on blue. You have ostrich eggs and baked Alaska with it. <laughs> chicken corn on blue, Mike. <laughs> the only thing Mike heard yeah. was the food that Kevin was eating yeah. while he was watching the video. Yeah, Stop yes. listening. The only thing he heard was food. He's just like, let's get back to talking about food, KB. That's what he was trying to interrupt him for. Yes, remember? Yeah. He was he's like, he's like, chicken corn on blue, I love that. 
Yay! <laughs> yes, and at the end of this episode, he asked Kevin if he could leave early because he wanted to go eat dinner. Yes, yes. So, uh, KB, I'm not saying you need me on your show, but you might need better guests than a guy who it's just a show. He accepts all cookies. Focuses in on chicken cordon bleu. <laughs> everything that's going on. And now, Karen is going to start calling me a piazza. Oh, boy. Now, now I'm the piazza. Where's the right Carl oh, Piazza. John was right in the first place. Carl is a little bit, you know. Carl came oh, in no. so mad yesterday on my show, he wasn't even slurping beer. That's how I knew he was mad. No sips for Carl. That is Carl how I, episode, I know no when you're mad. No <laughs> sipping for Carl. That's how mad he was at me. He's like, uh, I'm not even going to take a time to slurp on my 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 brew. Sick burn. Wait until he hears what color your pool table is. <sighs> don't tell him. <laughs> hey, I also don't have any kids. So oh. all signs point to Piazza. Here's more. Here's more lying, and this shows that Kevin knows he's lying because he just keeps repeating the same lies over and over again. Adam, what? what's Carl's show? Who are these pods? No, but what yeah. does he do on his show? Well, he watches other people's show, uh, podcasts and he breaks them down. And he cl- and he comments and he makes, on them, right? And he, and he makes mirth. Right, and he comments yeah. on him, right? Yeah, 100%. It's very transformative. Didn't, I, didn't I do that? And that's what I did with his with his clip yesterday. I watched it, and then I commented on it on my show. That's basically Carl's fucking formula for success. People are mad at me, and then, then John came on, and then John came on, and then, and then Carl came on, and they got all, a lot of publicity from it, and then everything worked out, but every, and then Carl's still acting like he's mad. Carl, I will send you a link. We can play guitar together. We'll work it out. We can work it out. We can work it out. out. Like the Beatles song. Yeah, I know that song. This, again, Zumok style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He spent a little too much time with Zumok because because of me. I I was was bleeding for the show. Right. I I stole those credit cards. People would watch Mr. Love's Company. That's why I stole the credit cards. That's why I got into a fight at the bar. The lie about the fight, yeah. I was trying to help you out. KB's like, I I told John to take more of your money and not do the show. Because I was trying to help you out, Carl. Yeah. You're welcome, Carl. Yeah, and now you're mad at me. And this lying is not going to work because it just happened yesterday. Yeah. It, it's just, I, I can't believe he thinks he can get away with this. Because uh, I'm watching this. Everyone in the chat is just like, FKB, what's he talking about? He wasn't just commenting on a clip. He's just fucking lying. And he continues. I don't know. Tuki's starting to believe. Maybe you did this to yourself, Carl. Oh, he has like know. two or three shows that they No, but do. that's his whole thing. He watches clips, and that's what I did. I watched a clip of his show. I commented. And that's exactly what his show is. Except we didn't play the clip here. I just I just went from memory. Okay. So he's just repeating this over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Because that's how he's going to get this narrative built that he isn't an asshole and didn't try to ruin the show and didn't try to take money out of my pocket. No, none of those things. He was just doing what I do, just commenting on a clip. No, notice how he never is bringing up how he literally, literally, like you can say the word literally, told John not to do your show and hold out for more money after you already had a negotiation. Right. And listen, Bob Levy, you know, he doesn't have to stick up for me, but he could have said at one point, that's not true, KB. Right. You told John not to do the show. Actually, I think he did say it at one point. I was going to say he was muttering something, but uh, someone was a bit louder than him. That's true. And so KB's strategy here is just to keep yelling the same lie over and over again. And at least a Jordana and just bring up all these non sequiturs that have nothing to do with anything. And he's also trying to really push this guitar narrative that this show that I did with Stuttering John, where we were screaming at each other at certain points, was just a kumbaya around the campfire. Using me, John came on, then Carl came on, pretending to be mad, not sipping a beer. That's how I knew oh, he, he was mad. mad. And then he, and then all of a sudden they get all this publicity for their fucking six o'clock show where they're strumming guitars like Simon and Garfunkel. But it almost didn't happen. I mean, John was looking for any way to back out. Now was. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. I appreciate you being there and saying that because Karen just pretending that this is all a work and that he helped us out and we all planned this all along is nonsense. Any way to back out? No, he wasn't. Man. He just wanted yes, he, was. he wanted money. He wanted money. He was he already made. He already made the deal with Carl. What? So yes. it, was deal deal. With Carl. it was a shit deal. It was a shit deal. And how did how did you know How do you know he wasn't getting played like when Chad and you guys were all playing uh, Carl? Uh, I mean John on that. A fateful Friday afternoon. It wasn't a shit deal. I'll say this. 
John left the show. I did another hour because I had to read through all the Super Chats. Cardiff was with me. Shuli and Bob were on there. And Super Chats continued to come in, and I still split all of the money with John. In fact, he got more than 50% of the money that I made from that show. And we did it on my channel because I have more subs, and we got a lot of eyeballs on it. It's behind a paywall. It already has 14,000 views. So this was not a shit deal. This was a good deal. John can't make that much money on his own. I helped him out. It was a shit deal to Kevin, but it seemed to be okay for John. Right. And then Kevin, Kevin just, I believe that Kevin started it as a joke, but John being the pea brain that he is started to realize, Oh, maybe Kevin's right. And Kevin saw, Oh shit. I got a real dummy on the line. Let me just see how far I could take this. I'm pissed off that I paid 3000. Let me see if I could get Carl to pay 3000. I, I'm hundred percent with you too. Uh, too uh, you're not Tukey, Carl. Thank you. Tukey. <laughs> Let me just play this, uh, this last clip here. Because there's some misconceptions and people are claiming things that are just not true at all. And so I need to clear this up. Uh, not sure what fuck KB is about, but nothing lamer than Carl claiming channel strikes are acts of violence. What, what a piazza. Yeah, well, Carl has a lot of... Away. Look, if, if you're making a living off of this, it is pretty fucked up to do. It really is to get somebody's channel taken down. I don't believe in that shit. Who's taking channels down? John was trying to take his channel down. He he already got. He was trying to get at least two strikes on, or he did. Yeah, because he, he was using he was using his content. Also, you can also, do that. You're allowed to do. Okay, what so you're doing. allowed to you're allowed to strike a guy's channel. It's a free country. I know, but it's not. It's not. No, if, it's if, not what if, I believe if, in. if somebody's whole uh, network is basically going after you, and he's and Carl's talking about uh, 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 John's kids and his family. Not true. This is the thing that I'm pissed off at John. When he tried to get my Patreon taken down, this is where I make most of my income. This is how I feed myself. When he tried to get my Patreon taken down, it wasn't for copy. Well, it was for copyright strikes one of the times. But the other time was because people were using gamer words in Discord. And we had, at the top tier, a connection between Discord and Patreon. So John, looking through the terms of service, or someone probably tipped him off to this. Yeah wrote into Patreon and said, this guy is breaking the terms of service. There's gamer words on his Discord that connects to Patreon. Now, KB probably doesn't fucking know this, but a lot of people have lost their Patreon. People who are making a lot more money than I make on Patreon got to take it down for things that happened outside of Patreon because Patreon decided to start censoring things. There are certain words people use that get them canceled out of life. I don't use them. KB does because I've seen those clips floating around. I don't use those words. Some rando, maybe it was Tab Burt, but I don't know, some rando in our Discord server is using these words, and then John is using that to try to get my Patreon taken down. Do you understand the difference between copyright strikes and trying to have someone's income taken away from them because a Discord server that they did not set up has people in there using words that they they don't like or or pretending they don't like? That was another thing I talked to John about. Fucking grow up. Jesus Christ. You think if I if I police my Discord, does that end racism? What if I delete my Discord? Is racism all uh, over? Good. Maybe I should do that then, to end racism. Mm-hmm. It's worth a shot. No! <laughs> Tukey! No. Oh, I was no, being, wait, I was no, being sarcastic! Oh! It's not worth oh, a shot. It's stupid. It's not, not going to end racism. Words hurt. No, they don't! Sticks and stones know, right. hurt! Dookie, right. you fucking idiot, right. you dumb fucking <laughs> stupid puppet, you dumb piece of shit puppet, you fucking idiot. Words don't hurt. Why are you crying? Because your words hurt me. <laughs> this puppet's really a pain in my ass right now. I'm not running a fucking daycare center. All right. So th- this whole week with Karen, I- I'm shocked this was his behavior. Yeah. And uh, frankly, I don't know. Also from a guy who keeps talking about the Mike Calta cell phone incident. Yeah. Like, Julie didn't do enough. Like, Julie was supposed to jump across the table and go, Mike Calta, no, what are you doing? This is insane. Right. And he brings that up all the time. But this was no big deal. This was just a joke. Yeah, thank you, Tukey. That's actually a very good point. You're welcome. You like me again? Yeah, Tukey, I wasn't actually mad at you. Yeah. That, that was a bit. But that's a very good point because KB likes to hold on to these things that he's still mad at Shuli because a, a guy who isn't Shuli gave out his phone number, which right. was really Chad's fault, if you ask me, because Chad was the one who reached out to Mike Kelta before that. 
and even planted the seed of uh, of KB. So he gets all upset about that, but then he tries to ruin my show, a show that had more live viewers than anything else I've ever done. He tried to ruin that, and he's sitting there going, all I did was comment on a clip. I'm just commenting on clips. I was doing what I do what Carl does. I was just commenting on clips. Carl's a fucking idiot. I'm so glad you picked up on the fact that I wanted you to do an impression right there. Tukey does a very good Kevin Brennan, I have to say. Well, thank you. All right. With that, I have to talk about Hypocrisy Police. (laughs) 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 All right, Tukey's back in a good mood now. Those are some good moves. That's good. I'm glad. All right. Apparently, I didn't pay John enough money to do this show. Uh, this. So, you cheap bastard. Yep. Here, here's John bitching about the money. Kevin was right. Brand <laughs> new show coming your way. But can I address Carla just for a second? Now, Kevin Brennan was right. I'm not saying up that Carl... Rip me off. I'm not. I don't think he would do that. As much as he trolls me, I don't think he would do that. Don't forget, the name of the show was Skull versus the Troll. What does that do? <laughs> now, Kevin said I should take a grand 750. <laughs> then he went to 550. I don't think Carl ripped me off. I mean, the name of the show is Skull versus the Troll. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. Show off. Well... As of now, now there were three hundred dollars super chats coming in. Not true. As of now, take a guess how much I got paid from Carl. Take a guess. <laughs> Who's he talking to? <laughs> Any guesses, Tuki? You want to guess? Uh, three hundred. Right, let's find out. Boom. Take a guess. How much I got paid? Yes, we know. Three hundred. Five hundred and sixty dollars. Whoa! That's it. <laughs> For one hour of his time. $560. Chad Zumuk paid me more. Yeah, you know, he's an idiot. Dummy. And that's how much I get from the king of the Dabbleverse. Well, I'm probably the king. Mm-hmm. The queen of the Dabbleverse. There it is. No, that's Chrissy Mayer. Oh. Well, yeah, Chrissy. I mean, I... I can't call him the jester because he's not funny. Although it was Damn. funny that he only paid me five sixty. I got a guy emailing me, John. I sat and counted thirty eight hundred. He made. Oh God! Now Brandon Whoa. said that there's no way. Yeah. So I don't know where we are here. <laughs> but he at least made two G's. Go back and look at it. Yeah, I, know, I, I think I should have got more than five sixty. You have the evidence in based, your hands. Based on what is, is a good question. I mean, it was definitely more than two thousand dollars. Okay, if you say so. I think. Yeah. What do you think, Bob? I think, though. Thank you. Oh, you're that welcome. Fucking, that fucking crackhead Bob. Crackhead thing. Bob never said you're welcome. So That's true. Okay, let me break down what happened, because we did the show, and then after it was done, I was quite exhausted. Thank you for the support, though. That was awesome. Lots of super chats. We run, we run through all the super chats, and then my wife and I went out for dinner. And exhausted as, counting all your money yeah and as i'm sitting at dinner i get a text from john with a dollar sign that was the entire message a dollar sign Whoa. now Tuki, i think you probably know about this the way that youtube works is you get the money you make the next month on the 21st mm-hmm. john needed the money immediately now that's fine i don't mind fronting him the money before i get it it's not a problem so as soon as i got home I looked through real quick, made a quick calculation in my head how much money I thought we made, and gave him what I thought 50% of it was, which was $560. I Venmoed him that night. So same day. I go, once I have the final accounting, I'll let you know, and we'll settle, and we'll get this figured out. The next day, YouTube still had not calculated it. So I go Mm -hmm. in there, and it says still calculating. So I took a screenshot of that, sent it to John, and said, listen, I'm not holding out on you. I'm just waiting for the accounting to come in. So then, the next day, I get this message from John. 
And he says, and this is what he was alluding to in that video. He says, this guy counted for me. This is all caps. He took in $3,800. He had a few super chats of 300. So 3,800 less 30% equals 2,660. You should have got at least $1,300. Next time, do what Brennan said. Get paid lump sum up front. Brennan is good. Has not said shit about you. Watch out for Alex. He is a troll. Just taking advantage of you. Trying to buy his way in. Be careful with him. John sent me that entire note for some reason. I don't know why he sent all of it. So I wrote back to him precisely what you said, because I took the video, I edited the video, put in better audio than what was played live. And I sent it to John. I said, if you want to put this up on your Patreon, here it is. The final video unedited, but I improved the sound quality. So I wrote back to John. I go, John, you have the video. If you want, go through and, and look at it all because it turns out that we actually, after YouTube got their cut and Apple and whatever else, we actually, I paid him more than 50%. That's how it all worked out. Now, Whoa. to John's credit, he did believe me, thankfully. And he even said, and I, I was like shocked by this. Do you need me to Venmo you the difference? And, and I went, John, we're good, buddy. You had the right John, right? Stuttering John Melendez. Huh. Okay. It wasn't Juan. <laughs> That's for sure. It wasn't El Horrible. A man can change. It was really impressive. So anyway, I appreciate that. And so uh, I think we're all settled and squared away now. But God damn. Just I'm constantly getting accused of ripping people off and trying to cheat people and shit. It's just not in my nature. I don't want to sound like John, but right. it's just not how I do business. It's not how I do business. It doesn't make any fucking sense to live your life that way. I would like to hear you try and tell a lie. I don't think you would be very good at it. All right. This is John being hilarious right here. <laughs> it's pretty good, right? You are good. <laughs> Whoa. Pretty good. No, that How, was a lie. How <laughs> fucking dumb are you? Oh, he's talking about Chad Zumach. So Chad, when John's computer was broken, Chad made a hypocrisy police episode. And mm-hmm. he used John's opening and he had John's logo. And so John went, strike. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so Chad couldn't use his channel for a little while. And this is John explaining that Chad's an idiot. How how fucking dumb are you? So he decided it gets worse. He also uses my logo. And he also misinforms. That's three strikes. <laughs> Look at those fucking Whoa. fingernails. <laughs> That's why I clipped to this. Look at that. Wow. And I'm, I'm just thinking Chad could do all that. That's impressive that compared impressive. to what John still can't fucking do. That's a good point. After watching you with, versus John. Yeah. J- John can't do anything. Can't put anything up on his screen. Oh, when so he wanted to present things. Yeah. We should actually talk about it um, a little bit. Talk about what happened on that show. Because there was a lot of interesting moments. Especially when I asked him. This was the most amazing part to me. When I asked him if he had any regrets. Oh, my God. So I go, is there anything you would have done differently? I did not see this coming. I did not see this one coming. He wanted to play football in high school. But he was late for puberty, and he didn't want the boys to see his small, hairless wiener in the locker room. I can't his believe popcorn that. shrimp. I can't fucking believe that was his one thing that yeah. he regrets in life, is that he didn't play football. And I, I, I was not ready for that. I was like, wait, what? So what position would you play if you're prepubescent in high school? <laughs> it's, a, it's a football team. Right. I, that, that's not the, the, the least of your problems, that you don't have any hair on your dick. Like, how about getting smashed on the first play you run? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what he thought he was going to be a cheerleader or a line judge. I don't know what he thought he was going to do. He'll show the world his fingernails. He'll talk about hemorrhoids. Yep. He'll get turned down by girls who can smell him. Yes. And this is his biggest regret. He, I, I, I was revisiting things and I was doing some research for this. He literally wouldn't go to the movies with his daughter who said, let's go see a movie, dad. And he said... No, I stink like shit. I haven't showered all day. And there's jump in the shower. Yeah, there's no way to and go to the movie with your daughter, John. No way to remedy. And that. he's the one telling the story, not his daughter. He's the one telling yes. the story. Like Jesus Christ, he wants a Rudy moment. <laughs> he wanted a Rudy moment. I he can't... wants to be carried off the field and everyone chanting his name, John, John, John. He regrets he never got that. You're right. He thinks he would have been a star. Mm-hmm. You know what my biggest regret is? I was never an NHL superstar. I can't believe oh. I, I didn't do that. What was I thinking? Me too. <laughs> I should have tried. I know. Damn it. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. 
Anyway, I just can't believe that his fingernails are that disgusting. And he loves holding them up. Talk about OCD. Talk about OCD. <laughs> if I had shit underneath my fingers like that, ugh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know how he's uh, how he's able to do that. It's pretty impressive. What were we he's talking gross about? Gross and dumb. <laughs> uh, anyway, His fingernails. there was a lot of uh, interesting moments in our uh, our back and forth. I did have to mute him once or twice because he just kept yelling the same thing over it's and over again, which is a bit frustrating. And that's the way he argues, though, when he knows he's losing a point. Oh God, that was that was also really funny. So I my brought up because I was calling him out for being a hypocrite and i brought up the sock accounts and how we called out howard stern for telling his staff to make sock accounts and yet he had sock accounts and for some reason in john's mind that was completely different so i eventually because he called me out for something like okay let's say it's one to one he goes that's not one to one he wouldn't even give me one well you finally cornered him on the sock (laughs) account thing and he's like oh yeah well that was a long time ago that was a long time ago fuck i cannot recall yeah. Your yeah, he honor. Was, he wasn't sure. That was funny too, because I, I brought up Yankee fan, Maple Leaf fan, Dombo, uh, mm-hmm. my wife's name, all these different soccer accounts that he had, and I, I list them all. I go, "Were those your soccer accounts?" He's like, "I, I don't remember." And then later on, yeah. I go, "Clamber and Carl, is that one of your soccer accounts too?" He goes, "No." <laughs> I go, "Okay, so you remember that? <laughs> you remember the Clamber and Carl is not one of them? Okay, that's good. That's good to know." Oh, that was the thing that I was going to talk about when you brought that up. He really wanted to present things for me. He wanted to show me screenshots and things like that. So he was asking me beforehand how to do that. I said, well, there's a little present button. Hit that. I'll pop it up on the screen. You know, I'm, I'm happy to go back and forth with you. Every time he pops something up, I couldn't read it. I didn't know what he was showing me. He showed me the same screen like three times and made four different points. <laughs> I, don't know what you're, I don't know what you're proving here. I don't understand it. But maybe someone else can go back and watch it and tell you what happened. Because it's his unique teaching style, I bet. It, yes. I think you're right. So, again, talking about the screenshots, John has the screenshots. Unlike what Carla is trying to tell you, I am not somebody that wants to cancel anybody. The only reason I was trying with Carla, not to mention because he was trashing my children, but also, and even promoting it, I have the screenshots, Carla. I hope you still want to do the show tomorrow or have you chickened out? I should mention, this is the Tuesday show that we're playing clips of. And so John says, oh, I have the the screenshots. Now he's lying. He tried to get my Patreon taken down because there were gamer words on my discord. That was the reason he gave Patreon. So he's either lying to me or he's lying to Patreon or something. But he says it's because I'm trashing his kids. I'll clarify it one more time. Saying, wow, those kids sound like losers is not trashing your kids. I don't pay attention to who they are, what they do. I don't know their names. Of course, of course I know Lily now because she had the article that we read. So I, I know that. You're right, John. I do know one of the kids' names. I don't know. I don't know the one that transitioned. I don't even know what they transitioned to and from. I don't know any of that shit. I don't care. I don't care about any of that stuff. And John just holds on to that I was trashing his kids. I wrote in the description of the very first easy for you to say review. That, oh, and we spend a lot of time trashing John's kids. I can't believe how fun this is. Yeah, yeah. It's more fun than you'd think. Which More fun than you think. Which was a troll. That was me trolling John. Right. Specifically, and he fell for it. Yeah. Hook, line, and sinker. Don, they're trashing my kids! He's right, see, he wrote it right here! That's the joke, idiot! <laughs> Fucking moron. We should trash his kids now. I've already been accused of I, I was going to say, kids, like, double jeopardy. John, you do not want this guy trashing your kids. <laughs> It's like it's like double jeopardy where it's like, well, I've already been accused of it and convicted. So yeah. KB saying I did it. Uh, here we go. John saying I did it. <laughs> what do you want to start with? God damn it. I might as well at this point. Jesus. Yeah. Let the punishment fit the crime. I'm actually going to trash Cardiff's kids, too. <laughs> oh, Not the little tears. Trashing everybody's fucking kids around here. Cardiff, those fucking kids of yours. <laughs> Started paying attention. <laughs> Oh, he played <laughs> <laughs> That was great. <laughs> All right. So John's mad at me again. This is back on Tuesday. John's mad at me because in a private text conversation that Tukey's a part of, Tukey, you're there. Yay! Yes! That was my favorite part of the interview when you went bedabbler and then the look on John's yeah. face. And he went, Who's, Who's that? <laughs> you're doing it again. That was great. Yeah. Now, why, why would John do this on the Tuesday show? Bring up every single point that he's going to bring up. <laughs> I mean, I I kind of did on Shuli's show that morning, so I don't know. Okay, what are you going to do? So, I was in a private text thread where that attorney guy 
said something about because it was already out there. This is the thing. Right. Muttering Jay had already scooped where John moved to, the town that he moved to in Florida. And I saw on our subreddit, somebody goes, holy shit, these guys are neighbors. They didn't give out the address or anything, but people had already pieced this together. This is public information. And when you buy a home and it's a real estate transaction, it is made public. John thinks you have to have, uh, you have to be a realtor to get this information or an attorney. Not true. There's a website you can go to, type in names, see where people live yeah the people in reddit were not doxing you they're just they weren't saying, they just neighbors. like they're like holy shit yeah so the attorney guy asked me about that because he knew and i went yeah can you fucking believe it we're, we're neighbors what are the what are the chances of that it's insane it really is crazy it really is and of course this attorney guy who needs a lot of attention all the fucking time decided to take that screenshot put it on the internet we've talked about this many times so now john claims that because of that that's why chad zumach knows where john lives and now he's blaming me for things that he thinks that Chad Zumach is going to do. And I just want to remind everyone that what Chad did was tweet. This is John's reaction to a tweet. And what happens? I have to call the Tampa police. I have to file a report. Thanks, Carla! I have to call our police department, Carla. And get them to drive by my place every half hour because of your negligence and your lack of integrity. Because your stupidity. Yeah, he doesn't know what uh, hypocrisy means. He also doesn't know what have to means. Very good point. So it's not Chad's fault who made this threat. It's not. The attorney's fault for posting it. Yeah. So when his house gets vandalized and burned to the ground, it's my fault because I, I texted mm-hmm. a friend of mine that I thought I could give him some personal information about myself. Okay, that makes sense. Also, I'm sorry, we have Karen Melendez here. Stuttering Karen Melendez is calling the police department. This is yeah. literally out of a South Park episode. Calling mm-hmm. the police and saying, there, there's a tweet. It's, there's a hashtag in the tweet. I need a patrol car <laughs> at my house every hour. It sounds like you're not taking this seriously. Let me talk to your manager. <laughs> Imagine if Scott the engineer called the police because the receiver on his phone was taped down. Right. I'm being harassed. I'm being harassed at work. They're tying a string to a dollar bill and laughing at me. This, this is the level that, that John is at. And he loves to threaten other people, as I pointed out. Many times, John said that a biker gang was going to make my life interesting in my new uh, place in Florida. And I go, well, John, that's threatening. You're threatening me with that. He's like, ah, I was joking. No, they were going to come over and do interesting things. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> to your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what biker gangs do now? Mm-hmm. They no. come over and fuck your butt? No, wait, no, they do not. No, uh, no, biker gangs are cool. Tukey likes biker gangs. Actually. Don't I th- come after me. I think I know uh, who's going to do what to people's butts. Note to self, don't trust Carla. Mm Mm-hmm. Because Carl will fuck you. Rainius! (laughs) And sometimes mouth. All right. He's a fag. This is really funny. John's trying to explain that I can't be threatened by him. Because he doesn't have a criminal record. You know, obviously, Chad Zumach does. But John wants to take credit for this. I think you know that you can trust me. You know, I don't have a criminal record unlike other people. Mud shark. Yeah, those are the actions of someone you can trust right there. Well, also... This is like a Chris Rock bit. You're not supposed to have a criminal record. He's trying to take credit for it. Hey, look at me. I don't even have a criminal record over here. I'm like, okay. Yeah. It's not that impressive, honestly. Is that picture a green apple coming out of a vagina? Oh, it's a pepper in a, in a butthole. Oh. And it's up on the screen the whole fucking time. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> my mistake. Getting hungry. I get my fruits and vex- uh, vegetables mixed up. And vaginas and buttholes. <laughs> yeah, apparently. apparently. <laughs> is that a vagina or a butthole? Ah, whatever. Well, it's, whatever. A, it's a good question for an alien. It'll all come out in the wash. I've already played for you during the uh, the Karen Brennan segment, John playing his Fatty Patty song, mm-hmm. which we all agreed was brilliant. 
The melody well, was great. Go? The guitar playing was fantastic. The jokes. Patty, patty. Oh my god, the jokes. The intro, the outro. Patty, patty. No, it went fatty, patty. No, did it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it wasn't that catchy. Patty, patty, patty. <laughs> I can't remember now. I can't remember now either. I'll have to go back Shit. and watch the tape, I guess. But he's also got a song for uh, Bob Levy. This guy's just so clever. It's it's really incredible. He can pull this stuff off. KB. KB. Don't be afraid. Get rid of Levy. He ain't your friend. He's doing it for the only cash. What? <laughs> he can accrue, can accrue on your coattails. Hacky, 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 hack, hack, hacky, hack, hack. Is there what? something ironic about this? Is there some irony going on right now? I'm trying to figure this out. What, what's happening right here? Did he say crouton your coattails? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something about that. The only cash you can accrue on your coattails. Good lyrics. Pretty funny jokes in there. These are like the same. This is the same thing Jake Hudson does on his streams, where he just makes up songs and sings. It's terrible. I'm starting to think there might be some uh, comparison. I'm starting to think you're right about that. Mm-hmm. Jake Hudson's probably a little more talented, but I know what you oh, mean. Oh, absolutely. But no, according to John, he has never been sharper, and I'll tell you why that is. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you think Klonopin is rotting your brain? No, not at all. I ha- That's I a Klonopin talking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So you got to understand, no I play all the video games. Not video games. I do words oh, wow. with friends. I do Wordle. I do what? fucking trivia crack. I'm always keeping my brain active. And hydrated. <laughs> Holy shit. He thinks playing words with friends makes him smart. This is a guy who's teaching children at school. Did you know there's more than one way to spell two? <laughs> Don't get me started on there. Holy shit. I can't believe he just bragged about playing Wordle. I know, I'm embarrassed for him since he's incapable of it. Yes. He's you never, guys just stink at Wordle. That's the problem. Oh, I fucking rock. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, okay. Then you're going to live a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Staying hydrated, too. All right. So now yeah. he's going to start talking about Anthony Cumia. And uh, he's going to ex- he's going to expose Anthony Cumia. Hockey. Watch out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll be on TV August 15th to. Uh... Expose Anthony Cumia for being the fucking transphobic piece of shit. It'll be on Hulu and Vice. Yep. Hulu and Vice, just another one of my TV credits. Oh, God. <laughs> so proud of himself. Now, I think what he's talking about here, there's this series. I haven't watched it yet, but there's a series about the radio wars of the 90s and 2000s. Tuke, you look like you know what, what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's uh, by the same guys who did the Dark Side, uh, the Ring uh, thing, but it's like Dark Side of the 2000s. Okay. And one of the episodes, yes, is about the radio wars. Okay. So I think what John is saying is that he's going to be brought in as one of these talking head guys that they go to to recount the times he was on the Stern Show and they were battling with Opie and Anthony. And his big reveal is that Anthony's transphobic because Anthony was goofing on John's uh, kid. I doubt that's going to make the air. No. That, that's a, a more recent thing that's going on. It has nothing to do with you working for Howard Stern and him being on Opie and Anthony. But John's convinced that they're going to use that. We'll see. And maybe they will. I don't know. And then make sure you get in there that he was part of a scheme where they didn't give out posters at a live show. <laughs> yeah. People should know that. Oh, my gosh. I watched the Jackie Martling mm-hmm. doc. And John's in that, too. And he, John just always makes it about himself. Everything he says is just making it about John. Opie's in it for maybe three seconds. Opie's not interesting in any single way. <laughs> Anthony's in it quite a bit. But um, I like Jackie Martley, but it's such a self-serving doc. It's just mm-hmm. all about how amazing he is. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, there was nothing new in it. No. You know, it was just he had to get that documented and out there. So 
before and then he at died. the end, at the end, he's, he's like, and we tried to get Robin and Howard and Fred. They all said no. It's like, yeah, I, I wonder why. <laughs> Shocking. That's Shocking. always great to have in your dog. <laughs> yeah, right. All the people I worked with for all those years, they don't want to talk. <laughs> tried to get the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but John Melendez said yes. He had nothing on the calendar. <laughs> he, he was able to do it somehow. And Grillo and Ganji also said yes, but we cut them out. <laughs> all right, so. Now Did you want to hear my Fatty Patty song now? Oh, please. Yeah, go ahead. Let's oh, okay. It. Hold on. <laughs> I, I thought you got to have it ready. If you're gonna... <laughs> I didn't know you were bringing me on. We got to communicate, Carl. Man. I know. Well, I don't even know if your volume's going to be up. I don't know if you saw Cringe of the Week today. Fatty yes, congratulations. Patty. <laughs> That's it? Why are you so fat? <laughs> okay, that's it. All right. You've got some that's weird it. noise cancellation thing going on or something, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's something in StreamYard. Yeah, I think so, too. All right. So we're talking about Anthony. And the thing that John's really good at is name calling. And I think that's because he was doing that political show for so long. He got really good at calling people names because that's always a good argument. If you're going to talk about how you don't like somebody. Yeah. This smirk on his face right now is disturbing. I'm sorry. I just looked over at him. I'm like, oh, ugh. it's ghoulish. <laughs> oh, man. He looks like he looks like you just pulled out a big wad of bills out of your pocket. Yes. He's like, whoa, you got some of that for me? Yeah. <laughs> he looks like cartoon. someone just dropped a quarter in his coffee. <laughs> Something. No, more of a cartoon villain. Yeah. From the 80s. <laughs> All right. Sorry. This is, uh, is Gargabel. Name calling 101 right here. I would never ever lower myself to do a show with somebody that I know is a staunch homophobe, racist, trans, transphobic, anti-Semite. Like that takes Cardiff out. Pocky. Hmm. I would never oh. ever do it. Now, yes, was I on a show in the past? Yes. But I didn't know then. <laughs> okay. Now, if I were to tell Anthony that John called him a homophobe, a racist, a transphobe, and an anti-Semite, I think Anthony's response would be, anti-Semite? Yes. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I know. I can't speak for him, but I'm just guessing that would be... This is the laziest thing you can do is just be like, oh, that guy's a transphobe and a homophobe. He's like, no, he just thinks you're a shitty father. I don't think he has anything against trans people. He was just calling you out specifically. For example, I don't like Cardiff. That doesn't make me a homophobe. I don't hate all gay guys. I just don't like Cardiff. Mm-hmm. Do you see how that mm-hmm. works? Oh yeah. Okay. I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of where this is going. <laughs> All right. Now, John is going to explain what his role is in the Dabbleverse, in case you didn't oh. already know. I'm intrigued. Oh. Let's just face it, people. I'm mm. the goat. <laughs> I'm the one that they go to DabbleCon to celebrate. celebrate. I'm the one they go to the Dabbleverse to celebrate. Yeah. We speak your I'm name. The mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm the goat. Go all, all lowercase. Yeah. Whew. I'm the one who smells like a barn animal. <laughs> I'm the goat here, yeah, people. <laughs> he goes, they go to Dabble, the DabbleCon to celebrate him. We, we laughed as drool fell out of your mouth. <laughs> the entire place went nuts. Yeah. I don't know if it's a celebration. For, I don't know, eight hours, I believe? Yeah, I mean, all weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I, and it never got old, It by never the way. got old. It yeah, got, it got and better funnier. and better. <laughs> yeah. And then we sacrificed trans children and drank their blood. <laughs> Tukey! All in your name! Tukey! <laughs> That's on the DL. What happens at DabbleCon <laughs> right. stays yeah. at DabbleCon. From uh, Golden Goblets. <laughs> all right. I guess I wasn't there for that. That must have been the same time that people were pissing on people's clothes and hotel See? rooms. And yeah. See, the puppet admitted it. See, a lot of, the a puppet lot of shenan- admitted it. A lot of shenanigans were going on there. I think the puppet's voice is changing. Mm-hmm. Now, he's trying to do a stuttering John. I see. Fuck. Tukey, Tukey <laughs> doing stuttering John. I see. Okay. I understand now. When Tukey does Kevin Brennan, it's not Tukey doing Kevin Brennan. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> he outsources <laughs> it. <laughs> Oh, oh! by the way, did you not like the uh, sponsorship drop for the Kevin Brennan segment I sent you? Oh, shit. I don't know. When did you send that to me? No, he didn't like it. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll look forward in a minute. I'm sorry. I, I forgot you sent me over some things. My apologies on that. The, uh, my stuff. 
the potato has been on the fuck Kevin Brennan thing for a long time here. Mm-hmm. He's the one who mm-hmm. got the chant going at Pottstown. Mm-hmm. He's ahead of his time. Oh, some interesting clips have been uh, surfacing on Twitter since the FKB movement started. Oh, yeah. Oh, of the Kevin Brennan N-words. using the N-word. I yeah. wonder if John will still go on Kevin Brennan's show now. That's a, that's a good point. That's a good question. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm not saying we should cancel Kevin Brennan, but no, will John I don't think so. continue to go on that show? I can't believe it took this long for those videos to surface. Yeah, I mean, it's something about being on compound media. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but there's a lot of guys on that network who are screaming that word for some reason. Mm-hmm, Go figure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, we know that John wanted to set up a boxing match, not just with him and Shuley, but with him, Shuley, Bob Levy, and Mike Morse. He was going to fight all three opponents. It was going to go six rounds, two-minute rounds, two minutes in between each round. He had it all figured out. Uh, the UFC-style gloves, yeah. smaller gloves. And uh, he was going to go whatever order they wanted to bring them in, but it would go like two rounds with one guy and then two rounds with the next guy, and he was going to beat them all up. Yeah. Probably they'd be taken out, out of the ring on someone's shoulders with everyone cheering. <laughs> yeah, <John. laughs> yep. His Rudy moment. It would be his Rudy moment. He was all excited about it. So somebody says, well, what are you afraid of, Chad? Why won't you box Chad Zumach? Thanks for the two bucks. I noticed you didn't challenge Chad to box. Afraid? Chad, I'd box you any day of the week in the ring anytime is that cool a couple dumb things about that first off after he challenged those guys to a boxing match he said you guys gotta get back to me soon because i'm gonna start training for this thing if we're gonna do it instead of just being like maybe i should get into good shape anyway he goes if we are gonna box you gotta give me a few months to get into shape and now he's saying he can take on chad any day of the week also that's a bad idea like a, a tuesday morning you're not gonna get as much attendance there <laughs> yeah, I would go for like a Friday or a Saturday if I was doing this. Yeah, talk to your agent. Yeah, not any day of the week. Doesn't even make sense. Any time. Yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> Three in the morning. Yeah, do it at the time when people will be there, John. <laughs> after work's over. Tell me. That's all I'm trying to say. One thing I know about poor people is they have old shitty phones. Poor people hate buying new phones. Phones are expensive. <laughs> Their old phone still works, kind of, so they don't see a a need for it. Poor people don't buy a new car until their car breaks down. They don't buy a new Mm -hmm. phone until they absolutely have to buy a new phone. And uh, But John has a John. I just did it. I just did the thing that he says I do. (laughs) John has an excuse for this. John. John. (laughs) Stutcho has a very good excuse for why he has the oldest phone probably still in circulation today. Mm -hmm. I haven't. I have an iPhone 6SE. That wasn't a good phone when it came out. What? An iPhone yeah. 6SE? That was a stopgap for Apple. Oh, god damn. All right. Let's find out why that is. Let's get the excuse here. Like, oh, I thought a millionaire like you should be able to afford something. Yeah. And yeah, Troll Hunter and Colgate. Like, yeah, why are you giving them oxygen? Because, first of all, Apple <laughs> and is ripping it. us off every day and every night. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Every Same. day they have a new way to plug it in. Mm-hmm. Every what? Apple device has new chargers that you got to get. It's a scam. I just uh, want to every... point out I'm not an Apple fanboy. I do use their stuff. It works. I like it. But iPhones have had two different chargers in 12 yes. years. Right. It changed one time. Yeah. It's changed once. Okay. Just want to point that out. And and isn't he also brag about his uh, stock portfolio containing Apple stock? Oh, of course. Isn't yeah. he a big? But he but he doesn't investor. He doesn't want to support them in any <laughs> single way. He's gonna explain why. I just invested in apples, actually. <laughs> I like that he thought someone would try to insult him by saying, "Hey, Bill, a uh, millionaire. Why don't you have a new phone? No one thinks you're a millionaire anymore." Yeah, John. <laughs> I picked up on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No one's even pretending that could be a possibility at this hey, point. you handsome no. rich man <laughs> yeah especially especially when people in castles in rochester continue to rip him off on podcast appearances all right giant Carter. houses <laughs> all right giant <laughs> astonishing with most i refuse as long as this phone calls out mm-hmm. i refuse <laughs> to upgrade it you're a hero because i I don't want to give Apple any more of my money. You just heard him say. 
He does not want to give Apple money. Now listen to what he says after that. This makes him sound stupid. I own an I own a I own a MacBook Pro. I own mm-hmm. an iPhone. Mm-hmm. I own another backup Apple that I can't remember the password for, although it's too old to stream anyway. It used to stream. But everything's Apple. I got my son an Apple computer. Got my daughter an Apple computer. I got my oldest son an Apple computer. Everything's Apple. Kind of shitting on his own point, isn't he? (laughs) They fuck you every second that they can. And they got people... In China, kids working for him. Oh, fuck mm-hmm. Apple. <laughs> okay. He just listed it. He's, he's bought six different devices from this company that he hates. That is child labor and suicide nets building this equipment. And I don't know if John knows this, but there are other computers and phones available for purchase. Yeah. I don't know if he knows that. With only adults Obviously. making them. <laughs> yes. Well, I don't know about that. I know. Me neither. <laughs> Holy shit. That I, that was just incredible. I just love that. So he's trying to spin it. I'm not poor. The reason why I have a really old shitty phone is because I don't like this company that I do nothing but support every chance I get. So why is everything else old and shitty? <laughs> yeah, what about your t-shirt? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go over that then. Of course, he couldn't hear any of that. It's just beating like back and, and looping. So that didn't work out well for our buddy KB. So he comes on on the show at four o'clock and I am public enemy number one. He has now declared. Yeah. Did you watch any of it? Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. I've been keeping up with it. Well, what's odd is that he really picked up on the fact that I said he's fucking with my money. He told Sutter and John I was going to cheat him. I was going to rip him off. And my first thought was anyone who thinks that way is someone who does that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. I didn't know why he thought. Why would he associate me with ripping people off? I'm not known for that. I've never done that. So it was an odd thing for him to tell John that I was going to do that. So I go, maybe Kevin's projecting. Yeah, it's the most normal deal. 50-50 of the money we make. So that got Karen very upset because then he starts going, Adam, don't I pay you, Bob? Don't I pay you? And then today I'm watching and he goes, well, you know, $500, that's a big deal to Carl. No, no, no. Stop changing (laughs) what you said and what happened. You were negotiating on John's behalf after we already had a deal. I don't care if you told John he should get $200 up front. Yeah. John and I had a deal. Right. And you went in there and said, don't go on the show or change the deal. That's what I'm upset about. That's what everyone's upset about. And he keeps lying and saying that that's not what he did. Right. And we're upset because he was commenting on a video he saw. And if just he, like we do. If he didn't give John this giant windfall, then... $500 plus dollars for John yeah. would have been a great deal right. for John. But you had to like dump this, you know, big payday on him where he thinks he's worth that now. Right. So I paid John 560. John and I were on for about 70 minutes. Pretty good money. Yeah. More than a substitute teacher makes even <laughs> right. in LA. Yeah. Pretty good money. Most people would be like, okay, even OnlyFans girls, any, even fat OnlyFans girls are like, that's pretty good. I'll do that. Any Anybody except like a, a entertainer that makes thousands and thousands would be happy it's, with it's that good. payout for it's that good. amount of time. It's good money. He, I, John didn't put that much effort into it. And he still <laughs> got a payday out of it. And of course, I had to pay John long before I'm going to see that money, oh, yeah. which is fine. <laughs> Not complaining about it. But this whole thing where now we're trying to create this narrative that I'm the one being cheap or that I was ever going to rip off John. Oh, no. It's Kevin insane. did you a favor by stirring up shit on his show. That that was good for you. Okay. That, that's what he's saying now. Well, okay. There's two things there. So he's saying he did me a favor for my interview with John, which luckily John still did the show. But I had to intervene. Alex Stein had to intervene. Right. Joey C says he intervened and whatever. So fortunately, we still got John to do the show. But no, Kevin had nothing to do with that show going as well as it did. Correct. It had everything to do with me. Everything. Everyone knows that <laughs> yes. except Kevin. But I will give this, I'll give credit to Kevin for this. He's the one who got John back on the internet. The first time John came back on the internet since October of last year, he showed up on MLC. And I'll, I will never forget the day because I got the invite about five minutes before the show. So I'm like, oh shit, is this going to happen? I remember I went out to lunch with my parents that day. I go, yeah, I was supposed to do MLC, but I doubt, I doubt it. John won't show up. And then I get on and I click the link and I, there's John's. And you remember what he looked like? Mm-hmm. He was so gray. <laughs> he, he looked, looked like, like the, the ghost of stuttering John. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember seeing that like, 
holy shit, this is happening. So props to Kevin. Kevin paid the money, got John to come he on. He ran out on your mom's birthday deal. party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whoosh, whoosh. I got to go. <laughs> Peace the whole world. I got out of here. So props to Kevin. But since then, John's been a pretty uh, loose gale around the neighborhood. And does everybody's show and is on the internet 24 7. And we're all getting uh, our fill of stuttering John. I have very, oh my God. Very I, little to say about stuttering John. Tune into it today. today. Back to his same old tricks with the same old jerk offs, talking about the same old boring bullshit. Yeah. Oh my God. So Just right back to being terrible. His ticket price went down after uh, the original KB appearance. A little bit. Just a little. Just a little bit. <laughs> you know, from 3000 to 620 bucks all in one week. So that's not great. But Misery Loves Company this week. Has been rough. Oh. His guest on Tuesday was a guy who wanted to be in the whack pack on Howard Stern. And the guy, <laughs> yeah. now, as you guys know, Shuley was the one who ran the whack pack. He's the one who got all the interviews, who ran all those bits and all that kind of stuff. So this guy was trying to get on the Howard Stern show through Shuley. And Shuley, I, so what this guy does is he pulls his hair out, he pulls his hair out of his head and out of his face. And that's like his quirk. So Shuli went back and pitched that to Howard, and Howard's like, nah. <laughs> and I heard Shuli. How am I supposed to watch a guy pull hair out on the radio? Yeah, like, oh, look at Baldy over here. Okay. Uh, fun. So I heard Shuli talking about this on the show today, and he goes, you know, normally if somebody says they want to be in the whack pack, they're not whack pack material. You want people who <laughs> don't even realize they're the whack pack. Right. Yeah. You, want. <laughs> you know? So this is hilarious because. KB brings this guy on, and I didn't get a chance to learn his name or care, but he brings this guy on because this guy's like, oh, I'm going to tear Shuli a new one. And Kevin doesn't realize that this guy wanted to be a whack packer and really had nothing to do with any of this. This guy presents himself as a comic who's done all these shows with Bob and, and Shuli and all this stuff. So the way this starts out, this is a longer clip, but it's so worth watching Kevin's face yeah. when he realizes that this is a dud. Because anyone who says, I got a problem with Shuli and I want to tear him a new one can get on Mr. Ghost Company right now. Or probably me, too. Mm -hmm. If anyone out there is listening who doesn't like me, producer Chris, <laughs> you could probably get on Mr. Ghost Company this week with that information. But this did not work out well. Didn't you say you were mad? You're like, Joey, you let Joey see on, but you won't let me on? Yeah. I was like, was I, was I that? Did I sound that bad? Well, wait, yeah, Joey C. Good. Joey C. Uh, all right, but first, you got to shit on Shuli, don't you? Don't you don't like Shuli? <laughs> well, I like Shuli. Yeah, Shuli's okay. Come on, yeah, you I, you can't you can't say Shuli. <laughs> no, we had, I let you on. You're like, no, he's okay. Who are you, Ray Davido? No, I, I didn't. <laughs> Please. Do you wish him well? That's, That's all we need. <laughs> uh, well, you was, guys are uh, you guys are clowns. Do you guys all go to the Carl Charm School? Hey, you know what? Let's all get along while we're together. How about talk some shit and then we're gonna hang up? You call, call a hack and a dork, huh? The what? Call, call a hack and a dork. I don't even know what you're saying. Shit on Shuli. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going well. Bob <laughs> Shuli got a little ahead of himself with the network. What happened? The that's ball, it. Ball, you know, that's that's it. Of course he did. Okay. That's that's well, old news. What? Well, okay. Right, Mike, what Mike Borchetti have a big head too? Come on, focus. Uh -huh. What did he do to you? Right, Tell this me. Is, this is great. He's a piece of shit. Go. Well, when <laughs> I opened for you <laughs> and him, yeah, right. remember you were all called out in uh, in Philly. The what? Bob, remember you were all have... called out in uh, in, in Pennsylvania. This is good. The one I had in, you uh, too. In the Kevin's face <laughs> says everything you need to know about how his show is going yeah, right now. Yeah, right. This is how it started. He's like, I can't fucking believe this is what my show has turned into. What is going on right now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. I opened for you and him one night. So I'd opened for you and oh, him you one did. night. His jaw. Yeah, his elbows covering his entire neck. <laughs> he cannot believe what is happening on his show right now. He's dumbfounded. It looks like his screen is frozen. It has not, I promise you. Yeah, yeah. Everything went cool. Everybody was fine and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and at first, I uh, I had uh, Facebook for, I, I, uh, Facebook requested him. And like, he never got back to me like nothing. I thought that was kind of shitty. You know, I'm like, you don't like friend, like Facebook friend me. Like I was, you know, and then Are you fucking later, kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> 
He didn't reciprocate with your face, your Facebook friend request. So you're like, this guy, I don't like this guy. I like oh, yeah. this guy's jib. Uh, Even you answered I thought me. You, I thought you were going to comment hot. <laughs> Even you answered me after a while. After but he a while. did answer you? I can't no, believe you that. Yeah, no, you just ignored me. Who, me or Shirley? Oh, Shirley. Well, you too. Tell him the the story about LinkedIn with you and Shirley. Tell Kevin that one. I'll let that one go. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. (laughs) That was... The funniest reaction, because you just see Kevin going, holy shit, yeah. I booked this guy because she didn't want to be his friend on Facebook. Ugh, that's the whole week so far. It's not good. Uh, the <laughs> guest list is just a fucking well, disaster. Yeah, I was watching today. He had Stevie Lou on. And I like Stevie Lou. He's fine. And then Ray DeVito pops on. It's just like, all right, here we yeah. go again. <laughs> well, after this, people are begging for Ray and Stevie Yeah, Lou, yeah. Right? Let's, let's talk about Ray DeVito. I remember... Something. Like when MLC landed, like got on my radar, and it was hard because having to tune it, I don't subscribe to it, and having to catch it at four, right? Like, knowing you have to, to watch it, knowing yeah. to do that, it took me a while to get there, and then I find it, and it's just like, holy shit, fifty dollar, hundred dollar, yeah. two hundred plus, oh, like hundreds insane. of dollars of super chats rolling in. You're like, what the fuck? This week, fucking ghost town, like. It's You're not as good. It hasn't been as five good. Five bucks, five bucks, yeah. ten bucks. They're reading two dollars. If it's super a chance, twenty, I noticed. and I, I mean, I'm not. I'm just telling you the numbers, Kevin. I'm not taking you to task. Right. I'm just telling you what's happening, and I'm sure you know of it. But. Well, and I know this isn't Kevin's way. And people have told me they're like, "You're mad at Kevin for turning on you." I'm like, "No, I'm not mad at Kevin for turning on me. I, I, I don't expect us to be BFFs. I never expected that." The problem is, is that he tried to thwart my interview with Stuttering John. He tried to fuck up my show that I've been planning for quite some time and then lied about it the next day. Yeah. That's my problem with Kevin. And I made it very clear in the last video and Kevin's going, oh, what did I lie about? Well, you changed the whole history of what happened. Yeah. You won't just come. You won't be upfront about the fact you told John not to do my show. John comes on your show and he goes, should I do a show with Carl? He said, no. And not to point out the obvious, but very much like Stut Show, why are you disputing st- stuff that's on video? Right. Why, yeah, it's really stupid. Why bother? <laughs> well, he's trying to convince whoever's still watching his show who's not paying enough attention to that, I guess. But not it's only bringing more people over to watch my show because he's going, and I'm watching this video that Carl put out, and he's calling me a liar. I'm sure we got a lot of people going, oh, what's that video? Let me see what that <laughs> looks like. So probably not helping his case when I show him saying what he said and then saying what he said the next day being very different from what he actually said. It's like, I laid it out there. It's pretty obvious. I'm no lawyer. <laughs> I've been told I would be good at it. All right. So he, after this guy comes out and says, yeah, Shuli's not my Facebook friend, and that's fucked up, Kevin's got to save the show now. So Kevin starts telling the story about how he went to the Yankees game the day before. Oh, yeah. Him and his family all went to the Yankees game, and Kevin's got some hot takes about Yankee Stadium. They don't even sell ice cream now. I mean, I went with my <laughs> son to get some ice cream. We're walking all around, and then they... They had a milkshake section that was like, you know, 50 people long. So I'm like, where's the ice cream? And then and then my daughter and my wife went looking for ice cream. They couldn't find it. I was like, who builds a stadium in, for summertime events with no ice cream stand? Still scrambling. It's a hot take. <laughs> it's a pretty hot take Cold right take. there. I did notice going. somebody super chatted a comment there that didn't get read. It said, uh, Kevin wants to eat white stuff out of a helmet. And oh, that didn't really? get read on the show. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> All right. So, Shuli actually super chatted at this point because Shuli's watching this and going, holy shit, really? This is this is who you're bringing on to call me out? Uh-oh. Wow, great. Get, Kevin. I may have to retire after this bombshell. This is like, uh, this is like when... Uh, this they couldn't afford like, me on that. No, this, is like, like, this is like uh, Carla complaining about Mike Boschetti when he's talking to a, a fucking uh, a cookie monster. Tookie. <laughs> the cookie monster. Yeah. And another, another fucking puppet. Chris, the producer. Another fucking uh, <laughs> Carl puppet. <Jeez>. Hacks. <laughs> uh, we don't read Shuley Network uh, Super Chats anymore unless they're $50 or higher. All right. That's fine. So you were about to get booked on the show. Yeah. I apologize, producer Chris. Yeah, yeah, you are persona non grata now at this point. But I love the fact 
that he read that and realized he's been defeated and Shuli's clowning him on his own show. So he's like, well, we're not going to read Shuli. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anymore. Unless it's 50 bucks yeah, or more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what is, what's the price of my dignity? 50 yeah. bucks. Yeah. That's the price. $49.99 will take that as well. And then this comment comes up from Jason Bentley, which says, Jesus Christ, KB. Just when I get my shirts, the show is turned into this. $30 to bring back Compound Thursdays, which is referring to when uh, him and Bob used to go over on uh, Anthony Cumia's show oh. on Thursday afternoons. But, of course, Anthony is out of the Kevin Brennan business, hmm. as we all know. A lot of people seem to be. So if you thought things couldn't get worse, because they're, they're bad, things are not going well right now for Kevin, watch what happens next when Kevin realizes he can't yell. Is Hit is the that. like button, you cowards! <laughs> Fucking just sitting there with your fucking hands on in your pocket. I can't even, I can't even yell because my son's friend is here. I know. You got a little lunatic dad. I know. About my, uh, I told his dad I was going to do be doing a podcast. So, you know, I'll be home. Mm-hmm. So, but I can't, I don't know how crazy I can get. So I have to pick, I have to, uh, I have to, I have to pick, uh, pick right. my spots. I, kids do ruin everything. <laughs> Wait around in the show because happens a few times. So he's like swearing. He's like, "Oh shit!" I was yeah. <laughs> he's so concerned about his his son's friend going. Oh, I don't think I want to hang out over at the Brennan's anymore. Yeah. Those people are fucking nuts. The dad's just screaming. All the hot takes about play dates and ice cream. Could you imagine? This guy's in his room for two hours. And you just hear him screaming. He's all upset, and then he just walks out. And you're like, "Who else is in there with you?" Oh, no one. Oh, Jesus Christ. Bob and uh, Douchebag. Yeah, all right. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, the comments are the only thing that are keeping the show alive. I clipped that uh, clip oh, that yeah. I sent over the MLC drop. That I thought this one was pretty funny. And Carl is a pompous nerd. Good take. He is a pompous nerd. Call this episode Pompous Nerd. That's a pretty good take. Pretty good take. I have one more clip here because after he says, I can't even yell or swear because... We have friends over. <laughs> I'm like, what, what? How could this get worse than this? Well, look who shows up on the fucking show. I still think I saw it in the chat. I'm going to go All get right. more drinks. We got uh, Joey C on the line. Yeah, let's put Joey right, C on. on. Yeah. This, this should get really look no good. look. He looks gorgeous. This should be a disaster. Bob walks off the show. <laughs> All right. Joey C, fresh off his appearance with Stuttering John earlier this afternoon, now gets the link to go on with Kevin Brennan. And I thought this was a bit that he was doing, but I watched further and it was not. Mm. Look at how Joey C comes into this one. Am I getting paid for this? Am I getting paid for this? Because I don't do shows unless I get paid. Wow. Well, how much I got to pay you? Send me something. If that was the case, I would have asked that too. I didn't know that was the case. <laughs> Tell me something. I've done enough free shows. Now I got Chad Subak, who I don't even fucking know, telling me I'm fucking garbage. Well, Chad, I live fucking 6.4 miles. I'll get my car right now. Meet you at Gail Mary Walmart. I'm taking my wife there after work. So be there. That's where I'll be. Okay? Wait, so, so wait. Chad was saying what about what? Okay. So now, now we're entering a whole new world where Joey C shows up. And I, I was watching Joey C on Centering John's show, and he said something that was not true. He goes, yeah, Carl was calling me a scumbag, and that is not a word I use. I probably called him a retard because I don't say scumbag. So just Joey C, I promise I did not call you a scumbag. It's not a word I use for people. Maybe that's something that you think about yourself. Maybe that's why. That happened, but that that's not on uh, on me on this one. I, w- I wonder what the uh, minimum to entry for Joey C to be on a show is. Oh, well, how much? Are, how much money is he expecting to get? He goes on after that. He goes. He goes. What am I? A nobody? And Kevin goes. Yeah, you're a nobody. <laughs> <laughs> who, do you, who do you think yeah, you he are? walked into that one? Yeah, no shit. All right, I do. I, I don't want to do a Southern John segment. I feel it is a little oversaturated. And we have a lot, but I have a big announcement. Round two, or round three, however you're counting this, going to be on Centering John's channel, August 14th, that's a Monday, at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 Pacific, August 14th, I'll be on with Centering John. I have a lot more to get to with him that I didn't get around to in round one, so I'm very much looking forward to that, and you know, we've obviously talked about Sinead O'Connor, more importantly, Pee Wee Herman, Paul Rubens, Mm. passed away. This week. And uh, I want to thank Tony Muskrat 
Tony Muskrat sent in a fantastic song parody to uh, as a tribute to Pee Wee and our boy Stuttering John. What do you know about all coin? Come visit me down in Cape Coral. How are you, Tookie? Carl's a queer with paneling and no morals. I can recommend a plumber. He taught me how to use the plunger. So come take a shit at Stucho's mom's house. Kiki. The isotopes are Devo cover band. <laughs> Free kitty litter at the beach. I'm collecting sand. Carla drinks like a piazza. Found a brand new hemorrhoid doctor right down the street from Stucho's mom's house. Mud shark tweets and duty stained sheets. The police drive by my house. I'm liberal and woke, but everybody knows that Carla wears a blouse. Expired baloney. Julie is a phony. Update my iPhone 6. Hops and barley. Broken down Harley. Hot Carla's a two-faced prick. Julie's up to his J-word tricks. So clean off the bed. It's full of cat shit. My song Fatty Patty is going to be a smash hit. An Atlantic recording artist. My kids think I'm retarded. My mom co-signed. Put money down. Paid the movers. It's the Joe's mom's house. Wow. Brilliant. Fantastic. I love that it. really made my day. And I, I can picture that. his new house. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense, doesn't it? And uh, this is actually just from right before we started the show. Someone sent me that they put in a super chat. And the name of the super chatter was Might Otter's Meaty Cack. <laughs> Meaning my daughter's meaty cock. Yeah. And so he got John to, to read this. <laughs> okay, Richard, how do you respond to this one? Uh, my Otter's Meaty Cack. Thanks for the five bucks. Looking good, John. You guys get all your info from the mainstream media. That's not true. And I'll leave you uninformed. The latest indictment allows Trump lawyers subpoena power. All right. So that's always fun. <laughs> that political show he does with Richard Ojeda. Oof. Oof. That, is, uh, that is something else, I have to say. All right. Oh, my God. So, Stuttering John has started a brand new show on Thursdays. And... We have to break this one down. It starts off. John has a brand new intro that he had produced for him. And he thinks this is the funniest thing he's ever done. Tab, have you seen Suttering John's show from Thursday yet? I have not. And I know producer Chris hasn't seen it. So I want to get your guys' reaction to this hilarious new intro that he's put together for us. <laughs> Why do they podcast WDTP? <laughs> <laughs> it's a stunning likeness. It is. Nailed Why it. do they podcast WDTP? Yeah, baby. He's in a wood Sky panel basement. Up. Yeah, so he's got the he's got the he's wood panel. He's drinking a gallon of orange juice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's got the wood paneling behind him. He's got that graphic. Why do they podcast? So this is yeah. Here's my I question. Love it. Here's my question for you, Tab. Now, I know I looked just like a walrus. Everyone always says that. So I get that part of it. But why is it funny to just call it Why Do They Podcast? What's the joke? Just that it's a little bit different than our show? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't Tony Michaels come up with that? Well, he had Why and Do you... I Podcast, and I'm looking at the poster okay. right up there. And called you Kevin. And yeah. And Stutcho thought that was fucking gold for some reason. He called me Kevin for a long time after that. Now he's back to Carla again, because mm-hmm. that's also hilarious. Could you yeah. imagine if I was a girl? Misgendering someone <laughs> is uh, it's hilarious stuff. Yes. There's a few things that John does in this episode that would be breaking his own rules yeah. when it comes would to Would that insults. make him a hypocrite? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. We're going to find out. But first, got to bring on our guest, Dave, and show Dave uh, this new thing. Um, yes. 
every Thursday, we will do Why Do They Podcast. How are you, Dave? Hello, my friend. How you doing? Do you like this? Why do they podcast? WDTP. He's going to play it again. Yep. yep. Oh. He plays it over and over again. Watch, he laughs every time. I think it's awesome. The last part's a little scary, but now that, now that I've seen it once, well, it's well, going to scare me next time. Well, if you look at Carl's teeth, I mean, it's pretty close. Boom. Roasted. <laughs> He's got me there. Pretty yeah. good stuff. So one of the things that John likes to make fun of me for is my reactions to things. Chad does that too, where I laugh at stuff. John plays that 35 times during this two hours and cracks up every single time. It's the first time he's ever seen that before. And so now this show he's doing on Thursdays is stealing my show format, which I'm going to call it out. It's a little bit hypocritical. Uh, You're throwing (laughs) Carl. You shouldn't be throwing stones. The hypocrisy police over here, but uh, okay. John talking about asking KB if he should do the show with me. So this was the big blow up thing that happened where he goes on Mr. Love's company, asks Kevin if he should do the show with me. And Kevin tells him not to. I went on your show and asked you what you think. Should I, or should I not do the show? And Arthur Fonzarelli said, no. And you said, no. So I said, all right, I'm going to take the advice of the very successful podcaster, Kevin Brennan, brother of Neil Brennan. And I took your advice. There was no work, Kev. Not a work. Now, I left on my way to the pub. I was done. And then Carla texted me, you pussy. Mm -hmm. Come on the show. Now, I'm like, I'm like Kevin Costner in Tin Cup. If you challenge me, I I get angry. And then I have to face the challenge. So then I said, fuck it. And I turned around and I came home. And I did the show. And I annihilated uh, fucking mm-hmm. S- Sabretooth. So, so to sit there, Mr. Brennan, and call me a work... Now, let me just explain what a work is. <laughs> no, I, no, no, no. I gave up drinking for an hour and a half. And and because that's how committed I am to this. Is why that... is he shouting? Oh. And why is, why is the camera below his belly button? That's Fucking his new put thing. put it on top of a box. That That's his new thing now? Is that he yells everything that he's saying? Because he thinks I think he's been watching a lot of KB, and he yeah. thinks that makes it funny when you start getting close to the camera and yelling at it. So he actually was driving to the pub, and because I texted him, don't be a pussy, he turned around and came back and did the show with me. Wow. That's incredible to know. I can get John to do anything I want now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to quit your what show, you-, you pussy? You're like Marty McFly? What are you, right. chicken? Right. That's what it's turning into. Nobody calls me a pussy. Nobody! I think you're afraid to move out of the neighborhood. That's what I think. Yeah. What are you, a pussy? You don't want to move out of the neighborhood that we both live in? Pussy? Okay. So, John has just explained that Kevin did fuck this all up for me, and it was only because I called him a pussy that he did the show. So when Kevin tries to pretend he didn't do anything, there's our proof right there that he definitely did him and Stancil, that he calls Fonzie. Him and Stancil both told John not to do the show. And so now... John is actually going to explain Kevin Brennan is the work. Kevin's thinking this is all work, but it's actually KB who is the work. Now, let me just explain what a work is. Okay? (laughs) Just so we could all know, Mr. (laughs) Brennan. Wait, let me get notes. You (laughs) trashed me on your show once, and I texted you, and you wrote to me, Oh, John, I'm I'm in character. Mm. Is that what a work is? Yeah. Ipso fetso. <laughs> so, <laughs> according to John, Kevin is not an authentic person on his show. His entire show is a work because he's just playing a character that burns every bridge and pisses everybody off. And that's why he no longer has good guests on his show, like Bill Burr or any of the celebrities he used to have on his show. Because he's playing a character that just fucks up his own life. 
It's really funny when you start to follow it that way. You're like, oh my gosh, this character can't get out of his own way. It's like a sitcom. It is like a sitcom. It's like a sitcom that actually got picked up. <laughs> Unlike Kevin's sitcom, which did not. <laughs> now, John's show format, he was going to do this thing. On, he does these Shuli shows on Tuesdays. He's got a whole schedule now. I forget what it is, but uh, he goes after Shuli on Tuesdays. as political shows with Richard Ojeda on Wednesdays. Thursdays is this show about me. But on Tuesday, he announced he was going to go after Shuli. He was going to go through Shuli's Anonymous, the subreddit, and just go through the different posts and threads and things and goof on Shuli based on that. So he's just stealing Shuli's Uncle Rico format? <laughs> Correct. But worse, because he's literally we literally watch him scroll through and try to find stuff and read comments. It's really fun. Uh, but what uh, was great is that the guy who runs that subreddit, his name is Phantom Dennis, just decided to private the subreddit right before he went on air just to fuck with them. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really funny. Because John's like, I'm blocked! I'm blocked! What the uh, fuck? <laughs> he couldn't figure it out. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> it's so funny. So now he's mad at Phantom Dennis. And Phantom Dennis comes into the show and lets him know how boring John is. And John gets very heated with this guy. Oh, 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 the Phantom Dennis. Um, he's Look how much this man's obsessed with me. This is the guy that runs Shuli's Anonymous, which I don't want to go on. Now it's Hackverse. Hackverse Mm -hmm. Anonymous I'm going on. Oh, I should mention that Super Chat he didn't read was in French. And it does mean, you are my female dog. Because, you know, he's been (laughs) saying that in Spanish, or he's trying to, to me and Shuli. So I thought that was fun. Because Uh. the Phantom Dennis blew it. Blew it. You blew it! The Hackverse isn't as active as Shuli's Anonymous, though. Yeah, but if... If the phantom and the phantom Dennis is there, like trying to defend his ridiculous action mm-hmm. of blocking of, of of shutting down his page, and he's out there, and they're all calling him a fucking tool. They're like, why would you do that? To fuck with you, John. No one. And I love that John. As soon as he sees anyone agreeing with him on the internet, yeah. he thinks, and everyone agrees with me. Right. All he sees is a couple of comments. He's like, everyone's with me on this one. They should just let me do my awesome show. And he fucked with this. So now I'm going to the Hackverse, another subreddit. I will no longer go on. It's not reliable enough for him to go on I am not Anonymous. going to endorse your product. I am going to go to this other product. You, you blew it. All of this celebrity <laughs> promotion yep. now gone. I'm surprised he doesn't get Popak to uh, to sue Shuli's Anonymous for going private right before he knew oh, he was going to do this show. coming down the pike. It probably is. <laughs> So now he's going through this other subreddit and he sees a clip of the show that Cardiff does with my buddy, Vinny Paulino subreddit surfing. And this is hilarious. I can't wait to talk to Vinny about this. John thinks that Vinny Paulino is Patrick Melton. Now they're both overweight guys. Don't get me wrong, but uh, this is really funny. Oh yes. And look at Fatty Patty. But I think we have a job for you now, Brian. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> I'm down. You quiet, what a isn't it, ah! man. Isn't it great that Fatty Patty was <laughs> laughing right. like that last night on subreddit surfing? Uh, well, <laughs> that's not Fatty Patty, John. That's uh, another guy. Call you Mike, though. Oh, that's uh, not Fatty Carter? Patty. I watched that show. That like, for, about, I know, but it's making me you, so happy you, that you thought it was. I thought that was the real. <laughs> oh, I know it. My bad. That's not. Both that fucks look alike to me. <laughs> He's so bad at this. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and a week ago, he was self-admittedly fat. Right. But he you can't make fun of people for their weight, as we're going to find out, because I was goofy uh. on Mike Pachetti. But then, thankfully, Cardiff is there now yeah. to let John know when he's being a hypocrite from time to time. Yeah. So that, that's a little bit helpful on In that here. special Cardiff way. I just love that he thought that Patrick Melton and Vinny are the same person. And then it's like, well, you're making fun of someone you don't even know. He's like, oh, I am? Oh, okay. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I mean when I say that John's doing this all wrong. He's scrolling through the subreddit. And he has the audio turned on. So anytime you get to a video that's embedded in the subreddit, it's going to autoplay with sound. And so it just interrupts everyone as they're talking because he's just scrolling as they're going. Uh, Now, what do you guys think of this Shuli Network emblem that is totally stolen from Suzuki? It it does look very much like a Suzuki. Remember those old Suzuki... Uh, Jeeps they used to have. Here, bro. Imagine, dude, your doctor. What's up, bro? What's up, kid? You know, if you're going to throw a topic at us, let us discuss it yeah, before yeah. you move to the next. 
Don't lecture me. I was on the Howard Stern show for 15 years, and I know that you just play things and just move on. Yeah, he's he's not what paying a attention. Fucking joke. He's not paying attention to anything that's going on. He's just scrolling on the internet. We're just watching an old man using the internet, and this is one of those hate sites he used to hate so much, and now the people are goofing on the people that he likes to goof on. He loves it. He signed up for all of these subreddits. It's great. Well, you could just you could very you can very easily in your Reddit settings go in and say don't autoplay videos so that you won't yeah. interrupt your fucking show in the middle of. He doesn't talking. know that, and they try to explain that to him over and over again. They're like, well, if you mute one of those videos, it won't autoplay with sound, and he just will not hear that. He just will not listen to them at all. Wow. Just continues to do that. But that is very hypocritical of him, though, to now be using a subreddit when he used to talk about how he hated all the hate sites and he wouldn't go on there and. Now he's on there all the time and oh. doing it in real time on his show. He just said I might not continue podcasting because it's too toxic. <laughs> right, told KC. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I don't know, this podcasting thing's real toxic. And meanwhile, he's starting up shows trashing Shuli, trashing me, trashing Trump. Like, that's all he does. It's uh, all toxic. I think KC asked him what he was going to do. He's like, well, auditions are, are... It's like, that doesn't bring in bills, getting jobs. You can't audition for anything <laughs> yeah. in Florida. Oh, well, There's not... Well, listen to this. The latest is, John said, this strike's not going to last much longer, and he'll be oh. back auditioning and back into show business anytime now. Because he's got the inside track, you know, being well, and he was the on talent. the Tonight Show Don't 20 years ago. I actually do know people who are part of the strike, and I do have a little bit of inside information. I'm sure everyone does. Uh, it's believed that this will go on through the new year. Mm. This is going Fingers to last. crossed. This is, yeah, no shit. Who cares? This is going to last a very long forever. time. I hope it wipes Hollywood off the planet, even though I have friends over there, because Hollywood sucks. And it's not necessary. We don't need it. So yeah. this is anyone can can launch their own podcast where they play clips of another show <laughs> right. and talk about what a piece of shit it is. All you have to do is get an animated potato on, and really that's all it takes, as John's gonna explain here. Yes, John, I really enjoy you and Cardiff together. Don't dox him. I will not. I will not. Oh, Cardiff is a Cardiff is a regular here now. Thank you. Are you oh, paying me? He wants to be a regular too. <laughs> you're getting no, you're you're the most card of your favorite MLB team. All right. So he just said Cardiff is a regular here. I don't know if this was discussed with Cardiff. <laughs> yeah. And he seemed surprised. How the fuck is this happening? So so Cardiff puts a potato filter on, and now he's friends with Opie, and he's friends with Stuttering John. He's on everybody's show all the time because he has a. I mean, I, I love Cardiff, but he's, it's a potato filter, guys. Everyone's getting fooled by this potato filter. I feel like they're like this guy is so charming and nice. He's just our our buddy. Yeah, you can play every side of the of the fence. It's amazing. It's gluten yeah. free. <laughs> the potato other... is a very versatile vegetable. It is. That's true. Good point. The yeah. other thing that we're going to be witnessing as we watch these clips. So you see Tukey's on here right now. Tukey has been blocked by John in John's stream yard, and so Tukey had to find an older computer. In order to get on here, but the computer doesn't work very well. So he's like, please unblock me so I get on my good computer and we can make this happen. So there's going to be a whole thing where they have to go through settings and look through all the different block lists and try to figure out where it is so they can bring Tukey on. The reason why John blocked Tukey is because he used some word that is anti-Italian. I don't know if it was Dago or WAP or something. And John's like, there's no racial slurs here. And he kicked him off and blocked him for it. Mm-hmm. So Cardiff trolls him this entire time. He's just like, okay, I just want to know the list of words we can't use. <laughs> and he just starts reading, the, he starts reading all the words. That's awesome. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> That's the dog shit joke again. Right. And John's like, no, yeah. no, stop it. Cardiff. <laughs> <laughs> no one cares if you clown Italians, John. Yeah. It's perfectly fine. Except for Tony from Hack the Movies. He gets real fucking upset when you start making fun of Italians. Oh, fuck that, Dago. Fuck yeah, that fuck dumb that guy. Here comes the grease ball. By the way, I will be doing a show with that grease ball uh, next <laughs> Friday. This Friday coming up, talking about Bird Kreischer's The Machine. Ooh. I hope he shows up prepared. I'm sure he will, Tab. I'm sure he will. <laughs> All right, this is John again trying to find a clip. He doesn't know how to mute the videos. It's it's just him scrolling around. This is not a show, John. This is not good. Mm-hmm. I want to get into the, This is the funniest thing. Shuli gets mad at Bob Levy because Bob Levy laughs at Kevin uh, Brennan. Shuli's running the the, the, the Hold on. Reddit. Mute it. 
Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Hold on. I got Lied about sorry. trademark. Uh, yeah. Still won't be. Uh, sorry, I can't. Uh, no, not battery. No, it must be on Hackbird. It's got to be on the Hackbird then. He's not even on the right subreddit. Oh my god! For the thing he's looking for. Fire. Picture at all. Old man Google's the internet. So Every Thursday <laughs> on the Stuttering John YouTube uh, channel. Oh, there it is. What are you doing? Playing Crazy Train because we're on the Crazy Train. <laughs> you <laughs> asshole. Thanks for the two bucks. FKB. Long live the potato and Tukey too. So any new viewer who doesn't know who St- Stuttering John is, who just happens upon this because it has the word podcast in it, yeah. it's going to be like, why does this guy podcast? Yeah, right. It's just an old. That's a good point. In that person, called, why do they podcast? And it's yeah. a guy scrolling through subreddits. And not he might get a new following, at. you know, inadvertently. Right. He'd be like the Perry Caravello yeah, kind of a fact. Like right. It's just like this. This guy is. You got to watch this. Yeah. Guy. No hey, idea honey, what get he's in doing. here. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. He must be the most inept asshole to ever be on the internet. Even worse so than Kevin Brennan. You got to watch this. It's crazy. Right after this, oh, man. nasty L. Puts a super chat and he says, John, I will give you a hundred dollar super chat right now if you turn your camera around and reveal what your place looks like. And Jack goes, I'm not gonna do that. It's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing. Don't forget, I got the messy kind of OCD. Yep. <laughs> That's right. It's not his fault, of course. He's lived in this house for three months, four months. You know what? I, I think he's out in LA right now. I think he's got an apartment in LA and a house in Florida, if I'm not wow, mistaken. Wow, big Big swinger out here, living in both places. Oh yeah, he's doing it all. Oh, that's right, because he's posted pictures of him at the uh, WGA strikes. Like anybody yes. fucking knows who he is. Oh, I'm I'm sure he's really gonna push it. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna be like, oh, something John's yeah. here now. Give in, whatever they're demanding, residuals, whatever they want, <laughs> they can have it. I want residuals from when I wrote the cold openings on Tonight Show that nobody has ever watched again. Did you know that I directed directors on that show? <laughs> I Quentin, told Quentin Tarantino Quentin to Tarantino shut Tarantino wouldn't shut the fuck up until I told him to shut the fuck up. My claim to fame. All right. So then oh. um, there's another weird exchange here. I couldn't pull all the clips, but where Cardiff is saying something and John goes, you know, Cardiff, you're a lot funnier than you think. <laughs> I think Cardiff thinks he's pretty funny. Yeah, he's, it's a weird thing to say. Yeah, he's, he's, he's extremely proud of himself. That's he doesn't for sure. lack confidence. You're right. No, Cardiff does not lack confidence. That's for sure. All right. John's going to start burning me now. All right. We, we, he goes into a little bit of uh, Kevin and Bob Levy and Julie and stuff, which is not the point of this show. I think he got a little sidetracked there for a second. <laughs> let's get back to making fun of me and let's hear some sick burns. Dave, look at this fucking paneling. I mean, what the? Who the? What person in the fucking in the two thousands has paddling? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jesus! Mm-hmm. If it makes you feel better, when I was in that basement, I left an upper decker for him. <laughs> All right, let's watch Carl in his. This is his genius. All right. So he's already gotten in the wood paneling burn a few times because it's also his background. So he's really letting me know he is not a fan of the wood paneling we have down here in my finished basement. It's also Cardiff's background. Well, right. Yes. Yeah. So this is John's. He's going to start watching my show now. And this is my show. We're goofing on Kevin's technical problems. And John's way of doing this is he lets me say three to six words and then he pauses it and then repeats the words that I just said. We're going to see a lot of examples of this. Let's watch Carl. Let's see if he makes us laugh. He's so happy. Look at him. I can't. My computer is not fucking doing anything. Oh, this was fucking funny, though, dude. <laughs> wow. The camera's working. <laughs> I don't think he knows that at this, this point. This is really bad. I don't, think, I don't think he knows that. I don't think he knows that at this point. <laughs> I don't think he knows that. Oh, he's so fucking annoying. All I said was, oh, I don't think he knows that. I don't think he knows that. that at this point. He's so fucking annoying. What a what a insightful commentary there, John. So, John, I'm just going to give you a, a tip because I've been doing this a lot longer than you. You got to find little areas to to poke fun at. It can't be every single thing I say and then repeat it and go, this guy's annoying. That's not Carl, a good joke. Uh, I've been in broadcasting for decades. I, uh, I, you know, I think I would know a thing or two about being an entertainment I would have uh, thought producer. so too, John! That's what I thought! That's why we're shocked by this! 
That's why we're still shocked by this. Look at how unaware John is. It's incredible. Yeah, okay. So now he's going to goof on a guy with a weight problem. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I, I do call fucking uh, Patrick Melton Fatty Patty, so I shouldn't really talk, but okay. Not Poor good. Mike Boschetti. That was a good moment, John. That was an honest moment. What are you talking about? <laughs> so his buddy Dave here yeah. goes, holy shit, you finally became aware. I can't fucking believe it just happened. <laughs> you finally, a, a little sense of awareness just happened. And Jack goes, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Yeah, he also admitting that he was slightly wrong and zing, yep. it's off the table. And then it's off the table immediately <laughs> after that. And and he'll explain away why he's allowed to make fun of Patrick Melton for being overweight, but I can't make fun of Mike Buschetti for being overweight. We're going to hear all about that. But You know, Carl, uh, sometimes uh, when I start a sentence, I'm hearing it for the first time also. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think that's the problem. I think that's what the problem is. So this is the longest John has ever watched a segment of my show. I think it's maybe 10 seconds straight. And this is his reaction to that. And he saw the portion where I grabbed my acoustic guitar <laughs> to try to figure out this amazing song that John had written. That was a great about moment. Pat- oh, oh. <laughs> Cardiff. Yes. Who the fuck is paying for this shit? How can fucking Carl have all these fucking uh, patrons? It's it's it. Talk about lazy. Your talk man. about lazy. Fucking. He, he entices patrons with naked pictures. No, it's really, true. Dave. Yeah. No, no, really, yeah. boobs. Dave, what is so interesting about this? I've uh, I've watched Carl. I've only enjoyed a few shows. Um, I think he actually <laughs> gets his uh, his research and his technical aspect really really well done. I think that's what a lot of people, you know, kind of appreciate. What? He plays a fucking, he plays a clip. I feel like it's super Revenge of the Nerds, just like some guy who probably used to get, you know, locker stuff and all that good stuff. You know, not all that. What? I don't want to sound crazy, but who now is like, he can kind of say what he wants and there's sort of a level of impunity, you know. So, I mean, some people enjoy that kind of stuff. It's not my cup of tea. What are you going to do? He, he used to get locker stuffed. We brought lockers to to Philadelphia WATP TDS crossover, put them in the Airbnb, and just stuff Carl in them <laughs> just for fun. Yeah. It's not a used to. Oh, it's, it's, it's still, still happening, happens. for sure. Yeah. He's got me there. I want to point out, and I'll, I'll acknowledge what Dave just said, but if John doesn't understand why – people are successful in the business that he's in. If he doesn't understand why they're successful, then he shouldn't be in this business. John sits there and goes, he watches, I said 10 seconds, I'm sorry, it was more like five. And he pauses it and he goes, this is so boring. Who would want to watch this shit? John, if you can't comprehend it, then you're in the wrong business. You'll never figure it out. The clips, you then analyze the clips. All he's doing is playing the clip and he has no... He can't process any of this information because his brain is so Swiss cheese right. that he doesn't understand anything outside of just like stimulus response, stimulus response. So he gets the stimulus and goes, I hate this. Carl's being mean to me. Right. And doesn't understand why an outside person would maybe find that entertaining. No, he well, does not understand. That is definitely true. He's definitely infuriated by the money. Yes. That seems oh, yeah. to be the core of his uh, complaint. That here. bothers him quite a bit. Now, so Dave comes in and goes, maybe it's because... This guy is like a Revenge of the Nerds kind of guy. You're rooting for the nerd to get back at the bullies. I'll just point this out to Dave. I played uh, guitar and skateboard in high school. I was pretty much Marty McFly minus the hot mom and time machine. Okay? So how dare you, sir? How dare you? All right. So now John is talking about how we're doing a show together on John's channel, August 14th at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Tune in for round two, the roaster versus the boaster. The nerd versus the turd, round two. But then John says, I might back out. Oh, so let's see. Oh, what a pussy. I think well, that, John, you're a pussy. Yeah. Guess what? I'm scheduled to do another show with Carl August 14th. Really? On your channel, on this channel right here. Yeah, on August my 14th. channel. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. And unless he, uh, you know, unless he backs out because he's mad at um Why do they podcast WDTP? He could have at least gotten that terrible photo that. of you. I mean, that would be like you being mad at him for his show. You can't be mad at that. Like, yeah, I don't. I really don't understand who this guy is. I don't know why that represents me. Not even There's such glasses. a terrible photo of Carl out there yeah. that you could just slap the walrus thing on the front of, and it'd be ten times fun. Hey, I wonder how much he paid 
for like on Fiverr for someone to make this. <laughs> I think right, because there's no way he did this. There's no, no way a guy that. that can't figure out how to mute a subreddit, <laughs> right. put together some video editing, and Photoshop the Walrus Man, listen to your to your theme, your old theme song, and like made a parody. This is all someone else did this for him. I, Maybe Tony Michaels did it. I think a relative of his did this for him. He's so proud of it, though. He just keeps playing it over and over again, and every single time. Let me let me get back to this where he he laughs his ass off. As he likes to do, as he's wont to do. He can't be mad at that. I mean, <laughs> not be like you being mad at him for his show. You can't be mad at that. Like, <laughs> all right, let's get back to the fucking the review. Okay, look at this. Check out this intro. Boom, gotcha. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna back out, John. Don't don't you worry about that. Okay. So you're saying you're not a pussy, guys? I am gonna pause the stuttering John segment. At this time, we're going to get back into it because there's a few more things that I need to hit on for sure. But uh, I have a very exciting announcement to make today. Reviews, reviews, reviews with Vic. The return of Vic the Review no Girl. Way. And I can't believe how much we were talking about you today. It was bizarre how much you came up with conversation. I was like, going to bring you on, but you weren't sitting in your chairs. I was like, ah, shit, I can't bring her on. <laughs> talking about squirt and everything. All the stuff that she yeah. knows right. <laughs> How's it going, Vic? Oh, so good. Yeah, what's new? I've been working, unlike you. This uh... is, I'm working right now. <laughs> You're talking this about? is Carl at work right now. Yes. I know. Not even wearing pants, getting a hand job under the table from Chris. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, I smile a little too much. Is that what gave it away? Yeah. Yeah. Damn it. What's how's work going? What are you What are you doing? You like uh, wiping down counters and things on the ship? She's swabbing yeah. the poop deck. <laughs> swabbing the poop deck. Um, I I've been pissing in buckets recently. Uh, cause our yeah. our toilets stop working, so I just I piss in buckets and pour it down the drain. Are you saying shit in the ocean? Are we not funding the military enough in this country? Is that what the problem is? <laughs> no. <laughs> we need some more money to go towards that. Yeah, we need more money, actually. Just send it to my Venmo and then I'll get it to the military. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, Vic, are you still doing a comedy? Beloved, we're gonna send it to a beloved armed services branch. <laughs> <laughs> it could be the navy, it could be I, I won't say. <laughs> are you still doing comedy, Vic? Um, occasionally. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. I've been out floating in the middle of the ocean you know that uh not the best environment to do comedy so do you don't have any plugs Seems like a, you have right a now? captive audience there <laughs> where are they gonna walk out that's you, true they can't walk off the whole boat <laughs> <laughs> and how about this boat food everybody Let me tell you. um plugs uh, you can follow my instagram at victoria uh, that's about it. I right. don't care enough. All right. There are sometimes cute pictures of dogs on that. Instagram. Yeah, no, my corgi has been alive. Good. Now I just got a new cat. Oh, congratulations! What's your cat's name? Uh, Vladimir. Is it a Russian? He's, he's eighteen pounds. Oh Jesus! That's a fat cat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's hiding under my bed because I picked him up yesterday. Oh, so he also wants to get away from you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that story checks out. Yeah. Now, Vic, I was happy to have you come back on the show. I decided to reach out and just say, hey, what's going on? What's new? You want to come on the show? And uh, thankfully, you're able to do it this weekend. But coincidentally enough, on our subreddit, after I asked you to come back on the show and you agreed to, all of a sudden, this comes up. What really happened to Vic? <laughs> Did she die? I missed that hoe. <laughs> Don't forget the sad face, all right? And there is a sad face on there. People miss you, Vic. And so yeah. what I thought we could do is you could address some of the comments on this thread. Okay, Slay. I'll do right. that. So uh, Carl put her in the cage with Jenny Jingles, but unlike Jenny, she never gets to come out because of her poor manners and unkept pubic hair. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say that is a lie. I know that one. Some of these I need it you to address. It was the truth for like a month. Carl kept me in the cage for a month. Right. But I'm not a barbarian. <laughs> I let you out. Yeah, right. once you shave that pubic hair, you're allowed out of the cage. Facts. <laughs> it's very simple. Uh, went and shot her mouth off 
and had to post her tits. And I assume her husband got fucked with by every man on his military base and told her to knock it off. If I had to guess, that sounds more like someone was really trying to figure out what was going on here. Yeah, that's that's not true. Mr. I got Vic's busy. not mad at you? No. Got busy with all the other servicemen? He still hasn't left me yet. No, he's been getting fucked by every man on the base, but not fucked with. <laughs> oh, I thought he was out of the military and going into IT or something. Yeah, no, he's going into cyber. Is that like a guy's name? <laughs> <laughs> Cyber's going into him. Yeah. Isn't that the bad guy in the Matrix? Isn't that the... the <laughs> Uh, Carl stopped pretending that his followers were straight and gave up on the shtick. <laughs> That's <laughs> false because you scared away like two or three other fucking review girls. Scared away is a strong term. <laughs> all right. Scared away is, is not true. We um, prefer spooked. <laughs> <laughs> we prefer terrified. <laughs> uh, all right. And then uh, moment of Zen says. She is now a post-military wife, so I think that means she is whoring it up at the bars. Vic, comment? I've been whoring it up at a gay bar, but not. I'm I'm still in. Trying to get him to switch teams. Yeah. I like that Vic goes to a gay bar, so that when all the guys are turned off by her, she's like, "See, there's a reason for it." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're all gay. That's yeah. why they don't think I'm hot. Yeah, right. Uh, then uh, Vic is probably on a tour right now. Thank you for your cervix, Vic. <laughs> That's a play on words. I, I was on like a two month tour a little bit ago. Yeah. Did not use my cervix, unfortunately. Small arenas or like back alleys? <laughs> Florida. Let's see if Vic gets this next one from Leonard Smalls. Uh, I believe she's with Davey, who's still in the Navy and probably will be for life. Uh, that's from the song, The that's Gay some, Boy. That's right. The Piano Man. The Gay Boy. The gay, the gay guy at the bar is the name of that song. Yeah. All right. Then uh, everyone's been like, what happened to all these people? And we got to stop to consider Carl is a freak of nature on several shows all day, every day. He's the only one like this. I believe that person is saying that who wants to be in a fucking podcast every week, which I understand that. Yeah, that must be tough. <laughs> all right. What about this one, Vic? Let's see if you can confirm or deny this. Vic and Hannah lost the marketing word to Carl, who used to be a professional. He got the pictures for his Patreon, but they lost the mystique and there was nothing more to do or gain. I'm not sure if that's I don't, true. I don't know what losing the mystique means. Yeah, I don't know either. Well, we, we saw the tits, so you kind of lost like any interest we had in you as men. No, yeah, that's, that's fair. We that's still haven't seen her asshole, though. Yeah, so, <laughs> I'm not buying that one. I don't think that's the case at all. Uh, she wants to see and met a manatee. No, I haven't seen a manatee. No, you didn't. You weren't. We didn't have anything to do with that manatee at the at the aquarium. <laughs> Fucked another manatee to death. Like you didn't weren't involved in that situation. I, well, I no, we weren't. Unfortunately, we might have caused the fat mermaids at the aquarium, but that's other than that. It's all, chill. <laughs> all right, I see you're uh, still listening to the Dick Show. Very good. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Vic is the man. She'll be back once the Navy is no longer floatable. Her buoyant qualities is the only thing holding it up. Is that true? <laughs> okay. That might be true. We'll see. Okay. We'll see what it's looking like. If you're still alive, if you haven't been fucking murdered by Stud Joe. Vic, do you have the best rack in the Navy? No. No? no not even close. Really? I met this 40-year-old Chinese lady. I'm listening. And she was only in the Navy <laughs> uh-huh. because her dad was like, either marry rich or join the Navy. And then you'll have all his money. Anyways, natural boobs out to here. It was like she was carrying fucking barrels. Can where, she why, read where the reviews photos in English? Not on your... Uh, no, she can't. She's Damn really it. bad at English. Damn it. What were you asking? You can at least get a photo with her and post it on your fucking Ooh, Instagram. Yeah, oh. we want photos. If I run into her again, I have to. Oh photos my God. It feels like she'd be hard to miss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she got fucked to death on a Westpac. <laughs> I'm going to see if that's a, a no on that one. Uh, no. She was diagnosed with lupus. No lupus yet. Uh, what about one on a cruise full of semen? God, that's that just, one, that's yeah, just lazy. I, I have. That's just lazy. Do, that. do better. <laughs> All right. So, Vic, now that we know that you're alive and that I didn't scare you away forever, at least. I, I mean, we could say that. Uh, will you be coming back on the show and reading reviews from time to time? From time to time, I think. Listen to that. That could, that could be a little funsy. 
That's exciting. Plus, we want to plug your gigs and get people coming out to your stand-up. How is your uh, act maturing? Are you feeling good about it? I'm feeling decent about it. I fucking... I've been watching clips of... Uh, what's the redhead's Real comedians. name? Um, Chrissy Mayer. I don't... Yes. The clips she posts are not good. Okay. How do you feel about that, Carl? I have not watched the clips that she's posted. I, I'll have to check those out. I don't know that you she was posting. You go to her wedding, but you don't keep up with her Instagram? That's correct. I am not an Instagram person. <laughs> I don't look at... Tab, do you look at Instagram? Oh Yeah, you, I have an Instagram, Instagram so I can share like my backstage pictures and the stuff I'm working on and talk to girls. <laughs> I got it. All right. That makes sense. So, no, I yeah, should probably check out Chrissy's uh, Instagram. She's posting her stand up stuff on there. Yeah. And she posts out workouts a lot. Mm, I see. Yeah. A lot of women do that. I, I fucking it. hate it so much. They all look awful. Wow. Okay. I'm a sweaty, gross mess. Take the photo before you start working out, you stupid bitch. <laughs> I got to say, I see uh, Missy B post those things. I think she does do the before photos quite often, which is smart. Yeah. No, you got to do the before. That is a good move. Well, and some ladies just go to the gym, take pictures, and then leave the gym, which is also an option. See, that's really the way to go. Get the gym <laughs> membership. Stupid. Make sure you document that you went to the gym. Do it every day, but mm-hmm. never, ever work out. <laughs> never get anywhere near a treadmill or a weight. That's a good move right there. Should yeah, it's a that. pro strat. It is a pro strat. Um, yeah. Vic. I want to be uh, very conscious of your time. Do you want to hang out as we do the second part of the Stuttering John segment? No, I really hate Stuttering John. (laughs) We all do. I'll come back after, though. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, um, hang out, and uh, we'll be back in just a moment. Okay. All right. Coming up after the break. The rack is back, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) Very exciting to see uh, Uh. Vic again. She's no longer blonde, which is disappointing, but I'll get over it. I have a feeling. Okay. John's going to make fun of the way I talk. Let me say that again. John is going to make fun of the way I talk. John. It really is amazing what this guy picks up on and goes after me for. And he's not good at it. So now KB is going to spin this, that the so entire video. show was just us being best pals. So the other thing he's done so like, right is telling Mike to shut the fuck up. The best pals. Did you see how he says pals? Mm-hmm. Ailes. He's about a, you, Patrick. Mack. Have you heard how he says That's exactly? KB is going to spin this that the entire show was just us being best pals. So far, the Ailes. What Ailes. the fuck? You, what is he saying? Pals. What even is an Did accent? Did you guys not see that? <laughs> what even is an accent? He is a Rochester goofball. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. His accent, yes. His accent's very strange <laughs> to me. Mm-hmm. Best pals. Because yeah, you don't live in Rochester, song. you fucking moron. This is the guy who can't say Nicolas Cage without using the N word. <laughs> Calling me out because yes, I have my A's are are the hard A sound when I when I say words. That is true. I know that it's always been the case. Western New York. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But watch how long John tries to figure out a joke for this right. and just cannot. He just keeps trying. His accent's very strange to me. Mm-hmm. Best pills. Figure out this amazing song that John had written about Patrick Melton, and so now KB is going to spin this. That the entire show was just us being best pals. So pals. Yeah, say it again. What is he? T- what is he saying, guys? Pals. What the fuck is a pal? At this point, you can see that both Dave and Cardiff are laughing at John yeah. for thinking he's going off on a great <laughs> rant right here. Uh, like, oh yeah, keep it going, John. You got this, buddy. What else? It what just else? keeps getting funnier. Yep. A pail is something you uh, store water in when you wash the car. I don't yeah. Think meant, is there a hole in the pail, the Eliza, the Eliza? Is there a hole in the pail, the Eliza, a hole? I think it's the word bucket in that song, but I don't know. Anyway. No, dear Henry. This is gold, Jerry. Gold. <laughs> I know. Keep going with it. This is really great stuff. But this is John's new shtick, though, is that he just, like, yells and gets hoarse and is just saying nothing. Gets close to the camera. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's totally doing Kevin Brennan now. Are a hole? No, dear Henry, there's not a hole in the pail. Johnny Boy. Hold on. In this in the song, there is a hole in the bucket, and then they have to fix it. I don't understand <laughs> why he's getting this so wrong. Yeah. Henry. Because he's angry. I'm gonna jump <laughs> this off. This is a lost version. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
deep cut you wouldn't understand carl yeah you're not a you're not a musician like i am there was this band. I wrote a song with joe walsh <laughs> it's a good point i forgot about that john <laughs> there's this uh band in, from rochester in big hair and they used to do devil went down to georgia and they changed it the, the devil wins which i think is a funnier version Ooh, of it it's fun yeah it's fun so john's going off on his uh hilarious there's a hole in the pail jokes and at this point dave just taps out the pail Johnny Peter Boy. Henry. I'm going to jump off because I'm going to head up. All right, I'll see you at the bar. <laughs> this is all gold, John, but I'm yeah. going to. He's like pointing at his watch. He's like, I'm going to. Uh, it's please. with deep regret. That, uh, <laughs> yeah. I love I love when people bail on stuttering, John. It oh, is the best. I, I could watch a compilation of just people trying to figure their way <laughs> off of stuttering John's bail. show. Bail. Bail. <laughs> <laughs> so. This is great because watch what happens right after this. A pleasure, sir. I'll see the pub. Beers on you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Again, I'll see the pub. Beers on you. Dave's face says it all. She's like, "Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, I know. I know you're pretending that's a joke, but I'll be buying the beers again. That's fine. Okay. So I have- a thank you for coming on my show. You get to also." Uh, <laughs> Buy me a beer. Oh, God. I got an email from Andrea Brower, his ex-mod, just Mm -hmm. thanking me for the things I've said about her and and Benny Loco and the support. And I wrote her back. I'm like, it's insane. John thinks they still owe him something. All they've ever done is volunteered their time, a lot of time, helping him out. And then John gets this idea that everyone owes him all the time, no matter what. Come on my show. Buy me beers. This new version of John is a little obnoxious. I got to figure out how to navigate this on the 14th because he's just going to scream. As soon as I pronounce his name a certain way or something, he's just going to start screaming it over and over again. So I I got to sit and give this some thought. Well, is he going to give ground rules? I'm going to give ground rules. Oh, again. Okay. He does right. show. <laughs> we'll see if he goes along with them or not, but I'm going to try. So after a First long... off, no talking about my teeth. Second, oh, that's... no talking about my feet. We don't talk about <laughs> teeth. <laughs> Kurt have tried to plant this seed. He goes, yeah, you know, Carl's got he's club footed. When you uh, when you go over to his house, he has to wear these special slippers. <laughs> <laughs> John, John didn't pick up on that one, oh, unfortunately. Wow. Didn't work. Yeah, maybe he saw that was a little silly. I don't know. <laughs> even even John was just like, hold on a second. What are you trying to say? Okay, so after a long time trying to figure out how to unblock Tukey, and John's going through all the people he's blocked. <laughs> on YouTube, and he's going on and on and on. Cardiff starts uh, playing music on his end, and then John has to stop him from doing that so he can grab his guitar oh. and sing us a song. Alright, hold on, Florida. Florida. Yes. Patty. Patty. He's already forgot the yeah. melody. Is his guitar in tune? And the guitar is not in tune at all. It's not even close. It's just bling, bling, bling. Oh yeah. my God. And so this what's is worse than an open mic night? It's way worse than an open mic night. And what's great is that this is all going to lead into him making fun of my guitar playing. <laughs> so keep that in mind as we're watching this. And John's totally forgotten this song that he wrote that he thinks is great because it's not that great. It wasn't a good melody. So he's completely forgotten it. And now he's just going to make up a new one. Patty, 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 why are you such a fat fuck? Thank you. <laughs> good stuff. Music and lyrics by Stuttering John Melendez. <laughs> yeah, really, really good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. People are going to point out to John that he's not good at this, this style show of playing a clip and then reacting. All of this just takes forever because it's just nonstop nonsense. He doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know how to run anything. The best. Uh, thank you for five bucks. Thank you, John. You watching clips really makes me appreciate how great WATP and Rico are. Clearly not everyone can do this. I'm glad that I could help them as I, as I show what hack shows they have. Mm-hmm. Thinking of which... Let's go back to Pails. <laughs> Let's go back to how it Pails. <laughs> We're going back to that. So I don't think John understood that That's super chat. Right. He, he didn't get that Mike he was Pichetti being insulted at all. Gay. No. It's just something no. I do to make and, sure. And Mike Pichetti, if you're shaped like that, 
Why is the camera pointed at your stomach? All right. All right, Carla. Now, Carla. I'm not gay. It's just something I do to make sure everyone's protected. Carla. Oh, that's a drop that Cardiff is playing on his end. I know this is getting very confusing. You're hearing my voice all over the place right now. But all right, back back to Stuttering John and his new show. Carla, you're going to pick on Mike Boschetti, who's a thousand times funnier than you'll ever be. And now you're going to pick on him because he's fat and and the camera is not set up in the proper manner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Neither is yours. You just did question. sing a... F- you just did sing a fatty pound. <laughs> <Yeah, man. laughs> I, I love that Cardiff is there to explain this to uh, him. Again. Yes, yeah, it's the same point. Okay, but just, but just that's calling out the hypocrisy, please. No, no, no. Hold on a second. Oh, okay. This is, oh, this is no, the difference. Is he, you ready? He, uh, it's different. It is. Every time yeah. he gets called out for hypocrisy, because that was the first thing I said to him when we did our show together. I go, you have all these Twitter sock accounts. That was the thing you made fun of Howard Stern for telling his staff to do. Nope. When I did it, it was different. No, it's not. It's the same thing. No, nope, I had a different reason. And he's going to explain that here, why it's different. Uh, yes, Fatty always Patty. explain. Always able to explain away the hypocrisy. Perfect. <laughs> yes. Yep. Good. Yes. Fatty Patty decided to attack me. You see, there's oh. the difference. Oh. When it's a self-defense insult about someone being fat, that's different than just making fun of someone for fun. Dude, it's literally he started it. John's whole thing is it's okay he started it. He's a child. He's eight years old. He's eight years old. Why are you throwing rocks at your brother? He started it. Yeah, but you still shouldn't throw rocks at your brother. You understand that, right? Nope. <laughs> no, nope, uh, but I never will. <laughs> counterpoint. <laughs> <laughs> He's unbelievable. Thank God Cardiff is there to explain to him. Like, you were just singing a song about a guy, Patrick Melton, and how fat he is. And now you're telling Carl, and I'm not allowed to. Tell Mike Machete fat for some reason because he's a thousand times funnier than me. Okay. That's a weird reason. I, I, I don't know who Patrick Melton is, but I assume he's a thousand times funnier than Studying John. He definitely is. That's the Nobody Likes yeah. Onions guy, if you're following okay. any of that in the hack verse. But uh, yeah, Patrick Melton has said that he's way funnier than John because Patrick does stand up. And John said, We're not even in the same league. It's like, yeah, but he, he's funnier than you. More people know your name, John, but. Doesn't mean he's not funnier than you. Yeah, kind of what what all league? The time. <laughs> well, and and he if he's funny, he has a chance to grow. Stuttering John is is his last gig, as as far as I remember, was in a sports bar in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. That's not like it was you're a not going from that to a, to a Netflix special. You're you're going from that to like someone's bat mitzvah yeah. that you got invited to out of pity. Yeah, but he only remembers the good things. That's the part you're missing here, Tab. Fair. Is uh, later on when he's goofing on me, he actually pulls up the music video that he did back in 95 or whatever it was. It's like, you know, we know, John. We know that you used to do stuff. That's not what we're goofing on, although sometimes it is. Not the point. The point is he's going to go through now. He's realized that he's banned Tukey on StreamYard, not YouTube. And that's why Tukey can't get on. I didn't know you could ban guests on StreamYard, neither did Cardiff. So... Once he finds that list, Cardiff has him read through the list just to embarrass John. And John doesn't pick up on this, so he actually does read the uh, the list of people he's banned on, through StreamYard. Usernames, go ahead. Start right. from the top. Your banned guests on StreamYard. Go. Okay. Bob A. Bowie. Okay. Sounds Shuli cool. E. Fudge Sickle 2020. Shuli David... E. Is that the Shuli E? Yes. I, I, I don't. I don't think so. Yep. David K. Kyle Swindell. Chad mm-hmm. Zumuk. Chance. L horrible? Yes, that's one. That's one of the possibilities. Keep going though. That Smart. might not be the one. Smart. Guy. All right, then I'm um, dabble much. Juan Dabbler, mm-hmm. <laughs> Stuttering Joe Depot, Pro Wrestling Fiend, American Cupcake, Chad Monk, Nicholas Tyler Cage, Cochran, <laughs> Michael <laughs> Allen, and L horrible comic, Pamela Anderson. <laughs> That could be the last one, too. Okay. <laughs> Better read that list again. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. So that's amazing because we just heard he's banned both Shuli and Chad. Mm-hmm. And, John, you're a pussy. <laughs> that's a pussy move right there. You're banning people out of your stream yard. Well, they can only get there if you send them the link. So right. just don't send them the link for your next show. But also, what? 
Sometimes people post people. Sometimes people get the link and then they post it on the internet and people start showing up. I've seen that happen before. You <laughs> don't have you just to let them out. Add them to the stream. Right. Yeah. You can remove them immediately. It's fine. He's actually physically banning them, so they can't even possibly get out. Okay, so then he unblocks El Harible, and Tuki is able to join the show. Tuki, you yeah. owe me, Tuki. I didn't say any slurs today, John. I didn't say any slurs. Uh, I apologize. Tuki is so sorry. He just wants to be your friend, just like you want to be friends with Carl. Amazing. <laughs> Fucking hilarious, Tuki. <laughs> he just wants to be your friend, just like how you want to be friends with Carl. And this is really funny because uh, John does not like that. He's going to let us know that that is not the case. I don't want to be just... friends with Carl. Oh, come on. Yes, you do. We no, all, want, we all Before... want to be friends with Carl. Before this goes too far. Mm-hmm. Let's confirm the words that Tuki's not allowed to use today. Grease Shut ball. up! <laughs> <laughs> I'll blow you out next. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> okay, so I want to know: was that the real Shuli Egar that you had yes. blocked in Streamyard? I don't think so. No. Okay. Oh wow. Notice that John touched his face when he says, "I don't think so." No, he definitely blocked the real Shuli Egar because he's a pussy and he's a bitch. Let's watch that again, everybody. Now that we know the uh, the tell now we know here. his tell. Yeah, now we know this his tell. Good. This is Cardiff. Props to Cardiff again. Mm-hmm. He thinks that him and Cardiff are best buds. And Cardiff is, he's picking his spots, but he's doing a good job with it. Yeah. Trolling him to his face. Yes. No, was yeah. that the real Shuli Egar that you had blocked in StreamYard? I don't think so, no. Mm-hmm. That was definitely the real Shuli Egar. I don't think so. Uh, it's probably another Shuli. I, I cannot know, recall. I know a bunch of Shulis. Sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're going to get into John goofing on me. And this is where he starts just repeating anything that I say. And that's the way he thinks that this kind of show operates. That's comedy. That's how comedy works is somebody says something and then you repeat it back. And that's hilarious. Right. I'm not a skinny man. Yeah, I'm not a skinny man. No, not at all. Well, you're very light in the brain. (laughs) But the way I'm framed, you don't know that. Mike's body language says, I don't want to get up to adjust the camera. It's insane. (laughs) No. It's insane! Oh, it's insane! It's insane, like in, the in, the insane in, the in the brain! Insane in the brain! Fucking idiot. There's I'm too gonna... many layers. This is too many layers, I know, Carl. I know, I apologize. I am going to put this challenge out to one stuttering John Melendez the next time he does this show, which would be Thursday, I would assume. Anytime you watch a clip of me, you cannot repeat what I just said. Try something else. You have to do something else because that's not a joke. When I say that's insane, you go, that's insane. That's not a joke. It's not a good joke. That's insane. It's not good. So let's see if you can do this style show, John, without repeating what I just said. And now there's a super chat that comes up, and uh, I appreciate this chat. And uh, John's got a, an answer for it. Uh, oh, oh, okay. I, I guess I did miss some. Uh, thanks for the 10 bucks. Uh, nice. nice. John, Carl made it on his own, completely on his own. No help from Howard Stone or anyone else. He's a true original. You have to give him props. Okay, let's analyze this one, Potato Head. Mm-hmm. Let's analyze this one. <laughs> uh, what's to analyze? I, I think that's pretty accurate, right? Seems pretty obvious that I didn't, I wasn't on a show. I wasn't hired to work for a show or anything like that. I just kind of built this from, from scratch. Yeah, you didn't inherit it. I didn't inherit you it. Nope. So that. let's see. Let's see what John says about that. Mm-hmm. Really? He made it on his own by stealing Opie and Anthony's bit. Mm-hmm. You there call that a- idiot on your own? There is a rumor going around that Carl did purchase the rights from Anthony Cumia for Jocktober. <laughs> I have not been able to confirm these rumors, but there is there's, a chance. There's, there's- now, I don't know this to be a fact, but I've heard that Led Zeppelin listened to the Beatles before they started playing rock music. And you want to say that Led Zeppelin is an original rock band? When they heard another rock band perform songs with guitars and drums and vocals? They did steal that. They did steal Stairway to Heaven. Also, all right, maybe that's a bad example. Also, <laughs> Bill Burr saw George Carlin doing stand-up. And then he did stand-up. Shameful. It really is. Embarrassing. Is the dead fool one that he's probably upset about. I just didn't see it. My apologies, Deadpool, because I was busy. I, I was busy playing clips. So you know, when I play clips, I'm not looking at the chat. So it's, ex- it's exactly right. Yes. <laughs> so that's my bad. Um, so now we can get current. 
<laughs> you know, okay. Um, that fool, you're making fun of Carl's speech impediment. What's the hypocrisy police phone number? Yeah, I'm making fun of his speech, but like he doesn't make fun of mine. Carter, play, play a clip of you. Making fun of <laughs> Thank you. All right, so he's not being a hypocrite because again, you did it first. We started it. You it's, deserve this, Carl. Isn't that amazing how that works? That's his <laughs> only defense to all the hypocrisy going on with Senator John. His only defense is he did it first. Yeah, he started it. Uh, he really is insane. What a jackass. <laughs> he really is. Okay. This is him repeating me again. Get ready for some, some big laughs here. <laughs> Mike was shutting up to his voice. He does laugh. He'd be the biggest star on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 come on. That's funny. If Mike Bugetti had Dookie's voice, he'd be the biggest star on the internet. That's a knee slapper. That's a knee slapper, Carla. Got to laugh. <laughs> That's a knee slapper, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Tab. Damn you. <laughs> Tab is clowning me on my own yeah. show right now. He got me good with that one. He's trolling you. Laughed right in my face. All screwing me. <laughs> he really is amazing. All right. So now John finally sees when I explained the reason why I brought my acoustic guitar out on the show with him was to goof on him for his terrible fatty patty song. John didn't know that until this very moment right here, and he gets very <laughs> upset about it. Uh oh. <laughs> Let's find some common ground. And actually, what Kevin obviously doesn't understand is that I was goofing on John for writing the shittiest song I've ever heard in my life. A child would come up with this. He's trying to goof on Patrick Melton, who's over 300 pounds. Okay. And- okay. The shittiest song. Okay. Hey, <laughs> Carla, do you want me to play some isotopes? Here. Here. Let's look at the to. shittiest song, okay? Oh, Let's watch is- Carla's bear. Have you seen this? Okay. So I thought I thought John was going to play one of your songs, like pick up a guitar and play yeah. one of your songs, which would be incredible. It would be, but that would obviously also take work and talent, which he does not have. Well, the problem this all backfires on John here, and I don't know why people think that they can do this. Chad Zumach did a similar thing, where it's like, oh, your band sucks. And he starts watching, he's like, oh, this is actually pretty good. Yeah, he's singing along, with and, it. and then he goes to the website. He's like, he's like, oh, they had a bunch of gigs coming up. <laughs> It's just like that. I mean, maybe I'll go get tickets. This yeah. hasn't been around for over 20 years. We know what we're doing. It's not an accident. I'm not saying we're the greatest band in the world, but we're much better at our instruments than Suttering John ever has been in his life. So this is John finding an isotope song, a random isotope song. Listen to how long he listens to it before he determines that it sucks. <laughs> this is how you know he's, he's very confident that he's better Can than Can we me. take bets on it? Oh, yeah. I'm going to say like six seconds. That's a pretty good one. What do you think, okay. Chris? I'm going to take the over. You take over six? Yeah. Over right. six. Okay. Here we go. I got you. Hero of the stupid. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh. This is the isotope. Oh, yeah, that is a great song, Carla. Oh, what a what awesome. Holy crap. Chris How wins it. Unbelievable. What a great song, The Isotopes. Oh, Holy it, shit. To the intro. What and genius. Just, you know, his, his down picking wow. is horrendous. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, John, listen to, like you said, there's a little bit of the intro in there. It finally got into the part where the guitar melody comes in. We didn't even get to a chorus yet. No. And he's already like, oh, what is that? What yeah. is that? What would you think he's going to say? And I guess yelling that sucks over and over again means it's true. Right. In John's yeah. mind. Okay. That's science. Of course. <laughs> so now he finds uh, a video that we put together when we were recording this in the, uh, the studio. Oh, the great music of the isotopes. Oh, let's, let's, let's try it be Debo. Can you, pa- can you pause for a second? Yeah. I do have to say, uh, if you are ever in the Western New York area, Watchman Studios is a fantastic place to go and record some music. Some great, great artists have been recorded there. Cardiff and uh, Doug are buddies, so of course he's sticking up for uh, for our buddy Doug from the Jingles Department on this one. But uh, all right, so so John's not letting anything play. No, he's just yelling over. He's it. just yelling over it and just assuming that it sucks. But he doesn't have any points. He doesn't understand. What makes it suck or why it sucks? He does nothing about that. So he's zoom mocking out here. Right. 
So at this point, I start super chatting because I, I was tuning in at this point. So I start super chatting. I'm like, John, play the fucking song. Let the song play, you asshole. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a little annoyed with what he's doing here. Hmm? Especially uh, the down picking. Look, who would his podcast? Hey, Carla. Carla, hold on. Carla, I want to show you. Hey, what are you thinking? Oh. Okay. Now, my <laughs> super chat is, LOL, you won't actually listen to it. Heck, yeah. is my uh, thing. And so, John, now that he knows that I'm watching, can't wait to show me this intro yet again. Hey, Carla. Carla, hold on. Carla, I want to show you. Hey, what are you thinking? Why do they podcast? WTTP. Seven careful time. Might get a cease and desist for that one. He's still laughing. Mm-hmm. Look at it. He's still laughing at it. It's still funny. Uh, 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 you won't actually listen to that. Piece of shit. <laughs> What's that from? That's from your concert. It's not of... your piece of shit. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's one of your Nasty, yeah. Thanks for the five bucks. John, did you make fun of Bochetti's head? I wrote jokes for his head. Uh, 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 yeah, and he was a hypocrite. I'll... I'm sure I'll show up on Dabbles. Yeah. Yes. Mike needed a couple of jokes. Mike so I wrote a couple great. for him. Mm-hmm. That's what all the time. Co- that's what comics do for each other. And they were great jokes. I yes, remember. They were them. great jokes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Mike they always killed. great. Yep. You're they always great. killed. This is great. Everything is great. <laughs> My dad <laughs> always wanted me to play, play football, but I didn't want to have to wear another helmet. Come on. Hey, oh, is this on? Are you proud? Right, Emil. So John has to give an example of a joke that he wrote yeah. for Mike Pachetti, and it's not great. Surprise, surprise. It's not the greatest joke anyone's ever heard. I'm, again, super chatting him because I'm like, I don't know why you won't just play the song. And uh, I want to hear an honest critique of the isotopes here. Oh, yes, let's play the song. Carla, don't get your panties in a bunch. Now, now hold- Don't get my panties in a bunch? Is he referring to cross-dressers? Is he saying that that's a bad thing that people should be ashamed of? Sounds that way. If a man wears panties, that's something that I should be ashamed of? The problem with Johnny is he's creating all of these rules, and he can't follow any of them. No. He's very bad at it. No. He is throwing so much shit against the wall. Well, I don't take offense to a joke like that, calling me Carla, calling me gay, which he does a lot, um, saying my panties are in a bunch. But these are all things that if one of us said it, yeah. he'd be like, you can't say that. Don't go after my panties. <laughs> you can't say that. All right. Tukey's reading my super chat here. He's just like, yeah, let's let's play the song. Yes, let's play the song. Carla, don't get your panties in a bunch. Now, now hold on. He might want you to play the song so that he could strike your channel. You think that's Carl's devious plan here to get uh, to give you well, a that's... copyright strike? Oh, that's, ooh, that's a good. Mm, see, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm here to help you, John. I'm here to anything you say to John, he believes. He believes yeah. every fucking thing someone says to him. The reason why he wants you to play the song is because he wants to copyright your channel. No, no, no. It's because I know I'm a better guitarist than you. And I know you've got nothing. <laughs> That's why. To help you. Well, okay. is that Carla? Are you trying to strike me or? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Maybe that's what he's doing. Mm-hmm. I think so. I man. sleuthed it out. Gotcha. <laughs> I gotcha. Then he starts watching the video on mute. Because <laughs> Cardiff's thing was, he goes, he goes, yeah, you probably copyright strike you. So what you want to do is watch the video. And he goes, Car- he goes, John, pick up your guitar. And why don't you play for us what you think they're doing? Because he's trying to get, he's trying to show that John can't play guitar. John doesn't fall for that, obviously, because he would have no idea what to do. I'm going to listen to how bad this band sucks by listening to their music <laughs> right. on mute. <laughs> right, we'll goof on them. So I'm literally texting John at this point. You have my permission to play my music. I will not copyright strike you. And then I'm in the chat going, I just texted John. He has my permission. John's ignoring all of that. He's ignoring my text until finally, I think Tukey or someone's looking at the chat. They go, hey, uh, they're saying that Carl just texted you. And John's like, oh, what? Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It already, it already said red before that. And then he's like, oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. Okay. So right. he doesn't know about read receipts. Yeah, exactly. That's so, awesome. So uh, he'd already read it, but then he goes, okay, okay, okay. So now he's finally going to, um, he's finally going to play the, some of the music here. Oh, but before that, though, this is, this is insane right here. 
Look at this idiot with the beard. So this is where this is where he's watching it. This is where he's watching it. I'm mute. I forgot I had this clip. Jesus this Christ. is very funny. So he's calling out Croge, and uh, Tukey has Croge's back. Look at this idiot with the beard, like jamming like he's Jimmy Page. Oh, that's Croge. Everyone loves Croge. <laughs> well, he's, he's a geek. Yeah, he's a geek. Fuck him. <laughs> Eddie Van Hacklin. Oh, yeah, look at that hair. That's great hair. Oh. And there's the captain. Oh, look at that loser. He's wearing, he's oh, wearing Converse geez. All-Stars. Oh, what a loser. What a, what a oh, geek. boy. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that oh. fake Paul oh. Reed Smith. Yeah, you know, I think you might be right. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the other thing that Carter planted is I, I use a fake PRS. Oh. He was going, no, I know for a fact it's a fake PRS. And Carter just fills John with all these lies, and John just goes, what? Yeah. Holy shit. And then, and then they're zooming in on my guitar here, and he goes, I think that is a fake PRS. Yeah. You know, I think you might be right. Hold on. <laughs> Why? Hold Why on. do you think that? Cardiff, how'd you know that? <laughs> I've done the I've done extensive analysis on that guitar. Yeah. Check it out. That the, that exact guitar. The bird inlay is all over the, the headstock. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's obviously fake. a obvious. fake guitar. Yeah. Obviously, a mm-hmm. real, but... real Converse either. Probably <laughs> <laughs> they're probably like the they're, they're probably like the version that Target would sell like back mm-hmm. in the '90s. They mm-hmm. kind of looked like Converse. Oh, look at this idiot. Oh, now he's coming out dark. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. And Cardiff will not stand for this, so thankfully. Good. Oh, what a Even if it was a fake PRS, yes. why, why would it matter? Oh, but John's, John's the, looking to, the, to score on me any way possible. It's exactly. so insane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's got this fake PRS. He's playing the shit out of it, but it, you know, it's <laughs> it's not an actual real one. Like a good guitar player can take any shit guitar and, and play something that sounds good. Well, right. And I, but a I shitty do guitarist own... can't take an expensive guitar and make it sound good. People are annoyed at hearing me say this, but I do own three PRS guitars. They're all very nice. Anyway, moving on. Was that their dad? <laughs> what dad? You want to be in the music video? Let's make fun of this guy, John. Butch pig. Ah, there you go. Hacka, hacka. Oh. Hacka, hacka. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually just a nice sound engineer over at Watchman Studios. Shut up. Oh, stop <laughs> being a fucking kiss ass. Yeah, get rid of him, John. <laughs> Look at this one. Trying to get some free studio time. I think this guy did my friend's bris. Ah, he cut a penis off. <laughs> Wow, that's anti-Semitic, John. Well, hold I on. I don't appreciate it. Hold on. This gets crazy. Get ready for uh, some transphobia coming out of Senator John's mouth. This is some serious hypocrite police we need to we call into. Check this out. Friends Briss. Ah, uh, he cut a penis off. Or four kid. <laughs> Never mind. Speaking of a penis, get caught. Look at Carla there with the fucking green glasses. Speaking of a penis getting cut off. Look at Carla with the green glasses. Oh, you don't know that one? I don't. Oh, yeah, it's classic. I think what he's talking about <laughs> is a sex change operation, right? I guess. Is that when you cut your penis off? Sure. When you have a sex yeah. change operation? And John is calling me out for that, which I feel like is a little bit hypocritical of him. Just a little. To do. Just Since a little his bit. his kids have had sex change operations or want to? I think one of them had something, yeah. So it seems <laughs> I'm odd. trashing him right now. It seems odd to me. That he would say that. Oh, God. It's very hypocritical. John, I'm trashing your kids. Sue me. <laughs> Studios, you fuck. Shut up. Oh, stop being a fucking kiss ass. Yeah, get rid of him, John. Look at this one. Trying to get some free studio time. I think this guy did my friend's bris. Ah, uh, he cut a penis <laughs> off. Or four kids. Never mind. Thinking of a penis get caught. I look at Carla there with the fucking green glasses. Yeah, mm-hmm, speaking mm-hmm. of this penis getting cut off, that is Carla. That is so Carla. <laughs> Good job, Tukey. You know, if I were going to make fun of Carl for this clip, I'd make fun of him for looking disheveled by not tucking his fucking shirt in. True. That's what you yeah. want to do. You look like a fucking embarrassment out here with the fucking <laughs> tails all everywhere. <laughs> have some decorum, sir. All right. This is the last clip I have. They finally are going to play the music because now he's read the text messages. He's all tuckered out. He's ready to play <laughs> the song. Let's see how much of the song he actually gets to. This is the entire hip. This is the entire portion of him listening to the isotopes. Get the super chat away from Tukey. Oh, you know what? Yes. Ne- he didn't even make it to Come the on, end of the creep off intro. Is, is, I, mean, <laughs> I know. What yeah. a it's tool. Not even, <laughs> not even one lick in. He's already pausing it to tell us how much it sucks. All right, guys. Oh. Is is I mean, what is he fucking? 
The vapors now? Like nerd I mean, it just fucking um The Vapors? Uh turning Japanese. Yeah. That's, does that sound like that? No. Okay. I didn't no. think so. I think you got the band wrong because then he says the Come on, guys. Is is I mean what is he fucking the vapors now? What I mean, it's just fucking um what the Pretty is lame. this wipeout? Pretty yes. lame. It's surf Wipeout music from the people the who know, safaris. the people who live in Rochester. <laughs> yeah, it's the surfaris, right? And yeah, it's crazy to me that John now is goofy on us for the genre of rock that we play, yeah. and he thinks that that's a good. Like he nailed me. Us oh, good. Like that kind of sounds like that song Wipeout. Oh shit! <laughs> He's on to us. <laughs> Damn it! It does sound a lot like surf rock. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Meanwhile, considering John Band is uh, a Nirvana ripoff, so. All right. Well, who know? The people who live in Rochester. Have you ever surfed in Rochester before? F- friends of the show, Brian Mel, say to us, we are living in dystopian future. This is great. I love it, too. This is fun. It's Don Rockies on the board. Dead fool. Thanks for the five bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, Dick89, send WATP the link. Well, I, does he want to come on? John, will you show us your fingernails? There. There. <laughs> Bring it out clean. And the other hand. Are clean. Nice try. Awesome. Fingernails are fucking clean. Do you go and get them done at the uh, nail salon? No. No, I get them done in my It's butthole. fantastic. No. <laughs> no. But you're a big-time celebrity. You should treat yourself. Oh. <laughs> he, does, he does not know how to deal with Tukey at all. I love people trolling John to his face. He's having a really hard time with it. Do you get it done at the nail side? No! Like, all right, relax. Stay in your nails looks good. That's all. Scared I do it myself in the bathroom after I take a big dump. <laughs> or before. Or, <laughs> or during. <laughs> Why not? All right, we got to the first rep. Well, let's just repeat the same riff over and over again. Mm-hmm. Holy That's shit. And you're, goofing right. on my, and you're goofing on my song, Carla? Yes, I was. Yeah. It's terrible. So, John, uh, the structure of this song goes A, A, B, C, A, and then it goes on from there. There's a bunch of different parts. But that's not uncommon in rock music to establish the main riff and hit it twice before you move on to the B part. And it's called a motif, John. Fucking Suttering John is sitting there. That's all he had here. He just, he just needed one out just to be like, oh, that's all I do is play this riff over and over again. And that's, I'll never listen to it again. That's it. Yeah. It's great. I doubt he wow. understands song form. So right. if he listens to this, he's going to be no, like, uh, that was uh, an jo- A. That yeah. was an A. That was an A, that was an e, obviously. <laughs> uh, Joe Walsh handled all of the form. I, I just wrote the lyrics. Well, he, when he was watching us play the song, and crows his way up on the neck, and I'm playing on the high E string, and he's watching all that shit happen. So he knows it's going to get very interesting, and that's why he's just like, oh, it's just the same rip over and over again. Okay, that's enough. Like, we get it. We're good. You got us good. All right. The isotopes... Are you fucking kidding me with that? Horse shit! Jesus. The isotopes are like the MLC podcast of music. That's the safaris. <laughs> Holy shit. Why oh, you got the name right. Yeah, you figured it out. Mm-hmm. Michael Diana, thanks for the five bucks. The Jesus twins were better than this trash. I agree. Feel my they were, ubiquity. Carl. They were great. I'm shouting at that cookie. Mm-hmm. Steal my ubiquity. Ooh, gotta knock you down. And you know what the funny part about this? He thinks that's good. It's better than it's your stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all right. It's a lot better than anything John's ever done, that's for sure. God, he really is terrible at this. John, you're new to this. I'll give you a chance. Keep going at it. But I would tell you, if you're just going to look at the internet, like copy the links down ahead of time so you can get right to them. You're not scrolling around. And don't just repeat what I just said or what anyone just said and just use a goofy voice or pretend that you're laughing really hard. All of the things that you did, don't do that again because that's terrible. It makes you look really bad. And it also, as the one super chatter said, it proves that there is an art to this and that some people are better at it than others. And you're really bad at it. It's all that's all factual statements. There's all no right. nothing to disagree with there. <laughs> that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> all right, without further ado. You fat fuck. 
ya. This is going to be a short segment today. I know we did a lot on Sundry John in the last episode. It went on for a while. Even with the Vic break in between, it seemed like uh, a long segment. Can I ask you one Stutter and John question? You can ask me and I under- one and a half. <laughs> Thank you. Because uh, I understand that you're running like a business and it, it works out for you because uh, you know how to profit from this stuff. But does part of you uh, regret getting involved in the Stutter and John business? Because I, I think that on one hand, I like that he's back. and the other, But on the other hand, I hate that he's back. He is... So fucking dull. Yeah. He's beyond annoying. And it's not even like hacky uh, annoying. He's just like a, a cunt, really. Well, to answer your first question, I guess that was the only question. Uh, no, I do not <laughs> regret it at all. I, I love this whole saga and everything that's happened in the Dabbleverse. I think it's fantastic. And Suttering John, I'll, I'll say what Anthony Kumi has said many times, because as I'm watching his shows this week, it just becomes more and more apparent. If John was smart enough to create this character that is stuttering John Melendez, if he was Dice Clay or one of these guys or Larry the Cable Guy, and he's like, I'm going to be this buffoon who's never in on the joke, who brags about all his accomplishments all the time. Like, if he came up with this character, it'd be brilliant. Yeah. It's amazing. And it never fails. He never learns. I know that he's now put himself into the devil verse. That's annoying to some people. He's like interacting with all the shows and stuff like that. But that's really the only way this could have progressed. It had, this had to have happened. Right. John had to eventually realize, cause he was out with Monique saying, why would I pay attention to a subreddit? I have millions of fans. And now he's realized, Nope, this is it. This is who he's talking to people yeah, from I- the dabblers and out of his subreddit. That's it. Yeah. I, I finally got to see the, uh, the Jackie Martin documentary last night. And it's unbelievable how much of a dickhead Stuttering John is. Like it's almost like he's a meme of himself. He made every Jackie story about him. Did you notice that? Yeah. What the fuck? Why was he in that documentary? He he's in the start of it telling Jackie Martin's childhood stories, <laughs> I know. and they didn't even meet until they were grown. It's like what the f- oh fuck? I despise him. What did you think about but- Opie in that documentary, though? Funny as it gets, loved it. Amazing. I think he had one scene. Yeah, and uh, did you notice in one of the scenes, Opie was so embarrassed, he was at the camera like this. Whoa, that's a good reaction shot right there. Thank good you. Stuff. Uh, also, now that Pee Wee Herman is dead, do you think that Stutter and John owns tequila? Yes. I think... Thank you. I agree with that. It's also, that song is now called Gagia, but yes. <laughs> He's, he owns it for sure. All right, I want to start off. This is a fun little clip. Uh, the guy who put in the super chat sent this to me. He got John to say something kind of funny. Now, John did uh, pick up on it, but it's still fun. Okay, now I got to just comment here. Well, first, uh, CL, thanks for two bucks. John, love me. You know, at the, uh, my dick is small. My dick is small. <laughs> I mean, you guys are funny, man, in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Loved meeting you at Medica Small in New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. You picked up on that uh, one. Who, uh, who sent him on his daughter? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was his daughter on that one. I think oh. he took it well because he's like, oh, I get that joke. Right. Yeah, he's finally in on it yeah. for once. That's probably why. Okay. So let me um, <laughs> let me start off by this is John talking about Vince the lawyer Mm -hmm. on his show on Saturday on Beer in the Balcony. And uh, he's calling Vince out here. Vince. You're a fucking asshole. (laughs) I can't stand you. Stop trying to be my friend. I don't like you. Everyone wants to be my friend now. I don't like you. Everyone wants to be John's friend. That's his problem. Except Husey. That's what his problem is. He just, oh, I have too many friends as it is, guys. Come on. Everyone <laughs> yeah. stop trying to be my friend. It's too much. Back off. Yeah. Well, well, well he looks like he's one of the fucking sons of anarchy these days. Oh, yeah. But, he's uh, a biker gang. Yeah. The, the thing, I, I can't believe how much of a character he's become. Like, it's it's like he went off to do method acting to come play the role of Stutter and John. Well, I think he's just copying Kevin Brennan. I think he's watching up Mezzugo's company where he's just kind of doing his, uh, I don't know, uh, Kevin Brennan's upset 
thing yeah. that he does. Carl, I don't know why you would think that he's copying stuttering, or why stuttering John's copying Carl or Kevin, apart from doing his exact fucking routine and act and right. punchlines and catchphrases and guests and, and uh, show style. Apart from that, they're nothing alike. Literally doing the exact same thing. All right, so fast forward. He just said that he Vince sucks. He hates him. Two days later, Vince is on his show. So now he's got <laughs> Vince the lawyer on his show. Hello, my friend. And they're talking about <laughs> when when John was watching his wedding video with Monique from Radio Gunk. Mm-hmm. And we covered this on the Patreon and Who Are These Podcasts. We watched them watch this together. And I guess Monique pointed out the fact that Robin's the only black person at this wedding. And uh, so <laughs> John has a comment about that. And uh, she said, uh, and her husband was like, hey, stop talking. And, and then she said that, the, you know, that the girl, that money. Right. Hold on a second. Let me just back that up. Let's listen to that eight seconds again. This is uh, broadcasting extraordinaire, Stuttering John. And uh, <laughs> she said, uh, and her husband was like, hey, stop talking. And, and then she said that, the, you know, that the girl, <laughs> what? that what? Monique was being a, a racist. Or, 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 and I'm like. God, Jesus, well, I didn't, you know, I <laughs> I didn't make the comment. Who cares if Robin's the only black person there? I, I mean, I, I don't see color. I, I don't. That, you know, I would, it, it would never even dawn on me, you know, if Monique didn't say that. John does not see color. Yeah. He doesn't look at people and no. think, oh, that's a minority, that's a Puerto Rican, that's a white. He never talks about it. He never talks about race. It's not even on his mind. He doesn't even see it. His it, OCD it, won't it, let him. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the only color he sees is the shit that he buys off the shelf from the, that Nutella that he runs through his hair. What? You're saying that he dyes his hair is what you're talking oh, about. Oh! <laughs> yes. With, with Nutella. Yeah, right. I'm starting to figure out Husey. I'm starting to process it a little bit quicker <laughs> so than I want to speak Hughes and ease. I'm trying to. Yeah. <laughs> so this is great because Vince then asks John how he found out that his ex-wife, Susanna, her new husband is black. I didn't even know that. Okay. But listen to this answer. This is amazing. Thank you God. When was the first time she told you that Aaron, that her husband, is black? We were having dinner at Ruth Chris, you know, and she told me that she was dating him. And I was asked, I go, you know, you know. She, is, she ordered you know, a steak well done, and then she said. And no, I said, is he white? Is he black? And she goes, he asked the question. When his ex-wife says, I have a new boyfriend, his question is, is he white? Is he black? What are we talking about here? What are we dealing with? The guy who can't even see color. Right. That's the thing he's worried about. Is he gray? Jesus yeah. Christ, John. It's so transparent. Liberals are so it, obsessed with race. They can't stop talking about it. They act like they're colorblind. Can I borrow his ghetto blaster? <laughs> no. So this is the punchline. This is the kicker on this one. Is he going to well, talk that- during a screening of one too many? actually half black i go oh i guess he's hung like a horse and she said no you're actually bigger <laughs> oh yeah that, that nice. makes it better then <laughs> oh john with his little brags and the way he reacts to himself bragging and then she said my dick's pretty big ah stop it yeah. <laughs> watch this again watch his reaction to him saying he has a big hog oh you're actually bigger <laughs> oh yeah that, that makes it better then. jesus christ such a ghoul Stuttering John has a big penis. He doesn't, though. What? He's he's written oh. songs about it. I don't know if he's just copying. No, he says he doesn't copy Howard Stern, and yet that's his whole thing, is that he has a small penis. I'm hung like a pimple. Yeah, and, and then, mm. he, but he goes both ways with it. Sure, like, of course oh, he does. yeah, it's a joke. It's funny, but I'm actually huge. Okay, yeah. whatever. Uh, who, I'm else in his family, <laughs> yeah. who else in his family has a penis? <laughs> All right. Before we get into that, so Vince says, John moved to Cape Coral. It's 85% white. Yeah. And Vince says, is that why you moved to Cape Coral? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be in a white neighborhood. And this is John explaining why he picked Cape Coral. I'm interested in this. I picked that place, too. Why did he pick it? I'm curious. I didn't choose Cape Coral because of the ethnicity or the people there. I chose it because I want to. The what? Holy shit. Did he? Epithicity again? He yeah. cannot pronounce ethnicity. 
He has such a hard time it's with that. It's actually easier to say than what yes, he said. it's way easier to say. <laughs> Epimithity. It sounds like a, a drug you hear advertised on during the, on the game show network. Yeah, may cause. <laughs> I didn't choose Cape Coral because of the ethnicity or the people there. I chose it because I want to buy a boat. As you know, I had one, Vince. And I wanted and I wanted to be near the water, and I wanted to be close enough to see the Yankees play Tampa, and also see the um, see them in their training camp, and also I could see the Giants play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All right, I just want to point out a couple of things. All from his boat. I'm not saying I'm not saying that John. <laughs> what a hush. <laughs> I'm not saying he bought Cape Coral because of the apathetisticity. <laughs> I'm not saying that at all, but he says, I wanted to be near water. The entire West coast of Florida is near water Yeah, anywhere on that West coast. And then he says, and also I'm going to be able to go up to Tampa and watch the Yankees and the Giants play. You could move to Tampa if you wanted to do that. <laughs> um, Cape Coral is uh, almost two hours from Tampa. So that doesn't make any fucking sense. He, he brought out Tampa twice in his examples of why he picked where he picked. So does Tampa ha- have like low house rates or something? No, they have they have uh, minorities. <laughs> is the problem oh, with great. Tampa yeah, and well. and a Z matter too? You got to watch out for those. Guys. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Around the corner, <laughs> lest we forget. In a which, John, did you ever go on Dominic's boat? No, 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 no. Don't back away from your initial fucking accusation. Okay. So there is no it. reason about I didn't choose a white neighbor, and just to further your accusation. I, I live in Calabasas. There's plenty of African-American people that live there. <laughs> Calabasas? Like one of the richest areas of the country. Yeah. yeah. Believe me, I, I I went around and counted them all. You're right. There, there's a lot of them there. There's uh, Chris Rock. There's uh, yeah. uh, Will Smith. Uh, uh, the butler. Yeah. yeah, right. I wanted to see who was going to steal my next wife. <laughs> and... Also, Vincent. Oh, this is great right here. This is the guy who doesn't see color. All right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Let's give an example of that. I I bought a condo in Canoga Park. There's plenty of African-American, a very high Mexican population. (laughs) So, Vince, now (laughs) they're all very high. (laughs) Do the the shirt, John. You got it on. (laughs) Who's the hypocrite, Vince? Ultimately, John. Wait and a miss. Fair enough, but ultimately, my Democrats, where they live is the biggest part of their life because you spend all your money there, most of your money there, and all your resources there, all your tax money goes to that area. If your area is almost all white, then really you're not helping minorities at all. Well, Vince, first of all, again, and Dave, I I think I pounded the point, but I didn't know if it was all white before I purchased it. Plus, right now, I own a condo in Canoga Park, which is which is by far not all white. The, the guy that lives across from me is African-American, and the guy that lives above him is African-American. So nice try. Swing and a miss. Listen, I have neighbors who are black, and I've complained to management about it, right. but apparently yeah. they're still there. So swing and a miss, Vince. Good is, try. It, is that his new thing? Swing and a miss? Yeah, probably. When he gets going on something, he really gets going on something. So he does repeat himself quite a bit. It's 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 honestly like it's it, it's causing me to become depressed. I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> Come like, on, what's the hate? This guy's amazing. He's just it's just like do you ever hear when you hear in the news about how like a a rapist got away with it on a technicality? Sure, that's the vibe I get when I look at him. I just don't fucking like him. All right, well, that's a strong accusation to make, sir. I don't know that we need oh, to go uh, there. There's other reasons to d- dislike uh, Senator John. But well, he could never get the dates to rape them, though. Well, speaking of getting dates. Oh, yeah. He recently took a girl out to the Collective Soul concert. And I can, saw can the I video pre- he put out. On can pay- I make, go ahead. Can I make a prediction? I bet you she's really hot and gorgeous, babe. Yeah. She's not bad. Not bad. She's not bad. So he put a video out on his Patreon, just for his patrons, which it leaked on his screen. He's got 84. He happened to show that on his screen recently. So there's 84 people he's making this video for, her, and he's in the front row of the Collective Soul concert, and he's filming himself, and he's filming, like, just his mouth. He, he doesn't know how to use the phone, right. and he's filming <laughs> his date. And he's I'm like, sideways. And he goes, this is, this is for my Patreons. He's, like, trying to show off to his date that he has a Patreon. Yeah. 
I know a lot of people who have 84 people on a Patreon. It's not <laughs> that impressive, John. I, I don't know. So How many of them are black? Probably zero, I would guess. But I, what do I know? So anyway, so he's got this date, and he shows this video, and that leaked out, and everyone's going, wow, John's got this uh, this new date. I wonder if he's getting laid. And so uh, the question comes in. It turns out this girl, Cindy, is someone that he used to date years ago. Hmm. So they're just kind of probably both in between partners and deciding to hang out. Plus, John got her into Collective Soul and got to go backstage and meet the band. Because if you remember, Suttering John opened for Collective Soul. So he knows those guys. So I'm sure that was a, a good reason for Cindy to come. But this is just so gross. And again, this is British John. I love British John. Uh, th- thanks for the five bucks. Did you give your girlfriend the collective bulk? <laughs> uh, Are we so snotty? Well, I'll tell you. Her name is Cindy. We have shagged. Well, she probably hate that I say this. But yes, we have dated on multiple occasions. And um, she was with me in the condo, the Calabasas condo, and in the Canoga Park condo. Scoot! What is wrong with him? Just so you know, my ex-girlfriend slept with me in two different places that I used to live in. Okay. Yeah. What kind of brag is why that? Couldn't, yeah, why couldn't you just say no? Yeah, the, yes. he didn't. He didn't get laid. That's yeah. really the moral. He's like, no, but I fucked her before. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, why yeah. would I need to fuck her last night when uh, my wife's dating a black guy? <laughs> <laughs> right. This is this one is ridiculous. This is John bragging about how many chicks he's fucked. He's so snotty in this one. And props to the Phantom Dennis for pulling this. Oh, thanks for Pickwick Pub Pub for pulling those other videos that I showed you on. Uh, Dabbler's Anonymous, this is coming in from Phantom Dennis. And Phantom Dennis and him are fighting because Phantom Dennis is the one who mods for Shuli's Anonymous and shut it down on John when he was going to do a show using that and <laughs> fucked with them. So, so he's mad at them. I'll, I'll get into that in a second. But this is John bragging about uh, how many girls he shagged. Skull! Fucking hell. <laughs> so, You're not in my league. Blinky Jedi with two bucks says, guesstimate how many girls you gave chlamydia and warts to. And <laughs> because John has been recently admitting that he had warts and crabs, not chlamydia, and that's not how it's spelled even close, but you get the point. So John's going to answer this. <laughs> guesstimate how many girls uh, you chlamydia and warts uh. Blinky Jedi. He's so proud of himself. I don't know how many girls I shagged over 250. There, I said it. Over uh, 250. No, nobody who fucks a lot of women keeps count. So uh, it's probably 25 at right. best. <laughs> yeah, you think there's a 10x factor on yeah. this? Well, and I think, I think some of them weighed 250 maybe, but uh, I don't think there's 250 women aren't good. Maybe uh, if they're on, on the payroll... And you hire them, he fucked uh, 250 who is, But there's no way he's going to... Well, uh, hold on, Uzi. Because then he starts to calculate in his head that that number is probably an old number that's not even accurate anymore. And counting. Probably closer to 300 now. Probably closer to 300. Probably. Decay 9. Uh, no, no, no. I don't want to see Benny local topples. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's the story of a real celebrity. Those pay Yeah, so you have the one same girl. <laughs> same girl. Same girl every night. Yeah, yeah, his wife stayed with him, John. Yeah. yeah. What are you trying to yeah. say right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah Shuli, you fucking loser. You've got a beautiful wife and a happy family. <laughs> that means that you're gay. You're not living the <laughs> real life like stuttering John. <laughs> same girl. Yeah. You're in bed yeah. with the same woman. Every night. Now, I'm not putting that down. Yeah, that's marriage. Some guys like monogamy. Yes, yeah, such so as the, wa- the was... man that's with your ex-wife now. <laughs> yes. That guy Aaron seems to like it a lot. Yeah. He loves covering her face and cum. Monogamous for 13 years. But, oh, boy. Did I pleasure myself to other women? Of course. Jesus Christ. Did I pleasure myself to other women? I'm not even yeah. going to say what my... Well, just forget it. Oh, okay. This, he goes into a brag now. 
So I would know. put fingers up my ass and play with my helmet. Now, John's saying he was married for 13 years, so he couldn't have sex with other women. What about the time he was dating his wife before that? Whatever. Okay. We won't get into the, the details on that. But listen to what John implies here. And I know I want to keep Suzanne out of this, but God, I'd love to ask her about this. Oh, yeah. This unless one. she wants to get into it. Yeah. If she wants to get into this one, listen to this. Just see my movie one too many. You'll get the drift. Scoot! Yeah, because he Let's fucked anyone say, who paid to see that. I was monogamous. <laughs> but, uh, you know. We'll just leave it no, at that. You weren't monogamous. Mon- 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 oh, fuck it. Never mind. <laughs> There was some little loopholes in there. Uh, how many? All right, so John I was trying is... to say monotonous, but I fucked ah, it up because I'm because you're Irish. I get it. Yes. So John is trying to say that I guess he was having threesomes and they were bringing women in, into the bedroom with them because that's obviously what one too many the plot of that movie is, and uh, that's a whole other thing. We're gonna get into it. When we do the the book later, yeah. the chapter on One Too Many, where he thought he was going to get his wife the role as uh, the co-star yes. of the movie. And that is embarrassing. The beginning of the end. Yeah, we'll talk about that. But one more clip on here that I want to play. And again, this is the Phantom Dennis, who is super chatting John two Canadian dollars at a time <laughs> and getting John to react every single time. It's worth it. It is so worth it because this is just John is constantly painting himself into a corner. With all of the the things that he's saying and rules that he has, uh, how many, the oh the Phantom Dennis, hey dickhead, why don't you just apologize to me? All right, so he's saying, how many of them did you pay for? After he's bragging about how many chicks he shagged, and so this is what John has to say. Hey dickhead, why don't you just apologize to me? Why don't you just admit that you were wrong, and we'll move on from there? Okay, seriously. Send me a ten twenty dollars super chat. Seriously, send me a twenty dollars super chat and go, John. I shouldn't have done that. I was being a dickhead. And again, this is because he took down Shuli's anonymous yeah. right before he privated it. Right before John was going to use that as his sole uh, content. I like that he he said ten <laughs> for a second. Yeah, like, ten, 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 twenty. 20. Yeah. 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 If you want Pay to apologize, me just, sorry. <laughs> I love but, that he's the one who's like setting the the rules here right. with this. It's like, no, John, he controls what you need, not the other way around. It's dummy. like him telling the students to write a nice letter about him. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and stuff some cash in there that yeah. you steal from your folks. <laughs> it makes it nicer. By the way, you do understand that you have to do a one too many live show. At a WATP uh, live Ooh. performance, you need to reenact this, the the oh. film on stage. That's a good idea. I mean, we, should pick, we should pick out some of our favorite scenes. All right, that no, would be fun. The entire <laughs> thing. No, no, yeah, hey, no, come on, no. man. <laughs> Who Who, which character there? do you want to play at this? Here is he. Are you uh, going to audition? Uh, unfortunately, I have yet to see one too many. <laughs> How yeah. can we torture Lucy with this? That's what I want to know. Well, that's she'll definitely have a part in this for sure. <laughs> so that's the one thing that makes Yuzi a lot like Americans. He's never seen one too many. All right. <laughs> Good for you. And I'm sorry. And guess what? I'll give you another shot. Everybody deserves a second chance. <laughs> of tequila. That's what I want from you. you. Okay? I want $2 every minute. I want a $20 one where you say. Every minute. And not 1999. <laughs> Oh, I want a twenty-dollar one, where you say, "All right, okay. I thought it was a funny gag, but I fucked up." This would be like if you got kidnapped, and you talk to your captors. You're like, "All right, I'll tell you what. Yeah, uh, give me a hundred bucks and let me go, and we'll we'll call it even." It's, no, no, you have no leverage here. What are you talking about? Right. Why are you the one negotiating the terms on this? And I'm sorry. Then I'll go back on Julie's Anonymous. Right. That's all you got to do. <laughs> we need John to mention Julie's Anonymous so badly. God damn it, Julie's Anonymous is not the same without John lurking there. I need to go about? back and write those pair. That'll teach Julie What's as he talking? makes love to his wife again. <laughs> Quite. It's that simple. That's all you got to do. All you got to do. Uh, one of my cats is... Dry heaving in the back. 
Humble brag. Puking's my job. Get out of my bedroom. <laughs> That'll work. Uh, Find out anything about cats. Yeah. They listen to the words oh, you say. Uh, no, I can't do. Nick, stop with the fucking racist names, okay? Stop. <laughs> All right. I wonder who Nick is. Oh, really? <laughs> You're sorry that my life turned out this way, Denny? <laughs> that is so fucking with him. <laughs> Who's donating $2 to who? Oh, oh no. No, the big W. Okay. So this is where <laughs> this is where John shoves his foot way into his mouth okay. because he realizes that ragging on people for donating to the him uh-huh. is not a good marketing message right. to put out there. Who's giving me money because they're so fucking obsessed with me? I'm asking you. Is it me paying you? No. Is it you paying me? Yes. Fuck off. Yeah, I know. Who's watch. the real loser here? Why, why oh. That's oh. Like donating is being a loser. But for him it is. <laughs> because he's Everyone else is a winner. With me. He's not doing it for the love of his heart. He's doing it because he jerks off to me. Scout! Oh, okay. So, John, I have bad news for you. Everyone who's donating to you is doing that to fuck with you. Yeah. Now, yeah, no one's did, doing it out of the, the goodness of their heart. Did you notice the veins in his forearm? No, I didn't. Yeah, he can't talk about how people are uh, jerking off to him while your arm is in unbelievably physical condition. <laughs> well, he's an older gentleman. He, was, he happens to all of us. Blind He's also Mike. an ugly, lonely guy who you know, sits in his bed. I noticed that, too. Blind Mike with five bucks on here says, you were definitely once more successful than Shuli. Doesn't that make it worse that you're on the same playing field now? You're on the same <laughs> level? Th- those are the types of questions that I think John struggles with when he brags about his resume and things. Like, well, that actually is why we goof on you now, because of where you're at. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, and the thing is, like, well, Shuli has actually gone on to build a pretty successful career for him without having to leech off Jay Leno or uh, or Hard Stern while Stutter and John's whole life revolves around begging people to pay him to say sorry uh, and hitting on Chrissy Mayer. Like, it, it's, it's not a good look. I mean, Shuley's been- built an entire network based on Bob's pool. So he must know something I don't because <laughs> I can't figure out how you create an entire network around that content. But he's figured it, it- out somehow. Yeah, I, I just think that uh, I, I think it's unbelievable that because I've spoke to you, Carl, for about three or four years, and the one time I've seen you be genuinely angry about something is due to Stutter and John. So he's the guy that made the smiling guy stop smiling <laughs> for two. You know, it's yeah, Chad might have done it once or twice too. I'll, I'll be honest, <laughs> <laughs> he might have annoyed me a little bit. All right, so that that moves us into uh, I, I just got real quick. A couple clips here from a recent Misery Loves Company, because as we've been documenting, the guests have not been great lately over there. And just the other day, who pops on there? So they got Alex Stein, who I love. Alex Stein's on the show. And then Alex has to leave early because he does his show. And so who pops on? None other than stuttering John Melendez back on (laughs) Misery Loves Company. And so this is great because Kevin Brennan gets caught being a hypocrite. By uh, one of my favorite super chatters, Dang Lizard. And let's see how he reacts to this. KB, according to your logic, you really like Chad. Remember you went on a show and the KB and Shuli haters also work right. All right. Yeah, it's all at work. I I, I mean, if anyone can uh, find where I'm doing a work, let me know. Because I I love to be in on it. I mean, uh, when I went on Chad's show... Uh, I don't know what that was. Well, that was when John was on, and he was. I think John was shitting yeah. on Shuli, so I yeah. jumped on just for because uh, Chad. Whatever. I. I, I listen. I, I don't like. Confused what's I don't like on. people. <laughs> humana, and by humana. the way, Kev, when I did your show, didn't you bring in Carl? Yeah, yes. I brought in Carl because I. <laughs> Please, John. You want me to explain? Or you're going to make a lot of fucking stupid faces. Right. <laughs> so, uh, I believe both. I would like you to explain it while I make stupid faces. <laughs> yes. So here's what I want to explain. Kevin Brennan's been going on and on. He got very upset when we did the Uncle Rico show where we brought Chad in because Chad had just done that prank on John for three hours. We were pretending to get all these Venmo 
And so this is a whole orchestrated prank. So we brought Chad in on Uncle Rico, and it was myself and Anthony and Jim Florentine showed up. So we're all on there, and we're playing clips, and we're laughing about it. And that really pissed Kevin. I was just like, oh, so now you guys are all friends with Chad. This is all just a work. Okay, well, nothing's real then, because you guys did this thing with Chad. And thankfully, the lizard's paying attention, because it was June 30th that KB, who hates Chad Zubak, hates the guy, went on his show. Vegas. My man, my man, my man. Look at the turkey neck. Look at the wow. turkey neck. Kevin, sorry if I'm copying the hack. Yeah, why do you keep stealing my hack? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, I'm, I'm just explaining. When I hang out with Dice, I leave talking like Dice. It just happens. Wait, let so, me get my, I got to get some. You should work with more headliners. Kevin, <laughs> I'm yeah. Ted being your co-host. Get rid of Bob. Yeah. <laughs> you and yeah, Ted. No, I had to jump on because Shuli's a piece of shit. And I, I was, uh, I had a second that and third that. Shuli's absolute garbage. No one's afraid of Shuli. End of story. Like, nobody's afraid of Shuli Edgar or Silent Mike. <laughs> you like that? Silent Mike. <laughs> you like that? Holy Mike. He never talks. <laughs> He's pathetic. I'm just hey, I'm Kevin, winging I'm it. I'm winging it. Kevin, I did that already. I'm still I did that already. You can't be me. I st- I'm stealing you, John. I'm yelling at the fucking at my phone like you do. <laughs> why does John have a why does John have a Karen haircut? That's a great question. <laughs> what 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 keeps, the fuck he happened saying, to him? He keeps saying he's growing it out. And it's in between stages why he looks like the Quaker Oats guy. But the the bangs that he's trimming is just not doing him any favors at all. Be better off like pulling it back or something. I don't know. Oh, damn it. It's terrible. There's a lot of great stuff in that clip. But uh, the thing that I can't stop thinking about is when do you think was the last time that John was in a room with Andrew Dice Clay? You know, he says, oh. oh, whenever I hang out with him. And I'm like, how 20 years at least, right? I mean, there's there's no way Dice is hanging out with Stuttering John. I think the last time they communicated was through Instagram Messenger. I remember John <laughs> saying that, that he actually responded back to him. He pretends he's big friends with all these people. They don't even have their own phone. They don't even have each other's phone numbers. So I'm not buying it. Yeah, there's a lot going on there because Kevin Brennan now likes to act like everything's a work and why would you even work with this guy? I thought you didn't like this guy. But Kevin's done the same thing, as we can see here. And I'm glad that somebody brought that up. So now the Super Chats are starting to come in. And there's some good questions coming in for John. I want you to listen to how John answers this question. This is one of his tells. I'm picking up on a lot of John's tells lately. Like we saw he was lying and he touched his face. Was that Shuli that you blocked? Um, I don't think so, no. He had to touch his face <laughs> when he was saying that. Watch how he responds to this. Uh, Rob Johnson. John's a pretty shade of gray. Proof that 40 beers a day is good for you. John's greasy. It's long proof hair. I don't have lighting in Florida right now. I don't have the. It's a great look. John, how many beers do you have a day on average? Me? Maybe. I don't no. know. Depends what day. Maybe like eight. No, that's why I'm asking on average. Eight on average? Eight. Wow. So, John, how many beers on average do you have every day? Me? Yes, you. <laughs> <laughs> he literally addressed you by name and is staring at you. And the super chat that's up there is talking about how it looks like you drink 40 beers a day for the last five decades. That's the point. And then John has to like buy himself some time. Who? Who, me? Well, what kind of beer? <laughs> right. Yeah. He goes, it depends on the day. He's like, yeah, that's why I said that. It's a great look. Yeah. John, how many beers do you have a day on average? Me? Maybe... I don't know. Depends what day. Maybe like eight. No, that's why I'm asking on average. Eight on average? Eight. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> eight like beers? A yeah. Jeez, that's a lot of beers. I don't even get buzzed from it, though. You know, <laughs> oh, shitty no. beers. I know, but no. eight seems like a lot of beers to drink. I don't know. I'm not judging. I'm just curious. I just seems I like a lot. Much. Oh, he'll be dead in five years. <laughs> Who do you got in the death pool, Eric? John, <laughs> I still have Alex Jones, but uh, it's going to be actually all three. Uh, actually, all three of these fuckers look like death warmed over. <laughs> That's actually what I was going to say. Out of these three guys, I think John's going to live the longest. The three guys we're looking at right now. Holy fucking it's possible. Shit. It is possible. It depends on which day. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. That's he the... also has to look at the ceiling for the yeah. answer like a child. Also, but also, why are you drinking eight <laughs> beers if you don't get a buzz? Good point. Right. What's the point of all those calories and, and drinking? And you have to round Angie. up. You know, <laughs> it's like you have to round up to the to the next container that he could buy. So he says eight. So it's definitely a twelve pack. Yeah. You know, 
If he'd said four, maybe it's a six. Oh, pack. maybe that's why yeah, it took him like, long to do the math. He's going, how many beers are left <laughs> the next morning? Let's see. Sometimes there's <laughs> two. Sometimes there's three. Did I get a case or a thirty pack? <laughs> I don't remember. That's are we point. counting the drinks at Pickwick or just in my house? That's a good point too, because he does go on to say after that <laughs> that oh, all the guys at the ball, everybody drinks every day, but they're all professionals. They they all have things going on. Like a plumber should not be at the bar at two p.m. That's not a good plumber. <laughs> should be out doing work. All right. Now we get a super chat from Greg Lambert and Chris. Get ready to be insulted on this one. Uh-oh. They're going after us. Seven ninety nine. When Carla, now the guy's going to ask. Gonna, DK's going to ask for his money back. You didn't. You didn't read my super chat properly. Uh, when Carla daintily sips the froth off his beer, he's actually ingesting producer Chris's seminal fluids. Gay, 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 gay. What the fuck is that, Kevin? Gay, 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 gay. I think they're calling us gay. On that show, Chris. It's just a little prank. I mean, I know, it's funny. It gets me every time, too. I'm like, yeah. whoa. <laughs> Another cream ale? All right. <laughs> the Super Chats keep coming in, and they're fucking with John. So I, I pull those cups because I think it's funny. Apparently, this is coming in from a fellow Puerto Rican. We all know John's half Puerto Rican. Uh, John. Uh, oh. uh, John. <laughs> I've never heard you. I've never heard this. Uh, John is an embarrassment to all Puerto Ricans. We do not claim him. We, the Puerto Rican Federation, would like to trade John for the devil himself or someone worse. <laughs> hey, maybe Chad. Who's worse, who's worse than the devil? Chad and or Shuley. Keep him <laughs> over there. No El, Di- no El Diablo. Mi amigo. John's oh. killing it. He's crushing it out uh, there. Yeah. Pretty good stuff. Miserable's company has this uh, meetup scheduled in August in Atlantic City. And people are wondering what the fuck it is, because apparently you go and you meet up with you wear an MLC T-shirt. That's how you identify that you're there for this event. You go and you meet Kevin at the poker room and then Kevin's got a suite upstairs and everyone goes upstairs to his suite and hangs out. This is what I know it to be. I don't know if that's true or not. Neither does my sister-in-law who's planning on going and super chats to find out what the fuck is going on with this thing. <laughs> and uh, it was amazing. All right, please, Pat. I didn't know that you died. That's, you know, yeah. that's, uh, oh, uh, Chris- they were talking about Pat Cooper. <laughs> and John goes, all right, Pete, Pat, I didn't know that you died. <laughs> <laughs> that was on me, Pat. My bad. <laughs> what an insane thing to say. I didn't know that you died. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was amazing. All right, please, Pat. I didn't know that you died. That's, you know, yeah. that's, uh, uh, Christina Ray, have you made concrete Atlantic City plans? Things are wishy washy. Last I heard, still on. Yes, I mean, not yeah. yeah there's not there's no event, but yeah, I'm still going. It's, I'm gonna have to talk to my security. Uh, it's pretty weird. Your what, security are you right now. Huh? No, he always does. But I'm saying he had security that kind of turned on him. But then he's back. Yeah, that was so the guy know. who said who sent the super chat. The uh, Anthony Torito saying I was talking shit about your kid, <coughs> yeah. and uh, oh. Oh. so then I sent him a DM. I go, uh, I I sent him, <laughs> I took the tweet or the clip. I I DM'd him. I go, what, what what is this? He goes, oh, I was just fucking around. I'm like, okay, don't be saying I'm, I'm <laughs> you're you're saying I'm talking like that's your idea of a joke. Uh, some other guy was talking shit about your kids, and it's like or at least tip me off. Uh, yeah. So 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 I'm like, can I trust him as security? And now he's all being. Uh, you well, know, like I apologize, but but I, I don't know if it's a work. I don't know what's a work. Are you following this? I what know. is going on here? The Jesus guy, Christ. the guy that Kevin wants to be his security in Atlantic City, is fucking with Kevin, messaging John, saying that Kevin's talking shit about his kids, <laughs> and so Kevin's like, "Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> How am I going to trust this guy? He's trying to throw me under the bus with yeah. stuttering John." It's too bad there's only one personal security guard available in all of Atlantic City. That this Correct. is the only guy who could do it for it's KB. Is somebody do who's uh, yeah. Does he does he really that. need security though? Does he really need security, dude? I want to well, see. I I almost want to. I don't know, I don't want to be there, but I want to see what happens. I hope people film this because apparently Patrick Melton's going to be there. And who knows who else? I assume Bob will be there. It's yeah. not far from where he lives. But what is this going to be? 
I mean, the the plan, like, all right, so you're going to wear matching T-shirts. Yep. We're going to meet up in the lobby, and you're all going to come up to my suite. This this seems like the teaser for an episode of Law & Order SVU. Yes. And I know what happens in that hotel room. <laughs> this is so disorganized and creepy. Yeah. And, yeah. and everyone's just going to be staring at Kevin like, he's going to do something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. He's yeah. going to do something any second now. He's going to be pissed at someone. Turns out for he's really mellow, and they're all just having tea. Yeah, it probably will be that. Well, the only thing he knows how to do is basically if you hand him a $5 bill with a comment on it, he will read it in this hotel suite. And uh, that's basically how he does entertainment now. <laughs> yes, you're right. They'll probably put um, all the super chats in a hat yeah. and he'll just pull them out randomly. <laughs> Would you have to pay for it? Ah, this just came in. <laughs> that's really funny. All right. So he has a, a helmet. What they're talking to Kevin about in this episode is he's got pink sneakers that he wears when he goes bike riding. And he wears a bike helmet. And so John's asking him about that. John's insinuating things. He seems to think a lot of the guys in the Dabbleverse are gay. And so he's insinuating some things here. What color is your helmet? Yeah, it's yellow. <laughs> it's, uh, don't. I'll show my helmet. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm a little. Yeah, but it, it's I like those Boston uniforms. You know, they had the pink and yellow uniforms. Yeah, no, but it's like I, maybe I'm so confident in my sexuality that I, that I can <laughs> maybe wear anything, not. You know? <laughs> what color is your bike? My bike's a regular man's <laughs> color. No, I don't. I don't get a Piazza bike, but uh, but yeah, I think Carla thinks he's more masculine than me because he doesn't wear a helmet. And he just wears a hat when he rides his bike. But Florentine has a huge problem with me wearing a bike helmet, even though I wear it so my head doesn't get burned. Also, if I'm in an accident, maybe I'll get a little protector from a helmet. So there you go. But I'm a Piazza. I got pink. I pink face. I got pink shoes. But I'm saying I, I don't even care Everything anymore. Pink on you. All right. Yeah. For some reason, I, I guess at some point I pointed out I don't wear a bike helmet when I ride my bike around. I just put out a ball cap. And that for some reason, that is stuck in his craw for some reason. I, he's just like, yeah, I know Carl doesn't wear a helmet. I do wear a helmet. You don't have to wear a helmet. You're not going to hit your head. Doesn't, have, doesn't John have a kid who's, uh, who's gay or transgender or something like that? I think he has two of them. What the fuck's he doing then? Dude. <laughs> Hypocrisy police. I thought, I thought he was all about, oh, but I mean, he's like making a big deal about it. You know, yep. I, I've heard him make a big deal before. Yep. So it seems weird to me that he would suddenly start going this route. To say, oh, you have pink shoes. What are you gay? Is something that right. you would say maybe in middle school. Right. It's so bizarre yeah. to me that that's the angle that they're taking out of this. You like, you like gay colors. You're a, you're a gay because you like gay colors. <laughs> Jesus. Now, John's going to clip that and be like, see, the homophobic over there. I don't know who this Eric Zane guy is, but he's a homophobe. He's a homophobe. Uh, fucking asshole. All right, this is the last clip I have. And I will say things are fucking getting weird. Everyone is now besties with Stuttering John. The only person left, I feel like, that is not a bestie with uh, Stutt Show because him and Bob are yucking it up for an hour on here. I thought these two did not like each other. John's been going after Bob Levy for a while and now all of a sudden they're talking about having john on the uncle rico show anyway i think we're caught up at 6 30 i did two and a half hours bob's got to jump over to the shuli network and read the news now he's got to do the nightly news over the shuli network they gotta gotta cover the show i did today yeah we gotta watch (laughs) that sunday we gotta watch that sunday yeah it's getting ridiculous john you should show up one day and watch your show with them it would be the funniest thing. You see, that's what this, that's what this is all about. Truthfully, it, it is about like this show's about hate. I understand that, but pure uh, unadul- like, unadulterated hate. But yeah, it would be a hoot. Maybe for sweet, it would be a hoot. Over, you do you do your you jump over and ju- watch Uncle Rico with them. Just do it. It's just come on. And you can explain to them what you were thinking when you said it, or if you remember exactly. what you were thinking. <laughs> Maybe we're I, seeing it wrong. I would watch. It's, you know, from the different uh, mic amplifications to the not to John not even having a mic, yeah. And the three, fa- one guy is actually pink, one guy's light brown, and the other one is whiter than white, gray. Yeah, it's, everything about this is fucking weird. What you're saying is it's aesthetically pleasing. I agree. Oh, I could watch God. it all day long. <laughs> these, these three are, are near death. They Kevin, are all three are near death. Can I just say this to Kevin Brennan? He doesn't understand what this is at all. Now he's saying John should go on Uncle Rico. He would watch that. That would be fun. He also says, why am I chumming up with John and then putting out videos where I make fun of John the day they were supposed to do a show together? He's not understanding this at all from my perspective. 
John and I will be on again August 14th, 6 p.m. Eastern on Stuttering John's channel. Tune in. I have a lot more things to talk to John about. We won't be playing acoustic guitars this time. Don't you worry about that. I will not bring my acoustic to this one. We ready to transition to our next uh, segment of the show? Yes, please. Okay. I am going to call Elisa Jordana, and I hope that she uh, she picks up because we're calling her phone. She's not going to be video conferencing in with us, but uh, I've tried this in the past and it hasn't worked, but this time I'm feeling good about it. Hi, Carl. Hey, Elisa. How's it going? <laughs> Good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for taking my call. I'm here with producer Chris and trucker Andy Hello. as well. Hello. Hey, everybody. Hi. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for coming on. So you had a big weekend. You yeah. decided that you were going to teach. So Southern John is at his Florida house. Elisa lives in yeah. Florida, although not, not anywhere near John. It's a two and a half nowhere hour drive. Nowhere near. Very far. Yeah. From one coast to the other. What's your address? Oh, my God. It was a horrible <laughs> drive. It's like there's nothing to look at at all. I made there. that drive. It's uh, Alligator Alley, right? Yeah, yeah. I actually ate gator bites on the way. It's, it's actually not a bad drive because you can just fly, which is kind of nice. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't enjoy the drive. I was so mad, you know, after what happened. I was so, <laughs> I was so mad at him. Okay, so I'll just set this up, and I want to play a clip because I did a show with John yesterday. And we talked about this okay, a little yeah, bit. I so, so I want to play yeah. this clip from that. And uh, okay. ho- hopefully you'll be able to hear it now that I'm thinking about how I have this set up. We'll see. But um, okay. basically what Elisa did is she said, John, I've got into this new thing. I'm doing IRL streaming. And basically what you do is you just stream from your phone all day, whatever you're doing. And people watch and they can donate money. And it's an interactive thing. And I honestly think it's a brilliant idea for John. I think he'd have tons of people watching. Yeah. Just him running errands. People would tune in for that. I'd, I'd be fasting. I, I would watch him, like, eating a sandwich. Yeah. It's like anything. It literally, it's like walking, down, just interacting with any person. John yes. inflating um, his bed. Yeah. Should yeah, we, yeah, should yeah, we call this like a couple that, years ago? Like around his yep. house. Just, he, he, could just, he doesn't even have to leave, really. He could just sit there. Right. And, you know, give, like, a house tour. <laughs> something very simple. And I feel like it's, it would be easier for him than, like, booking guests. Or, you know, getting into the political thing. I I don't think people want to hear him talking about politics. I think they want to see him eating a sandwich. You're 100% accurate on that. Because I tuned into his show very briefly today. And he had the lowest numbers he's had since he came back. Because he's doing his political show on on Wednesday. Nobody cares about that shit. It's so boring. But John just sitting and scratching his ass on the couch. I'm too. I'll probably be watching for ninety minutes straight. Yeah, remember when yeah, high pitch Eric was like fall asleep and you know like <laughs> yeah. can you just imagine like a thousand people watching him falling yes. asleep, eating a sandwich, you know, uh, going on a date. Imagine if he went on a date on that. <laughs> well, th- I can see him dozing off and waking up to three thousand dollars. Exactly. He's just drooling exactly. out of farting himself. in his sleep. Just <laughs> farting and drooling. That's, that's how bad he is at politics, is that he's already falling asleep and scratching his ass. <laughs> that we just don't want to we want the politics out of right, it. Right, yeah. Like, can you just not talk? <laughs> yeah. <into that>? yeah. <laughs> Here's that's a sandwich. The thing about the sleep stream though, that would be so successful for John. I don't know if he knows this, but if he, he fell asleep, all his trolls would try to wake him up. By sending money and loud noises all night long. <laughs> You're right. Did you pitch this to him? He probably didn't get a chance to. I tried to pitch everything to him. I had so many ideas. That was my, you know, the biggest money maker for him, I think, would be sleeping. And people trying to wake him up and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, air horn. Sending an air horn. <laughs> yeah. That is the sound. best version of him. Yeah. Well, I don't sleep. Yeah, I just pass just imagine out. imagine it. All right, let me, let me play this uh, clip for you and tell me if you can hear this or not. Okay, okay. want to come to my house, call 911. <laughs> can you hear that? Yes, yes, I can. Beautiful. Okay, so someone super chats, Big Hank super chats, two chicks want to come to my house, call 911. And uh, so this yeah. is like a three minute long clip. If you want me to pause it along the way, let me know. I might pause it myself. But he's going to okay. address what happened on Saturday night where he threatened to call the police on you and your friend. Yes. Keep in mind, John made plans with Elisa, said she can come over to his house. Elisa told him she was bringing a friend. He knew about all of this, and it turns into John calling the police on them. Of course it does. (laughs) 
two hot chicks want to come <laughs> to my house, call 911. <laughs> you got to stop calling the cops all the time, John. Or threatening <laughs> it. It's weird. Dude, I thought they were in front of my house showing my address. What would you do? I would go outside and say, ladies. I wasn't the there. Night is, the night is over. Okay, well, then go home and tell them that. No, I was playing pool at a, at a friend's house. So definitely get the police involved then if you wanted to keep playing pool at a friend's house. That no, makes sense. I don't Stop have getting a, the police involved in shit. Carl, I don't have a car. Uh, I don't have a car. All right, so already this is insane. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to call the police because you were at his house, which you were invited to go to. Somebody took my yeah. car. <laughs> and, he, and he wants to play pool at his buddy's house, so he's going to call the cops on you. <laughs> All right. You know, I mean, I think it's just like because he was so maybe drunk that he uh, no. could think straight. Or I don't know what I, – I don't know because we definitely had every plan – Ahead of time, I, I went over and over with the, him about the Wi-Fi and everything. We were never supposed to be at that bar. Right. And I explained that to him, and I'll, I'll let this play. Uh, so listen to this. This is from yesterday. My interview with Stuttering Jeff. So I had to just say, just, I didn't, I just said, just get, get away from my house. Okay. And then, you know, or I'm going to call the cops to have you, fun, because I thought they were hanging out in front of my house. Like, what would you do? What would John, John Gotti Jr. say about that? Yeah, <laughs> what would John Gotti Jr. say? This is where Carl. This is where Carl says that I shouldn't call the cops. Meanwhile, Carl tells me that if anybody ever fucked with his house, he would call the cops. But now he's mad at me for saying that I'm going to call the cops. You specifically said vandalize my house. You go, if I vandalize your house, you can vandalize mine. I said, no, I'll call the police. Someone vandalizes my house. Okay. Okay, Alisa, let me tell you the background of this real quick. I don't don't know if you know this, but where John lives, you were just at his house. I live just down the street from there. I bought a house in Florida. I heard that. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Somehow John and I are neighbors. So when John and I first, when we first discovered this, John goes, um, no, listen, I'm, I'm not going to do anything to your house because you know where I live, so you could do something to my house. I go, well, I'm not going to do anything to your house. I would call the police if you did something to my house because that's, you know, I'm not going to get a tit for tat. Thing. After right. something happened to your house, right. then you call the police. Correct. Not at the inkling of maybe yeah. something might happen I to my toilet house. toilet paper your tree <laughs> and uh, right. eggs. <laughs> this is not going to You've quickly. gone too far. Yeah. I saw a Carl Hamburger <laughs> buying eggs at the supermarket. Yeah, he's calling call the, the cops. cops. <laughs> There's no way this guy likes omelets. I'm calling the cops. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me, let me get back to this clip because it does get interesting here. Someone vandalizes my yeah. house. Okay. so That's very uh, different than what you're doing. Okay, so if two trolls are in front of your house and, and you trolls. think that... You made plans with them. You were hanging out with them, trolls. Two trolls. Here we go again. Oh, my God. Here we go again. Here's the truth. <laughs> he muted me just now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Here we go again. Here we go. Making good points. Yeah, two I don't like trolls. It. You literally invited them to your house. <laughs> All right, sorry. Getting back to the clip. Lisa said she was going to come with a friend and show me how to do IRL. That's it. She didn't tell me she's going to ambush me at the place with fucking loud music on an external speaker and fucking everyone's telling her to turn it off and she refuses. That's now, what IRL is, though, John. Yeah. What you should have done is you should have left the establishment with her and she could have shown you how to IRL. Carl. If you're going to show me, and, you know, this is why I want you to be honest and don't be just a fucking lame-ass obsessed troll. If she's going to show me how to do IRL, wouldn't she come into the bar, have a drink, and go, okay, this is how we're going to set it up. This is how we're going to start it. This is how we're going to do it. Oh, and also uh, give you a kiss, John, yeah. because that's one of the first things John asked for was a peck from Elisa. Yeah. Which Buy me a there. drink. Yeah. Yeah. Full tongue. Don't you think you would give me a blowjob in the bathroom? Uh, buy me a drink. Yeah, we ease into the IRL. <laughs> this is how I pictured it going in my yeah. head. Yeah. What a loser. Uh, any comments, Elisa, so far? Um, I don't know. Okay, I, let me, I don't, I, I'll finish the clip because I, I quick, think... Yeah, yeah, just, quick question. <laughs> yeah. Elisa, yeah. did he understand yeah. the concept of IRL before you guys arrived? I, looking back, I don't think so. Yeah, okay. I don't think so either. Because you literally explained it to him. When you were on his show, 
you literally explained what it is you do and how you do it. Mm -hmm. And he goes, yeah, I could take you out my Harley. You go, no, 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 that, that's not going to work. Okay, no, no further it's questions. Gonna quiet, <laughs> it's going to be a quiet car. Yeah. We, we're, we're, we're streaming. We're talking to people. This isn't a date. And John keeps thinking in his head it's a date for some yeah. reason. I know you've explained it to me five times, but what does the I stand for again? <laughs> <laughs> and the R? Okay, and then just one more question. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's get back to this. Or would you come into my fucking bar with that fucking hip hop music blaring so the bartender has to tell her to turn it off, the patrons have to tell her to turn it off, and I do? Which would you do? Well, I'm not a Lisa Jordana. I don't do IRL streaming, but I know gonna, enough of. So now you're not going to so fucking answer. Because I you're will answer. I will answer the question. I don't do IRL streaming. I would never do that. I wouldn't be blasting music at any type of establishment. But that's what she does. That's how she was going to teach you how to do it by doing it in front of you. No. I knew that. I knew she was going to do that. How do you not know that? I've never I met this that. woman. <laughs> I mean, we have met. I, I was getting fired up. We haven't met in person, <laughs> I guess was my point. So, Elisa, please. Yeah. I think most people know what happened. Uh, it was covered on Shuli. You're on with Shuli talking about this. But basically, you show up. You drive two and a half hours to meet up with John. You guys are gonna you're gonna spend the night at his house. He says he's gonna give yeah. you his bed. He's got his air mattress in the other room. He's gonna sleep on. This is all an arranged thing. So you guys show yeah. up and you're like, hey, we're doing it. This is happening. We're going like this. You're filming all the way on the way there. You're filming when you get there. This is how this works. And John immediately just wants to hang out at the bar with what he says are his friends. He's like, I'm with these people. You're like, you are? They're just other people sitting at the bar. <laughs> John, because there's <laughs> his friends. So that part was weird. But why wouldn't he just, at that point, get up and go, okay, let me finish my drink, and then we'll go? He really wanted to hang out at that bar. He really did. He did not want to leave the bar. I said to him over and over, I said, John, let's go to your house. Yeah. Come in my car. Let's go to your house. He would not do it. He talks about all the time how attractive he thinks you are. And so you have this attractive girl saying, let's go to your house. And John, I'm, he might be an alcoholic. Because that's a yeah. weird thing to be like, no, I want to sit at the bar. Yeah. These people are buying me drinks. I can't hours. leave. Uh, that's, right. that's very, very bizarre. Detective okay. Andy. Mm -hmm. So... Walk me through this, because I don't know what happened after that. Did you two just leave? Like, what happened? Um, so I, he was, like, running away from me <laughs> at full speed. <laughs> How fast is that? <laughs> yeah. and, and, and I went to my car. My friend, uh, Lauren, I said, look for him. She said he's nowhere to be found. Um, he's in a he dumpster. I don't like he was hiding something. You know, there was I felt like there was something he was hiding. He was not the way he was on the phone with me prior, you know, before this whole thing. He was begging me, saying, Cape Coral is such a great place. It's such a great place, you know, for this. You're gonna have so much fun here. We're gonna have a great time. You know, he was, he pitched me this like wonderful weekend that we would have streaming, having so much fun as old friends as he calls it. Yeah. And uh, and he was running away from me, mean, insulting me, um, you know, trying to embarrass me in front of other people. I just, uh, I, I was a very big John defender before this, but it's it's hard to defend him now because he was really mean to me, and I don't think I did anything wrong to him. Well, no, because I watched a lot of what happened. And when you guys come in, I guess if people donate something, they get a song played on your stream, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So the way it works is it's ca it's called TTS, text to speech. So yep. they could pay like three dollars and say something, like like how you have a super chat, but it's it's audible. Yep. And you can hear it. Or five dollars um, is for a song. So it was just bad timing that somebody had sent a song as I was walking in, and. You know, I mean, I, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind that song. But John was so offended that there was a song playing. And it wasn't even playing that loud. In fact, I turned it down for John. And I wasn't even using my external speaker. I was using the, my phone speaker. So that wasn't even loud at all. Like when he was complaining about the TTS, like people were sending statements about him, which are very similar to Super Chats that he would get. He was so offended by that. And he was so upset by it. And he tried to turn off my equipment. He's yep. grabbing it. He's turning it upside down. Um, 
he, I don't know, he was so offended by this, even though he gets super chats every day of the same nature. Even though he knew exactly what this was. I knew exactly what this was. I heard you guys set this whole thing up when you were on his show, and then he thinks yeah. it's a date all of a sudden. It's like, this was never a date, John. I'm so happy I have evidence. I have so much evidence against him right now. Well, <laughs> th- that's I've the interesting show, part, because he says, he says he's going to sue you now. <sighs> Because yeah, well, he since <laughs> Go ahead. Then, for what? yeah, he wanted to sue me, but now uh, he texted me and I said, John, you know, because I'm I'm just trying to get him here because I know he's leaving on Tuesday. Um, you know, so I still want to get him here. He's dating somebody supposedly in my town. What? And I I would pay I would pay for his Uber. I really would because it's only like two hundred bucks, and I just know if I had him here. I mean, he's even funnier than I remember. So. <laughs> That's true. <Yes. laughs> I mean, you're I mean, right. He is a star. On my stream. You could definitely what? make a star out of him. I, I totally agree with oh, you. Oh, yeah. Like, exactly. I mean, it says a lot that he was on my stream for like 10 minutes, and there's been like so many shows about it. Shows That's true. About, That's a good point. You know, he's, he, he's more insane than anybody else. He, he's the top. We can't stop talking so, about it. That's a good point. Well, so, yeah. I, I would pay for that Uber right now if he texted me and said, okay, I'm ready to come. I would pay for that Uber at any time, any time of night. But I think I played it all wrong. I think I I asked too many times, and I was like, you know, I just – I've been really, like, steadily saying to him, John, I really think you should t- at least try this with me for, like, 24 hours. Just see if you like it. Right. And uh, but I, I'm I'm really close to giving up. He's been so difficult, and I think he just wants to do that politics thing. And maybe he's just happy doing that. Well, he's not happy. I can tell you that for sure. And he is very difficult to work with. I've scheduled two shows yeah. with him now, and both times was a pain in the ass. He'd be like, "All right, we said three o'clock, right?" I'm like, "Dude, just scroll up one thumb stroke, and you can yeah. see right there I wrote six o'clock." Yeah. All right, so three. Have you, like, have Jesus. you tried to meet up with him in person? At no, that sounds nuts. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. okay. And if you I do, mean, Carl, Monty don't bring hip hop. I mean, that would be incredible. I just can't believe he was so offended that you guys showed up at his house. And then he pretended yeah. that a guy showed up to his house after that to harass him. I don't know if that's true, but I, I know, know, know he did get some deliveries. And yeah. <laughs> when I was on the show with him yesterday, did. he had to get up at least four times to answer the door. Yeah. Because people were delivering like pizzas Express, and Panda yeah. Express and shit. <laughs> Which, I don't even know that's true. Yeah. And then John's like, you believe me, right? I'm like, dude, you lie all the time. Right. Why would anyone believe you about anything? Oh, good, because I was I, doing I, blow. I, think I believe it. <laughs> I, I believe him in this case. Um, I know, he's probably yeah, right. Yeah, it's all part of it. That's, that's the dangerous, not dangerous, but it's a, like kind of an annoying part of IRL is when people find out where you are, um, you know, they really want to get involved, especially with John. Right. Because it's so funny to see his reaction, like getting up a million <laughs> times. <laughs> to get the pizzas. I, it's, it's hilarious. It There's is. not many things funnier than that. Now, when I was out with him yesterday, he claimed that mm-hmm. your mother was calling him, even took a phone call from her in the middle of the show. Is that really your mom? So that that's a, that's somebody from my Discord that okay. uh, is very funny, and she's she is almost like a mother, but she, she's <laughs> okay. not my actual mother. But she you know she wants to be involved. She likes she, she likes meddling in things. And that's hilarious because I said to him, I go, yeah. John. Why do you think that's Elisa's mother? And he goes, well, you know, because I asked her a couple of things and she knew. It's like, okay. I got yeah. instinct. So you have no idea. Okay. <laughs> that story checks out completely. <laughs> that's yeah, my, really funny. My, my actual real mom took John's side. Oh, really? Yeah. She was like, <laughs> you really handled that incorrectly, Elisa. She's like, Elisa, um, you're I very annoying. The same yeah. thing that John did. I can relate. My parents don't like me either. <laughs> yeah, did your mom my call the cops on you? Everybody that's against me, they're on that person's side. Yeah. <laughs> Always. That's really funny. John does have the demeanor of a 70-year-old woman. So the last <laughs> I saw was you guys had to get a hotel room, which I don't know if there's a lot of hotels in Cape Coral. You probably there's had to go to... There's one nice hotel over there. There's okay. one, one good one. Okay, it's so you... the Westin, and it's expensive, and the pool's closed, and there's so much construction, so you're paying a lot, and they don't even have a pool. Boo. Yeah, so you guys had to stop, get a hotel. So you asked John to reimburse you for that because the whole plan was you were going to stay with him that night. And John was offended by that, but he does owe you that money, I think. 
Yeah, he owes me around seven hundred thirty-five dollars and fifty cents. I calculated it. Okay. Um, the, the hotel altogether was like four eleven, and I had to pay for my friend's meals. Like that was four meals. I had to pay for gas. Oh my god, it it's really DC all trip, over again. It's completely his fault. You know what's funny, Eliza, is that you and I have this in common. John owes both of us money. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think the chances are either of us are going to get one of the money? Oh, you know, <laughs> there's already been it's been documented. You're going to say you owe me seven hundred and fifty dollars, and he's going to say LOL. <laughs> right, yes. Yeah. I know. I'm just, sure. I, no, I, I don't think he's going to pay me any money at all. I, I just, uh, I could earn the money back in an hour if he came here. I know right. that. No, that's very true. So, oh, yeah, that's cool. I'm glad yeah. you're trying to get this going, get round two going. I mean, I, I did round two with John. I, want I get round it. Two. I, don't, I don't want this to be the end of it. This is too, this is too depressing. If this is it, you know, what, what I did with him, I, I'm not happy with that. Right. Um, but there's no reasoning with the person that's unreasonable. Well, I just can't believe how stupid he is that he didn't yeah. know what this was going to be. And the fact that he has to be at that pub drinking beer when it's like, well, no, no, no just this one time, do this thing with these people who just drove two and a half hours to do this thing. And with if you. you like to drink, why don't you have booze in your house? He does. He was drinking all night last night. Which <laughs> oh I'm going to go to your fucking house with hot <laughs> chicks. <laughs> Jesus. What's the problem? Get IRL, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, I think he might have been embarrassed about something in his house. That's the only thing I could think of. Like, uh, I know he doesn't have a couch. Right. Told me that. Yep. Um, but that's, I mean, it, looked, it was a very nice house from the outside. I can't imagine the inside would be bad. No, the, in, the inside's fine, except for it's all boxes still. He hasn't unpacked yeah. anything. He hasn't set up any furniture. Because I was talking to him about well, this. That actually is my furniture. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think that, I think it is. <laughs> because he, he doesn't have any light fixtures. He doesn't have any lights. Yeah, it seems yeah. like it'd be dark in there. It, it looked very dark <laughs> on the very screen dark. that I've seen him do. It's very dark yeah. in there. He it's just really figured weird. he's moving to the sunshine state. <laughs> 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 Who turned off the sunshine? <laughs> but that's interesting that he would invite you over and then realize he's embarrassed about it. Maybe he had grand hopes that he would get motivated and set some shit up, and then it just didn't <laughs> happen. I don't know. It's weird. Weird. I do not know why he changed it like that. I mean, we definitely went through it so much because I was asking him about the sleeping arrangements. I was asking about the bathrooms. He said, I have two bathrooms. You and your friend could share a bathroom. Like, we really went through it. And uh, I even asked about my dog because I had my dog with me. I said, is it okay if I bring a dog? He goes, oh, dogs love me. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> that story checks out. Head it to the long list of women that Stuttering John is disappointed. <laughs> no shit. All right. Yeah. Well, Elisa, I'll let you go. Um, All right. Where can people find you and your uh, your stream? Okay, so my stream is on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Elisa Jordana. And you could find John's stream there. And it's it's worth watching. Stream, but, uh, it's, I, worth, I, it's worth I, checking I it's out, good. definitely. Yeah, there's good parts. There's a couple good parts. There are. <laughs> For sure. All right. I, I'm so confused about how this all went down and why he was mad that you were at his house. And well, I heard that you're the John sense. Whisperer. Can you ask him to come here? <laughs> I can, yeah. I'll, I'll actually text him tomorrow and say, you really need to go and hang out with Elisa and do this IRL streaming thing. Because he's already said he's leaving the Dabbleverse. Spoiler. Right. Yesterday was You got his, the last of them. La- yesterday was his last day in the Dabbleverse. So if he's going back to doing politics or whatever the fuck he's going to talk about or reminiscing about Howard Stern, Ugh. no one's going to mm-hmm. give a shit. So he's got to find something. I, I really do. I, I agree with you, at least. I think he is perfect for IRL. Yeah, he is. And if, if you get him to come here, I'll, I'll drive him back. I'll drop him off at your house. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. That sounds good. All right. Thanks so much for coming out, Elisa. Good talk to you. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. All right, talk to you soon. Bye. Look at us taking phone calls on the show. <laughs> New segment! Like a professional or something. All right. Now, we just mentioned that uh, I had the last conversation with Stuttering John before he left the Dabbleverse. But that, of course, (laughs) is not true. There's another person (laughs) who had a conversation with him. And this is very interesting what happened yesterday. All right, I'm going to bring uh, Cardiff on in just a minute. But before I do that, Cardiff did an after show after my interview with Stuttering John. And I guess I had to leave. We went a lot longer than I thought we were going to. I had plans with someone, so I had to leave and and go out. And John wrapped things up. And Cardiff got very teary-eyed by what happened 
after I left <laughs> and John gave his final goodbyes to the Dabbleverse. And this might have been my Field of Dreams moment with Stuttering John. You got teary-eyed. I did. Wow. I did. This was like, this was like, made me realize this is a human being we've been tormenting for two and a half years now. <laughs> this was finally, after all this time, this is the first time he's appeared human to me. All right. So then uh, Cardiff actually plays that video of how we wrapped up the show. And I apologize for Cardiff's audio. It sucks. <laughs> sucks balls. <laughs> Let's chat about it tomorrow. All right. I'll see you. All right. See you. All right, Carl Hamburger. Now, I from... want to point out this is about 8.30 at night. Because John has no whites in his house, he literally, his green screen started failing halfway through, and it just went dark because he has no white fixtures at all. Classic. And I said, can you turn on the light? He goes, no, it's behind the green screen. <laughs> can you position yourself in a different way so that the light is in front of you? <laughs> nope. <laughs> all right. Um, why do they podcast? And I'll just read these last two, and I'll get the fuck out of here and watch Yankees. Dang, what is it, $2? John, you're as gray as the wall. I know. I know. <laughs> he is the same color love as the, the wall. Love the Civil War, Confederate General, look, you pulling, John. Keep it up. <laughs> hey, look, I love you all. Thanks for the super chats. I realize that you're all Carl fan. A lot of you are Carl fans. But it's been a pleasure to be here. And I don't have any, I don't really care about, you know, who... <laughs> He freezes up a lot. <laughs> I have the same Wi-Fi company, so. Hurrah. <laughs> and I'm done with all of this. This was my swan song. Oh, no. I hope you all enjoyed it. And um, now I will go watch the Yankees and just bid you all a farewell. And this is Stuttering John saying thank you. I appreciate you all. And... That's it. Except for this is stuttering John. <laughs> Did I oversell it, OJ? <laughs> All right. So that was uh, Cardiff saying how sad it was the yeah. way that John left the show. Right, it said Brooks was here on the wall behind him. There's a, a noose hanging down. <laughs> well, yeah, it did seem like a suicide. No, Cardiff, you still feel sad about this? Yes, it did. It was. I still feel it was a haunting moment. Yes, but uh, John, John is okay. It was shot beautifully. His NYU film school uh, definitely <laughs> right. paid off. It did pay off last night. <laughs> so it's yeah, funny. That, it's a camera action, right? That's what the that's how it goes. <laughs> right, no lights. Yeah, lights. yeah literally yes. film noir. <laughs> So Cardiff then talks about how John seemed sober and like a real person. And then, so he's going on. This is an hour into Cardiff's wrap-up show. And he's he's going, yeah, John, he actually had his shit together. He was being coherent. And then this happens. I don't think so. How would you want a sharp cookie? Cut your tongue. Yeah, it doesn't. Or maybe. Holy shit. Uh, thank you, Michael Halsic. Stuttering John Melendez. How are you? Sir? No way. Wow. I'm honored, Welcome. John. No. <laughs> Stuttering John Melendez is here. How are you, sir? Welcome to the show. I'm good. Did you enjoy my short thing? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just one hour later. Got a shit can. Oh my god! Drinking a Yankees loss. Away. How do you spell what he just said? <laughs> a lot of S's. A lot of J's. A lot of F's. Z's. <laughs> John Jara shot today. Rich Foss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Holy shit. So Cardiff says that John won the show. Well, here's and, the thing. It's been, I got to ask you, Carl. I enjoyed you. You won today, Stuttering John. You won today. Oh, thank you. But he's bringing up shit like from so many years. It's like, dude, that's the way you're going to get me is bringing up shit from fucking five. Ten, like, it's like. Don't make really? me call the hypocrisy police, John. You do the same thing. No, but not anymore. <laughs> <All right>. uh, <laughs> so he's got an excuse. No, he's got an answer. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah no, I've been an asshole for a while, but I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> so no one else is allowed to now either. So this is a weird new angle that John's taking because uh, the debate that I had with him yesterday, we brought up a lot of things that John's done in the past that would be hypocritical based on what he says now, which is how hypocrisy works. 
<laughs> something that you did in the past, and then your things that you say now. And John goes, well, let's not go too far back in the past. 18 months is the limit. If you go back further than 18 months, then it doesn't count. He just keeps making up these fucking rules. And I do have a mm-hmm. few clips from that that we'll, uh, we'll talk about. This is the sad thing. No more hypocrisy police. He's ending the show. He just started this show. It was the biggest hit he's ever had, to be honest with you. He's never had more viewers, but he can't do it anymore. No more hypocrisy, please. <laughs> the reason why I called the hypocrisy police is when they do it like now, in this year or the or 2022. If, if you're going to bring up a shit from seven years ago, yeah, then we we're all hypocrites. Okay, because- so are you saying we're in a world now where we can start the clock today, August 15th, anything before today, we're not talking about it anymore. We're only no. talking about August 15th. I'm, no, no. I'm saying if you go back two years, okay. But if you start going back 10, 20, 30 years, come on. So recent history only. Don't you agree? I, I, I agree no history is relevant, but. Okay. Howard was in blackface, right? <laughs> yes. So John immediately deflects. He's just like, have I said a bunch of shit that's very hypocritical? Yeah, but Howard wasn't blackface. And you <laughs> have a gambling problem. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, it's always this shit where it's like, yeah, but what about yeah. what about this thing? So that's why I said 18 months. He says, okay, if it happened this year or 2022, then you're allowed to talk about it. But anything before that, no longer able to discuss these things because I brought up a bunch of things that John made John a little uncomfortable when I was on the show with him. Now, Cardiff. How did you get John on your show? I assume you just sent him the link. Uh, I sent him the link like I do many, many times. <laughs> every, it's every not day. the first link <laughs> yeah. I've sent John. I will admit to that. Sure. Um, I told him, uh, I just started, I sent him an update. You know, I, we had 400 people in the chat. People were really uh, positive on his day yep. on uh, on YouTube. And he said, tell me your real name and I'll come on. Oh, right. He's so yeah. obsessed with that. We'll get into that because he really wants to know your real name. But yes. I thought this was a fun little thing that happened because I don't know that he's joking about this. And you can tell me if he is or not. F him. John, John, I am honored that you're telling me to go fuck myself. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I'm glad you're doing and it on the By the way, uh, Cardiff, I hope you're going to pay me for this. Yes, John. You tell me what you need and I'll get you money. Yeah, just give me like 200 for this. Done. Absolutely right, done. Thanks. It's going to come through a third party. But it'll get to you. No, I'm be coming. I'm gonna get you to send it. Why are you so private? Why are you so? Are you famous? <laughs> well, yeah, it's Cardiff Electric. Yeah, you never heard of him? The, the most, most famous, famous podcast, podcast on the, in the world today. today. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, so on the internet, Andy. Did you uh, did you pay uh, John two hundred dollars? Are you planning on paying him two hundred dollars? I did. You did. I did, and David Chandler also paid John Jesus last night. Christ, that's we unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Well, good good on you. You so, did a great job keeping him on. Like, I, yeah. You know, he, he was going to He was gonna jump ship and Cardiff just kept, you know. So Dr. Steve fucked it all up. Yeah. yeah. We, we, uh, <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> I have that clip. Great so, ending. Yep. Yeah, so this is the thing. John, <laughs> for whatever reason, needs to know Cardiff's real name. It's very important to him. His name's Spud. That he knows his real name. OJ, do you know my name? And be honest. I do not. Who cares? You, Carter. because you've made a big deal about it. No, Carter, you're not getting the point. I like you. I think you're funny. You've been helpful to me. In know, fact, you sent me that background. Yes, twice. <laughs> Today, yeah, I know, but for some reason I didn't get the first one. Well, I did, but then I guess I had you in spam and then went away. So now... You sent me that today as a, as helping me, right? Yes. Look at it. It's Eric Nagel's watching. It's like, is this real? Yeah. <laughs> is this real madness? Okay. So for me, I go, okay, he's, first of all, I know he's funny. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and then I chimed I in out here. <laughs> yeah. This convo is retarded. Yeah. <laughs> this chat just My keeps... Chat... Go ahead. My chat was a who's who of <laughs> middle of the road podcasts. <laughs> we were all in it. We were all in here. And we're all going, what is I'm like, what is this conversation where John's just like, well, I like you, Connor, but you got to tell me what your first name is. Do you like yeah. me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So stupid. 
Now he appears to be a good guy. So I the only thing I don't understand is why you wouldn't like and I know you're afraid I would dox you, but I already I'll, I swear to my life I would never do that. I would never even say the first initial of <laughs> yeah, right. and, and I believe you wouldn't intentionally. But yeah. accidentally, th- I wouldn't even do it accidentally, John. You've given out your address on stream. How can I trust yes. you with my information? Good point. Because I would delete the whole thing. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah, right. even do it accidentally. Yeah. Is the funniest thing John said right. all day yesterday. Yeah. yeah, what an idiot! I know how to avoid accidents. <laughs> what a fucking moron! And Kurt, a brilliant point. John's like, well, you can trust me with this information. He's like, John, you were the one who doxed your own address. Yeah, yeah. I brought this up to him. <laughs> On the show as well yesterday, that as he's showing off his sh- his um, house using Zillow before he brought all this crap in there when it actually still looked nice, he had the entire address just showing up on his screen for <laughs> many minutes. <laughs> so stupid. All right, I guess the question is, why does it matter if you know Cardiff's real name? I'll go on record as saying I do not know Cardiff's real name. I've never asked. I don't care. Yeah, I don't want to know. It doesn't matter. It does not I've matter. I've been in your me. house and you don't know my real name. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I don't I don't care. Um I know where you live, but I don't know your real name. So Ooh, the question so is, why does any of this fucking matter to anyone? If you I, gave me a name, Cardiff, I yeah. swear on my life, when you gave me a name, I would delete that. And so you, there will be no semblance of any of that. What? But why so, does it mean so much to you to know my name? Because I want to know who the fuck I'm talking to. It's just a, my my wife is practically calling me Cardiff half the time. <laughs> no, oh, I don't give a fuck about it. No offense. Hey, don't talk about my family. Do you see? <laughs> this is well illustrating played. the point that Elisa was just making. John... Just streaming from his house right now. This is fascinating. Yeah. He's saying the dumbest shit possible. He's talking about how he's going to burn the evidence after he finds out the guy's name. However, that works. You know, he's, it doesn't. This none message of this will self destruct. Right. Yeah. None of this makes any sense. He's talking about how you had to send him my background twice because the first one ended up in spam. Or I don't think he knows what spam means because that didn't make any fucking sense. This guy's great. And uh, actually, this guy is. Fantastic. Carl's loving it so he can play this a billion times tomorrow. I don't give a fuck. I'm done. Uh, just once will do. <laughs> so he saw that I was in the chat and he's just like, oh shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now I'm very drunk on the internet and Carl's probably going to clip this. Ding, ding, ding. I sure did. I sure did. All right. This is funny because John gets up to use the bathroom, which is the only light on. So there's a light on behind him. It's the only way that you can see anything. And it's from the bathroom. And of course, he's got these boxes and stuff. Mm-hmm. So when he gets up to go to the bathroom, it's all Panda Express. Cardiff decides to go full screen <laughs> so that we can see what's doing. It's in very this house. sad. <laughs> Make his yeah. yeah <laughs> so one of his uh, bedrooms is just an air mattress and just a pile of boxes that looked like they were probably dark, taped up by John. It's just <laughs> masky tape. Or a everywhere. blind yeah. person. <laughs> right. Looks like they were dragged behind a car from <laughs> California to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing when. I asked John to um, get some light on him and take down the green screen. He goes, why? So you can make fun of the box? I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I also want to see there's a cockroach. Do us a favor. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what we're looking for here. <laughs> a nice bed. The inflatable mattress is the best part. It's great. Ugh. He thought he was going to have two chicks come over to his ho- this house. How am I supposed to get a chick in this? <laughs> so stupid. All right. So then El Harible joins the stream. And El Harible does something that's very funny. He calls Johnny drunk <laughs> over and over so again, great. which is fantastic. Who's that? Uh, El Horrible, our friend El Horrible. Finally. Another guy with a mask. The Another great guy with a mask. <laughs> Another guy with a mask. Don't we all wear masks, John? No, 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 we don't. This You're is not wearing me. a f- ugly. As ugly as I am, this homeless is me. woman mask. You can't, even, you can't even come in as yourself, you fucking coward. I hope this isn't the moment that uh, Bedabbler decides to get revenge on me and destroy this right, moment that I'm having. Too. Get rid of the, get rid of them. I'll no, leave. They really, they really are fans. I'll they leave. All... No, then tell him to show his face. He doesn't need to show his face, John. We're, we're all fans of no, him. No, no. 
All right, hold on. I'll be right back. All right, all right. All right, all right. All right, all right. you drunk. Shut up, you drunk. Don't do it. Get rid of you drunk. Shut up. Thank you. All right. So what El Horrible left to go do is put on a second mask. So you pull this gag where he's like, all right, here you go. And then he's got the mask <laughs> underneath that. He didn't get to that point, unfortunately, to do that to John. Not that John was paying attention. Because Dr. Steve joins, or should I say Myrtle. <laughs> Myrtle, Myrtle. Myrtle joins the show. And I saw that Dr. Steve was chatting away. So, of course, I'm texting with him. And uh, I just, I couldn't believe this happened, that he was the one who scared John off the show. You're a liar. But that was yesterday, John. Today is a new day. No, it's not yesterday. <laughs> Today. 16 you... minutes, it'll be yesterday. It's not yesterday. <laughs> I believe Dr. Steve is trying to join right now. <laughs> oh, I like that, Steve. Would you like to meet Dr. Steve? He'll... Yes. Oh, well. I and thought it was Dr. Steve. These two guys... Hello, Dr. Steve Puppet. No. Well, well I was just going to tell you. All right, I'm out of here. Hold on. So hold on, to see hold on. on. This, this, oh, this, no. this puppet really no. is Dr. Steve. So John thinks he's getting pranked because nobody's showing their face on here. So, of course, this puppet shows up, and it is Dr. Steve. But this really throws John off. <laughs> you know, it's Myrtle. It's hey, Myrtle. Myrtle. What's wrong? Wait. You fellas, I hope you had some good beetles tonight. Hey, Tom, you good time. <laughs> Dr. Steve, show your face before he leaves. Before, before he leaves, leaves Dr. Face. Steve, please. You know, leave. I know we gave everybody content tonight, but... Dr. Just, Steve, uh, show your face. Oh, He's Dr. Steve. <laughs> well, I look, Let looks go. like John had him some corn squeeze. And it really is Dr. Steve. Oh, Dr. Steve. Dr. Steve. Dr. Steve's fault. But, again, in, in fairness... Dr. Steve brought me into this world, and Dr. Steve should be the one to take me out of this world. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I ruined your show there, Mr. Cardiff. He sure <laughs> are a good failure. I'll tell you that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is so insane. Man, even when I'm clipping this, I'm like, what am I doing with my life right now? Right. This is what I'm clipping to play on my show, and I'm also fascinated by it. I was watching it live, and I watched it back again today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's wrong. Yeah, got, you like, created this, jackass. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 good point. I guess, I guess it does make sense that I'd be clipping this. I think we get the classic uh, moment of Tukey yes! and the Dabbler. Tukey joins the show, and for the first time, you see El Harible and Tukey at the same time. Kelly, so many firsts on the card of electric why YouTube do I channel. Love it so much? <laughs> I don't know. I thought we were going to answer that today. I don't know if we did. But no, thank you, Kinky. <laughs> I, I've I overstayed say, my welcome. I gotta go, <laughs> Doctor Steve. I'll ruin me. it if I stay much. No, longer. you're more than welcome. I'm not Doctor Steve. You would not ruin anything. Oh, Tuki! <laughs> oh, it's fantastic Tukey. to see you, Doctor Steve. <laughs> my favorite. I thought this was gonna be a Tuki free day. <laughs> no, no, that's a a Tuki free day is a bad day. I realize that you can't see B Dabbler's uh, lips anyway. It doesn't make any sense. I can have Tuki and B Dabbler. <laughs> my greatest. The world's Greatest moment. ventriloquist. <laughs> so that was a rare treat. The world's smartest. <laughs> yeah. That sent me to bed with a smile on my face last night. Okay, getting yeah. to see uh, getting to see the behind the scenes of how Tukey actually operates. Did you know that that's how it worked, Cardiff? No. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, thought he, I really thought Tukey was alive. Me too. I thought it was a monster. Mm-hmm. And then uh, one more clip from Cardiff show last night, and that is a uh, super chatter got Car- uh, Tukey to say something that's very exciting to me. Uh, go Bills! That's right, Tukey's a Bills fan, everybody. That's very exciting. <laughs> okay, he's more of an OJ fan, but... aren't we all? Though, yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, we were playing a clip. So I have a new show called Who Are These Broadcasters? It premiered yesterday. It's on our YouTube channel. We also put it in the feed for Who Are These Podcasts. We'll have our own feed soon. But uh, we played a OJ clip, and OJ has updated his spiel. He used to say, hello, Twitter world, and now he's calling it X. He's the only guy I know who's actually buying into this X thing and not just calling it Twitter still. <laughs> hello, X. Yeah. I liked, uh, who is it, uh, Eric Zane, saying that the whole new generation of people that watch the show are pro-OJ now. Yeah. That's so wild. It's it's so bizarre. So he was saying that the younger people only know OJ from the recreated... Whatever that drama American was. American crime saga yeah. or whatever, yeah. Yeah, so they're all Team OJ. Yeah. 
It's so fucking funny. Uh, the rest are just like, he got away with murder. What the yeah. fuck is going on? Okay. So I just want to play a couple clips. Please, I'll put it up on our Patreon. It's still on John's YouTube channel right now. I don't know how long it's going to last there. But you can watch the full two and a half hour interview I did with Stuttering John. There were times when it got a little frustrating for me because what John would do is when I would start asking him a question or going into something, he would just start reading Super Chats to interrupt me and to stop the conversation. It's very selective. I did get over that to varying degrees. We definitely got into some very important things. But I want to show you John's gotcha moment. I want to show you what John thought he was going to bring out to put me in my place. And for the record, my okay. entire three hours is still up on my YouTube channel and will yeah, remain yeah. free. Okay, very good. As Check a service out to dabblers. Check out Cardiff's uh, channel as well. John brings on the picture of me in the cow bikini yeah. from my creep off consequence. John's new best friend, Vinnie Paulino, sent this to John. Oh, nice. <laughs> and John's <laughs> like, oh, yeah. He's like, oh, I got Carl on this one. And, okay. and who made yeah. Vinny and John best friends? Was that you? Yes. <laughs> You're a real problem, you know that? I'm looking forward to the day when Tukey takes over for you, and we see Tukey on all these shows. Too bad too bad. Uh, B. Dabbler actually has a life. I, 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 try, I tried to explain to John yesterday that I've probably irritated you more than I've irritated John in the mm-hmm. two years I've been doing this shit. That's true. That's a good point. Okay. Now, if Carl's supposed to be hetero, why is he dressed up like a cowgirl? <laughs> All right, first off, if Carl's supposed to be hetero, why is he dressed up like a cowgirl? A cowgirl? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a dumb statement. Gang gang, got All me right. feeling like a cowgirl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ice cream, yum. Okay. Do you, give, do you want me to give the answer to this? Okay, but look at that. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, I know. It's not great. I agree. <laughs> oh, look how chunky you are, you fat fuck. John, again. Make it yeah. fun of my accent. Make it fun of my accent and make yeah. it fun of my weight are two things you should not do, all right? Why? I'm in two- great <laughs> You're fat and you talk like a moron. I'm not what talking about. <laughs> look, who you, look who talks like a moron. Stop, stop, stop. And you talk like a moron. Stop, 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 stop. stop, stop. <laughs> I thought he made some good points <laughs> at the end there. <laughs> really shut him down with that one. Yeah. One of my better arguments. Um, okay, so this is such a dumb argument because John's trying to say that I must be gay. Or else <laughs> why else would I be dressed like this? Now, you do know why that exists, right? All I know is I would never dress well. I only did for the Stern Miss America book, but that's... You know, but it was a consequence for the creep off. We have a well, review okay. girl who wore a cow bikini very famously on who are yeah. these podcasts. And so that yeah, was a okay. consequence okay. when I lost yeah. on the creep off. Sure. sure. Okay. I'm not gay. Yeah. It's just okay. something I do to make sure everyone's protected. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, on. everyone in this chat knows that to be true. So yeah. you doing yeah. that bit is not working right now, John. Yeah. Everyone sure in here knows what's going on except for you. Yeah. I'm sure you had it in your lingerie drawer. Space Ghost. Thanks That's a good for the one. two bucks. Still looks better than you, hypocrite, Sean. <laughs> Yeah, so John's really trying to play this thing. Like, he thought he had this whole thing. Like, oh, oh gotcha, John. I got him now. Oh, yeah. it, it would be like you you caught me sucking eight dicks Yeah, is the way he treats this photo of me in a cow <laughs> bikini that was obviously a consequence for the creep off. But he's just like, well, then why are the balls in your mouth if you're not gay, Carl? <laughs> like, okay. is, is eight the gay number, Carl? <laughs> eight is, <laughs> seven is fine. Seven you can okay. talk your way out of. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I don't even feel anything at eight. <laughs> so... <laughs> it's a good joke right there thank you all right so john turns into a child here because i was annoyed he kept interrupting me with super chats so then he has to start acting like he's so put off by me disappointing him I missed a lot of these so i don't know what you want me to do so you tell i mean you know i well, you know, I, I don't know what like you, you get mad if i read the super chats i, I mean all like, right, go ahead let's get caught up then john don't no, john what do you want me to do? Let's, I just said, let's get caught up. All right. I can tell that you're you're a little bit razzled from what I just said. About what? You're a little razzled Who, because you me? know this episode exists somewhere. And I don't when know we what track it down, I don't and care. when we track it down, your family. All right, I should have set this up. So, what I had just done before this is I had dropped the bomb, and I don't know if John knows this to be true or not because from what I heard, he was very drunk on this Artie Lang podcast that he did that has never made its way to the internet. There's only a couple of people who have heard this episode, but I've talked to one of those people who was there when it was recorded. And apparently the guy who goofs on John's kids the most 
is John. There is a <laughs> podcast of John and Artie Lang. It was right around the time that his child was transitioning, or maybe a little bit after that, and he was the one making all the jokes about it. And Dan Filato, who's a good guy, who was producing Artie's show at the time, reached out to John and said, hey, do you want me to put this up? Because I, I won't if you tell me not to. <laughs> I wouldn't if I were you. <laughs> That's basically yeah. what he said to him. Yeah. And John was very drunk. He's like, ah, oh, it's fine. It doesn't matter. So they didn't put it up. And then the next day, John said, went, dude, do not post that. And so he didn't. So there's this episode. And the way that Daniel explains this to me, he goes, oh, his family would not be happy with him if they heard the shit that he said on this episode. And I'm not trying to like tattle on people or rat people out, but it's just the fact that John is such a hypocrite talking about, you can't talk about my kids, but he's the first one to do it. And now he acts like it's the craziest thing anyone could ever do. So I hit him with that and I hit him pretty hard and he tried to change the subject. And I brought it back to that subject and I hit him a few times with that to the point where by the end, he's going, you know, Carl, I was very confused, you know, and when, uh, and I'm so bad at this. I think his daughter transitioned to his son. Okay. He's like, when my daughter came to me and I didn't know about this kind of thing and, you know, it was all new to me. So It's a cope thing. You could tell already that John knows he fucked up, Mm -hmm. thinks it might get out, and so now he's trying to figure out a way to talk his way out of it already ahead of time. So this is where I'm talking about where he's kind of reeling here. About what? You're a little razzled because you know this episode exists somewhere. And I don't when know we what track it down, I don't when care. we track it down, your family's not going to be too pleased with you, my friend. It, it was me on And already. that's the fucked up thing because I don't really care. I'm not a tattletale. But the fact that you go on there and talk about everyone bashing your kids and how terrible that is, and really you're the one who was doing it. He was the it's first in line. It's so hypocritical. On yeah. such a hypocrite. Show? On Artie Lang's show. podcast, yep. I don't remember it at all. But yeah, well, you were pretty what drunk. What making jokes about? You were pretty drunk. Well, you're, you were making jokes about people missing certain private parts and things like that. So, Well, it must have been a long, long time ago then. Oh, yeah. A long, long time ago. Back when you were in your like early 50s. <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it must have been a long, long time ago. It was the Artie Lang podcast, like 2017, 2018. Yeah. Long, long time ago. And that's why you saw when he went on Carter's show, he's just like, and these people called me up for shit I did seven years ago. Yeah. If we're going to go all the way back to uh, <laughs> yeah, when I was 50. seven years ago. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. All right. This goes on and on during the show where I bring shit up. He, he threatened a mob hit. And he brought John Gotti Jr.'s name into it. He's like, I'm hanging out with John Gotti Jr. That's why, that's why I threatened this mob hit. And then I wrote, read a note from John Gotti's grandson, John Gotti Jr.'s nephew, saying, John's got to get fucking my uncle's name out of his fucking mouth. They do not have a relationship. And I read this whole note to him. And he's just like, I don't even remember doing that. All Everything that I was telling him he did that's hypocritical. He's like, I don't even remember any of that stuff. How convenient. How convenient. He remembers everything on his second grade report card, but can't remember... Any of the things that he did that were fucked up. And then this happens. Dang, Lizard. Thanks for two bucks, John. Didn't you tell us about your perfect memory? Yeah, but not everything. Um, <laughs> That's not what perfect means, John. Yeah, yeah, it's not that perfect. Uh, it's not that perfect. It's not that perfect. It's perfect, but not that perfect. Just a little bit perfect. Perfect-ish. <laughs> when it suits me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So then John doubles down on the fact that I'm gay. And I, I think I had a pretty good comeback. So weak. Such a weak premise. You're burying this ass on calls, running scared. No, if you if you claim you're not gay, but then you go out and wear that, maybe, look, just so you know, Bruce Jenner used to dress up like a woman, and Kim Kardashian caught Bruce wearing Kim's dress. And what cereal box is he on now? Oh, yeah, that was, I, I stopped doing that. It, it isn't appropriate anymore. When did you stop doing it? Two years ago? No, about 10 years, seven years ago. That's a lie. Six. All right. That's another lie. Chalk Why? It How long ago? It, it was a couple of years ago. Yeah. All right. I said it two years ago. I don't remember, but but I, I, I had to stop. I you know. The punchline is Fruit Loops, everybody. Oh, just yeah. Yeah. Very, very <laughs> sensitive uh, Democrat here, John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, John, his entire act he wrote 20 years ago, and he still has been doing that same act every stand-up show he does. And now he's claiming, no, granted, he's not getting gigs anymore, so yeah, he hasn't said it. Very recently, <laughs> but if he were getting booked to do comedy somewhere, he would, he would be saying that that's joke. part of his act. Is that all right? Here's my, my heck. Here's my last clip. <laughs> this is just—he's impossible to understand. This guy, correct? And we appreciate. Zero, thank you for the five bucks, John. Is the ultimate victim? Grow up, John. Holy fuck! Oh, Carl, the one thing you have to show me because 
you know that you're better at this than me yeah. when it comes to the the, uh, the technical aspect. I don't know how you figured out um, how, you know, like, you know, how how the YouTube number, like, you were able to figure out just as much, like, like how much, you know, how much I made. Wait, what? Yeah, <laughs> I was watching this live. I was cracking the fuck up. I literally turned into the drop. Wait, yeah. what? <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? What the fuck are you talking about? What's this guy going on about? So, I mean, he was much less coherent on your show, Cardiff. I have to say, that was quite a get that you had. And that was lucid, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cardiff, let me ask you, since I have you. Yeah. Um, any other highlights from when John was on your show on the, the after show? Uh, there was a lot, like there was so many moments, but when he started, I think when he got me on the couch, when Mm. he reversed the roles and he was psychoanalyzing me, uh, I think, I think I did come to a, a bit of an epiphany during that, but, um, yeah, yeah, you're you're a changed potato today. I am. I, I, I think I'm retiring. Are I you might really? be retiring. There's that, a, there is a chance. So you're telling me the Dabble verse ended yesterday. I'm going to be writing a song the day the Dabble verse died <laughs> because the potatoes yeah, be no gone, lyrics, John's gone. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, I'm not retiring from everything, just John. Well, obviously, y'all remember the 90s is a very important project. Yes. That we have and the season the finale ground. of Subreddit Surfing is tonight at 8 o'clock. All right. <laughs> I did like... Yes. The explanation of when you went back to your your trolling and the whole yeah. subreddit uh, genesis of Cardiff and where the name came from and how you how you evolved it into the potato and the the potato is a, a beloved avatar mm-hmm. and John's like just just be yourself well. The, the potato is what people like. Why would why would you jettison the thing that everybody Chad has the is worst like? Advice yeah, for right. It's like if, I told Tom if Cruise, I wasn't stop the potato, acting. I wouldn't be talking to John. Right, right. Yeah. You know, or Opie, or yes. what other shows are you on? I mean, every show, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, Kumia, yeah. Gina Bisconti, <laughs> yeah. who's left? Who's right? Oops, yeah. <laughs> who's you, left? Yeah, you figured out something that Nobody's works. Left. <laughs> you figured out something that works, and John's like, oh, you should just get rid of that. Yeah. Why? Why, why would you do that? He's so smart. Yeah. So mm-hmm. dumb, but it was uh, fun to listen to. But it, it has forced me to maybe evolve. I might evolve. No, just get your mm-hmm. audio fixed. You're doing fine. Just get your Well, it's better out. today, I hope. It, it is. It, it is. sounds it is. a lot better. Yeah. Okay. It has evolved. <laughs> Greatest show of my life. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I know. fucking computer. It sounded like ass. <laughs> Dude, I'm, so, I'm sorry that you're feeling this way right now, Cardiff. I hope that you uh, come around and rejoin us in yes. the Dabbleverse. But no. there's so much more. There's so much more for me to do. All right. Fair enough. I won't stop you. No one me get in your way. That leads us into. You suck. Now, the last time we left off with Stuttering John, we had mentioned that he was ending his association with the Dabbleverse. He had his swan song. We did an interview. Him and I on Tuesday. Then he went on Cardiff show mm-hmm. Tuesday night. He got very drunk on there. We documented that. And then he said, that's it. I'm all done with any of this nonsense. And he does his political show on Wednesday, like he always does. And then what happens on Thursday? Yeah, it was sad to see him go. Next topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's it. So he comes back on Thursday with his boy DG, the guy Dave. Yeah. And... um he decides that he's going to highlight my cow bikini pick that Vinny sent him and really hammer me hard. That one's the most pleasant. Hey, Carla. Hey, Carl. So he has it as his background, my cow bikini pick. That was a consequence right. for the creep off. And he's very proud. Of it. He spent the first five minutes trying to position it. Like things he could have done before he hit record. Right. And it was very embarrassing. He just proved he has no idea what he's doing. But then he finally just settles on having it right here. I thought he was going to text you for help. <laughs> he might have. I, I, was, I was busy at this time. but I'll say, like, I mean, credit to you for going. It is, it's like an embarrassing. I'd be embarrassed if there was a picture like me. But you play along with the bit. But John is acting like this is leaked footage that only he has. 
Oh, it, I know. The, the bit he's doing doesn't make any sense. That's what's insane about this. And actually, somebody sent me this photo of John when he's wearing the Borat uh, one piece when he was on The Tonight Show. And I'm like, yeah, uh-huh. I mean, he was also in on the joke here, just like I was in on the joke with this. This right. was a consequence for the creep off. It's on their, our Instagram page. This isn't something where he's like, oh, I'm glad Vinny sent me this because he caught Carl cross-dressing one day. Right. It's like, and I'm on the stage, maddening... there's lightning there. <laughs> it was done by a professional photographer. It was a whole fucking production. The frustrating thing about John is if you did show that picture of him, he'd be like, well, that was for a show. Yeah, I know. Right. Like, yeah, John, that's I the know. point we're making. Yeah, I get it, yes. <laughs> that was the most pleasant. Hey, Carla. Hey, Carl. Hey, Carla. Nice outfit. Hey, Carla! I even explained to you why I had to wear a cow bikini, which is one of the coolest reasons to have to wear a cow bikini. The review girl on my show. Anyway, he's such a fucking moron. No, he wasn't having it, man. He wasn't having it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Yes, yeah, so as as you know, we um, are going to dissect what went on. And the reason why, Dave, I talked to you and I know we were against punching down, but I did want to focus on a few things since Carla seems to think that that he somehow won, which he's out of his fucking mind because he didn't win anything. Quite frankly, I, I kicked his ass. Okay. And, you know, I know he, he is, his pride won't let him realize that. Oh, but, oh that's projecting right there. <laughs> wow, is that projecting. His pride won't let him realize that. And me- meanwhile, all right, so I'll let the clip play, and then we'll talk about it. And, you know, I know he, he is, his pride won't let him realize that, but, you know, it, does, it, it's does, true. Does everything, does everything have to be a competition? John, can it just be a friendly conversation? Yeah, DG knows that I kicked his ass, so he's just like, well, maybe we should look back at that and figure out who won. Yeah, we'll call it a tie. Yeah, maybe that's like a strategy. <laughs> so he's trying to give John an out right now. Listen to yeah. John here. Huh? So does everything have to be a competition? Yes. Oh, fair enough. Yes. Hey, that's it. That's a that's a that's a fair answer. Okay. Dave is podcasting poison, by the way. He's horrendous. Oh, he's he's terrible. And I don't know what angle he's playing. I, I highly doubt he's in this for the reasons John thinks he's in this. But who, sure, yeah. who even fucking knows? Yeah. So John decided on Thursday to do a rebuttal show without me being there. He's like, Carl thinks he won all these debates. Well, I'm going to tell him why he's wrong without me being there. <laughs> Doesn't that kind of prove that I got to you, John? It's just him in the mirror. But you felt, yeah, right. He felt the need that he had to come back and do that. So I'm not even going to play any clips from that because it's just absurd. All the different reasons why I was wrong and he was right. <laughs> I'm smart. I'm worthwhile. I'll be writing letters to YouTube with Johnny Cush. Right. I probably will be. He literally pointed to his head and he goes, you can't compete with this. His no, fucking wet braid, his fucking slip and slide of a brain, <laughs> his fucking pool slide of a brain. He's just like, you can't compete with this. You'll slide right off it. <laughs> okay. John is a sitcom character that doesn't see the irony, like why his lines are hilarious. Like right. every time he points out his intelligence and his, his broadcasting prowess, it's sitcomish. If it was in a sitcom, you would think that's an unrealistic line for a human being to say. Correct. And Mike... My plan was to get away from Stuttering John because I feel like he's overexposed right now. But the shit that he's doing this week, I'm like, oh, well, we got to talk about this because I'm going to let all of this go. The Thursday show, he felt wounded. He had to come back and he had to fight back. And okay, he's going to get he's going to get the last word in and tell me that I was wrong. So Friday, can we get back to doing whatever it is you think you're going to do now? Now that you're out of the dabble verse, let's see how he starts the show yesterday on his show. Why? Wow, here it says, here it says they found real zombies in Kenya. Oh, oh sorry, I'm, I'm just reading the National Enquirer. It's amazing all the incredible facts that you can get from the National Enquirer. He's showing the picture of me. Is this a Gillian Keeves sketch you're playing? What is that? That's a, <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> showing the picture of me in the cow bikini again to start the show after the Why Do They Podcast thing. And he's reading the National Enquirer because... One of the big things that really got to him, because he's talked about it a lot since then, is I read an excerpt from Mike Walker's book where Jay Leno said, why did we hire this guy? And they were talking about how they thought 
the John was the one who wrote the questions he asked celebrities. And when they found out he has no talent in him at all and no comedic sense, they were outraged that they offered him this job and took him away from Howard Stern because it was a terrible decision on their part. Anyone who works at the Tonight Show will tell you that. And John goes, oh, you can't believe what Mike Walker said. He's a known liar. Meanwhile, Mike Walker was on the Howard Stern Show every week for many, many years playing the Mike Walker game where they would read three stories. You had to pick out the one that was fake. And I don't know if everyone on the Stern Show is buying into the fact that Mike Walker knows a thing or two about behind the scenes in show yeah. business. But not only that, his defense of all of this seems odd because he's like, he, he keeps saying over and over again, he wears it as like a badge of pride of some sort, yeah. where he's like, Jay Leno had nothing to do with my hiring. Right. And it's like, well, isn't that a reason he would be pissed that you were hired? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that plays directly defense. into the narrative that I was <laughs> yeah. presenting. That Jay Leno's like, why did we hire this guy? There was some executive at NBC who really liked him on that reality show he was on and thought he had all this to do with on the Howard Stern show because John Bragg's on, he's a writer, and he writes jokes. And then he gets there, and it's just like, oh, you did none of these things. Okay. Uh, you fell for it. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> no gives these backsies. That's right. I was talking about, we did a creep-off bonus show yesterday that was really fantastic. And I was talking about, there were there's this guy who was pretending to be a veterinarian, and he performed a C-section on a chihuahua. And the chihuahua ended up dying. And I'm like, what a weird thing to pretend you could do. Like, I, I would never do that. But at least like a comedian, you can pretend you're funny and hope you luck into it. You know what I mean? Like, maybe I'll write a joke. Who knows? It's possible. Uh, I'm also a veterinarian. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now he's going to, and this is funny too, because John claims he doesn't go on Dabblers Anonymous. Now we know he's all over Reddit. And so he pulls this clip from Dabblers Anonymous where somebody showed Elisa Giordana's tweet. She tweeted out that she was hospitalized and John owes her all of this money for what <laughs> happened okay. when, uh, when she went to Cape Coral and John blew her off and then they had to get a hotel and they had to pay for all this shit. Plus, just think, if you were, if you, if you were suffering from dehydration, there's no way that you, that's going to cost you, that's going to cost you $2,000. Okay? No way. No fucking way. It's just an intra, intravenous, I've had it done. <laughs> I was it's waiting no for that. 300 bucks. <laughs> is this girl, how crazy is this girl? First of all, Lisa, I'm not paying anything. I didn't tell you to get a hotel. You could have drove home. You guys weren't drunk. And I'm not paying for your fucking food. You would have had to eat anyway. <laughs> what the fuck do you think? I was going to buy your food? You're out of your mind. Yeah. I guess you don't know That's me. That's fair. Yeah. yeah I know. Wow. <laughs> it was kind of funny. <laughs> Sean is the biggest cunt. He really is. So Elise is fucking with him, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And he had, I actually went on his show yesterday because they sent me the link. I went on for a little bit. We'll talk about that. But uh, So he, he showed me that tweet. I go, well, Elisa... She likes attention. She likes fucking with you. That's why she put that out. She doesn't actually expect you to pay 400 bucks for a hotel, 300 bucks for food. And John's so offended by this. Oh, yeah. And I, I love the fact that she wrote that she was hospitalized from dehydration and extreme exhaustion. <laughs> <laughs> because because this falling out with John. It's like, John, you're, why do you believe everything you read? You lie all the time. Do you expect other people to as well? You I, I don't lie digitally. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm sorry to tell you, your exhaustion appears to be terminal. <laughs> <laughs> we thought sleep would help it, but it is not helping it at all. <laughs> all right. So this is funny because John wants to have Cardiff on the show. Because DG's busy this day, I guess. So he Suddenly. thought he yeah. thought Cardiff was going to come on the show right away, and Cardiff was not there. Let me send Cardiff the link one last time, because if he doesn't want to come on, I don't give a fuck. To tell you the truth. But he said he was. He gave me his word. I, when I say I'm coming on a show, I come on. So if he's, if he's not going to honor this request, then that's his problem. When huh. I text you a dollar sign, I mean it. Hold on a second, John. <laughs> you literally decided to not come on my show after Kevin Brennan told you not to. I had to text him that he's a pussy in order for him to turn around in his car, come back and come on the show. And John's like, I'm a man of my word, unlike this Cardiff character. <laughs> yeah. But this is the problem with arguing with John because he would say, "But didn't I come on, Carl?" And it's like, not the point. That's not the point. And that was a month ago. You were dead. <laughs> <laughs> I deal with today. Yeah, yeah. I know you were definitely not going to come on after you promised that you would after we had agreed to you coming on. I I love what John's doing now. 
And I don't know if he'll ever leave the dabble verse now. I think he lives in it now. Because yeah. anyone who's watching a show is giving him money is a WATP listener. And John is so easy to trigger when he reads these comments that come in. Let's see. Mason in Portland, thanks for the five bucks. You're sick, John. When were these crimes against women's side? What crimes, Mason? <laughs> Tell me what crimes. What did I do to anybody? She comes in with a blaring freaking speaker, won't turn it off. The bartender tells her to turn it off. The freaking patrons tell her to turn it off. I tell her to turn it off. She won't turn it off, so I get the hell out of there. Then she comes by my house. That's what any Karen Saloon. would do. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Detroit Dabla, thanks for the five bucks. John, you were very rude to OJ and B. Dabla. You should apologize. They are both beloved Dabla versus OGs. It would be wise to treat them with respect. Fuck you. <laughs> Not treat <laughs> the, f- the Dabblers. The Detroit Dabbler. <laughs> Oh, God. What I love about this is that John got out of this. He was done. And yep. when he left, the devil verse was on life support. It was over. It was Card- out. Cardiff was in tears. It was, it was ending. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean back in November of last year. Oh, okay. I was he, in tears. He ended the devil verse. It was over. Oh, yeah. And now he came back in. And this is where he lives. Like he he brought it back. I, I bought a house here. He brought back the Dabbleverse, <laughs> and now he lives in it, and he can't get out of it. Yeah. He's stuck in the Dabbleverse. It's fucking incredible. He's like reading his comments. He's like, "Fuck you, fuck <laughs> you." Like he doesn't, he doesn't get that people are fucking with him all the time. And then all the shit. Well, then uh, why did Vinny say you, you called his wife a bitch? <laughs> John versus the rest of the world. Yes, <laughs> that's who he needs to team up with. Fuck Zubak. He's gonna team up with Tom Myers. Holy shit. It would be shit. fascinating if you could get a sober John explain it, like, you know, douse him with truth serum or something. Yeah. Get him to explain, because I, he really believed on Tuesday, like, I'm done forever. Yeah. And then by fucking Wednesday, he's, he's back. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. You know what I think happened? I could be wrong about this, because he's left, I think he still has the video up from our conversation on Tuesday on his YouTube channel, and he takes everything okay. else down. But uh, if it's not, you can always find it on our Patreon, patreon.com slash these podcasts. Not the point. The point is, I'm guessing John went back and watched that again and went, holy shit, I look terrible at this. Carl fucking <laughs> got over. So then he's like, well, I have to do a rebuttal episode. And so he did all this research and he did all this stuff. Like One of the big gotcha moments he had, I, I explained to him that intro thing with the walrus guy is stupid because I never wear a flannel shirt. I just wear t-shirts when I'm on my show all the time and I wear glasses. It's not how I look at all. So John's big gotcha moment was he found a photo of me from LinkedIn Mm -hmm. when I used to be like a business professional where I was wearing a flannel button up and I wasn't wearing glasses. And he goes, that's what I sent my guy. That's why he did that. Hypocrite. I'm like, no, John, the point is that people know me from who are these podcasts. You're wearing a flannel shirt and I don't see well. Chris, could you tell me, has he wiped the egg off his face yet? Because it's <laughs> well, pretty it's, embarrassing. It's John <laughs> <laughs> he burned right. you. What I love about what's happening on John's show now, and I'll admit, I did tune into this at some point yesterday afternoon. I am so in John's head. Whenever he goes back to his old mannerisms that I make fun of, he immediately thinks of me and then has to explain <laughs> oh. why he's doing it or call me out or something. I know that Cardiff is trolling me. I know that he is. But I like him. I find him <laughs> funny. You shouldn't. <laughs> so as long as I can troll him back by kicking him out, Although he got a little butthurt. That's not what trolling is. No. Well, hold on a second. So he's he's doing air quotes for the word butthurt right now. Yeah. Got a little <laughs> butthurt. Chicken little syndrome. Carter might just have a life outside the verse. You know, I love when Carlo, oh, he's making fun of me for doing this. Oh, okay. How about this? Me, 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 me. Please. <laughs> Got you again. Got me again on that one. <laughs> but you see how immediately he realized he was yeah. doing the stupid air quote things? Yep. It didn't make any fucking sense. And so he's like, oh, and then Carla, you know, he's also a socks and stuff, right? So take this. Yeah, so take this. I also like the way he's changed the word trolling, where he's like, yeah. you know, I, Car- Cardiff trolls me by making yeah. fun of me unknowingly. I troll him by kicking him off. It's like, I'll also be trolling at the store later. It just means everything. Yeah, trolling yeah, right. is no it's actual the new definition. Cuck. It's a new sycophant. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. All right, so again, I am in his head because as soon as he starts fucking around, he can't run his own show. 
he knows that I'm going to clip this and play it and goof on him. And he's got to get ahead of it. Let me find my history here. Let me see if I can find it. Full history. Where is the vice to show? Oh, look. John wasn't prepared. Oh, this is why we... <laughs> Carla. This is why we goof on John. Because he doesn't... Because he doesn't know how to work stuff. You mean like you? According to Vinnie Paulino, you didn't know what the fuck you were doing. What, what? And then you didn't even know your fucking password that you had to get on. And you were blaming Vince. And you called Vince's wife a bitch. <laughs> so please, oh. you hypocrite. Jesus. A little self-awareness, please, oh, Carla. <laughs> oh, That's a good you one. You can do it. You can Does do he think it, you're Carla. in the room with him? <laughs> yes. A little self-awareness? I think, though. Oh, I know how I can find it. Yeah, let's look. <laughs> Fucking guy. No self-awareness whatsoever. You really broke Just him. because he knows <laughs> technology now doesn't mean he knew it then. Because he didn't know it then. Yeah, obviously. Oh, so he's going to the past? Huh. <laughs> Seems like a hypocrite. He's so stupid. Yeah. Isn't that just how learning things works? Well, like, <laughs> the, I'll explain it, because I don't think you understood the clip that somebody played him from me on the creep off. At Vinny's studio, which is at Comedy at the Carlson, the Wi-Fi fucking blows. It doesn't fucking work. So he is hardwired into the internet with an Ethernet jack. I don't have that for my machine when I'm over there. So I wanted to email him a link... And I couldn't get on the fucking internet. And so I had to get on a different Wi-Fi network I didn't have a password to. And John's going, this guy doesn't even understand how the fucking internet works. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen John in that situation. No shit. No fucking shit. Um, can I just write it down on a post-it note and give it to you? <laughs> is that a good way to give you a link? Can I, I, I'll Venmo it to you. And John is so stupid that... He sees this clip, and Vinny and I were fighting. You know, it's not real, obviously. But we were fighting over me calling out his wife, who's the sweetest person in the world. I love Jess. But it's so stupid because he sees that, and he's like, and then, and then you can't figure out the Wi-Fi password, and you call his wife a bitch? Right. What's that, what's that do with anything? Just, She's a sweet lady. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's he decided ha- halfway through that he didn't have enough. <laughs> yeah, he had nothing. Also, you're a jerk. I'm so, I'm so in his head. It's got to be torturous to run his show now knowing every time he fucks up starts stammering yeah. fucking things up well it could drive a man to drink <laughs> <laughs> let's hope that doesn't happen oh no <laughs> but as a premise it doesn't work because he's saying at one time you didn't know how to run technology even though you do now it's like if oh you think you're good at math well i happen to have your second grade report card here the right. unsatisfactory, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's confirming that you improved exponentially. Yeah. <laughs> Amish Space Force says, Alex Stein worked John pretty hard today. He had to cut him loose. Interesting. So Alex Stein was the guest on Beer on the Balcony because yesterday he didn't have a guest lined up yet. Yeah. So he must have gotten Alex Stein last minute. Oh, I got to watch that. That's exciting. It's a little teaser for the next episode, I suppose. All right. Yes. So apparently John's only income right now, because he's not substitute teaching, He's not doing stand-up. His only source of income right now are WATP listeners who are giving him super chats. Right. Let's see. I'm, I'm sorry. There we go. Let me get to the super chats here. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I tried to call KC today. Cool cut casting. Thanks for the best. You told Carl you wouldn't do hypocrisy police anymore. I changed my mind. Hypocrite. Yeah, right. Am I allowed? Tom Brady said he was retiring and then came back. Is he allowed? Get some furniture. I was just going to say that. <laughs> Fucking reverb is impressive. Or, or do we have to do stick to everything that we say that we're going to do? Do, 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 do. <laughs> it is true. The it's greats right like down, Tom Brady right. and John Melendez. I, know, he just, he just, <laughs> <laughs> I came out of retirement. <laughs> Michael Jordan, Tom Brady, at myself. Least, <laughs> at least Brady got a head coach fired before he came out of retirement. <laughs> this asshole just decided the next day, like, no, you know what? This is the only way I make money. I'm just going to keep doing it. <laughs> I thought long and hard on it. <laughs> <laughs> I consulted with a bunch of people, DG, Cardiff. <laughs> Detroit Dabbler, thanks for left. You didn't. You fight back when Carl was actually there. I did fight back with Carl. I called him out for the Inquirer. Fuck off. <laughs> you kidding me? I, I called him out for so much shit. Look at the super stickers up there. It's 99 cents Canadian. 
and it comes from a person named uh, first name knee second name gears third name news <laughs> <laughs> jack goes oh, i'm not gonna read that good good move jack he's catching up smart yeah i don't like the news <laughs> the word knee rarely leads to good things on your <laughs> youtube channel people are starting to catch out a little bit okay this is the greatest moment i was watching this live and i was like I didn't want to do a John segment today, and then I saw this, and I went, well, I'm going to definitely have to talk about this. So finally, Cardiff joins the show. Or does he? (laughs) It's so obvious this is not Cardiff, and John just fucking falls for it. Cardiff Electric. Hey, Cardiff. Oh, hello, John. (laughs) How are you, pal? Good. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. You sound crystal clear. Oh, good. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, so, let's just say I hope you enjoyed my appearance on your show. Oh, John, it was a work of art. You were great. <laughs> oh, that card. <laughs> I hope, no, seriously, I hope you liked it. No, you were fantastic, John. We loved it. <laughs> what was your favorite moment from that show? Uh, probably when you took a piss. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Because it was fun. <laughs> Got to see your environment and you pissing. <laughs> uh, I thought it was our incredible, you know, you know, I, th- I thought we had great conversation. Yes, we did. I, I, however, John, I did not like how you treated my good friend OJ. Oh, come on. I was kidding. John has the bar set so well. What was your favorite <laughs> part about me being drunk on the stream the other night? And he's like, I don't know, when you took a piss? And John's just like, well, what about the other things, though, too? Do you remember them, John? Do you want to name one? It's just... I got to say, though, the whole time... I, so I actually was also listening to this live. Okay. And the whole time I was like, what am I... What bit is John doing here? Because clearly it wasn't Carter. But I was like, obviously John's playing along. There's no, no way... It, I think higher of him. <laughs> he, has to, he reduces that every day. It's annoying. It was so <laughs> insane because there was that Disco Bob douchebag in the chat... Just in all caps going, that's not the real card. I'm like, what are you fucking? I, I was already, shh. Like, what are yeah, you trying to do here? Out. Like, <laughs> everyone's having fun except for you, retired. What are you doing right now? You forgot to give us homework, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, shut up. We're doing something right now. I just couldn't believe that. Because, yeah, just like you, I'm like, well, that's obviously not. As soon as it came out, it doesn't look like Cardiff. doesn't sound like Cardiff. John, it, I mean, this tells you a lot. And I think that obnoxious John OJ, who's playing Cardiff right here, Figured that John would catch on very quickly, so they didn't know what to do. So right. he finally had to just reveal it to John. How about them Yankees? <laughs> just to let him know. And then I gave you some psychotherapy. It was nothing bad. So I'm, you know, Brian Cloud. It's always nice to see the real Carter. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you have a lot of fans, Cardiff. I know they love me, as they love you, John. <laughs> so what else? So. What else is going on in the Dabbleverse? Great question. Oh, well, John, uh, what is going on right now is you are not talking to Cardiff Electric. Oh, really? No. This is not Cardiff. I am not. Oh. Wow. Yes. <laughs> way, is, uh, way to roll with it. John. <laughs> really? It sounds like Cardiff. <laughs> Does it? No, it no, this is really obnoxious, John. <laughs> oh, that's a great impression. <laughs> nope. No, it's not. You're, you're just adult. Yeah, you're just an idiot. Yeah. You fall for everything. All right. I gotta say, I love the bit, but I really wish Obnoxious John stuck it out for the real Cardiff to come in and say, John, oh. that's an imposter. Yeah. That, you're right. <laughs> Potato Wars. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. John has to murder one and decide which one's real. <laughs> that would have been funny. So you're right. Cardiff does uh, join the show. John's so dumb, we can actually do that. We can still do it. it. Yeah, no shit. He'll fall for it again. Okay, good. Oh, I can be Cardiff too. Oh, hello. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, but have glasses on. (laughs) Have my crooked fucking teeth. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, Cardiff. Oh, hello. Hi, John. (laughs) I thought you were from Minnesota. (laughs) All right. So. Then uh, Cardiff does show up by the show, and so OJ turns into candy corn and an orange and a couple other things. Of course. And then Tukey shows up with the greatest arrival to ever happen on a podcast, in my humble opinion. See, now, Cardiff, OJ, 
I like you two a lot more than this guy. Hey, what's up, my n- <laughs> <laughs> He was going to say ninja. <laughs> when I saw that in real time, I fucking lost my mind. <laughs> now, a quick uh, peek behind the scenes, because Tukey's hilarious. He's the one who kicked himself off, because he set that whole thing up to make it look like... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he'll be live in Detroit with us September 15th, <laughs> WATPlive.com, doing things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking amazing. You know it was Tukey, because there's no way John had that good of timing. No. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, so funny. Okay, so then they, Tukey comes back on, and they pull up that picture of me that John used to base the walrus guy off of, and they decided to play a fun game. And I'm excited to play along with them, but I'm going to do it in my mind. I want to hear what they come up with because they're going to come up with as many jokes about me as they can. So we get to see John's mind, his comedic mind work in real time. Mm -hmm. Let's see what kind of roast jokes he can come up with off the cuff. This is a guy, head writer for the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar roast. This is a guy who wrote Fatty Patty. He wrote Fatty (laughs) Patty off the cuff. Off the cuff. Still can't remember how it goes, which I'll show you in a minute. But (laughs) this this is incredible right here. (laughs) Oh, I was gonna say, how many insults can we come up just based on that photo alone? Okay, let's hold on. Let me find it again. A- and, and Cardiff came up with the idea. John didn't even yeah. come up with the idea. <laughs> and I just want to point out, if people who are watching this right now, this is exactly what Opie turned into. Both yes. John and Opie both turned into talking to puppets yeah. and animation, and letting them run the show, and letting that be the most entertaining show they've ever done. Right. When all of a sudden it's like a fucking potato and a puppet out there, and it's just like, whoa, now we're having fun. Yeah, because you have no fucking talent. Not that I don't mind having these guys on the show. But. Right. <laughs> fun game we can play. Yes, it is. Hold on. I, I got dibs on weak chin. Weak yeah, chin. Oh, that's oh, right. Okay, hold oh. on. Let me get it back. Oh, he got him. That's where I was going to go. Ha! Well, I said it first. now. Okay, hold on. Start thinking, too. It's not. It's easy. This is the easiest game we can play. But he's so handsome. Thanks, dude. Uh, Get rid of this troll. Talk about John. Oh, good. All right, hold on. Hold on. I'm. I'm getting it. Don't worry. Why didn't the kiss? Why didn't the kiss lead to more, John? With me. Oh my god. Why didn't the kiss with Robin lead to more, John? Why'd you stop there? Uh, cause I, I think because I was dating Karen, maybe. Oh, Karen. One too many, John. Karen, Karen. was beautiful. Yeah, but she was a bummer. All right. Now my photo's there up here. Is. Let's go. Here we go. Perfect. And she was no yeah. Susanna. And go. Yeah, he does have a weird chin, doesn't he? It's weak. It's a weak, <laughs> weak chin. Good observation, I have John. Chinless. Hmm? Whoa. Look at the bags under the eyes. Can we, can we focus on the chinless? Uh, let's see. JC Penny. Great hairline. J.C. Penny hamburger, that fucking shirt he must have got from J.C. Penny. I yep. think I, John, I think he got it from J.C. Pennyless. Yes. Whoa. Or and or did he get it from the Gap, which goes with his fucking teeth? Oh. Whoa. There we go. My teeth don't have a gap. Oh, that's not the one thing right with them. So one thing I, I don't have something. It's one thing I don't have going on my teeth is a gap. <laughs> he's just like, yeah, he's got shitty teeth. So there's a gap, right? No. I was watching this at home, and I wanted to be like, come on, you could do better than that. Jesus Christ. All right. There's still more, though. So far, he's coming up with J.C. Penny hamburger. Yes. And uh, I bought it at the Gap. Okay. Let's see what else he's got. Good one. Hacka, We're good hacka. Yeah. <laughs> non-symmetrical, oh non-symmetrical ears. Old non-symmetrical ears, Carl. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's a bootleg shirt. Oh, that's it. Hold on. All right. Oh, um, I have an idea. How about it? Looks like he. Uh-huh. Let's see. This is Hold Chip on. Chipperson. It, what, it, wh- wait, why I is the it. right eye so droopy? Is that where? Holy shit, Mike! You're right. <laughs> you're, this is. Hold on, I got one. <laughs> this is exactly Chip Chipperson. Holy shit! I have to watch uh, that part. He's got a fucking teeth or something. <laughs> yeah. This is. I have to watch this again now. I, I can't believe I didn't pick up on this. <laughs> Or maybe it's a bootleg shirt. Oh, that's it. Hold on. Um, th- how about it? Looks like he. Let's see. Hold on. It, what, it, wh- why is the right eye so droopy? Is that where the forceps grabbed him and ripped him out when he was being born? Cardiff, you gotta let John. 
Leave them hanging out to dry there, dummy. Hey, my chicken just got here. Home Does. run, call me a home run. <laughs> he never came up with anything. <laughs> I love they carved himself that game because he knew he of would course. show that John has nothing. But Cardiff should have just let him. Yeah. Even Tukey knew to just get out of the way on that one. Like, yeah, the yeah. only time dead air is okay. Yeah, that was <laughs> right, the time to right. just let John flail for a minute and see what happens. <laughs> Hold on, it's coming to me, this cocksucker. Uh, I got too many jokes, I can't get them out. <laughs> right, too many, there's too many <laughs> clogging it up. This guy. <laughs> so then John gets KFC delivered to his door. He goes and gets it. He comes back, and now he's finally got his joke for me. He's finally got one. You guys... He has the delivery guy. <laughs> you got any <a> <laughs> <laughs> good lines? <laughs> um, oh, the new Leonard Nimoy is, ho- is hosting In Search Of. This episode, looking for Carl's chin. Um, <laughs> nice. Thanks for the five bucks. You have to love this effing potato. Leonard who? <laughs> Hold on. I got to hear that. I got to hear that one again. He could not spit that one out. It wouldn't have been a funny joke if he did. No. Not even close. No. But he missed this by a mile. Um, oh, the new Leonard Nimoy is, ho- is hosting ah. In Search Of. This episode, looking for Carl's chin. Every joke has been about my chin because Cardiff planted that seed. Yes, the great Leonard Nebai. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Whatever the fuck he said. Wow. Okay, so all of these puppets and animations are fucking with John, and they decide it's song time. And this just gets <laughs> fucking incredible here. <laughs> this is the best episode of Sesame Street. Can we get a four-piece ensemble of Fatty Patty? You ready, buddy? Two, oh, you want me to get my guitar? Three, four. Fatty. 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 Ch- just changing the melody again. He does not know the melody to his own side that he's proud of. He, now he's singing Fatty, Patty. Well, I think this is like part three, like the wall. <laughs> okay, yeah, good point. Right. Yeah. That's a good point. I don't know. I <laughs> think so. You think too much. Can we get a four-piece ensemble of Fatty Patty? You ready, buddy? Two, oh, wait, you want me to get my guitar? Three, four, fatty, 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 fatty. Can we do like a row, row, row your boat? Where some of us start. There we like go. Like we all start yeah, okay. at different times. Uh, fatty, 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 fatty. Actually, fatty. I think we should. I honestly think we should try the row, row boat your thing. Yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> What if we just went like, fatty, patty? No, no. I mean, let's do row, row, row your boat. Oh, okay. Let's just (laughs) do row, row, row your boat. Go, John. Row, row, row your boat. Row, 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 row. No. Uh, John first. We're going in order of celebrity status. So John, John, then me, then OJ, then Tukey. Go, John. You have celebrity status, Carter. <laughs> yes, go, John. You got the joke, John. <laughs> okay. Fat, fatty. No, row, 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 I don't know how to feel. It's the funniest thing that's ever happened on John's show by far. It yes. got even close. Anytime John's pontificating about his career, can we just play that? Clip? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I want you all to listen to what Tukey is, the lyrics that Tukey is singing on this part here at the end. Row, row your boat. Row, 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 row your boat. Merrily, 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 life is a dream. Merrily, merrily, row, row, row your boat. Down the stream. Row your boat. Merrily, 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 life is a dream. John is a drug. <laughs> Tuki gets in so many fucking great lines calling John a drug to his face. It really is I'm a lot of fun. I'm starting to worry Tuki's trolling John now. What? Not Whoa. Tuki. No, Tuki likes John more than a friend. No <laughs> one knows that. Cock sucker. Okay, so I'm in there, and they're talking about Kevin Brennan, and I just put a little uh, post up. I, I just say, FKB. And then John brings it up on the screen, and he goes, is this the real Carl? And... Immediately, it's like, send him the link. He's watching the show. Send him the link. Watch how reluctant John is to send me the link. And he does one of his tells that I've been picking up on recently. Is this really Carla? Mm-hmm. Oh, he doesn't like Brennan. 
He doesn't like Kevin either? Send no. him a link. Who, Carla? I can tell you why. Do you want me what to send is... Carla a link? Yeah, sh sure, but uh, yeah, okay. I want KFC. He's so scared of me. So OJ goes, send him the link, and John goes, oh, who? Right. <laughs> the guy you were just talking, <laughs> talking, about. talking to me? So fucking funny. And then, do you want me to, Carter, do you want me to send him the link? John's like, oh, oh uh, yeah. He is so afraid to talk to me. I guess, but tell him to be nice. <laughs> right. Okay. So then I come on to explain why I'm angry with KB and John should be too. Because obviously it would have ruined our shows that we had together. We had two great shows together, him and I, and KB tried to ruin it. And so I thought this was an appropriate comparison that I made. Okay, so everybody doesn't like Kevin Brandon except for me? Is, is that what I'm getting? You should be pissing them too. Because those two shows that we did together were great. First off, you can, we can all agree on that. And they also put some money in our pockets, John. He tried to fuck it up. But, but Carl, he, he, didn't, he didn't succeed, so I don't care. I mean, I did it. All right, but Hitler didn't take over the world, but he tried to. <laughs> What do, you, what do you mean? You're not mad because he didn't succeed? That's not a good reason. I thought that was a pretty good uh, comparison. KB, Hitler, <laughs> it's a good you know? point, actually. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's the intent that really is the problem here. I'm not saying that KB killed as many Jews. <laughs> Probably wants that, to. Though. Everybody loves the <laughs> we rats. We don't know that he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. Right. We don't know. There right? have been a lot of history books written about KB just yet. <laughs> We're not there yet, so we don't know. So John goes on to talk about my house a lot. Yeah, John this knows is weird. the square footage. He knows how much I paid for it. He knows the difference between what I paid for mine and what he paid for his. He talks about my pool. He talks about the freshwater canal. And my Okay, now I'm just showing off. The point is, is that he explains that his house to my house is exactly 1.4 miles. And I'm like, dude, this is getting weird. And so this super chat shows up. That he does not understand. Oh, nice. Uh, thank you for two bucks, Carl. Check your windows for nose prints. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it means you're peeking into my windows. <laughs> I, no, I just, we just drove by. I was just curious to see how far I was away from you. Stuttering John Strong, thanks for five bucks. Carl's going to end up chauffeuring John around since John is a carless loser. <laughs> okay, so that got really weird when John was talking about uh, all of that. So I'm, en I'm enjoying this what about Bob situation that is orchestrating itself down in Florida. <laughs> you, you got, there's no way he doesn't end up at your house at some point. <laughs> I'm it, not digging it. It's so weird. So producer Chris <laughs> and I are, are going down to my house tomorrow. Yeah. And we've been invited to meet up with John at a bar and he's going to buy us a round of drinks. I don't know if he knows that you're going to be there. That might be one too many drinks for him. to. <laughs> right. <laughs> but well, <laughs> this guy likes tequila. I got going to have to finance this. But separate checks, please. <laughs> yeah, right. We will not be going to that. I brought it up to my wife, and she had this look of horror on her face. I'm like, no, we're not going to go meet up with Josh. She's like, okay, thank God. Yeah, yeah. John, my wife does not I, like you. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but you talked about how I was cheating on her, and then you were flirting with her when you were pretending that that was her in your chat room. Like, you're a creep. Yeah, you're and you fucking, told him all that in confidence. You're a weird fucking creep, John. We don't like you. We don't want to hang out with you. It's not going to happen. And I don't need, he thinks that like a, a round of drinks is the greatest thing anyone could ever accomplish. I'm flying to my new house and I need a round of drinks from Stuttering John. <laughs> anyway, the, my favorite super <laughs> chat that came up during all of this, someone wrote, John looks like doesn't go to the Jim Henson, <laughs> 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 which was hilarious. Um, so I went on to ask John if he would do, because, oh, that was the other thing. John, and I, I didn't want to pull all the clips of me talking to John because it gets very confusing. So I'll just tell you what happened. John goes on to say, because he's let me promote our live show. He goes, Carl, do you want me to go? I mean, if you want to pay me, I'll come to your show. I go, John, it's going to sell out without you. We don't need you there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. But I said, we should do a roast. We did a roast of Carl and Vinny. You could have two different people be the headliners of a roast. Everyone goofs on everyone. And let's do John and Shuley. We'll sell out a theater. It'll be amazing. We'll have the roast of... John and Shuley, and John is such a chicken shit. His response was, oh, I can't be in the same room with Shuley without kicking his ass. I would just have to, I would get physically violent. <laughs> well, he sounded like an animal. Yeah. Yeah, he sounded like an animal when he was saying that. Because he's also a guy that's like, you know, no no violence. And then when you, if you bring that up to him in a month or whatever, he's going to say, I was kidding around. Right. I, I wasn't actually, but he was very serious. Yeah, he's just a chicken shit who knows he can't write a joke to save his life. 
And right. so he just tries to find a way to get out of it. And I even said, I go, well, bring security in. Well, you know, whatever we have to do to make sure that doesn't happen. And he just, <laughs> it's so weird because no one has said more rude things to John's face than me. And for some reason, he's more mad at Shuli than he is at, at me for some reason. He's like, it's like I would do a roast with you, but not, not Shuli. Okay. Well, also, can I can you answer this for me? Does yeah. Shuli say that he was more successful on the Stern show than John was? Like, think, does Shuli make that claim that he had more of an impact on Stern? He doesn't. He did because say John's something. John's very hung up on that. I know. He did say something once that rubbed John the wrong way. I can't remember exactly what it was because that was part of the hypocrisy police. Okay. That but, he paid his dues. <laughs> but John seems <laughs> yeah, to think. That. John seems to think that Shuli was treated differently. Shuli had to go through Gary Delabate in order to get into the studio. And it's just right. like the rules changed with Marcy Turk. It's a very different atmosphere there. And John seems to think that he could just run into the studio anytime he wants and, and get on the microphone. And that would certainly not be the case in today's Howard Stern world. That's not how that works at all. You don't think he could walk in the studio today? He might have a little trouble. I think he might have a little bit of trouble <laughs> yeah. trying to pull that off. Oh, the other thing that happened on the show is John goes, why do you think I didn't ask OJ to sign my knife? Because I've, yeah. I've made that statement. John brags about this. I go, because you didn't, John. You, you haven't talked to OJ since after the double homicide. Because OJ wasn't doing red carpet events after that. He, he wasn't right. going out in public and looking for people to fuck with him. And John's insistent that it happened. He goes, all right, what if I can find the tape of me asking OJ to sign my knife? I said, 100 bucks. Okay, 100 bucks. So then he's looking, he's scrolling around, he's searching Google and stuff. It's so funny because at one point, Tukey's going... John, this isn't a show. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you, what's going on right now? I was like, hold on, hold on. He's texting with me. He's texting with... He's looking for this video. He can't find it. So then he calls Doug Goodstein and puts him on speakerphone. He goes, Doug, didn't I ask OJ to sign my knife? And Doug goes, yeah, you did, John. He's like, see, I told you. So then John starts texting me. He's like, Doug Goodstein just said it happened, so you owe me $100. I said, no, no, no. The bet was. <laughs> the bet was. And Doug even said, he goes, I wasn't there. But yeah, that did happen. So Doug wasn't right. even there for us. Richie Wilson was there, according to John. Also, John's probably told Doug the story 10,000. So in Doug's memory, he's like, right. yeah, I think so. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. If I can get out of talking to you any further, yeah. I will agree with you. What's going to wrap this up, John? Yes? Is that what you want? <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> Bye. Wasn't I the king of late night? Yes, John. You were the king of late night. Can I, can I go? <laughs> I, my, my, my kids are hungry. Yeah. <laughs> so it's I have a family. <laughs> right. So then John just like, Oh, okay. You're gonna uh, try to get out of the bat. Well, you know, I guess you need the money more than I do, which is so laughable. I'm just like, okay, didn't, didn't even respond to that. But John's already trying to change the bat, and now pe- the people in the chat after that were going, "Well, if you can't find the video, but Doug said you did do it, then maybe you owe Carl fifty, and he owes you 50. And John's like, "Yeah, that seems right." <laughs> That's how bets work at all. Swap Venmo's. <laughs> so, fucking stupid. so I don't know what's going to happen with that. I'm still waiting for the video to be produced. But John thinks that if he gets Richie and Doug to agree with him, that I owe him a hundred dollars is what he thinks is sure. going to happen. But he also owes yeah, me a run of drinks. So I don't know where that's all going to net out. Even Steven. Oh my God. That was the other thing he said to me. He's talking about this bar that he goes to. That he's all excited. About. So you got to meet me at this bar. They have live music. And, and Carl, I was trying to leave. He goes, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. They have Michelob Ultron trapped. <laughs> what? Yeah, can I? What was that? Is he calling you a lady? Because that's a lady's beer, or what? What? I didn't understand why he told you that. I don't know. <laughs> do you drink that? I do. I like Michelob Ultron. Okay, I, I like calorie. that as well. But yeah. does he know that about you? I don't know. I don't know why he told me that. <laughs> I've been to a million bars that make Ultra on draft. It's very popular. It's not like it's sure. something where it's just like, you won't believe what they have on draft. There. The draft selection is amazing. They have Bud Light, Mick Ultra, Coors. I can't, no, I know. Every place I've been to has these things. <laughs> Every beer under the sun. <laughs> right. It so. felt like I was missing something because he told you as if like, Carl, the search is over. Yeah. <laughs> we, can, we finally found a place. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was some of the weirdest shit, that whole interaction. But uh, anyway, it was uh, it was very polite. We didn't engage. We didn't get into it. I told Johnny kicked my ass on that last uh, show that we did, so he'd feel better about himself. Good. Yes. So everyone is uh, feeling good about themselves. All right. You want to uh, get into some stuttering, John? I would love to. <laughs>
Gagia. Stuttering John, the man who left the Dabbleverse and then returned less than 12 hours later. He, uh, he announced his exit and then uh, was on a show. Uh, I believe it was Hypocrisy Police bashing Carl no less than 12 hours later. Really, really shitting on him. Uh, Stuttering John is the gift that keeps giving. Some of this is going to be dated because we're doing this is not live, obviously, everyone. Uh, so some of this is a little dated, and I decided to uh, go through the uh, Hypocrisy Police episode, the uh, Skull versus the Troll, where Carl and Stuttering John, this is the second one, this is the second episode where Stuttering John and Carl uh, went head-to-head and uh, argued a couple points and uh, bonded at times. And uh, at the end of the episode, spoiler alert, looks like when uh, Carl and... and uh, stuttering john are in where are they where do they live again cape coral yeah uh they're gonna grab a beer possibly as early as today oh boy Mm -hmm. (laughs) now does this ruin the stuttering john thing like because when they go at each other uh you know as we're gonna see some of these clips when they go at each other now it seems like there's there isn't that that uh vitriol that they used to have for each other you know carl doesn't go as hard at him stuttering john is like treats it like a joke kind of like i don't know maybe the meeting wasn't a good thing no i i would definitely say that it wasn't a good thing for for all the reasons you just said there's <clears throat> so carl didn't follow his own rule observe and report that's what you're supposed to do not observe and then go drink beers with them and hang out and and then come back and talk about it mm-hmm yeah, so we're, we're going to see where this takes the double verse then, because Stuttering John is very, like, I'm assuming he's not going back to teaching, uh, if for no other reason than he totally fucked himself. He, I, I saw something where he was telling people that the trolls reported him and it was going to be a problem to go back to teaching and all this other shit, but it's like, look, this is one of those situations where Stuttering John was so wasted and so, like, saying such outlandish shit that you're like, should he be, or, I mean, I, I would never report him. But like, if he were my kid's teacher, I would at least get my kid uh, transferred out of that classroom, <laughs> you know, at the very least, because I'm like, I don't want this guy around my kids. I mean, if not for no other reason than his fingernails alone, you know, his hygiene is uh, questionable. <laughs> questionable so, at best. Yeah. So, um, so like I said, this is Skull versus the Troll. This would be uh, the second part. The first part was a lot of john shouting over carl and uh not letting carl get points out this is kind of similar except by the end of this i felt like there is a chance that john is evolving that john has seen the error of his like hardcore democratic it's the dems versus the republicans us versus them mentality uh canceling everybody that kind of shit because I think for once there are moments where John becomes self-aware and is like, Ooh, I did that too. And what I'm railing for is something that could come back to bite me in the ass perhaps. So maybe (laughs) I should soften my stance, you know? So, uh, in clip one, uh, John name drops a major celeb. He's now friends with, but can we get into this? Because, uh, you started off with some name dropping with Vinnie Paulino. Very That's cool. Name dropping. Nobody knows who Vinnie Paulino is. Oh, he's a pretty big deal. Let's not lie. That's name. I mean, no offense, but that's name dropping. <laughs> no, <laughs> no offense to Vinnie Paulino. Now, my question is because I was aware of some of the things that were going to happen in this episode prior, because Vinny said that you know, like I knew that Vinny met uh, Stuttering John on Cardiff show, I believe it was, and they became fast friends, and then. Uh, as we'll find out, Vinny has been in touch with Stuttering John. So what does this mean for Carl in terms of like his friendship with Vinny Paulino? Can now that Vinny's feeding information and photos and all kinds of and basically doxing Carl to Stuttering John? It, what does this so, mean for their friendship? What does this mean for the creep off? The the only thing I know, I haven't watched this this video. The only thing that I know is somebody put a screenshot up. I think it was in the WATP subreddit of Carl's face when he realized Vinny double-crossed him or whatever. 
Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that's what this is in reference to. I didn't know Vinny sent over a bunch of information or anything. Yeah, Vinny sent sent some information over that was helpful to Stuttering John. And uh, Stuttering John definitely wanted to, or uh, Carl, Carl's expression was like, oh, fuck. What like, I think he, his, his feeling was like, well, what else did he send them? What else did he tell them? And, and did Vinny just do that? Just so we would talk about it essentially. I know. I, I, I think, I think Vinny did it unprompted. He didn't even know about this. I don't think. No, I just meant us as in fans, oh, of, oh, the fans of the show. Oh, uh, perhaps, perhaps. I mean, it's a pretty funny move. Is if it? you don't mind betraying <laughs> your friend <laughs> it is kind of funny because like where else is started well if stuttering john did any homework he would have been able to find certain things and you know some something like this uh the, the name dropping uh in cl- my clip number two we definitely see or at least assume that john is a not rich and b is willing to sell out for minimal cash Tell you something. Yeah. Your good buddy, um, Pocky. Yeah. He, uh, you know, I provided them with a lot of his, a lot of his racist nonsense. Okay. And, and they paid me an extra three hundred dollars. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> he freezes and never actually finishes the thought. But my, um, my feeling was wait a second so these are things that you wouldn't have said unless you were paid money now i know in movies it's like there's a bump for like uh, say an actress is like hey we need you to show your boobs in this scene there's a nudity bump you get a little bit of extra money so is that the way tv operates as well like for three if we give you three hundred dollars you can say out loud all the shit that now this is on this is i'm sorry this is from a vice special that i just watched last night it's called the dark side of the 2000s i saw it on youtube and it's all about like the radio war stern versus Debella versus mark and brian versus opium and anthony and uh stuttering john was a talking head on it and at one point at towards the very end he starts talking about anthony's racism which if anybody follows anthony on twitter you know what anthony says so like it's not like john had this like inside He's not uncovering track. anything. No, no, not at all. <laughs> and then uh, I said, you know, why would they, I thought, why would they need John to expose this on camera? And it's the reason is very simple because he's a fucking idiot. And they knew that for a minimal cash, he would do it. And he has to get in at the very end. I, I didn't pull, I couldn't pull the clip because I don't know how to rip fucking video from YouTube because I'm ignorant. Um, but at the very end of the clip, he's talking about Anthony and being racist and all this stuff. And he's like, and he made fun of my trans kid. And then the clip ends. <laughs> but like he had to get it in there that he made fun of his trans kid. And that's uh that actually made me laugh. That was the funniest thing that John said the entire time. Um I don't I I, I don't get stuttering John like jumping on anthony for this shit like when there's plenty of examples of john saying things that like today are not acceptable but throughout he copes like steel toe throughout this entire episode he copes he's like well that was then this is now but if you were ever to sit there and listen to his political show all that matters is what you used to say or what you said the jokes you made all that shit you know not if it's not if it pertains to you (laughs) then it's then you get a pass yes well i think i think more and more people are like okay so john you were on tv for this long or you were on stern for this long and you said plenty of shit and you did plenty of shit that like by today's standards would be deemed unacceptable so you know what do you say about that and he has no answer so in in as we'll see many times throughout the uh, this video uh, he'll talk over Carl. He'll 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 interject with super chats, like or he doesn't remember or he forgets. And there's a there's a clip later on where I say, uh, you know, the chat. There's a chatter who calls him out for um, for not remembering or saying that he was joking. And if you know John, it's like he remembers every fucking compliment anyone ever gave him since the second grade. But like sh- his screen names from Reddit from a couple months ago, his burner accounts, those he can't recall. 
jokes he made a couple of years ago. Those he can't recall, you know? Yeah. I don't remember. It, it would be best. Like, so one, you shouldn't uh, position yourself to be holier than thou, right? No. Be a and, shithead. Then no one right. expects anything from you. Right. But when, when his, his entire left leaning stance was that everybody else is racist and everybody else is this or that knowing what his history is like it's not that hard to dig up him saying stupid shit trying yeah. to get a laugh and it, it, my opinion is that's what he should say instead of saying i i don't remember saying that he should say yeah i thought it was funny that, and just move on mm -hmm. my, my views have changed i thought it was funny i don't know go fuck yourself quit digging up old shit yeah, but the but the going back and trying to justify and defend and like it was the show. That's the way the show was. It's like Stern, you know, Stern being like, I was I was out of my mind at that time. It's like that still doesn't fucking excuse using the <laughs> N word. I don't care how out of your mind you were. If everyone else has to answer for it, why doesn't Stern have to answer for it? You know, and I don't think anybody should have to answer for that kind of shit from the past anyway, because we all know, you know, like I said it not too long ago on some other on a different podcast. But I'm like, you know how I know those times were better because I lived through those times and I've lived through these times and these times, as far as like censorship and PC stuff fucking suck, you know? So it's like, you can't sit there and be like, it's better today when you're fucking 20 years old and have no context for the way things used to be. Right. You know, where people didn't freak out over every little joke. And I'm not saying like run around, use the N word freely or whatever. I'm just saying like, let's, let's all not get so offended at shit at every little fucking thing, you know? And then that's what stuttering John was kind of like putting forth is like being offended at every little thing when he was a guy that was making offensive content nonstop. And, and uh, I'm not uncovering anything new, but it, I don't think that there is an ounce of John that has ever been offended by anything that he's claimed to be offended by. It's he needed a stance he ne and he was trying to proposition himself as uh, a leader of the left, so to speak. And he, he mm -hmm. needed a, a platform to stand on. So, and it was the easiest one to to jump on at that point because everyone's agreeing with you. Like you know, he he has that echo chamber where he says like he, this about Trump, and then you know, like he still talks about Trump. It's amazing. It's like the guy has not been president in how long? He's not going to be president again. We all know it. So like, just who gives a fuck anymore? It's boring. It's boring, man. But that's his like that. I guess that's how he thought he was going to make a couple bucks because he was well positioned. He has the trans kid, and I think another one of his kids is gay, so he can really jump on the woke movement and act like you know none of this shit he said in the past ever happened. To the point where he's still to this day like you know what he went out with Elisa Giordani, he's telling her that she gained weight and all this other <laughs> shit. And it's like, dude, what the fuck? You don't you don't say that to anyone. But like, if you think that somebody isn't going to judge you as a misogynist for like, after a woman won't give you a kiss, you're like, well, you're getting kind of fat. It's like, <laughs> what the fuck? Dude? Okay. So I, I just gained a little bit of respect for John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He wanted to peck up. He was very upset that he didn't get a kiss from Elisa Giordano because he knew her and they were friends. I, there are women I've known for decades. And when I see them, I'm like, Hey, maybe a hug kissing though i don't know that's the way we do it in the pub that's what he says uh my clip three is uh john cannot figure out why carl is successful you said you don't know why i'm successful at podcasting no i know why you're successful oh because you said you, you didn't understand so do you know no, why why is that oh no. i understand because you're obsessed with me oh okay weird because i'm the famous one okay i mean you don't have any real fame i mean all, all you have is this Dabbleverse fame, that's about it. Yeah. Now, there's a couple things in there. John still considers himself famous, which is insane. Famous to me means that, like, if I tell, if I say to my parents who are in their 70s, like, hey, did you hear what Stuttering John said? They'd be like, who the fuck is Stuttering John? If I said, hey, you know Tom Hanks? Yes, they know Tom Hanks. And I know there's varying degrees of fame, but I would not call Stuttering John famous anymore. He has not been famous in some time. Uh, but like guys like Stuttering John, like he reminds me, he it, that really reminded me of a discussion I had with Kevin Brennan once. I went down to see uh, Chip, Chip Chipperson down in Philadelphia and a bunch of compound people there. It's when Kevin was still a compound. And uh, 
I guess he must have looked me up and he saw how many Twitter followers I had. And he's like looking at me like I'm a different species because he hadn't heard of me before. He didn't know, like wasn't familiar with Tell Him Steve Dave or Comic Book Men or any of that shit. And like there's a certain type of person and, and they and KB is the same way in as much as like they're consumed with how much money you're making, how popular you are. And I feel like, why am I not? doing that why am i not making that much? like it's it's a strange mindset because i don't look at other people like i don't look at fucking joe rogan or any number of podcasts carl you anybody i'm like why am i not doing the same thing that doug is doing or that carl is doing or that joe rogan is doing it's like i don't know i, I don't know like, I, like it's not i don't see it as a competition like people naturally gravitate towards shows and then they you know, like they hear, you know, they hear me on, uh, on who's right. And then they're like, Oh, I, I never even heard of tell them Steve, Dave, let me, let me check it out. And like, that's how you sort of grow your audience little by right. little. And, and to tell you the truth, I'd never go back to that, that, that email you said that you sent thanking me for coming. I, I don't recall ever getting that. <laughs> and i would definitely come back on. I would definitely come back on. Yeah, so I, I'm saying um, that for the record. So, so going back to your earlier point, one of the the things in my professional life that I have found help me out. And I've said this multiple times is never count somebody else's money. You just worry about your own deals. You worry about your own uh, employment, your own, the deal you make with your employer. When you get a job, don't worry about what anybody else is making. Don't worry about anybody else's follower count. None of that bullshit. Just focus on your shit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see how it really matters. You know, it's like, obviously, like any number of us would be like, man, it would be sweet to have Rogan's numbers. Of course it would be. But it's like, that's never going to happen. Not in this lifetime. So like, why even think about it? Why, why worry about it? But I feel like that's, that's Aaron's mindset. Aaron thinks oh. that he could get those numbers up to a point where like, he's, he's a, a Rogan type. It's just so I don't big, know. Is he arrogant or is he delusional? I, I can't tell. It's, bit just, it's just I think it's big. Big broadcasting is holding Aaron down. That's what it is. <laughs> that could be it. You're right. I hadn't considered that possibility. <laughs> uh, let's see. Number four is another example of Stuttering John dismissing stuff. When Stuttering John doesn't have an answer, I like to like I, I watched this twice. I watched it when it, when uh, when they first when it first came out. And then I had to rewatch it to, pu to pull the clips and stuff. And um, the second time, I really watched John's face a lot. You can tell a lot by his eyes. Like, watch Stuttering John's eyes in any number of these clips. Jesse Blinkman, thanks for five bucks. Why does John's tonight show my, that Jay Leno use have a price tag on the bottom? I don't know. That's, <laughs> I don't think it's a price tag, is it? Is that a price tag? I don't know. You probably bought it at the store. No, no. That was, that was in the Souvenir problem. shop. Now, if it is a price tag, or let's say if it isn't a price tag, wouldn't you say it's not a price tag? Not is that a price tag? <laughs> and how long has it been since he was on the Tonight Show? Like I can't remember when. I mean, it's been a good eight years at least. He either hasn't used the mug once, which we know isn't true because we've seen it before, um, or he's never washed it or he bought it recently and is saying that it's a, uh, saying that it's one that, that Leno used. Now I know this is like, this is minutia. This is tiny, stupid shit, but it's, it's important to point out like John's first of all, John can says he went to NYU. Right. And he, and I think later on he brags about it. Like, you know, cause Carl says something about him not using his NYU education. If he went to NYU for film and, and TV production, why does he look so shitty? Why does he look so terrible in every single fucking stream that he does? Maybe this is him looking, maybe this is him with make, makeup on. Maybe he looks worse oh. <laughs> uh, without the NYU stuff on him. Wow. That, that would be something. I, again, I hadn't considered that as a possibility. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure if, if what you said earlier holds true and Carl and, and John get together and have a beer, I'm sure we'll hear about it. Uh, that I would, yeah, that I would like to, could, could Carl jump the shark by agreeing to go out for a beer with stuttering John? Yeah. Yeah. I think he would. Yeah. We're gonna have to text him after this and tell him whatever he does. 
Don't fucking accept that invitation. They're going to get too chummy. Nobody needs so, a chummy Carl and Stuttering John. Here, I, I think as a WATP listener, maybe that's fine. They do their, their shows together. But from now on, just take Stuttering John off of WATP. Like it's don't do that segment. Yeah, yeah. The, the, there's there's a story arc, and we're at the bottom of it. Yeah, I got to hand it to Carl though. He hasn't like really gone soft or pulled punches on John. Like he asks some some hard questions. John just doesn't answer them. That's the problem. Uh, let's see. So my next clip. Uh, John believes his writing contributed to his fame. What what number is this? This would be clip five. All right. What do you write for, Carla? I, I write for four different podcasts that I host. Yeah, so- okay, podcast. Okay. Yeah, there's a barometer <laughs> of fame. Let's John, see. talking about the past is not doing you Hello, any favors. Scott. I don't know how you're not figuring this out. Oh, really? I, was just, I just did the CBS roast. <laughs> now, there's a couple <laughs> things in there that, like, I was shocked that Carl did not bite on. I just did the CBS roast. Because that's not something that I've heard before. From Stuttering John. I don't know what the CBS roast is. I don't know when it was. It seems recent. Uh, again, this is in John's head talking about what he did 20 years ago as a barometer of fame, as he said. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, you got podcast fame. But John, John, what John doesn't understand is like when you say Stuttering John, nobody thinks about him from The Tonight Show. Nobody. It's always uh, Howard Stern, which right. means that people are thinking him from over 20 years ago. Yeah, but it, again, as John has recognized, the times are different now. Having mm-hmm. podcast fame kind of means something, right? So Carl has, is making his living podcasting. That's because Carl has a fuck ton of listeners. Yeah. Carl can go anywhere in the country and sell out anything Probably even sell out a biker bar if he wanted to. Oh, <laughs> WTP at <it's> Stoney's. <laughs> I would probably go to that. That You'd would be interesting. Right? <laughs> Me, you, and uh, what was his name? John. Yeah, John. Get front row seats. Uh, let's see. This, this, my clip six is uh, more Carl based, but this is an example of uh, one of the many times that. Uh, John cuts Carl off to read Super Chats, and it's Carl's expression here that, that made me laugh. Let me just point this out, because I, I, remember I, when I, there was a video of you from I only Pickwick... know who you are, John, because of Carl. Yeah, of course. <laughs> talks about me nonstop. Are you He's fucking there. kidding me? <laughs> and then so, so many times throughout the show... Um, Carl will ask him to stop cutting him off, and John will counter with like, "But you told me to read super chats. How am I supposed? How are we supposed to get through the super chats if I can't read them?" Uh, many, many times he does this, and it, it's it's humorous every time. I, I again, I don't know if he's doing it on purpose or if he's fucking with Carl or he's just that fucking bad at it. But it's oh, uh, I, I think it's just that he's that bad at it, right? So trying to do a live show and keep up with the super chats. Is very hard. You you almost just have to have a a super chat oriented show where it's you read one, you respond to it. You read one, respond to it. Right. Or be really good at transitioning and finishing your your thought and then putting the super chat up and referencing it and then moving on. But to try to do both things simultaneously, where you're answering somebody's question and then the person that asked it interrupts you to <laughs> read a super chat <laughs> is probably not the right recipe. Yeah. Uh clip seven we kind of uh we kind of covered already. This is the one where I said uh this is uh where John jokes and can't remember selectively. Hey, Rob, I put five bucks. Every time John gets exposed and all I was a joke. No, I just can't remember yeah. it. No, I can't remember. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you remember it or not. You were threatening a mob hit on someone. You did it to me too. Yeah, yeah and I was kidding and you know I was. <laughs> this is when he was uh they talk about it a little bit where john uh threatens a mob hit on somebody and then four hours later said he was just kidding and that he had been hanging around with john Gotti jr too much and i guess john Gotti jr's or john Gotti's grandson uh wrote in and or or contacted uh 
to contact him was contact or tweet tweeted something and said that uh he was like look stuttering john does not know my uncle that well that he should be dropping his name they met twice something like that <laughs> and then you know stuttering john goes on he's like but i hung out with him right did i hang out with him it's like yeah but you shouldn't be i mean to drop a fucking mob guy's name is probably not a great idea in general my, my uncle was at a has been convention and took a picture with him that's about as far as it went right yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah stuttering john saw him approach him on the street and was like yo john can i get a picture um clip eight i only want to play for one reason and you'll uh oh you'll dude, finish. It once it... <laughs> 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 i figured I, everybody I wanted to cut you off there with the clip no, that's okay. Everybody wants to see Carl in the cowgirl outfit again. So, sent you this, huh? Okay, you, so, okay, <laughs> everybody. So, yeah. This, so, okay. What? Okay. Now, if Carl's <laughs> supposed to be hetero, why is he dressed up Formulate like a cowgirl? Your thoughts, everybody. <laughs> so, if Carl is hetero, because John is convinced that Carl is gay, his um, his evidence is that Carl has wood paneling. And Carl doesn't have any children. Uh, so far, he he's he called him effeminate for the first time on MLC uh, the, when they appeared together the first time. Um, I don't understand why John having the trans kid and possibly the gay kid is constantly using gay as a pejorative. Yeah, it, I, I was going to say that, and I was going to preface it by saying I, I've heard multiple people say the same thing. But to... To sit there and say that you're not allowed to make fun of my trans kid or my kid that's gay, and then use that exact same thing as an insult, which apparently I just learned is a pejorative. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, like a negative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, I think it just shows how fucking dense he is. I think he's got wet brain. I, I think he has wet brain. I think he has, um, and we all laugh at him, but he, I do believe he has a serious personality disorder. Like nobody, somebody, I saw somebody in the chat suggested histrionic personality disorder, uh, which yeah, he definitely has some of the uh, hallmarks of it. I mean, the guy constantly needs attention. He's constantly a victim or making something up or some bullshit, you know, so it's, it's entirely possible. Um, and again, just wanted to make sure everybody saw Carl in that cow bikini. Although like he refers to him as a cow girl, which is weird because I don't know any <laughs> cow girls who dress like that. <laughs> And, and, and he tries to steamroll through it, even though Carl is like, you know, that's, um, that's, uh, shit. I just totally lost my train of thought. So I'm crossing off my, I'm crossing off my notes here. So that, couldn't... That, am I correct that that was a consequence from the creep off? Yes, that's a, yes, that's exactly the point. That was a consequence from the creep off. And Carl tries to explain that, but stuttering John just steamrolls him and calls him gay and, you know. I mean, the, the world is, uh, especially pop culture, is rife with examples of, of men who dressed as women for whatever reason, and they're, turns out they're, they're not gay. Turns out so, Uncle Milty is straight. <laughs> you know? I, I would counter and say the best example that I could come up with of Carl, that I think Carl is gay, is him backing out of the Gary, Indiana consequence. <sighs> so gay that the only reason I said I would take the ride with him is because I'm convinced he'll give me roadhead on the way there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So you're just in it for what, what you can get out of it then. I get it. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking a page <laughs> out of Steel Toes book, you know. <laughs> Whatever relationship I can make work, that's what I'm going to do. Um, clip nine, John is caught in a lie. And again, this is another one of those situations where you have to watch his eyes. Like watch John's eyes during this clip. Has every room in his Florida house furnished, you hack? That's yeah, true. That's he, he bought it three months before me. I have three beds in my house, one for each bedroom, John. You yeah. should try that. Yeah. I, I just, I've only been here two weeks, you dumb fuck. Go ahead. Two <laughs> weeks, John? You've been, you've been in your house in Florida for two weeks. You right. know that's not true. Why do you say shit like that? We what know the exact date that you closed on the house. And when we closed? Dummy. Yeah, but you've been there before you are there now. What? <laughs> why, did, why did he pick up his uh, rescue dog shirt? Like that he, was going to shut he, him up. He keeps doing that because when he first had his hypocrisy police shirt, 
whenever somebody was hypocritical, he was lifting it up. <laughs> he said that he had bought two. People were like, let's see the second shirt on camera. He never showed it. Then he stopped wearing the hypocrisy police shirt altogether and just wears different shirts. But if he feels somebody's being hypocritical, he still does this. <laughs> it's muscle memory <laughs> in the I, middle I, of an I, argument. I you just say, so. pick a rescue dog. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, his his eyes in that were so like, like he he's he said like we didn't get to see Aaron when he got busted by April lying about the the story that he shared with his friend, but you can see John here and like you see like his his he's like, what huh? Like <laughs> what? leaning forward. What what friend? What yeah. story? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, another situation which, where where John is obviously lying. Carl calls him out on it. And he won't just be like, all right, you know what? Uh, maybe I exaggerated. It's, it has been. because he doesn't want to say, I don't have the fucking money to buy beds or turn the lights on or whatever the fuck. Because if, as you, I didn't pull any clips from it, but uh, at the very end of this, uh, this show, it, it's John's almost invisible. It's so dark in his house. I think he was relying on natural light. And so as it got a little bit darker, like you can't really see anything in the house. So I guess he has no lights or anything. It's a uh, strange way to do business. Uh, and, and don't you think it would be much more entertaining and interesting if he was just to be 100% honest? Like, look, I made some bad choices. I thought I was set up financially for the rest of my life. I played my cards wrong. And now I'm struggling to keep my lights on. Like just being real, it would it would it would take away a lot of the the uh, haters, as they say, or the trolls. Yeah, because then they wouldn't have anything to to come at them with. But guys like John are so ego driven that like it would be impossible for him to admit some sort of shortcoming or personal flaw or personal failure, you know, it's, it's very, very difficult for guys like that to say like, yeah, I fucked up or I should have banked some of that tonight show money, you know? Um, there's a, an ongoing thing too, with, uh, Artie and John, like, you know, Artie sa- or John says that he's friends with Artie. John has said some like uh, stuff that I feel you can't take back, you know, like telling Artie to kill himself right. and, and all that other shit. Like if I was Artie, I would never speak to John again. And then uh, there's a guy, Dan Filato, who I think was Artie's producer when he was doing the Artie show. It, 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 he wasn't with Artie and Anthony. It was just the Artie's, Artie's podcast. And um, there's a situation in which Stuttering John comes on and I guess he made some jokes about his trans kids. And Dan Filato was like, hey, do you want me to yeah. Yeah, kill that? Right. So you, yeah, everybody pretty much knows this story do you want me to kill that segment? And, uh, John said no. And then the next day was like, Hey, you can't play that. My family will be mad at me, blah, blah, blah. And now stuttering John is saying that Dan Filato is an enabler. So I'm like, uh, you know, John accuses Dan Filato of, of being an enabler. And then this, what number is this? That's a uh, clip 10. Ridiculous what? with the amount of work that all of these guys did to try to help Artie. And you're the only person who would show up to Artie's house with a case of beer. This guy is supposed to be trying to get better and go into rehab. You were the only one. You were drinking beer in front of him. He was drinking too. No, everyone's trying to get, oh, so you were enabling him that. If you were bringing beer over and he was drinking it, he's trying to get sober at this time. No, he wasn't drinking my beer. I I thought he was drinking Jack then, no? (laughs) No. As if Carl would know. (laughs) (laughs) That was one of the big reasons I pulled that clip was because I'm just like, uh, like our, he's definitely enabling. He first he says he wasn't drinking my beer, not the point, John. <laughs> the point is that if you have a prop, a person around you that you say is your friend and you and you consider them important in your life, and they have a substance abuse issue, you do not do any substances in front of them that may like trigger them or make them want to fucking, you know, join you in the beer. But, but him asking, he's like, you was drinking Jack. Like again, stuttering John's selective memory where he's like, I don't remember. He was drinking Jack. Do you remember Carl? Of course you would remember. Wouldn't you (laughs) like, what the fuck? It makes no sense. And then my clip 11 is uh, basically a continuation from clip 10. Uh, Instead of addressing John being the enabler again, he cuts Carl off and Carl's expression is perfect. Gosh, is, is there drugs around here? And they're, they're trying everything they can to keep drugs away from this guy, but they can't help it. He's an adult. He's going to do that. Oh, okay. But if you know okay. what Colin okay. Quinn and Bob Levy and Danny Filato did. 
telling John Melendez. They tried father, multiple times, John. As a child of an alcoholic father. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the looking off like mother fucker. <laughs> yeah, I, I've recorded with Carl enough to know. <clears throat> you, so you know how you can you can read him, right? When he's ready to move on. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about this episode? You know, it's that <laughs> he, right. his face is very easy to read. And that face that he was making right there was, I'm, I'm out of this business. I've got to get out of this. This is not what I wanted. I want to change my life. I want to get out of podcasting. I want to go back to marketing. I'm, I'm done with all of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 like when I was marketing, I didn't have to deal with stuttering John. Uh, clip 12 again, stuttering John pretends that he cannot remember something. You're a little razzled because you know, this episode exists somewhere. I don't know. We track it down. When we track it down, your family's not going to be too pleased with you, my friend. It, it was me. on. And that's the fucked up thing. Cause I don't really care. I'm not a tattletale, but the fact that you go on there and talk about everyone bashing your kids and how terrible that is. And really you're the one who was doing it. It's insane to me. It's so hypocritical. On our, on our show. On our like show. podcast, yep. I don't remember it at all. But yeah, well, you were pretty what drunk. Were making jokes about you were pretty drunk. Well, you're you were making jokes about people missing certain private parts and things like that. So, well, it must have been a long, long time ago then. Oh yeah, long, long time ago, back when you were in your like early fifties. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty good line. Um, and and stuttering John again just justifying it by being like it must have been a long time ago so it's okay for him to make fun of trans people and again like how long has your kid been trans didn't they didn't they transition rather recently like within the past seven years six years and and again like i've said enough shit on my show that i mean i've had people throw it back in my face and it's like i thought it was funny I'm not going to apologize for anything that I said. I went for a joke and missed. Don't know what to tell you. Yeah, that's. I think people, many people don't understand. Like when you sit there and talk for hours and hours and hours of your life, like you're going to say some shit you shouldn't have said. You're going to say some shit you regret you said. You're going to say some shit you thought was funny and then you're like, ah, it wasn't really funny. But <laughs> you just move on. It's just the way it goes, you know? Uh, also, I want to tell Carl the uh, word is uh, frazzled, not razzled. <laughs> <laughs> so, so next time uh this is a stuttering john coping taking a page out of steel toes book uh, that would be clip 13 oh yeah that was i, I stopped doing that it, it isn't appropriate anymore when did you stop doing it two years ago no about 10 years seven years ago that's a lie Six. all right that's another lie Why? how long ago it, it was a couple years ago it, yeah, all right. I said it two years ago. I don't remember, but but I I, I had to stop. I Sorry, again, we're talking about the trans jokes. I should have uh, prefaced it with that. They're uh, they're talking about the prejudice, the the trans jokes, and John goes from ten years to seven years, eventually begrudgingly admitting to two years, although he says he doesn't remember. Well, you have to you have to understand that John was razzled. He was razzled. That's the, <laughs> that's the key here. <laughs> yeah. So, so stuttering John is, is like you, that's the thing. It's, he's a frustrating guy. You know, you sit there like you can see it in Carl's face, but even as a viewer, it's like, would you answer the fucking cock sucking <laughs> fucking question? Motherfucker. Just answer it. Just say like, you know what? You're right. I was making those jokes that I shouldn't have made. Not, I can't remember. I forget. It was a long time ago. What? What are you talking about? Huh? I made those jokes. It was already show. Wait, what? It's like, motherfucker, you remember all this shit. You it, remember all of it and you're pretending what, you don't. What story? What friend? It's yeah. the same. It's the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. I think, I think they call that gaslighting, right? Well, stuttering John has a very broad definition of gaslighting. It turns out we, uh, we saw in a different, uh, Carl, Carl pulled a clip where like stuttering John, like, like the word sycophant, he, he repeatedly uses it incorrectly. Uh, but, and it's like, you hear somebody use it, just look the word up, be sure of the definition, then fucking go for it. But don't sit there and, and just repeatedly misuse the word. Even after people tell you you're using it incorrectly, <laughs> he doesn't care. He doesn't give a shit. 
Yeah, he's um, a, he, sometimes he can be a real pejorative. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, my clip 14 is uh, for the people. That's all I'll say. In fact, if I'm at the pub, there's this guy. Check this out. Tell me how. how... <laughs> okay. He orders. He or... I'm going to puke. <laughs> <laughs> If you've ever wanted to see Stuttering John gagging and almost vomit, that's for you. What the fuck was going on there? They were talking about mayo, how they have a mutual distaste for mayo. <laughs> and uh, Stuttering John was trying to, to explain a guy who uh, at the bar that he goes to would put mayo all over his sandwich or something. And was telling Carl how gross it was and nearly throwing up in the, in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> uh. This I, I thought was interesting because this is uh, this clip 16. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Clip 15, uh, where John addresses trolls ruining his gigs. But Dante said to me, he goes, John, there's 5,000 people in this dabble, whatever, anonymous. Yeah. And he said, I, you're unbookable. He goes, I, I don't even think that we can try and book you on TV gigs because they're going to call that network and fucking do this. And they should not do that. Now, is there any way Carl really believes that's the reason that his gigs were getting canceled? Because trolls were calling, threatening violence to women, threatening bad Yelp reviews, and somebody's like, you're unbookable because people don't like you. Now, didn't they, don't they book like highly controversial, like that, uh, what was that guy's name, Milos, what was it, that fucking dude? Yeah, I, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, like they book that guy at colleges. They book uh, Alex Stein places. They, they book some pretty divisive personalities. But Stuttering John, the whole dabble versus calling in and threatening violence towards women. Like, why would they do it? Why would a club owner believe it? And why would they set the precedent of like, oh, somebody's threatening some stuff. Well, we can't have that person. Like if it was fucking Chappelle or Louis C.K. at that at that venue i i would imagine in the heat of the moment in that discussion just based off the clip that i saw carl had a fork in the road and he had to either question john's lie or you know he thought about when they were going to do that live event at uh, uh vinnie's vinnie's place I don't, remember, I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head but you know they had people calling the fire marshal or whatever the fuck it right. was and you know carl is very anti doxing anti real life shit fucking with people yeah yeah and I, and I think he just had to pick which road to go down and he went down the road of yeah i don't agree with that type of shit i i would imagine yeah. that's what it was yeah um i i think also probably what happened was somebody got a call like a you know this the, somebody got a call at the comedy place they were like, hey, they're threatening violence towards women. And the, the owner or the, the, the manager is like, well, how many tickets has this guy sold? Three? Fuck it then. It's canceled. <laughs> you know? That's the way I see it going. I don't see stuttering John like packing a house and then, you know, unless it's a barbecue restaurant. I think that was his big thing. It's a barbecue restaurant. <laughs> uh, my clip 16 is something that is. So typical of your lefty mentality that it's it's actually amusing that Stuttering John did this. I just get get away from my house, okay. and then you know, or I'm going to call the cops to have you because I thought they were hanging out in front of my house. Like, what would you do? Uh, so that was again, Elisa Jordana. I gotta, I gotta set these clips up better. I apologize. Uh, that was Elisa Jordana and her friend coming to stuttering John's house. And he said he was going to call the cops. And this is very typical of lefties who get into situations where they need the police, but at the same time wanted to fund them. So I don't get like why stuttering John is going to be calling the police on anyone. What's was John part of that defund the police uh, bullshit? Uh, well, I assume that since he's on the left and he agrees with every single thing that progressives and the leftists have to say, that he would be defunding the police as well. Uh, that's just me making a leap. Yep. 
but it, it's it's very typical. Like he calls the cops on everybody. He called the cops because somebody tweeted. I think it was Chad. <laughs> like <laughs> Chad sent awesome. a tweet and he called the cops. You know, <laughs> he called the cop. He he said, although you know it was later uh, probably disproven, that he called the cops in Rochester to talk about you know doing the exact thing that he's saying people are doing to him, calling his venues and getting him canceled. I I think it's great when Chad does shit like that. You know, there I think he'll say, I just got my tickets to AC as an example, Atlantic City as an example, or something like that, or I I just got this gun or whatever. Yeah. And <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, I gotta say, like, yeah, it's not popular opinion, but I enjoy Chadwick. Like I, I, I like him. I, I like the I mean, I don't think that like the sniping of MLC is like that again, that got old, but like his Kumia Cuck show, I find amusing because it's all people I know. So I think it's funny that he's making fun of him and shit, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I enjoy Chad. Yeah. I, I, there was a, like three appearances in a row that I was, I was pro Chad on WATP and I was the only one Yeah, uh, at least on that episode anyway. Yeah, I, I thought about pull it, taking a page out of Chad's playbook and uh, pretending that I like Steel Toe when we first got on. <laughs> I was going to do the same thing. <laughs> I, I, I had even kind of uh, formulated how I was going to start out the show, which is I watched three episodes of this, and, and honestly, there wasn't a whole lot to clip from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's so great. Well, it's a good thing I wasn't co-hosting with John because that might have happened. Um, clip 17, all I have is Carl Gets Real. I'm not sure what I mean by that. Can't say Thanks for five bucks. Hi, Sonny John. Carl, when will you go after Steel Toe? Why are you scared of Aaron right. Assholty? That show is not good, and you know it, sir. Yeah, okay, answer that, Carl. It's actually um, this month is the answer, and that's real. Yeah, that must be why I pulled, <laughs> I pulled it. <laughs> Carl gets real, and that's real. Now, will people be disappointed that it's you and I versus yes. Carl? Yeah. Though they shouldn't be. Because I think that we've said stuff that Carl would not have said. And I'm, I'm going to say that they're, they're going to say that we took it easy on them. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what more people would want. I don't hate them because I don't like them enough. To, or I, I, like, I'm just not that invested. I think what they want is for us to go stand outside the Imholtz residence, throw a brick through their fucking picture window, mm -hmm. and start screaming at them how much their show sucks. <laughs> Would that make you guys happy? Is that what we need to do? <laughs> Road trip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll meet you. I'll meet you in Kansas. Um, this is a clip 18 is uh, my feeling that John doesn't necessarily need to address everything. Extra friends, two bucks. Pocky says, hi, live a spot. You know, these could be sunspots too. I was out in the sun my whole fucking childhood. Now... <laughs> <laughs> I was out in the, the, the sun my whole childhood, too. And not only that, I was a lifeguard for about five years. So I don't know. I don't have any sunspots. I do have a liver spot on my hand, though. It's maddening. When you get older, you see that kind of shit popping up. It's all part of the gig, man. Yeah. Like, that's, again, if he's if he's going to address it, they, yeah. So, okay. <laughs> what do you want from me? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's... The, he's like, they could be sunspots, could be liver spots. But, but again, our sunspot, it's a spot on your fucking head, <laughs> whether it came from spot, like the sun or, or it's a liver spot. What fucking difference does it make? It's a spot on your head. I, I, again, I don't understand the, the nonstop defense and justification and cope. It, it's like somehow a spot on his head is his fault and it needs to be rectified. It's like, he would be like, like, just make a joke about it or move on or don't read the super chat, take the $2 loss. Or actually, what would it be? It would be a dollar 40 loss after YouTube takes their cut. Well, is it, is it really a loss? They're not going to, are they going to go back and fucking get a refund on their super chat? Cause you didn't read it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that would be a pain in the ass for two bucks. Oh, well, maybe do I have mm, pretty fucking liver spot free my forehead anyway. Um, this is a uh, earlier clip 19. I should have played this earlier where, uh, John, uh, talks about his NYU education. He just said that I'm not doing anything with it. I went for film and TV. I've been on TV for 30 years and this dumb fuck says 
I'm not doing anything with it. I wasn't on TV. I wasn't in movies. You're I don't not have- doing. I said you're not doing anything with it. That's the distinction that Carl made that I thought was important. He's not doing anything with it right now, as evidenced by his shitty fucking presentation with every podcast that he does. Um, he, uh, he, uh, I, I just, I just don't get the guy. I, I don't get stuttering, John. Like even like I've been on TV for 30 years. No, look, I was on TV. I was on TV from 2012 to 2017, I think, which was five years. I don't say I've been on TV for 11 years <laughs> because <laughs> the show ended fucking six years ago, you know? So it's just like, no, dude, you haven't been on TV for 30 years. You were on TV for your Stern run. And then you were on TV for a couple years with your Tonight Show run. And then barely on TV because they didn't want, people didn't want to look at you. So they gave you the job as a writer. Probably not because you were a great writer. Probably because Jay Leno's like felt, felt guilty. He's like, fuck, I fucking fished this guy out of the stern thing as a revenge fuck. And now I'm stuck with him. He's no good on camera. He's awkward. He's off putting. People don't really seem to, you know, he's not, he's no Ed McMahon, which is who we thought he was going to be. So what do I do? I'll stick him in the writer's room. You know? Yeah, and, and and what it I'm sure I don't I don't know enough about this to have any sort of viewpoint, but that generally doesn't stop me. I'm sure what it was is you know uh, they they paid the money to get him from Stern, as you said, the rever- uh, revenge fuck, and then it's like okay, now we got this dipshit here. We've got to give him something else to do other than just be the announcer. So just fuck, have him go write a joke or something. Just mm-hmm. keep him busy. Yeah, because I've I've been in writers' rooms and. You don't have to contribute a fuck ton. Like you write a sketch and a bunch of other people rewrite your sketch. Other people look at it. People pick it apart. You got to rewrite it. All that kind of shit, you know? So it's like if you have a basic idea, a lot of times in a writer room, that's enough. And then, you know. Just give them a premise. People punch it up. Yeah. Um, my clip 20 is Carl gets a shot in that stuttering John doesn't like. You actually had an important role on Howard Stern show. You would know who they are because that was one of your competitors in a major market that you were like, Howard Stern knows who the fuck they are. You should too, but you're just a call screener. So it's fine. Uh, It's not a big deal. Yeah. Anyway, I'm I'm buddies with that. with Drew Lane now and those guys. And they're going to be part of our live show. Is that what you really believe? I'm just a call screener. Yeah. Well, you're a stunt boy too. (laughs) Oh, oh, really? Okay. Okay. So my whole career is a call screener. You're such a fucking asshole. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know if you uh, picked up on it when, when we had John on earlier. I gave the same response to John that stuttering John just gave to Carl when, when John said, Doug, you're no better than Aaron or Aaron's better than you. No. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he did not like to hear. He, did, he doesn't want his accomplishments diminished in any fashion. You know, and he has had accomplishments. That's why, like, you know, when people are like, oh, Stuttering John versus Shuli, it's like professionally, yes, Stuttering John has done more than Shuli. But in terms of like uh, industriousness and getting something going, fucking Shuli has done way more than Stuttering John. Stuttering John can't, like, he can't even fucking podcast past sundown because he doesn't have any God in his house. (laughs) Whereas Shuli's shit looks pretty professional. And they, they like, I, I look at those guys and I'm like, God damn, I wish I had the technical skills they have. Like pulling up fucking pictures and fucking pulling up videos and all kinds of stuff. Graphics. I might be too old for the game. I don't know. I'm a young streamer trying to look at, <laughs> looking to make my way. <laughs> uh, what do we got here? Oh, this clip 21 is for anybody that out there that wants a drop. Oh, it's not letting me play that one. We'll let you play clip 21? No. Huh, what's it saying? It's a stream yard problem. Oh, shit. Um, well, I, I, I pulled the clip. It's, uh, it's stuttering John saying, I know you think I'm an asshole, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I thought people might like that as a drop. Well, we could we could um, run in right into clip 22, where this is where I actually believe stuttering John shows the slightest bit of evolution into 
into his brain functioning correctly and rationally for even for just a moment of you, of you bashing trans you're gonna look like a fraudulent hey whatever i mean it was a different time different place you know and i didn't know what the hell it was in in fact in fact i i used to do a joke on stage that when my daughter told me she was trans i used to say so what are you an airline run call me a home run <laughs> <laughs> like what the fuck man like if you're gonna make that joke a car like it's a terrible joke but if you're gonna say like are oh, you trans what are you a car not an airline <clears throat> the first thing i thought make... of when i when i when you played that clip is referencing john's memory how he doesn't remember any of the bad shit but he can remember verbatim a shitty joke from apparently 20 years ago mm -hmm. yeah he, his memory is very selective uh but i was happy to hear him say like you know like it, for once he wasn't fucking coming down on everybody else and talking about how everyone else needs to atone for their fucking past sins and all this other shit he's like you know it was a long time ago and basically and i've heard him say a couple of things you know uh in yesterday's hypocrisy police as well where he's talking about just like you shouldn't be crucified for something you said 30 years ago. Like if you're saying it today, okay, then it's a problem. But sh sh jokes you made and shit you said back in like, you know, the nineties or the two thousands. And I, I think as a, as far as I can tell, we're getting away from that kind of shit. You don't see people like it's, there's no more pandemic. So people don't have a hard on sitting around, like looking for anything to do, which includes canceling people for fucking jokes they made or shit yeah. they said or things they did, you know, decades and decades ago. So like, could this be a kinder and gentler stuttering John we see coming down the pike? Maybe he no. won't be so, no, he'll no, still no. be equally as judgmental <laughs> about everybody and everything. Yep. Oh, no, I, I think uh, anything that you think he learned in this conversation with Carl is already gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're probably right about that. The one thing about this, this part too, is he didn't shout over Carl as much as he did in the first one, but Carl still like, he gets a couple points in, but for the two and a half hour slog that this thing was, Carl should have gotten to talk more. But stuttering John is just, you know, he, he, he doesn't want to address anything that, you know, like, like Carl's bust, busting his balls, calling him a call screener and shit. But like the real, the, the hardcore stuff that you're just like, just fucking answer the motherfucking question, John. Just answer it. That's what I mean. He's just so fucking frustrating. Yeah. Uh, my final clip has come full circle with uh, more slings and arrows from Vinnie Paulina <laughs> and my feelings about Vinnie Paulino at the end. Vinnie said that about you. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny's goes, off my Christmas card list. Jesus. He, no, he's like, Carl's a, he's, you know, he's a nerd. He, <laughs> you know, but he gave you, he goes, is he a good marketer? Yeah. That was but, the only compliment you know, he gave me? I'm a good marketer? Yeah, but he goes, uh, he's a nerd. I mean, I'm going to text on. this motherfucker right now. He's on my shit list. He's a great guy. I love that guy. It, that He's a guy that can be my friend. He's, oh. He just texted me. He says, I feel like Lex Luthor after giving the kryptonite bomb to Otis to use on Superman. <laughs> okay. Vinny sent me that same text and I had no fucking idea what he was talking about. So for <laughs> Vinny to be calling Carl a nerd, give me a fucking break. I was on a comic book show for seven fucking years. I had no idea what he was fucking talking about. <laughs> it's, it's some obscure, like, like it's like Lex Luthor's henchmen or something. I had to look it up. So for Vinnie Paulino to be calling Carl a nerd, Carl, I think he got some uh, some ammo. And uh, again, this is uh, more shit from Vinnie Paulino coming Carl's way. So I'm I'm curious to see where this goes. Will there be will Car will uh, Vinnie and and Suttering John do a show together? I'd watch that. <clears throat> if if there's a double cross coming from Vinny, then I'll watch it. I'll wait to find out. Yeah, uh, I I don't necessarily have any interest in listening to Vinny uh, and Stuttering John befriend each other. But if it's a double cross, then it's worth it. Yeah, I'll I'll yeah. invest my time for the double cross. And there's a lot of the, a lot of that goes on in this in this world, like MLC, Shuli, uh, Chad, 
uh, some of the smaller, some of the, you know, Ray DeVito, it's like everybody's constantly double crossing each other. Alliances shift and suddenly, you know, Julie hates Chad and Chad has a show on the Shuli network and then fucking, you know, Carl hates Chad, but then, or, uh, or, or uh, KB hates Chad, but then KB subtly on Chad's show, you and, know? Oh, so <clears throat> there's like seven players in that game. And and in the last six months, any one of them have hated the other one and, yeah. and shit talked them and shit streamed them or whatever. But it's the same seven people just cycling through each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what like the uh, like at first I really was enjoying the MLC and Chad, the sniping back and forth. But then it just like it got to the point where KB was just he's just yelling the same shit over and over again. And it's like that to me, that's not a show like reading super chats and just complaining about the same guy. It's kind of like. I get it. It's a way for you to make money and you're making some decent, you know, you're not e-begging people are, that's a difference. He like when, when like KB, it's like, if, if he'll, he'll hit, he'll hit the like button, you cowards or something like that. But he doesn't constantly remind people about the super chats and send me more money and, and all the, the can rattle in like, uh, April and, and Aaron. Do. Yeah, and incidentally, yeah. my, 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 uh, offer to make April a sister wife, still stands to this day <laughs> i have yet to hear from her but my wife and i are willing to uh open our doors to her she's gonna have to babysit once in a while though we got a 17 year old kid with down syndrome who's really fun though but she could go do girly well i don't know she could teach her how to hunt and how to fish roof all that stuff that i can't do because i'm not manly enough <laughs> all right is that the uh that was it for the stuttering john segment yep and, and it sucks because like, again, like I wish I was better at pulling video because I would have went back and pulled stuff that, as recently as last night that I saw. I was like, Jesus Christ, this guy, it's unreal. Yeah. This, this, he was on with Alex Stein and he's, he's defending Bill Clinton with, uh, Monica Lewinsky, the whole Bill Clinton, Monica Lewinsky thing. And it's like, dude, like, where have you been? Uh, it, like Alex Stein was like, it's the same thing as Harvey Weinstein and some of these actresses and starting John's like, no, no, no. It was consensual with uh, Monica Lewinsky. It's like, no, it's a dude in a position of power exploiting a younger girl for his own sexual wants and needs. That's it. It's that simple. So like, if you're going to defend fucking Bill Clinton, you have to defend Harvey. Uh, stuttering I don't John. Know. I don't know. I think I could more e If I have to choose one to defend, I could choose to defend Harvey Weinstein only because I'm not aware of him sticking a cigar up anybody's pussy. Yeah. Beret wearing gal. <laughs> so that's it for stuttering John. Yep. And that's it for steel toe. All right. Speaking of that stuttering fuck face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Now, first off, John is complaining all over the place that I'm not paying this bet. We made a bet on his show. I said, you never asked OJ Simpson to sign your knife. And he said, I can produce the video or the tape or whatever he said. I don't know if it's audio or video. I can produce the tape. I said, hundred bucks if you can produce the, the video. That was him offering that. That's not what I said. That was his bet. And I said, okay, let's do it. Those were the terms. Those were the specific terms. Since then, he's had Doug Goodstein and Richie Wilson say that, yes, that did happen. Doug Goodstein wasn't there. Richie Wilson is supposedly the cameraman who was there. But that wasn't what the bet was. It wasn't get two of your friends to say this happened or two of your ex-coworkers. They're not even friends. Get two of your ex-coworkers to say it happened. That wasn't the bet. So now John is saying this. Lady K, we know about him, doesn't pay his bets. Just ask Vinny Paulino, his co-host, ask him. He doesn't pay his bets. The world that I live in, I pay my bets. You make a bet, put it this way, at the place I hang out at. Okay, here we go. We bet on everything. Everything. Every story is about the pub. It's the only thing he does in life. If somebody ever doesn't pay a bet, yeah. nobody will ever bet you again. All right. Well, guess what, John? 
You lost the bet. Yeah. He literally owes me $100. I haven't brought this up yet, but he he literally owes me $100. I'm thinking that. I'm like, why do you keep talking about this? You have lost the bet he until you the produce bet. a goddamn tape. Right. You lost the bet, man. So maybe you should stop talking about people who don't pay their bets. Yeah. And that was his idea, too. He's such a fucking idiot. So, But I'll tell you what, John, we will let this one go if you drive to Gary, Indiana. Holy shit. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was I thinking? It's a, no fucking way he's going to do that. And uh, who knows? Maybe someday I'll drive to Gary, Indiana, or we'll switch up what the consequence is. The fact of the matter is I've done all of my consequences except for the one that I can't physically work into my life. I literally can't figure out how to pull that off in my life. That's the one I haven't done yet. Sorry. If it was a hundred bucks, I would have done it by now. Yeah. It would've you would have tried meth by now. Yes. That's what I wanted on <laughs> the wheel. Try meth. And try it again. See if you can OD on fentanyl on a weekend. That would be a fun one. I was with my brother hanging out. Uh, my dad's birthday. Just earlier today. My brother goes, okay, hear me out. I hope, I hope I'm not speaking out of school here. It's one of my brothers. Yeah. <laughs> one of my brothers is saying, um, <laughs> Carl, hear me out. I, I think what we should do, we should lace all the hard narcotics with fentanyl and just let these people OD. Because what it'll do, it'll, it'll discourage people from getting hooked on the stuff in the first place. And it kill, it's going to kill off a few good people, but not a lot. I go, Grant, this is already happening. <laughs> I mean, I go, uh, brother who will not be named. <laughs> <laughs> this is already he happening. said granted yeah, this granted. is already happening <laughs> is this life i go uh <laughs> this is this is specifically what the problem is right now you don't know about yeah, this you're this kind is... of describing the news yeah <laughs> this is a, a real issue that's happening right now so I, I actually what i said was good news <laughs> specifically good what... news everyone <laughs> this is specifically what is happening right now all right so anyway, that would be a funnier consequence than me driving to Gary, Indiana. That's the thing, too. I know I've already complained about this, but fuck it. I'm fired up. This whole thing where Vinny likes to put things on the wheel that don't even make good content. I'm going to spend 20 hours in a car or 22 hours in a car driving round trip to a place that's shitty for a couple of photographs and maybe a video of a rundown house. What's going to happen? In Vinny's world, maybe I'll get mugged. All right. Yeah. Cool. That'd be great for the show, Carl. Yeah. Cool. Good stuff, Vinny. Well, <laughs> how was that ever on the wheel of consequences? <laughs> Driving to Gary, Indiana. Uh, Patty, Patty Pukewater talked about that five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I would say it was just drunk talk, but Vinny's not a big drinker. No, he's not. He's drunk on pizza. He's just an idiot. <laughs> he's just a big, fat, stupid guy. <laughs> All right, that's too much. Let's get into uh, Stuttering John because an amazing thing happened on his show this week. He is watching Kevin Brennan. Now, Bob Levy has left Misery Loves Company. Mm -hmm. If you were to watch Kevin Brennan's show, you would think that Kevin Brennan kicked Bob Levy off. That's not the case. Kevin Brennan wasn't paying Bob and also accused Bob of feeding Chad Zumach behind-the-scenes information when they were in Atlantic City. And so Bob finally went, all right, you're mad at me for shit that didn't happen, and also you're not paying me. I'm done with this. This is annoying. So Bob quit the show. And so Kevin copes the way he copes. He likes to gaslight everyone, pretend that that was his whole thing, that Bob sucks. He didn't even want him on the show. Even though he was bragging about paying Bob and how much money he was paying him, that was his big thing. He's like, oh, Shuley never doesn't pay you. I pay you. And it's funny because now Bob's never talked about this before. Now that he's quit. It's all coming out, how much money he actually made from Miserable's company. I guess the most money he ever made in a month was $4,000. Kevin paid him. Kevin likes to say he paid him $5,000 a month. The most was $4,000. Usually it was more like $3,000. Because he had Stuttering John on, he docked $1,000 out of Bob's pay without them even discussing that ahead of time, which is nuts. Because Kevin acts like... You know, he paid three thousand dollars for Suttering John, but he says he had a silent partner that shipped in fifteen hundred. He got two thousand three hundred dollars in super chats. He docked Bob's pay by a thousand bucks. Sounded like Kevin's up on this yeah, one. Yeah, I was gonna say he didn't pay me for being on that episode. Profit. So it sounds like he did okay. Anyway, I digress. The point is, is that Bob left the show, and so now Kevin is popping up and doing all these shows at random times. So just the other day, he went online while Suttering John was doing his show. John is on, I think, 2 to 4 or 2 to 5, Monday through Friday or so. 
And usually Mizuno's company starts at four, but Kevin went on by himself and John decides to start sniping him because he heard that Kevin was talking shit. And this is one of the funniest things you'll ever see is John watching Kevin talk shit about John and watch John's oh, reaction. Fucking, wow. I'm really fucking terrible at this yep. post. John's a fucking idiot. I just realized today he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> Look at his face. First of all, is he live? I can't. He's like, Chad, who? <laughs> Who's this Chad guy that you're yeah. calling an idiot? <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> yeah, he's like, this guy sounds stupid. <laughs> Is he live? I can't even find his YouTube channel. So now he's calling me oh, an idiot. Oh, snap. All right. John's an idiot. Someone just said John desperately wants to be my co-host. John's a fucking idiot. <laughs> I just realized today he's a fucking idiot. First of all, is he live? I can't even find his YouTube channel. I went to find his YouTube channel to see if he was live. He he wasn't anything. He wasn't like he wasn't live. He 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 wasn't tweeting anything. All this politics, all this politics shit is fucking. What Kev? Go ahead, Kev. Go ahead. You don't like that hair now, Politics yeah. shit yeah. is uh, is not happening. Oh really? Okay. Yes, really. Okay. Oh, yeah? Is that true? Nice. Look what Nice is saying. Are you nice. Love this subscription. I finally know when you're on. Wait, you, all you got to do is subscribe, you pause right? It for a second. I mean, yeah, you'll get it automatic. You know, okay. we're, we're watching John process this. Yes. Uh, That's why I'm fascinated. He wants to get angered up, but he's still, we're going through the hurt feelings part. Well, he's, so he thinks him and KB are buddies. Yeah. John has been saying since Bob left the show, he wants Bob's job. He mm -hmm. wants to be the second mic on MLC. So John thinks he's in the running for this, oh, just yeah. like he thought he was for, for Anthony's RD. show and Stephanie Miller, and the list goes on. <laughs> oh, let's not even talk about the Jackie chair. Oh, right. John still thinks he should have the Jackie chair. So John thinks for sure he'll get on MLC now that Bob's off there. And now he's watching Kevin Brennan go, John's an idiot. And he's like, is he talking about me? I think this guy's talking about me. Yeah, that's what I love. I know. It's this is just the funniest shit. <laughs> and yeah, he goes to a stage of denial, which is really funny. Yeah, wanna, yeah we're watching. I don't want to jump the gun. Yeah, yeah, this is great. <laughs> all you got to do is subscribe, right? I and mean, you'll get automatic. You know, Kevin. I don't know why don't you know, fucking you call me a fucking idiot, Adam, Kevin. Or, or did the guy say show. it's not really a solo show? Adam set this up. So I don't know that, which one it already is. Live. That's why when I got here, there was already people but, in the chat because Adam had already set it up. Yep, sounds like he turned on me. Not me. I didn't turn it's on just me. I'm a fucking idiot, enough. Kev. It doesn't. Uh, really, Kevin? What did do I do anything. to you? All right, so anyway, Except we're doing it. What did I do to you? Everyone's killing it this weekend. That's the other thing with John. And I love that he goes, wait, did he, was he just reading that? And he'll talk more about that. Yeah. But John doesn't understand that this isn't a thing where he's mad at you, so he called you an idiot. He doesn't even know you're watching. Right. He literally he can't thinks, hear you. <laughs> he literally thinks you're an idiot. And John goes, why, why are you turning on me? What did I ever do to you? No, this has nothing to do with that. He thinks you're an idiot. He's right. A lot of people think you're an idiot, John. That's why there's an entire subreddit devoted to how, what an idiot you are. Yeah, it's pretty cut and dry. He just watched your political show. Yes. And he has deemed you an idiot. Yes. And John's going, oh, the way he's turning on me. <laughs> no, he just has an opinion on you. That's all. I also don't know why I'm talking to him right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, this, is, this gets way funnier. So Except I guess Levy. Every uh, fucking thing. Oh, yeah. So John thinks because he's been, because he does. He always says, don't you like Kevin Brennan? I, when I was on John's show, I was just like, no, you shouldn't even like him. He tried to fuck up our thing. And John's like, no, he's great. I love Kevin Brennan. So he thinks if you talk nice about someone, they cannot say anything negative about you. In John's world, those are the rules. <laughs> I'll probably have to talk about this when the other people come on. But I guess Levy was uh, threatening me again. Yesterday was a work. Yesterday was a work. Everything's a fucking work. <laughs> you and the fucking work. <laughs> now, I don't want to get mad. I like the fucking guy. Why the fuck is he going to fucking now join in? Yeah. You know, I, I didn't... Guys, all I said was, Kev, give me the benefit of the doubt. You know, say, I don't know, let me ask John. Because they're lying. She was lying to you. And okay. Let me explain. Let me put some context around this. This is what started all of this. Monique from Radio Gunk 
went on Misery Loves Company with Alex Stein. Mm-hmm. And actually, Monique reached out to me and asked. I'm not saying that I was the reason or anything like that. She's like, should I go on coverage? I'm like, yeah, it's a blast. Go on there. So Monique was talking about how back when Royce and John were doing a show together, the guy on her show Arm on Radio Gunk had a YouTube channel with all this Howard Stern stuff. And Royce or John did copyright strikes and got it taken down. And he had like 15,000 subscribers and lost all of it. And she was talking about this with, with Kevin. She goes, and John doesn't own any of this stuff. Like, John might have been in some of the clips, but John thinks he owns it because he's in it. Because he's a fucking moron. John, you're an idiot. So John decided, and so John's whole point was, because Monique said he did it, and he goes, no, 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 Royce did that. But Royce wouldn't do that unless John told him to. Mm -hmm. Because Royce doesn't give a fuck. Royce wouldn't care if there's Howard Stern content on the internet. He doesn't have a vendetta. Right, and he also... Doesn't have a dog in the race. There's no reason for him to care about who's posting clips of Howard Stern. For me personally, the more the better. The more I can find clips of old Howard Stern stuff that I can go and watch or goof on or enjoy or whatever, great. I would never tell YouTube, I don't think this guy has permission to be posting this Beetlejuice segment. But John's a moron, and he's very jealous, and he gets upset. He's a tattletale, too. He's a tattletale. So he had this guy's... uh, YouTube channel taken down, according to Monique, who would know? And John's very upset with Monique saying that. And so that's what this is all stemming from. She was lying to you. And I'm the fucking idiot. But you fall for it. You fall for fucking Honique lying about me. But I'm the fucking idiot. Honique. So he's been trying to get this is happening behind the scenes right now. He's trying to get Monique back on his show actively. Up until yesterday or today. Right. Still trying to get her on the show. She's like, you doxed my husband. You you have called me a whore. I mean, he called her the C word to another funny of it. It's like, she doesn't like you, Chad. She doesn't want to do your show. You fucking say that I'm friends with Carl. And I'm not. <laughs> I get mad about that, too. I don't like <laughs> Carl. <laughs> it's mutual. Scorchy666, thanks for five bucks. Kevin finally told the truth. I'll do fucking, I'll fucking kill Kevin in a fucking IQ test. He doesn't have a chance. (laughs) Come on. I'm a fucking idiot. Now, I don't know if that was written. Somebody (laughs) tell me, please, that's not a troll. He doesn't know if that was written. Did it look like Kevin was reading a script? Did you get a sense that Kevin was auditioning for a play or going through his lines? No, you can tell he wasn't reading it because it was so natural. He can't really read a super chat. Let me recreate the way Kevin did that. Yeah. John's a fucking idiot. Was that scripted? (laughs) If that was written, but it didn't sound like it was. No, it didn't. John's a fucking idiot. (laughs) Everybody betray me. I don't have a friend in the world. Somebody in the Discord is just loving that John is realizing in real time that nobody likes him and everyone thinks he's a moron. Yeah. It really is a lot of fun, isn't it? There's, there isn't a guy that's easier to root against than Johnny Cush. But then number two <laughs> is stuttering John Melendez, this moron. Okay, I just I think this is drop worthy. So, producer Chris, if you want to make a note on this one. John's a fucking idiot. You know, I, John's a fucking idiot. I don't know. Uh, and, you know, I, I um, you know, and he's got to stop the politics. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just not working for him. Oh, shut the fuck up, Kevin. Please. John's so bad at this. Stuttering John, KB was working you the whole time. Sad. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, they all do. Just like David's talking to fucking Shuli now. Fucking, you know, his buddy DG. Everybody's a fucking work. His buddy DG. Except me. That didn't take long. Nope. And now Kevin is fucking trashing me. <laughs> yep. Unfucking believable. He's calling you an idiot, which is true. Hey, you want me to fuck? I'm, I'm just just fucking call him. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm gonna fucking call him. How about yeah. that? All right, let's do it. All right. So John decides he's on his show. Kevin's doing a show live. Mm-hmm. He's just gonna call him on the phone. This is fan fucking tastic. This I enjoyed a lot. Now, there's a few things to point out here. Starting with this. I'm a fucking work. Fucking. (laughs) 
<laughs> He's so bad. Call Kevin. <laughs> okay, so he tells his phone to call Kevin, meaning he only knows one guy named Kevin. And he's not expecting to meet anymore. Do you have anyone in your phone that's just a first name? No. No. Maybe dad. I, right. <laughs> I have multiple Kevins. This guy just picks up his phone and goes, call Kevin. Yeah. What a loser. Computer. <laughs> All right. So they're going to be talking about Stuttering John went on a show on the Shuley Network called Replayables, hosted by this guy, Chris Abel. And John went on there with Husey. And I guess they watch like pretty crazy videos that are replayable and just enjoy them. So like uh, one of the clips was a motorcyclist was weaving in through traffic and flying past all these cars and just runs into a horse. And it's from the first person perspective of driving into a horse. So anyway, there's, there's all these videos, crazy things that they watch. So John went on there and um, lo and behold, Shuli pops on 45 minutes into it. And John runs away. <laughs> Run away, Johnny. Run away. <laughs> and so that's what they're going to be talking about when he calls into Kevin here. Calling Kevin. <laughs> Good stuff. Let's see. Hello? Kevin? Yeah? Why are you calling me an idiot? Because what the fuck are you doing Chris Abel's show for? You want $500? I'll loan you $500. Well, it it was one hour. For 500 bucks, why not? Okay, you said you were done with all these shows with the cesspool. Then you, you, you go to the sassiest of the cesspool, Chris fucking Abel? I don't even know who he is, Kev. Yeah, exactly. So why are you doing a show? Because he paid me 500 bucks for like 15 minutes. First it was an hour. So that's the left when Julie showed up? What the fuck was that? So that's a work to set up the, when you and Julie do a show together? No. Fucking the agreement was Julie wasn't allowed to show up, and then he fucking showed up. So you got ambushed. Yes, I got ambushed. You didn't see that comic getting ambushed on the Shuley Network by Shuley. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't matter because I wanted to get back to the Yankee game anyway. So now I had a fucking excuse to get the fuck out of there. Oh, God. He's the worst. He always has an excuse. And it's always pathetic. It's always the worst excuse. He's like, well, no, I wanted to leave. I, I wasn't afraid of Shuley. Uh, it was the bottom of the six. And the, the Yankees were way down to run. Oh, so you're a scammer. What, a, what an idiot. So he took 500 bucks to go on this guy's show. And then Shuli shows up. And I'll play you what happens here. Because there's no confrontation. They're not looking for a confrontation. In fact, John's mixing up with Husey the whole time. And Husey hits him back a few times. And every time, Chris Abel's just like, all right, that's not what this is. We're just hanging out. We're going to watch these videos. We're going to have some fun. We're not fighting. That's not what this show is. But this is the incident where uh, Shuli shows up. On the show, and John and, scared. and she wasn't going to let go. And she was wearing that, that juicy like. outfit. Yeah, she was wearing that juicy outfit. She wasn't going to let go. She is. She is the is true Gina? Lincoln Navigator. Yeah. <laughs> she is the true. Nah, let's we love Gina Bob, man. Gina's he made the right a lovely decision. lady. Yeah. Is that Gina? John. Yeah. Oh, yeah, John. Yeah. Come let, on. Let, now, let's man. Tell what, let, let's compare that her that's in your fucking house. Oh, look who's Gina. here. <laughs> We'll have a drink. We'll have him. John, come on. Toast We're up. You're having a good time. Let's go. Let's do this. Come on. Drink up. No, Let's go. This was the agreement. What? You broke John, the John, 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 John. John, no, 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 no. Nobody's fighting. Grab your drink. Nobody's fighting. Nobody's, nobody's talking come on. bullshit. No bullshit. Nobody's come talking bullshit. Come on. Bullshit. No. Chris, Let's play the next John, video. John, Johnny Boy, John. jump in and good at golf. Good at golf. Go, Let's and, go. And he's gone. Don't run away. Watch this shit. And watch John this shit. is gone. They're trying this to go on the screen now, bro. They're trying to watch another video. He is donezo. He has left. So that is John running away at the sight of Shuli, who said nothing. They just said, hey, man, we're hanging out. Here's a have a toast. Let's have a sip. And John is so afraid because he knows. He knows he's dumber than Shuli. He knows he has no argument. And John's whole thing is like, Shuli ran away from me when I tried to interview him in that hotel lobby. And then as soon as he sees Shuli, he runs away. Boom. And the last time Shuli called into John's show, John had to knock him off the screen because Shuli was making some points. Mm -hmm. And John had to, he goes, oh, but he was being boring. That's why I kicked him off. And then we find out they actually physically blocked him in StreamYard. So Shuli can never be on his show again. 
and even show up. And this this would have been the best platform because by design, they're just having fun. Right. They, it, this is, if I'm not spelling this out well enough, let me, do, let me say it this way. Yeah. Suttering John is a pussy. And he's proving it time and time again with how afraid he is of everyone. He was afraid of me when I went on his show last Friday or the Friday before. Or whatever. He's like, oh, oh send the link to who? Oh, Carl? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh. All right. So then KB <laughs> is going to bring this up. But Kev, I'm your biggest fucking supporter, man. I I just hated that Honique was lying about everything. Yeah, why didn't you come on? You, you go on the Chris Abel show, you won't come on my fucking show. Because you didn't ask me. You should have texted me. I said, I said, I said, I said on the show, come on the show. You were watching the show. You texted me about money. No, I was getting gas at that time. I texted you at the gas station. Anyway, anyway, so so I don't, you know. Listen, it's, I'm on your side, hey Kevin. You, you and Julie, Kevin. You and Julie Network, and then you run it away like you're like, and then everyone will be like, oh shit, they're really fighting. Are you really fighting with Julie, or is it a work? Kevin, I can't stand the dues payer, and I can't stand Carl. There's no yeah, work. But Carl, you made money doing the show with Carl, so why don't you do the same with Julie? Because I I I loathe Julie. I would never go on his show. Way more than you hate, uh, the library. Oh, look at his fingernail. <laughs> Who's that, Carla? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hold on. What did KB just call me? The librarian? Yeah. Oh, hold on. I got to hear that again. Library buddy? So you hate, you hate Julie way more than you hate, uh, the library lady. <laughs> Who's that, Carla? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, but I despise both of them just as much as you do. I guess I'm behind on how people are making fun of me. If someone wants to tell me why I'm the library lady, I'd yeah. love to know the origin of that one. Yeah, but you're, yeah, but you're doing shows <laughs> with Carl. Well, no, I, no we, we had an agreement. I, I, I do one at his studio, and he do one at my studio. Okay, you're done, you're done. <laughs> yeah, now it's all... English is his first language, I just want to point out. <laughs> done. Are you done with the size pool or not? No, because, because I'm enjoying it too much. Oh, so you're not done. That was a work. No, I, I, I did want to get done, and then I said, you know what? Why should I not make some money? <laughs> he's not lying. He's right laughing because he's lying. Yeah. So Kevin called him out because John was going to quit yep. the dabble verse. Mm-hmm. He talked to the guy from Collective Soul. It totally changed his perspective on life. Just like when someone wants to quit Facebook. Right. Makes a big Make deal. Make a big out. deal about it, guys. It's my last episode ever until maybe uh, uh, one more thing. Yeah. Right. Okay, so now I'm going to flip over to KB's side of this conversation because Kevin has Ray DeVito on as a guest, and Ray DeVito's laughing his ass off at all of this, as is known to happen when Stuttering John is around. Uh, <laughs> Shuli Stuttering John. Me and Shuli uh, oh. set aside our difference. This is, I'm sorry, let me just back up. This is when he first gets the call from John, and then we'll pick up where we left off. Uh, Shuli Stuttering John. Me and Shuli uh, set aside our differences, and now we're going to work together to take down Brennan. Washman, shout out to Washman, huh? They they didn't get along on the thing. As soon as Shula showed up, John left. Yeah, it's a work. It's probably a work. I don't think. I think that dude's actually unstable. Huh? Stuttering John's unstable. Uh, I don't. I I don't mean to break the fourth wall here, but he's uh, he he's unstable. I think we. I think we see that. (laughs) Wow. When Ray Devito is calling you out for your stability, that's not great. Yeah. No offense, right? I see Detroit. <laughs> I don't know. That that's uh Hello? Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you calling me an idiot? Because what the fuck are you doing, Chris Abel show for you want five hundred dollars? I'll loan you five hundred dollars. Okay, so that's that's where the thing started. All right, now let's pick up where we left off where John is explaining that he's back in the dabble verse because there's so much money to be made. Because he's making so much money here in the dabble verse. And so Kevin's just like, well, wait, I thought you were a substitute teacher. Why do you care about the money in the devil verse? Why should I not make some money? What's when school go back? <laughs> uh, it's already back. But wait, so you're not, you, you just work when you, when they call you? No, I, I just, I just decided I'm going to do this because, you know, it's good money. Wait, you're done teaching? I, I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck? Newsflash! <laughs> Ray's cracking up. Kev, Kev, 
I'm starting. Wait, if John's available, I'm starting a network. I'm starting my. I officially started a network. I tell you, that's the part that John can't hear is Ray Devito actively laughing at him for this. And quick observation: I know this probably goes without saying. John was bragging not that long ago, a couple months ago, about making one hundred six thousand dollars a year as a teacher in LA. And now he's saying, I'm not going to buy teaching. There's too much money to be made in podcasting. Go ahead and watch one of his episodes, see how many super chats he gets, and tell me that's the equivalent of $106,000 a year. It is not. It's not even close. And even with that salary, it was more about the self-satisfaction. Well, right. He always started by saying, I'm giving back. I'm doing this because the kids need me. It's rewarding. And I'm their favorite teacher, and I got all these cards from the students who want me to go, boom. John's available. I'm starting a network. I'm starting my, I'm officially starting a network. I thought you're going back to be, I thought that was your first love teaching. No, uh, that's his dumb passion. Kids. Dumb kid. What? Aren't they dumb, the kids in the school? No. Why do you say that? Because kids are dumb. <laughs> but no, they're not. Are your kids dumb? No, but I, they don't, you're not teaching them. <laughs> it's a great job. I think I, I, no, they're, they're not dumb. But anyway, I'll come on your show later if you want. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. He's not. He's not quit. He's not going back to be a teacher. I thought that was his passion. That's what it was all the about. Fuck, man. He said that oh, was man, really who has the best show? Who has the best show? Right, say it. I don't care if you you can fence it all you want. Who has the best show? Whatever show I'm on, I make it number one. So I wait. mean, all I do is tell the truth. Oh, that's a lie. <laughs> all right, Kevin, you lost me there. You had a good segment with John. Yeah. And then you immediately had to pat yourself on the back for it. You lost yeah, me. Yeah, it's starting to look Kevin again for a I second know. there. I know. And then and then he goes out and, and does that, unfortunately. I love Ray ripping out John. Dude, it's so funny. <laughs> John, if you're watching this, I just want to let you know how stupid. You're the laughing stock of the internet. Again, thank you for coming back. We appreciate it. Everyone is scoring points off of you right now. You're a fucking loser. And listen to the justification that he does and the way that he justifies this. Look, I know Kevin says, do I need the money so bad? If I'm going to fucking be able to make 500 in an hour or less, I don't think there's a person here that would say don't do that. And even Carl... When he had me on and, Ke- and he thought Kevin talked me out of it. He did. Carl and I ended up making 500 each on that show and then another th- another 300 each on the other one. So a total of 800 bucks. And that was for like six hours of material. So if I can get 500 for one hour, come on. Why not? That's 10 days at the pub. All right. <laughs> so it, to him, $500 equals 10 days at the pub. Which is bullshit because he claims that he tips 10 bucks a beer. Right. So that would go pretty quickly. Very quickly. Yes. But so apparently 50 bucks a day is what he spends at the pub. Hmm. And he goes to the pub every day. So people could do the math on that, figure out what he's spending at the pub. <laughs> <laughs> it's significant. It really is. It's uh, weird that he says shit like that. All right. So as we know, John's killing it. He, that's why he's back in the dabble verse because it's so lucrative and he's doing such a good job. And he's starting to get some amazing guests on the show, including one of my good buddies here. So I'll leave it there. What? Hi, hi, sir. How are you doing? Mr. Who are you? This is John. My name's Lorenzo Ariola. How'd you get this link? Uh, the potato sent it to me. He's a friend of mine. All right. Are you a troll? Are you going to fucking... Uh, what do you want to say? <laughs> no. Um, welcome back to, what uh, you know, what, what this universe. I know um, for a while you were like a, uh, what was it, like a legend, like an unspoken legend. And, uh, you know, uh, it's an honor to uh, meet you. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good, but here, let's just finish. I'm gonna, if you want, I'm just gonna finish uh, 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 watching this clip, okay? So Lorenzo pops on. Just like, what? What do you want? Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? The potato sent me the link. I love it. Fucking hilarious. Lorenzo Ariola from That's All Funny <laughs> popping on John's show. Fan fucking tastic. And then the next day on John's show, 
I guess he saw the Ice Soaps just played a show yesterday at a place called Arondequit Beer Company. They were awesome to us. The beer was delicious. I have only good things to say about that show. We had a blast. But they put up a flyer for the show that we did not create. They put it together. Although I will say that the text on the flyer they got from our website. So that is something that we wrote or I wrote. So that's fine. John's going to attempt to roast that. He saw it online. And now he's going to, in real time, goof on this flyer for the show that we just did. You know how good John is at coming up with roast jokes (laughs) off the cuff. So I'm sure this will be great. Cardiff posted this. Isotopes on the patio. Rockchester's premier instrumental rock band. Look at these idiots. All in green. Oh. So, first off, we're not all in green. There's a green light on us. We're in white, and there's a green light. It's a stage light. Look at these idiots all in green. Fucking loses. Featuring gyrating go-go dances. Hilarious announcements. Yeah. Because one thing Carl is, is hilarious. Good one. <laughs> Got me. Stage yeah. effects. Oh, well, there is a, that's a selling point. Stage effects. <laughs> Got me nerd glasses. Oh, my God. You have me sold now. I can get my nerd glasses. You want to get your nerd glasses? Yeah, let me get my nerd glasses. He's terrible at this. He's the worst at this possible. Stick to politics, buddy. Dude, (laughs) what the fuck kind of joke is that? And you don't get nerd glasses. We wear nerd glasses. We wear the nerd glasses. We don't hand them out at the show. (laughs) We dress like nerds. It's a joke. And panty dampening rock choreography. Oh, my God. Look at these guys. Is any chick dampering her panty? (laughs) Is any chick dampering her panty? (laughs) <laughs> John reads this ridiculous description of our band and takes it all at face value. Yes. Like it's all literal. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? Yes, we are. Yes. It's Please. <laughs> Please, Carla. Fuck. Oh, by the way, right there. So now all of his messages are showing on Twitter. Oh, yeah. And he's doxing himself to D. Snyder, of all people. <laughs> he sent D. Snyder his email address. So there it is for everyone to see. Every time John shares his screen, he shows you something he's not supposed to. He's amazing. He's asking Opie on. Yep. He's got Opie on there. He wants to, yeah, he wants to come on beer on the balcony. Oh, he's, he's hitting on a chick. Look at that. Helene Smith. Hi, how are you doing? No one's responding to him except for Cardiff. Who said, oh, Cardiff's the asshole instead of that. <laughs> Cardiff. Yeah, and then he posted this video. <laughs> Aren't you on vacation, Cardiff? <laughs> oh, Cardiff's actually, when you love what you do, Carl. Cardiff is in the chat right now. I didn't think he was back. I would have sent him a link. But. Yeah. Can, can you believe this, people? <laughs> can you believe this? this is his punchline. That, that's John's best punchline. Uh, and then they say that the show's going to be entertaining. I can't make this stuff up. Can you believe this, people? Rock guitars. What? And then uh, Richard sent me a note. Hey, Carl. I told John he was better than Kurt Cobain at music, and my trolling kind of backfired, and he thanked me wholeheartedly and serenaded me. It brought joy to John's day. So he sent me this clip. That is hilarious because John's so stupid. You're, you're like, yeah, man, you're like uh, Robert Plant with your, your singing voice. Like, yeah, no, I'm pretty good. Like, no, dude, they're fucking trolling you. You more. How do you not know this by now? <laughs> so he's stupid. an asshole, Jake. Oh, yeah. He's another bully. So he had Lorenzo, who he, he didn't invite on the show, and I love Lorenzo. Then the next day, he has Jake Hudson as his guest on the show. On things purpose. Are go- <laughs> things are going in the right direction for you, Johnny. You're killing it, buddy. Keep it up. <laughs> he's an asshole, Jake. He's another bully. Yeah. Uh, Richard, $2, uh, two Canadian. Oh. Oh, John Nirvana, you better lyricist singer than Kurt. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> um, 
Rosalia. Mr. Melendez. <laughs> what is wrong with him? He read that comment and went, that's correct. I am better than Kurt Cobain at rock music. And it starts yeah. horribly singing. All Apol- was it All Apologies? I think it was. Right? I think so. I it's think hard so. to tell when he's singing. <laughs> That's a good point. All right. I have a couple fun things I want to talk about. Starting with Reverend Shitstain put together a fantastic song for us today. Uh, I think you guys are going to enjoy this. This comes from one of my favorite movies of all time. Devil babble, drink a too. I got a proposition for you. Devil babble, drunk a little I'll drink and scream, you super gently. Do you get when you guzzle down cores? Putting them back and then drinking some more. Or throwing pizzas, you're terribly fat. It's It's Vince's fault. Well, how about that? I don't like the look of him. Baffle, baffle, drink of the jar. How in the hell has John come this far? Potatoes, puppets, and Scott Point 2. Carl, you owe 100, you know what you you do. What can they do? Uh, uh, fuck you, Carl. You owe me a hundred dollars, you bitch. <laughs> Very well done, <laughs> Reverend Shitstein. So I should give a quick update. We did a bonus show this afternoon where I talked a lot about what's been going on with Centering John. If you're on our Patreon Supercast or if you are joined a membership on YouTube, then you saw I put out on Tuesday. John sent me a link Monday night. He was doing this uh Snipe of the Uncle Rico show that Kevin Brennan told him to do. So he'd give him 100 bucks. So he did that. And then I was in there chatting as I was watching it. And they decided to send me the link. So I went on there and uh, it was fun. So about 45 minutes telling DG he sucks, telling John he sucks, talking about this bet that we have as far as John producing the tape of him asking OJ to sign his knife and how it doesn't exist <laughs> and how he owes me the 100 bucks and on and on. Well, the update is some assholes on the internet who I believe are fans of WATP were able to find this video. Really? Yes, that came out today. Ah. Now, I played this on the bonus show and I recommend people watch this because John, for whatever reason, went on this morning. I think he was still in bed. He didn't even turn his camera on. But he went on and he was bitching about this bet. He's been bitching about this bet for a week and a half. I owe him 100 bucks. He needs it really badly. He's bitching about it. So then... The guy who, Phantom Dennis, the guy who runs Shuley's Anonymous, who John's mad at because what he wanted to do his show, using Shuley's Anonymous to do his show, he made it private so John couldn't get to it. Hilarious. It is. Yeah. It's the, it's not any different than the $20 bill on the fishing line that John used to do to Scott the Engineer and be like, this is hilarious. Look at He wants to get the thing and he can't. This is what Phantom Dennis did to John. And John's like, that's not funny. I don't get it. <laughs> Why is that funny? Like, no, it's hilarious. You retired. Yeah. So it was the funniest thing. Phantom Dennis comes on and he goes, you know what, John? I have the video. Check Julie's Anonymous. I just posted it there for you. And John, this is all on my show. You have to check it out. Please subscribe to check this out. John goes, all right, Denny. You know what? This is a solid thing. I, th- I think we can be friends again. You know, he's going through this whole thing. He's like, this is really nice. I'm so glad you did this. So he, he pulls it up on his screen. He starts playing it. There it is, the actual video of John walking up to OJ. So OJ's getting into a limo. And he says, hey, OJ, OJ. And then she male porn shows up. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a bunch of chicks with dicks fucking each other. And just, oh, oh. <laughs> it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. And I happen to be watching it in real time. I was like, Oh my god, that's fucking amazing. So are they still friends? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think that worked out. <laughs> well then John, as I was doing the bonus show, I'm reading text from him. He's texting me as we were doing it, and he sent me a video of him asking OJ a different question and saying, Give me my money. He is demanding the money. So I wrote back because I know the video's out there now, but I'm fucking with him. I'm like, you didn't ask anything about a knife there. And he was getting all fired up. Actually, I should probably pull this up because it, 
<laughs> it's pretty funny. He needs his hundred dollars yeah. so badly. <laughs> so fucking fired up about it for whatever reason. So I wrote back in this video. You didn't ask about signing a knife still waiting. <laughs> of course that pissed him off. So he wrote, yeah, they stopped it before the whole thing was up. You're a fucking stiffer. I got off two questions. The second being the knife one. It was up for many to see. Go on Reddit. Now I have hundreds of witnesses. If you don't pay, it'll be Gary, Indiana all over again. And then another message. Just heard you're doing everything you can to not let it get out again. What a silly bet stiffer you are. <laughs> what a silly bet stiffer. He got you there, buddy. There's no dues payer. <laughs> it doesn't oh, roll off the top. He invented stiffer. a new word, too. Quid. He was, he's, he, uh, I don't know what that word means, but he was, he said it to me and he said it to Phantom Dennis. He's like, okay, we're quid now. Like we're good. But I've never heard that. And I looked it up. I couldn't find anything is about it. Is that like it. quid pro quo? Well, that's what people were wondering hmm. if that's what it meant. I'm not or sure. Or is it like a dotard thing where it's supposed to be doddered and he just doesn't yeah, know what he's prob- talking about? Probably. Uh, yes. Uh, and then two more messages from him. He said, uh, you know what happened. You just don't want to be, you just don't want to part with the 100. <laughs> you can't afford it. Yeah, you wrote, big money, Lady K. We'll lose a bet, but refuse to pay. Oh, but, well, it's like fucking poetic. Big money, Lady K. We'll lose a bet, but refuse to pay. No, I hear a song in the works. So, anyway, I paid him today. <laughs> I super chatted him, and I said, John, check your PayPal, buddy. You won the bet. That's all I needed. I just needed video proof or audio proof. That's all I asked for. I don't need to have his friend saying that it happened. And I said it happened, and so did my friend, and so did my other friend. Yeah, he's got his mom calling you. Yeah, like, that's <laughs> not what a bet is. That's not what proof is in any way. But he did prove it, so he did win the bet. And uh, it's a good thing because John has been known to get – the authorities involved. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm really glad that we were able to settle this without getting uh, law enforcement yeah, or OJ <laughs> involved in this. <laughs> He's fantastic. This guy. Julian Chatter encouraged people to send you DoorDash while you were in California. So it rots at your door. Well, if that's the truth, then I'm going to have a problem with that because then they are trying to, have bugs come to my house <laughs> right so there that's a that's a form of vandalism there you you better know the law as even vince said that's illegal in florida so if you're encouraging that somebody get me the tape because i will i will i will Call the police about that. <laughs> Finish the sentence. Notify my buddies at the police in my precinct. <laughs> oh, hey, John. Hey. Uh, <laughs> what, what did someone do? Tweet today? <laughs> hey, DM you. <laughs> Who are we arresting this time? I someone honked their horn. I was just trying to send him a nice edible arrangement for a housewarming gift for his house in Florida. Yeah. And Bugs. now I'm under arrest. <laughs> yeah, now you're under arrest for it. He's amazing, isn't he? He I, was talking about uh, Ryan Sharman posted something. Who knows if it's the real one or not? And he's just like, "This." I sent him a cease and desist, and now I'm going to have to sue him. Like He's still doing the same shit he's been doing for years. It never works. Threatening lawsuits and getting people arrested and thrown in jail. Does not work, John. It never will. I don't know why you're still doing Well, I do know why. He's an idiot. Fucking cocksucker. Now, I hope people have watched me go on his show Monday night. I was a little fired up because I was a little bit annoyed. I was watching him on MLC earlier and he's telling Kevin Brennan how I don't pay my bets off and all the shit. I'm like, and, and of course Kevin doesn't fucking follow up with like, well, what's the bet? You know, and it's just like, oh yeah, Carl sucks. So I go on there and Joe, why are you telling everyone I'm not paying my bets? You owe me a hundred dollars. You're supposed to produce evidence. You haven't, there's no proof of any of this. So I called DG a couple names and I think DG and I made up, but I still... I have my theories about this guy. I don't think he's on the up and up with John. I th- I think he's got an angle that he's got going on here. But this is a hilarious back and forth because John is going to explain how comedy works. And this is one of my favorite things that's ever happened on John's show. It's going to go on for a while and I might not even interrupt it because it speaks for itself. So that's what a false lead is. Oh, you know what? Before I play you know, that. So he's trying to get everyone to think 
that it's me. And then he goes, but enough about Chad Zuma. That's a false lead. Why isn't that positive? Because everyone's supposed to think it's me. It's the most basic form of joke writing. All right. John, earlier in this show, was watching Shuli do stand-up at DabbleCon. So he's watching me introduce Shuli, and then Shuli comes up, and Shuli starts his set with a bunch of shit that's not part of his act, just reacting to things that were happening on the show. And he goes, all right, we're all here to celebrate a big, fat, drunk idiot. And everyone's like, yeah. And he's like, but enough about Chad. Let's talk about stuttering John. Right? So that was the joke that John's talking about here, where he's like, oh, it's a false lead. I understand how comedy works. I'll explain it to you. <laughs> but it was it was hilarious because, and maybe it's better that we don't play this, but as John is watching Shuli stand up, he watches those few jokes that Shuli does. He made fun, like, before him was Chrissy Mayer. And he said something about, I, uh, I can't follow boobs like that. I'm talking about Cardiff. You know, he's just throwing things out that were just relevant to things that were said. He made fun of me about, uh, cause I made, I was made a Holocaust joke and he's like, you're one of the fucking chosen ones or not chosen ones, but one of the master race. Yeah. Like this is not what Hitler had involved. Anyway, it doesn't matter. And John sits there and he watches it. He goes, you call this a comedy act? This is his act guys. It's, it's not good. It's like, no, you know, that's not his act. You know, that that's like him warming up to, the situation that he's in. So now John being a real comic <laughs> and David being a real idiot are going to figure out how comedy works. So of course that's his first joke. It's like, cause he's like, a loser. It's like tag and that kind of stuff like that type of. It's yeah. it. No, no, it's not even as good as a tag. A tag is at least something that you attach like, you know, to a, a string. A tag is like, if you have a good premise and then you do a joke, then you have a bunch of tags. Now, a smart comic will be able to have a bunch of tags. Like, so if I do a joke, you always follow with a bunch more tags. You know, because then it just... Like, it's it just, like a t- in sales, it's called, it, there's a similar thing that's called a tie-down. So you make a point, and then you tie it down, tie it down, tie it down. Well, yeah, but this is to get this. more laughs. Right. So, like, course. you know, like, so you do a bit, <laughs> right. and then you do a tag about it, and then you do another tag, and then another tag. You know, and then and then you know. Like, so now, like take my wife, like take my wife, please. I take my wife everywhere, uh, but she always finds her way back. I asked my wife where she wants to go. She said somewhere I've never been before. I said the hospital. Oh wait, I said the kitchen. Shit, though. I blew that punchline. But you know, yeah. So I was watching this. Like that's not what tags are. Now, now uh, I've learned everything about comedy. Those are that's all like, one liners. I know those right. aren't tags. And thankfully, John also understands that he's going to correct DG on this. DG's a moron. But I love that John can't. Explain what a tag is without using the word tag. No, yeah. it's like a tag. <laughs> I know you explain Would you tag it? Think it's a tag. You say the punchline, and then you do a tag, and then you do another tag. And it's That's a tag. Doesn't say no. what a tag is. It's an additional punchline. It's another punchline, John. Is what a tag is. But he, he'll never figure that out. This gets really funny right here. No, no, I, hit, so. Yeah, I know. But yeah, that's not really tags. That's just Son those of are a just. Bitch. No, those are just one-liners. Now I got a Google tag. Son of a bitch. All right, no, uh, let me give you an example of a tag. Yeah, yeah. Give, me some, give me some comedy education so I could try to be funny for these fucking people that are so funny. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I'd have to pull someone stand up and then I'll show you a tag. Uh, <laughs> let's just uh, got to think of if I have anything that I do. I, I have a bunch of tags, but I don't know which bit I could say on the air here. Uh, let's oh, see. What? Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's not let's not get kicked off again today. Like no, I, okay. Uh, like I like you know, like if I said, um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. If okay. I were to say something funny, uh, in that unlikely circumstance, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to go through my head. So if I said, um. You know, celebrities always give. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, you know. You know what's with these celebrities? Hold on, I got to remember. The bit <laughs> I, I the yeah, take your time. This is actually interesting. Like for yeah. real. I mean. Yeah, no, I know. T- but see, I had to take out the Bruce Jenner stuff because that wasn't. A, you know, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm trying to go. Like, like, so I do a Kardashian bit. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, um, uh, the squeegee. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of uh, the tags that would go God, with the amazing. jokes. I don't know. You know, I'll think of it later. Yeah, we'll come to it. We'll, we'll, we'll revisit it. We'll, we'll double back on it some other time. It's just when, it, like, it's just if, like a comedian has a joke and he says, uh, like, and then he's like, so he has a joke, 
And then he keeps going with that premise with different tags. Yeah. Like, you know. That's pretty much what you said. Like, if I say, you know, um, all these celebrities, um, you know, all these, you know, you know, all these fucking celebrities and their fucking uh, crazy names. What the hell? It's like Gwyneth Paltrow. What the hell did she name her kid? Apple. You know, you know, is that a good name for a kid? Apple. Oh, I know, you know, the kid goes to school. And shows up and starts sweating, and other kids are like, "Look, apple juice." And then she gets married, and and then she starts snoring. Her husband's like, "Apple turnover." You know, you just keep on piling on right, the right. same okay. joke. Now I understand the concept. You know, and that. then I'll go. Yeah, that's why I said, you know, I say to my three kids, "We are not going Hollywood. We will not go Hollywood." I said, "Listen, Oscar, Emmy, People's Choice. We are not going Hollywood." So now you have. So it all comes around. You one, bang, boom, bang, boom. Right. And then, so something like that. Well, there you go. See, that's some fucking free uh, free education for everybody else. Ow, my sides. Does everyone understand comedy now? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I had it all wrong. <laughs> yeah. Are we all getting comedy <laughs> now at this point? You guys got it all figured out? Jesus. It's incredible. My knees are so red from all the slapping I'm I doing. I don't think it ends there. Let's see what else he has to say. Out there? Yeah, you just like keep on with the same premise and just keep on going with it. You know, with different tags. And it's, you know, that... Not exactly what I'm trying to go for, but it's similar. I I got the concept. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. So you know, and then and and then I turn it around. You know, but it's all messed up. You know, it's just it's just a bit I do about fucking uh, celebrities and their stupid names. Um, trick. It's a good bet. All right, so then, last <laughs> dismissed. A little while later, uh, rude Rick Rude lets John know that his jokes are dated. You know, because that whole thing about celebrities is old. <laughs> so this is his response to that. Kind of a buy a shirt that says normal size. But Look, I appreciate okay. it. Apple's twenty years old. Yeah, you ever hear college? <laughs> I don't know. All my kids were in school at twenty. Maybe maybe this person has it. Maybe he's like, "Hey, college is what he's." Oh, college, 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 college what's that? Hey, what the hell that college? He's over there teaching you boys. I go to college in a, I go to college in a hard knock. What the hell kind of college you talking about? I was, about? A, I was a, What the fuck is that? Apparently, if you say that John's jokes are dated, you're a redneck and an idiot, even though his jokes are dated. It's been doing the same set for twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah. All right. So now. DG is going to come in with an anecdote, and this is the world's worst anecdote. I don't know why he thought this was an interesting or compelling story. And this is what I told him when I went on the show. He's not an interesting guy. He doesn't bring anything to the table. He's got no personality. I, he, his only thing is to suck up to John so he doesn't get kicked off the show. That's the only thing that he's doing at this point. I was in a bar one time, John. There was a Trump supporter, and the Trump supporter was talking about Harvard College, and he was like, yeah, too many liberals at Harvard, and, you know, that's why, I, you know, fuck that college, and he just talked bad about Harvard, and then I was like, so uh, Harvard's not a good college? And he's like, no. And I was like, so is that why you didn't send your kids? And he was like, man, fuck you. And I was like, oh, oh, I don't know why you're so mad if Harvard's such a bad college. Obviously, that's why you kept them out of there. Anyway, we know Clay Harvard's Dabble. a good college. Clay Dabble, Vince. <laughs> oh, boy, what the fuck? <laughs> Look at producer Chris. Like, <laughs> what is going on right now? What is happening? <sighs> How, how dare he have his smug face so close to the camera after telling a shitty story like that? I know. Fuck you, dude. He is just a nothing. God. And you know what? There's another guy in the basement right now, and I should probably just turn on his camera because I'm being very rude. What's up, Cardiff? Oh. Oh. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Welcome back. Welcome back, you too. Buddy. How was vacation? Oh, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. I enjoyed the games that Carl played with us. Yeah, we were all at. Uh, be dabbler. We were all at my pool. We had an end mm-hmm. of summer pool party that went on for mm-hmm. days. We all threw baloney at Carl's ass. It was yep. great. <laughs> Cardiff is a flotation device. I will mm-hmm. tell you that that we learned that right away. Okay, so for whatever reason, DG because well, I shouldn't say for whatever reason. I told John that DG is a troll. I guess Johnny's trolling you. It's very obvious. Everyone knows that except for you. What? 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 DG is making a face like oh. Oh, like, it's so obvious to everyone. So someone was asking about it on a recent episode, and this is nuts. Raiding, raping you. Name two books. DG is trolling you, John. Please be careful. <laughs> raping you. He, he's signing an NDA. 
please. That's how loyal he is. And that's what I do to anybody. I don't, I, no, I ain't dealing with anybody. I'm not paying anybody till an NDA is signed. So he's making DG sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. What does that have to do with being a co-host? I understand a contract. If there's going to be money involved, if there's going to be a commitment involved, you'd sign a contract. An NDA doesn't make any fucking sense. It John does, should be signing the NDA. Right. Does John have so much shit going on? That he doesn't want any, he doesn't want to let anyone know about anything that's really happening in his life because they might reveal it. Because I've never had any of anyone on WATP has never I've never made them sign an NDA. <laughs> I've never felt the need to. This like guy, don't tell anyone about my pool table with the green felt. <laughs> he can't stop doxing himself. He's worried about other people. Yeah. No, he doxed DG the other day. Did he? <laughs> he gave out DG's real name on his stream. Oh, geez. So Which is, again, <laughs> the reason I will not give John oh, yeah. anything. Right. Yeah, good well, on you. he was pushing you to get your real name. And you go, I'm not going to give it to you. I, I'm not saying mm-hmm. you want to get it out there, but you will get it out there. And then I think you're on his show the next day. And he said someone's name by mistake. You're like, see, do you see what I mean, John? Like, yes. No, but I wouldn't do that to you. And now he's done it to the great DG. Oh, no, not, not Dave. <laughs> Dalton Giordano. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, so now uh, John is going to snipe me. He's on his show live. He's by himself. Someone says, hey, Carl's doing who are these broadcasters right now? Well, actually, they didn't say that. They just thought I was live. And John cannot figure this out until he does. But at first, it's very difficult for him. Hold on. Oh, let's go. Yeah, how do I get that? That's a good one. So Roachie says Carl is live, John. W-A-T-P. John. Oh, I should mention, because I when he shows his screen, you can see it. He literally put into YouTube W-A-T-P and hit enter. <laughs> the channel is, who are these podcasts? And if you go to the channel and click the live button, if we're live, you'll see the video right there. But John just types W-A-T-P. No. Terrible marketing. No. Card. Yeah. Where's your I SEO, don't see Carl? Live. <laughs> Uh, I don't it's not see the same as saying live. Kevin into your phone. <laughs> Where do you see that he's live? On my channel. I don't see him live. <laughs> of course you don't. Yeah, he's you're not doing, in your you're house. Doing it wrong. <laughs> live. We'll do it live. Oh, who are these broadcasters? Is that what it is? Oh, okay. All right. Siri, call Carl. System was all right. Oh, was like fucking the morning news of the Here we go. He just does a billion shows a day. This is what I did yesterday. So, Who are so these I love the politician. His immediate thing is just like, get off my back. We're not going to know shit for years. <laughs> I don't want to hear questions every fucking day about this. All right. <laughs> We're not talking do... about it. So, John's doing this new thing now because Kevin Brennan praised him for this. So, now John is doing this all the time. I played a bunch of clips from John was at MLC on Monday. I played that on the bonus show today. I have a bunch more I didn't even get to. One of them being that Kevin made some kind of statement about how John likes to zoom in on Mike Morse and be like, let's just see if he says anything. Silent Mike. And Kevin goes, I love that you do that. It's so funny. So now John's like, oh, I got approval from daddy. He says this is a good bit. So now he's just zoomed in on me and Christian Blatt. And he's not watching the video that we're reacting to or anything else. He's just going to watch this and explain how terrible our show is. Relax. He is. Oh, I think I know who's funny, Carla. It's, it's the uh, company that's been brought up about 30 times since we started the show. <laughs> people's Gas. Who's best yeah. buddy? <laughs> I mean, Carla. obviously, yeah. it's People's Gas. And no at the bottom of it. That's the whole point. <laughs> obviously, somebody went over to the county and went, look at We really got to bury this one. This is going to look <laughs> really bad. There's going to be lawsuits. We're going to be hey, shooting into Kay. oblivion. I don't know what the county's hey, going to do. Like, okay, no, we got you. We'll cover yeah. for you. Yeah, they no, made the, it. And, and the, no. like the general manager, I the, think you're Lady K. Carl. Like, I know. All right, look, we're gonna we're gonna let go of it, but you have to let us show the dead kids. All right, look, if, if that's the compromise <laughs> we have to make, uh, you have to say he's almost thirteen. <laughs> all right, <laughs> there was Sorry, rumor that the uh, that the fucking hot water heater wasn't working, and so <laughs> we were suggesting that he went in there and maybe uh, was doing something with the hot water heater. I I, I don't know, so. I, I've I've had the hot water heater uh, oh boy. go out at my house what a in, fucking in a bad way, fest. and uh, that house was still standing, uh, <laughs> and and so were all of my neighbors. 
Uh, uh, no one died. Too so. But, but he, yeah, but did you have anybody from the gas company there? Yeah. If you had somebody from the gas fair, company, to be fair, no one from Con Ed. Carl, you better look out. You're on a fresh water canal. They didn't say you. Okay, this is going to get interesting. So what John's thing that he does is he starts watching a show mid-show, not knowing the context, not understanding the conversation, and then listens to a sentence or two and goes, this is boring. Be like turning oh, yeah. on Empire Strikes Back, and he gets a uh, Dagobah, I, yeah. and he's just like, oh, he's just going to be jogging around the jungle with a alien on his back? Yeah. Boring. Yeah. Like, yeah, but this is part of a bigger thing, retard. It's Zumak level bad. Yes, correct. Yeah, That's a perfect way to sum it up. Guy has no idea what he's doing or how to do it, but insists on trying over and over <laughs> yeah. again. All right. And it's also, uh, if you're just going to sit there and say how boring a show is, why are you why are you forcing your audience to watch it? Well, right. He's got no strategy. His show, I could pull up any part. I, mean, I have the link right here. We could go to any part of the show and talk about how boring it is. It's very boring. John has nothing to talk about. But this is great because, as everyone knows, John and I live very close to each other in Florida. And there was a storm coming through yesterday. And so there was concern about where we live. And John says this. He was a good employee. It's 50 to yeah, 70 miles per hour. Yeah. Wind's coming. You know, house. some algae is yeah. in your house. It's the last workplace incident. Carl. It's like, yeah, it's like, uh, it's like, oh, yeah, wasn't him. Carl, alligators, alligators could get in your house and bite. Is that a threat? Your foot off. No, it's not a threat. He's got a joke for this. Now, everybody get ready. This is hilarious. <laughs> this is going to rock your world. Would that be known as a club sandwich? <laughs> now, as you guys know, the rule of comedy. Wait, wait, play the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Give him another chance. <laughs> the rule of comedy, as everybody knows, is you tell a joke like if an alligator bit off Carl's foot, would that be a club sandwich? And then after you do that, you repeat the exact same joke. Ah, <laughs> uh, come on. Come on, that was funny. Carl, if the alligator bites your foot off, would that be a club sandwich? Oh! What the fuck is wrong with this guy? Good God. Why does he think that he should repeat that joke? He worked really hard on it. That's why. So he's. I wish uh, I could say I wrote that for him. <laughs> he's saying that he's hoping that my house gets flooded and bad things happen to it. On MLC, he was talking about how Anthony had an issue with his roof. They just built a new house in South Carolina, Anthony mm-hmm. Cumia, and the contractor fucked up and cut all these corners and put up a shitty roof. And so they're trying to sue the guy when yeah. he left the state. And it's this whole fucking it's ordeal. Yeah. It's a nightmare. I've talked to Missy about this. I mean, we, we both were going through buying a new house at the same time. So we, we were talking about this a lot. And John's yucking it up with KB. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That this thing happened to him that sucks. Like, like, motherfucker. Karma's a bitch. Laugh about other people's misfortune all you want. But I don't know if that's the route you want to go. Because bad things are coming your way, John. Just so you know. And I'd hate to see all the people fucking holding their sides and laughing when you're uh, dealing with whatever fucking yeah. organ failure you got to deal with in the future. When an alligator gets in John's house and it dies by a silver bullet. <laughs> Good one. Because, of course, a <laughs> werewolf was... would have been more appropriate for that one, Andy. <laughs> a werewolf. Would have... <laughs> all right. So this is the craziest thing. Monday night. And I feel like so much time has passed since then. I, I can't even remember when we've talked about it, what we've talked about. Monday night, Kevin Brennan tells John, you got to snipe Uncle Rico show. It'll be great. Everyone will love it. They'll all want to watch you watching them watching you. It's going to be fantastic. And I don't know what KB's goal was. If he knows John's going to fail miserably at it. And that's why it's funny. I would think so. Because the next morning, KB went on his show and just went, John's a fucking idiot. Here's what he's doing. Because I went on John's show and declared an L for him and for Kevin Brennan because all it did was get more people giving money to Shuley and the Shuley Network in spite of John. This is what's crazy about it is that John showed up an hour and a half late to snipe the Shuley show because he will never, ever understand how time zones work. And he thinks it's everyone's fault but his. Because he's a fucking moron. You know, 
I fuck. He asked me to go and snipe them, and I do. Was I a little late? Yeah, because he didn't specify when. You know how I feel about that kind of thing, John? I feel like whenever I show up to something, it's the right time. So I would never acknowledge being late. That's just me. That's how I personally. Well, look, if he would have said 7 o'clock EST, then I would have said, okay, so for my time. What time did you guys get off even? I mean, obviously it was before. I got So that's when he kicked me out at 3.30. Right. Kevin said it. At 3.30 John's time, 6.30 Eastern time, he's on MLC, and he goes, okay, you're, you're going to snipe their show. I'm going to let you go now. Go get a beer. Go get what you got to do. Get prepared so that you can snipe their show because it's in a half an hour. John thinks it's in three and a half hours. So he goes, well, okay, you don't have to kick me out now, but all right. <laughs> what do you mean go get a beer? Yeah, it never, <laughs> it never ever occurred to John. Never once did it occur to him that maybe they're dealing with East Coast time since – Every single person involved in this, Bob Levy, Mike Morris, Kevin Braddon, all these guys are all on the East Coast. And they're saying it's happening at 7 o'clock. And John goes, well, you, obviously everyone means specific time. Nothing in this world is specific time. Nothing in the dabble verse is specific time. Nothing is. And John is blaming Kevin for this. Why wouldn't he tell me that it, it, it's 7 EST? Well, that's to be assumed. And if you didn't know that, ask. Yep. <laughs> I don't know pretty easy you would but think. once he figures it out we should all go to pacific time oh yeah yes. i'm gonna go to military yeah. time <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll see you at uh 1400 hours john <laughs> good luck right that's and that's when i was on the way to the pub and i called you i go that was weird he just kicked me out like he said i have to prepare but it's three and a half hours later what do i gotta prepare for so john goes to the bar and starts drinking and kevin brennan an hour into uncle rico's show Message John and goes, where are you? I thought you were going to snipe the show. And John's like, what are you talking about? It's like, they've been out for an hour. So what does John do? The most amazing thing I've ever heard in my life, and he admitted this on his show. He sold his beer to another person at the bar uh. for, fi- <laughs> for $5. Now, John explained this. So apparently what happens is it's happy hour. So you get the beer, and then you get the upside down shot glass, whatever they call that. The bubble. The bubble so that you can trade that in for your next drink, right? Buy one, get one. He was just ready to trade in his get one. And he gets the note, like, I, you got to go home and snipe the show. So what does he do? He sells it for $5 to someone else at the bar. Unheard of. I've, I've been to many bars. I've this never seen someone sell that. The most cheapskate thing. I mean, first of all, someone. like, appointment drinking for buy one, get one. Like, yeah. I got to be there for yeah. the buy one, get one. Oh, I'm missing out on it. You want to buy my bubble instead of just giving it away? Can you imagine? Like a good guy? Well, and then he was defending himself because everyone was ripping on him. So I saw about his show today defending himself. He's like, well, you know, I asked my friend if they wanted it, but they didn't. So then I'm just like, does anyone want to buy this? And then someone said they want like, this is the whole fucking thing that he had to do to get $5. And at first, he was bragging about it. He's like, so I got the five bucks. Like, what? I didn't take a so loss. <laughs> Are the buy one, get one free beers $10? Because otherwise, did he make a profit I on this? I think he might have made a profit on it. I, I, that's a good question, Cardiff. Although, he does tip 10 bucks a beer, so. <laughs> yeah, right. True, maybe he true. did take a loss after all. And I went to the pub. I think that's maybe, I would think that's what he meant. Like, go have a couple drinks, get your. Yeah, that's what I thought he meant. Get some food. He even said, he said, go get some beers. So, oh, I got it. Okay, I'll go get some, you know, I'll go to the pub. You're a grown adult. Right. Kevin Brunner doesn't tell you what to do with your fucking time. (laughs) Also, when he was confused about it, he's like, three and a half hours, what do I have to prepare for? Like, he would have prepared with a half hour. Right. Like, he would have done anything different. Of course. No, he has nothing. He has no idea how to do this. And he embarrassed himself so badly. It was really funny. They fucked with him so hard. It was great. Good. I assumed he knew what my lifestyle is. This is a... Uh, what... <laughs> so everyone has to know what time zone he's in. They have to know what his lifestyle is. All right, John, how many, how many hours do you need to drink beer before you can go out and do this show tonight? Okay, then I'm going to let you go in five minutes so that you get your three and a half hours worth of beer drinking time so that you can do it. Don't you know my lifestyle? Yeah one of those examples of east coast west coast beef it's sometimes it's unfortunately sometimes but, it can yeah, get but bad. He, but, i don't think that has nothing to do with east coast west coast Jesus beef Christ. retard it's not what this is no one's shooting tupac over this but even that is not unheard of i've had guests that i've screwed up and you know and <laughs> you don't say why the esd or psd and i've had guests 
where they screwed up. And- even more reason to ask for clarification or to right. even think for a second. Like, does, he, does that mean 4 o'clock my time if it's 7 o'clock? You have a, a history of fucking this yes. up. It's happened so many goddamn times. You would think he'd be like, hmm, <laughs> maybe I should give this some thought before going to the bar for three hours and not understanding. And didn't, you know, you know, and but it happens. It's not like so unheard of. So for him to have his fucking panties in a bunch just because oh. I didn't understand. This is the other thing, too. So Kevin said he paid John $100 to do this. $100 in John's world is two days at the pub. That's huge. Because as we all know, addicts don't think weeks ahead. Addicts are not thinking about like, why be this high next Tuesday? <laughs> they want it now. <laughs> and then why do they get tomorrow? So John's thinking 100 bucks. that's two days at the pub, because he's made it clear that $50 is what he needs every day at the pub, which I calculated it was $15,000 a year. Now I'm trying to remember what it was. It was something like $17,000 a year. If you spent $50 a day at the pub, which John claims he does, oh. it was significant. <laughs> it's my point. $18,250. Thank you. 18, 18 too. Which, if he wants to get that Harley fixed, I feel like he could get a new fucking <laughs> bike for that kind of money. It'd probably be a better investment for him. But if he sells his free beers, it's <laughs> right. only it's more like fourteen grand. <laughs> it's gating the system. So, in, in John's mind, he's really pissed off at KB because KB has not paid him the 100 bucks yet that he said he would pay him. I don't know if because what? John failed or or what's going on, but he was. I, I watched him say he's like day two of no money from Kevin Brennan. <laughs> Can you imagine Again, living your life he, like that? He cannot be embarrassed. He no. just cannot be embarrassed. It's shocking. It's shocking to me what he's up to. 